it's a master. I've got no idea. You really, I mean, if, if you started unraveling things that Andrew has written, but I mean, it, all this, it, it comes as no big surprise to me. They've been an embarrassment to the Queen for years. We had Charles doing his, oh, tampon thing. Do you remember that one? That was some recorded conversation. You've had, I mean, all of them. You had Prince Edward with his disastrous, it's a royal knockout. Then you've had all these other problems that they've had in the royal family. Then there was a Diana interview. And um, and then you get sort of the embarrassment that is Sarah Ferguson. And then you get the embarrassment that is Prince Andrew. In fact, a bigger embarrassment. It'd be hard pushed to find. So much so, they've actually said step down. Not take a little break. Actually step down for the foreseeable future. So, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think he contributes anything to the royal family. He's more interested in lining his own pockets and doing what he wants to do. He's, he's not interested in sort of towing the line. You know, if you remember, I mean, obviously the relationship he has with his mother is quite peculiar because nobody ever tells them off. He can go to the cenotaph, but I don't think he'll be laying a wreath. I don't think so. I'm pretty certain there won't be any wreath laying by him. And whether he's with his uh, brothers, I've got no idea. We'll have to wait well, for another year, so we won't know about it, will we? But uh, either way, he's probably waking up this morning thinking... By God, I've screwed this up good and proper. And he has. He's totally screwed it up. Totally. I don't think anybody has ever done as much damage to the royal family. I mean, you might want to sort of think that Wallace Simpson caused damage to the royal family, but they actually sort of disappeared. They went and lived a life abroad. Perhaps Andrew can take Fergie and his two ghastly children and go over there as well. One of them was doing a charity thing last night because I, I was waiting for the press to doorstep them and go, or Sarah Ferguson, who's probably now on strict instructions, keep your trap shut. And then, as if we wanted uh, more firewood thrown on the fire, up comes Lady Peculiar Colin Campbell. The one who uh, married some bloke with a title, so all of a sudden thinks she's titled. And so she swans around, scrubbing around in her usual little fanciful way with that funny little vibrato voice. Almost like sort of a, a more a more elongated version of Anne Widdicombe as she sits there. We can hear her, can't we? Is this the interview she gave? Is this the one talking about the... I mean, she's either completely barking mad or... This was on Good Morning Britain, was it? Uh, or she hasn't got the faintest idea. So she said this. You all seem to have forgotten that Jeffrey Epstein, his, the offence with which he was charged mm. and for which he was imprisoned was soliciting prostitution from minors. That is not the same thing as paedophilia. Soliciting what do you call prostitution. It? Prostitution. If you solicited a 14 year old for prostitution, you're a paedophile. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter, it matter. is, it, it doesn't. It doesn't that, matter. And they were not an for sex. In America, in America, he wasn't, in America he wasn't, and sorry, I'm sorry. And, he, that is, he wasn't with a respect, man. That is nonsense. No, no it's not. He, he was convicted of procuring a 14 year old girl for sex. Was for he? 14. Yes. 14. Well, but I'm not justifying Jeffrey well, Epstein. I'm not justifying Jeff. No, paedophilia, I suspect. There's a difference between a minor and a child. She was 14. A she minor is a child, Lady Colin Campbell. No, a minor is a child. It's only been getting away actually. from the point. Okay. Okay. Actually... Legally, she was a child. Wait, wait, all right? wait. I mean, to be honest with you, you listen to that stupid old bag talking and you suddenly wonder at what end of her body her brain has been inserted. I've never been so stupid. It was soliciting for a... a, a she was 14. That's called paedophilia, you stupid old woman. And she wouldn't have it, though, would she? She wouldn't have it. Anyway, luckily, at Tetbury, they've decided they've had enough of it, so she's not turning on the Christmas lights. She's been, she's been relegated to get out, you're mad as a broomstick. What a stupid woman. I mean, is it because she's ancient? I mean, but even though it can't be that, can it? I mean, it's it just... So, he, he wasn't the Peter file, she goes, in that funny little voice of hers. And you think to yourself, well, what do you call it? What do you call it? You know, he was soliciting... A 14-year-old girl. That's called paedophilia, dear. <laughs> I mean, really, how thick do you have to... Ask your children. They'll actually tell you. Try and put some brains in your head. 18. 18 what do I have 18 on the brain for? Well, that's why I was thinking about the, the legal age of consent. And it varies country to country. Strangely, in, um, in the Scandinavian countries, it's 15. 15 is the legal age of consent. Which is, uh, it's odd, isn't it, how it sort of varies around the world. But when you get stupid people like Colin Campbell, royal biographer, yeah, of course you are, dear, in your mind, in your mind. I don't think she knows any more about the royal family than you or I do. We read the papers, all the stuff she comes up with. It's like Paul Burrell. 
There's another one who's an irritant and a thorn in the side. He can say anything he likes now because there's no way that they're going to criticise him. They've got enough troubles of their own without worrying about what Paul Burrell says. You know, uh, Diana called me her rock. When? When did she call you that, you liar? She never called you that at all. She probably thought you were just a, an overinflated servant, which is exactly what you were. Uh, how many companies are going to ditch Andrew? Most of them appear to have ditched him. There's a couple who are hanging around, Barclays being one of them, but uh, mainly universities, students have voted, they don't want him anywhere near them. Anybody who associates with a known and convicted paedophile has got no business being involved with any companies. Charities are pulling out left, right and centre because they don't want that, that uh, stain on their reputation. They really don't. No matter how much you like him, and we haven't found anybody so far who does, I, I, I can't work out at what point Andrew became the embarrassment. I think it's when he started believing all the, the publicity. He was a very sort of shallow ineffectual kind of person but uh, he had a nice smile and he was young and he was good looking and then they called him randy andy and he probably thought yeah because that's another way of saying you know you're really popular whereas in fact everybody hated him the only person who he seemed to uh, to get on with was sarah ferguson we all knew what a total disaster she was so now it's it's come back and it's bitten him very badly on the bottom so much so that a senior member of the royal family has had to uh, has had to step down ridiculous Somebody says, one member of the royal family has done wrong, not the whole family. Who said the whole family? Nobody. You're making this up. You're doing fake news. Nobody said the whole family. It's the whole idea. That's why they've, they've managed to get rid of Randy Andy, or Panic Andy, as they're now calling him, or sort of, you know, Prince Andy, because his, his career is over. It's finished. Perhaps he'll have to sell the chalet in Verbier. 14, 13 million quid for that chalet. Where'd you get 13 million quid from? When you're on, like him, he was on a helicopter pilot salary well, nowhere near 13 million was it can't wait to see the queen's speech on christmas day says martin well she'll be filming it very shortly they always film coming up to the end of november because they release the radio version to the radio stations who hang on to it so we actually get it in advance of uh, everybody else we, we've actually got it i think from probably about the first of december something like that but uh, what what will it will it be another annus horribilis or will she completely skirt over it and, and not mention it at all. I mean, she went out last night, 25 minutes after Andrew had, had posted this, this sort of little thing, which I'm sure he didn't write. Didn't sound as though it came from him. It sounded as though it came from somebody inside the palace, the press office. We've, we've written this thing, so have a look at it. Is that okay? Right, that's what we're going to post. And now you don't have to bow and scrape to him. You don't have to do anything at all, which is something he'll have to get used to. And as for his second daughter's wedding for next year, well, that's going to be a riot, isn't it? Now he's not on the civil list. Hope to God we're not going to have to pay for it, like the last one. Two million quid the last one cost us. Two million quid. What for? What for? Dreadful. Uh, Michael Jackson could be back in court. Ten years after he died, the two people who are making accusations against him, it is possible in America, I don't know if it's possible here, to actually put somebody on trial even after they've died. That doesn't, that doesn't exonerate them from anything. Mind you, talking of uh, not exonerating people from anything, they were doing a programme, cheers, have we all got tea or something? Teas and coffees. Why are we doing cheers? What for? I can't hear you at all now. Which is, no, no, it's, no, believe me, it's bliss. Thank you. It's so marvellous. Yeah, that's why. That's why I can't hear you. It's fantastic. Uh, so, um, what was I saying? I can't remember what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Oh, that's right. No, they, they do a thing on the television where they get people who try and cheat the insurance companies and claim money. And this, this woman, um, claims that she's been hit by a bus, okay, in her car, and... She is claiming for the fact she can't wash up, she can't do this, she can't do anything at all, 12,000 quid. I mean, to be honest with you, if you really can't do things like that, the insurance claim would be bigger. Anyway, the insurance company, because the buses have insurance companies, surprisingly, uh, decided to investigate. They didn't, they didn't believe it. And the reason they didn't believe it is because she said the bus smashed into the side of her car. She was a liar, of course, a compulsive liar, because the footage on the CCTV, because all buses, just be warned, they have CCTV cameras inside and outside the bus. It shows her driving deliberately into the side of a bus at traffic lights. And it was minor, minor. So there was no way. She then gets out of the car, bearing in mind she's severely injured, and she goes and she remonstrates with the driver and does all the usual, you smashed into my car, and he goes, I don't think so.
Anyway, she uh, she takes it uh, to her insurance company and they then contact the bus insurance company. So the bus insurance company think they'll actually do the right thing. They better tell her insurance company she drove into the bus. Here it is. Here are the photographs taken by the bus driver. There was hardly any damage to the bus at all. Lying old bag turns up. Anyway, she uh, then, once her solicitors have been told about the fact that she did this deliberately, uh, they decide to drop the case. Unfortunately for her, the bus company decide not to drop the case against her because she's made false accusations. So you take them to court. You take them to court and you sue, to use a French expression, you sue the arse off them. It's as simple as that. Uh, dans le jardin, le arse. Okay, and... Uh, <laughs> dans l'arbre. And, uh, and, so, and so she then got caught out. They do that all the time because people are so thick. They think that if they actually write... Yeah. Au revoir, Mrs. Au revoir to prison, to le guillotine, et le dans la aide. You know. <laughs> it's quite a strong prison setting. But I'm, I'm sorry, she was, she was lying through her teeth. And people like that just make me sick. Really, they really make me sick. But anyway, so she uh, she thinks she's being all terribly clever. Not the first time that people have taken people to court and uh, and sued them for telling lies. Because they seem... I mean, do they really think the bus companies are going to go, oh, so sorry, so sorry, we're going to give you 12... Uh, they have, have £12,000. Oh, no, they don't. And once, of course... She goes on that list of people who've falsified evidence. In her case, she just lied through her teeth. Um, she won't get insurance ever again. That's good news, isn't it? A miserable Christmas in her household. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, 84850, uh, oh, and Whittacombe's appearing in Tamworth next year. Isn't that where the pigs came from? Do you remember the Tamworth pigs that escaped and they were on their way to the, um, the slaughterhouse? Now they're doing shows. They're unbelievable! They're doing a show in Tamworth, which is fantastic. Pat says, I must go and report back to you. I think it's quite... Have you seen her one-woman show? She's, it's, it, it's basically like going into somebody's sitting room and she sits down and talks about her sort of political career and I bet she'll weave in Anton Dubeck. She likes Anton Dubeck. She likes him a lot. Because every time she mentions him in the collar, in, in her, her, her little column, well, I say little column, it's a fairly big, fat column. It's, uh, I mean, she gets a lot in. Really, she gets a lot in. She always mentions him in such glowing terms. But the Tamworth too. We had to save them, didn't we? I believe, actually, after we did that, we then sort of, you know, took her. How old is she? I don't know how old. Oh, she's 70. She's 70, I think. I'm sure she mentioned something about being 70. She, d she looks over a thousand. She doesn't. I remember when she was in the Big Brother house. She didn't. She didn't mind the girls doing her hair for us. She always has an inability to make herself look attractive. I mean, she could do it. It's not difficult. Uh, Steve, uh, legal age of consent in France is uh, also fifteen. Well, I mean, it, I mean, well, ours was twenty-one. Do you remember twenty-one? As if people waited till they were twenty-one before they had sex, and then they brought it down, and it was sixteen. And people went, "Woo! We'd have sex earlier now." I mean, some people in certain parts of the world are having sex at twelve, you know, and nobody seems to do anything about that. Quite ghastly. Uh, another one here says, uh, "Are your LBC chairs comfy?" Um, yes, yes. Well, as work chairs go, because I have to spend three hours a day sitting in it. So it is. They used to test us out on chairs. They would, when we moved buildings, they would bring chairs in and we'd all have a, a go sitting your bottom in them. And uh, it was okay, actually. It was okay. I mean, because you have to sit. And this one goes up, down, sideways. The armrests go up and down. And, um, and, it's, and it's quite nice because if you're sitting for three hours in a chair, it better be comfy. Better be comfy. I fell asleep in front of the television yesterday. I was so tired. And I woke up at seven o'clock and I looked at the clock and went, oh, I'm supposed to be in bed. So I quickly sort of picked up my nighty, ran into the bedroom, and uh, and climbed straight into bed. Picked up Ted. No, Teddy's already in the bedroom. Teddy's already there. Teddy. Teddy doesn't go anywhere without my say so. And uh, so he waits there patiently in the bed. And I, I plug in a film on the on the DVD player, and I'm in bed, and it's cold. It's very because I've got a fan in the bedroom. And I'm not letting them out. I'm telling you, they're staying as long as I want them to stay. And they're sort of there. And anyway, and so I sort of climb into bed, pull the duvet over. Within a matter of minutes, the body heat that I give off, I'm like a small inferno. Seriously, I, I can warm up quite quickly. And I'm out for the count. Gone, gone, pew, 
gone. And I did all the washing up yesterday. Oh, no, good boy. I've got no interviews to do today. Yesterday we did Lawrence Fox. You'll love that interview. It was a great interview. Wasn't it? Very good interview. Thank you. He liked the interview. It was a very good interview, actually. He was in a very good mood, wasn't he? He was in a very good mood. Very good mood. Good mood. <laughs> and we had, a, we had a very nice chat with him. And I don't know when we're going to play that one out. I think probably three weeks' time. It's really good. He's got an album out. And he, it was a really good interview, even though I say it myself. And I, 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 you know, you finish doing an interview and you just know if you've got on with somebody. And we, we, we gelled really well. I was well gel. Well gel I was. And uh, that was good fun. So we did that. We had a picture taken. Producer took a nice picture of us. That'll come out blurry, I can tell. And, um, and apart from that, then I sort of toodled off home. And then today we're having the trees put up outside. So I've got, uh, got to go and sort the lights out for those ones. But they, they should be in polythene bags i generally put things in bags one set of lights in a bag and then we drape them around the tree there should be about a thousand lights on each tree which is very nice i'm looking forward to that and uh, i will decide what to have for tea i don't know what to have for, for tea but uh, uh, next week we've got some interviews coming in we've got john barrowman popping in and uh jamie oliver <laughs> see and he'll, he'll be coming in as well so that's quite nice and also what Jamie Oliver is actual French. Yeah, well, we did French at school. I was doing French at nine years old. I was doing Latin at nine years old. Latin. Latin. Why? I've got no idea. Unless you're going to be a chemist or a botanist, there was no point in doing Latin, because nobody in our road spoke Latin. So I'm like, you know, spouting off, you know, Latin. Amoa massamat, marmus amatis amant, puella, stella, Rex, you know, all these kind of... And no, nobody in my road could follow the conversation at all. It was all very disappointing. Very disappointing. What was not disappointing was watching Roman Kemp on I'm a Celebrity attempting to eat a bull's penis, which... 40%, 40% of people who go on a speeding awareness course, you know, the one that they, they offer you the opportunity to do if you've been caught speeding. Only the once, only the once, 40% uh, are caught again. Speeding. I mean, admit it, in my car, it is quite difficult to keep to the speed limit. Uh, Steve, you were quite right about Ian Wright on I'm a Celebrity, yet yeah, he's lost his temper now. He's lost his temper. He's using the F word and everything else. I told you. And the rumour is he's going to walk before the end of the week. And you know, you know why I can tell you this? Because they're going, oh, he, he said he might walk. He's been advised by all his mates to walk because he's got a very short fuse, he's got a foul mouth on him and a very nasty temper. A very nasty temper. So I'm expecting him to walk before the end of the week and blame it on all sorts of things. Caitlin Jenner uh, also isn't having a particularly brilliant time. Roman Kemp looked as though he didn't really want to eat a bull's penis. But uh, that's the game. That's what you have to, to do. I mean, who would, to be quite honest with you? I mean, really... <laughs> It's just, it was all these sort of, you know, so-and-so's anus and this and cockroaches. And I'm thinking, I'm sorry. Let's seriously hold Ant and Deck down and force feed them. Put it all in a liquidizer and inject it into them. You know, and go, see how you like it. Not very pleasant, is it? But, uh, no, he, he was debating. He said that the bull's penis looked like James Haskell, which means, obviously, the boys have started checking each other out over there. You know what they're like? Yeah. But, uh, no, I was right about Ian Wright. Nasty temper. Nasty piece of work. And um, another one here says, uh, was it you who won the Euro Millions? No, I checked. Only got 99 quid. You know, it's all right, 99 quid's OK, but I wanted 105 million or something. Uh, what do you think Katie Price thinks about Brexit? I shouldn't imagine she's ever heard of it. Why would she have heard of Brexit? I mean, she can't even spell. That's why it would be such, such a... I mean, she wouldn't know what that means. I'm just waiting for the bankruptcy hearing. I'm, I'm seriously. And uh, another one here, Jill, the, uh, the trucker. Is it Jill or Gill? Is it Jill? It says, first time tester. No, texter, dear. Texter. God, blimey, honestly. To LBC. I've been listening to you for many years now, and yesterday went on your Twitter account. Uh, there's so many people leaving comments, but they all seem to know about you, what you talk about on your show. Oh, yeah. On my Twitter account? Well, I don't see any of this. So I don't know where it goes to, because it certainly isn't seen by me. It just vanishes into the ether. So I never see anything. That's what makes me laugh, actually. The funny thing, they listen all the time. You know why? They're a bit screwy upstairs. They're a bit screwy. But the trouble is, the more they talk about me, the bigger the audience grows. <laughs> keep talking. Keep talking. We love it. Well, I mean, sometimes the producer will go, the funniest thing, somebody's just written there. They're generally, as I say, people who smell. They don't work. And uh, they're basically busy bo busybodies. And they're all on benefits. That's, that's how you identify a troll. And also, they've got nothing going on in their life. 
I mean, if you had something going on in your life, why would you worry about somebody else's? But as I say, the more they actually talk about it, I mean, the more people come in and listen to the programme, and that's why we've just put on another 100,000 people. That's not like 50 or 70 or 1,000 or 10,000. That's 100,000 extra people on, mainly because people talk about the programme, which is fantastic. Which is fantastic. We absolutely love it. We love it. I mean, I, I personally can't get enough of it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, another one here says, uh, first, uh, da, 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 da. everybody's confusing um, paedophilia with, yes, I mean, the trouble is, I, I think Lady Colin Campbell is ultimately the most stupid person you've ever seen on the television. How she can masquerade as an intelligent person is totally beyond me. She really didn't know. She thought it was okay to solicit 14-year-olds, and it's not called paedophilia. Probably in her, in her little world, it probably isn't, actually. Uh, Matthew says, have you ever met Paul O'Grady? Have I ever met him? I've known him for about 35 years. Met him? <laughs> oh, dear, honestly. And uh, another one here says, uh, a lot of people talk about Ian Wright and how right I was, yes. Uh, also, uh, Marcus Record, James O'Brien gets three mad calls in a row. Oh, he does get some odd people. I mean, if, ever, if ever you want to hear the Looney Tunes Brigade, that's where they will be residing. That's where they will be residing. Uh, also, why is this girl coming out now about sleeping with Andy and not before? What's she after? Well, she was a child. She was traumatised. She was traumatised. And it was only because I think she was going to be uh, called as a witness in the Epstein case. Oh, you know that the two security guards in the prison where he was have been arrested for dereliction of duty. I bet they have. Uh, turn a blind eye, mate. What's going on? Don't know, don't know. Look in the other way. Look in the other way. They, they, they were watching computer games, apparently, as opposed to watching him every 15 minutes. Otherwise, how else would he be allowed to uh, commit suicide? So that, that's what... I mean, put it this way, if she makes money out of it, I mean, if she was really forced to have sex, do you not think she's entitled to something? Like an apology would be nice, wouldn't it? An apology would be very good, but as I say, you're not going to get that. But now we've managed to officially kick, you know, pervy Andy out of the royal family. What he's going to do now, I don't know. He needs to go and live somewhere else. Perhaps he can go and live in Switzerland all year round, stay there, because we're not interested. Nobody wants to, uh, nobody wants to hang around with him. Nobody is remotely interested in anything that he says, because nobody seems to believe a word he's talking about. And uh, another one here... Oh, somebody else saying, I, I can't uh, wait to see the Queen's speech on Christmas Day. I don't think she'll mention it. I don't think she'll mention it. Somebody says, the royal family do a whole lot of good in the world. What would that be, dear? What would that... What, what are the normal things? They just go and stay... They don't actually dig wells or anything like that. But, you know, they, they, they're, they're just the royal family. And uh, another one here. Do you think Ian Dale should win Political Commentator of the Year Award. I think we've got about four people on LBC, at least four people, that could win Political Commentator of the Year Award. Absolutely. At least four people. At least f at least six people. Everybody can hold their own except me. I'm not, because I don't do politics. I really don't do politics. I could talk about the things that you could probably talk about, but I've heard some very ill-informed people. I think I'm much better informed. I've learned. In fact, I was quite surprising myself the other day talking to Theo about the, the balloting and how they came across and Joe Swinson and all the rest of it. And as we said yesterday, it's a two-horse race. It's either going to be Conservatives or it's going to be Labour. It's as simple as that. Nobody else stands a cat in hell's chance of getting you in there. But, yeah, I mean, but will we see the Lib Dems aligning themselves to a party like they've done before? They align themselves to the Labour Party. So we had the Lib Lab Pact. I'm old enough to remember these things. Which, of course, always serves me very well. Uh, if you win the lottery, will you still be on the following day or will it be radio silence? Oh, no, I'd definitely be here. You're joking. I'd be wanting to tell everybody. Can you imagine? Even if I won a million, I would, I would tell people about it. Definitely. Of course, that's the whole idea of the programme. The programme is an extension of me, so everything I do, I tell people. And if I won a million pounds or I won a hundred million, I'd be telling you I won a hundred million. So that's why I'm telling you I didn't, all right? So don't ask me again, because it gets on my blooming nerves. <laughs> I might have done, though, but it isn't. I think, Steve, I think the abolition of the monarchy is soon inevitable. No, 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 no definitely not. Definitely not. This is just what, what they're doing, and Charles said he was going to do this ages ago, they've just brought it forward. When he becomes king, he's going to trim the monarchy down. Because, you know, you don't need a lot of the things that they, they do. We like the pomp and the ceremony and stuff like that, but you don't necessarily have to have to have sort of a royal family to do pomp and ceremony. You know, to have the guards and the march pasts and all the things that we do particularly well. You don't need a royal family for that, but I quite like the idea they're there. I think it's shameful that Harry and Meghan are 
pootling off to America when this this could be the Duke of Edinburgh's last Christmas. Could be the Queen's last Christmas. You know, but there again, they all you know, they all do what they want to do. Unfortunately, that's what Andrew thought, and it's come back, and it's uh, it's taken him down. Uh, Steve, I took your advice from yesterday. I downloaded the Global Player uh, from Pete. He says, I missed a few shows through work at the beginning of the week. Listen to them to the day. Highly advised. There you go, you see? If, if somebody called Pete from Clapham Junction can do it, anybody can do it. It's seriously easy. It's, yeah, be smart. Be like Pete. Pete tells it like it is. You know, wicked. And, uh, and so he, he's downloaded it so he can listen to LBC and you can download all the shows. So you might miss a show and you think, oh, listen to that again. That made me laugh or that bit was funny or that bit I agreed with. And that's, that's how it works. That's why we're number one in the podcasting. Number one. This show is number one in the podcasting. Uh, Steve, I have heard you mention you have a collection of vacuum cleaners. Uh, I'm looking for one for the Black Friday sale next week. Do you have a recommendation? Oh, they're, they're all going to be uh, banging out all sorts of stuff. You know, it's, it's, uh, the, you'll probably get some good bargains. They reckon we're going to spend about two and a half billion pounds Friday next week. Well, we haven't got two and a half billion pounds. Even if we club together in this in the studio, all three of us, we haven't got any money. We haven't got that sort of money. Ridiculous. You talk of Ant and Deck, I happen to think Ant is very well dressed, but apparently the show's lost a million viewers since Holly left, says Matthew. Well, she was only there for one one episode, wasn't she? It was one one series of, of it. And uh, she was very good, but she's on everything. She's on everything. I mean, eventually they have to find somebody else. And uh, another one here, Desiree's in Sheffield. Thank you. And um, and we'll take more of yours in a moment. Oh, the Snowflake from uh, Somerset. How did she get through? I thought she was banned. Did we put a block on Snowflake from Somerset? I thought I thought that that's what we actually uh, did. She's got somebody called Ian, probably the next door neighbour, I should imagine. And they've got a 32nd wedding anniversary. The Queen's got 72nd wedding anniversary. 72nd wedding anniversary. I can't make things last a week. 72nd year. What's that? What do, you, what do you get for a wedding anniversary at 72nd? I can't remember. Will it be paper or glass or linen or something? It'll be something odd. 72 years married. I mean, that's some achievement, isn't it? That is really some achievement. You know, for those people listening, going, we're just starting married life. They did a thing the other day. It was on weddings. On the tele People who've got, like, oodles of money. And this, I think, was a Taiwanese family. And they brought in more than 300,000 flowers. Flowers you like you've never seen before, just just for the wedding. They were everywhere. Flowers. She wanted Lily of the Valley uh, made into a, a bouquet, uh, which is how it's pronounced. And uh, because uh, Kate Middleton had that for her wedding bouquet. And so this woman said, I, I want to the same. So they ferried it. It was something like 3,000 stems, <laughs> just in case they, they didn't look perfect. They didn't look perfect. Uh, Deborah says, you've got another new listener, my daughter in Dubai. Oh, dear, not a big fan of Dubai. A friend of mine's out there. She's been actually out there for ages and ages, ages and ages, and obviously loves it, I think. Uh, 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. That one you can, uh, you can delete. That's uh, that. That's definitely one for the. Uh, definitely one for the. Uh, what do they call it? What do they call it? The oh, the rubbish bin. Thank you. Uh, a few beers at Riverwood Legion Club in Sydney. Says Shane in Sydney. So yes, because it's always um, there in the middle of the afternoon. I think. Are you saddened? Vince Cable's retiring. Not really. Couldn't really care less. Couldn't really care less. I've seen him loads of times on the uh, on the train. But uh, never, he's been sort of going to get on the train as I've been getting off the train the other side. But now I've started using Richmond, so it's much easier. Uh, Noah says, don't think Black Friday represents the depressing excesses of com consumerism. No, 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 we love consumerism. Everybody loves consumerism. I mean, why would you not love consumerism? Heavens above, that's, what, that's why life is for living. Life is for living and shopping. So today... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't believe somebody doesn't like consumerism. I love stuff like that. I spend my life buying things and propping up the economy. What will I do? I know every day is a, a, a day for me where I go out and I think, what shall I buy today? I don't go out with the intention of buying something, but then I see something and think, oh, no, I'll buy that. You have to. How can you not buy things? So, you know, when everybody says to me, oh, would you have... People used to come knocking on my door. I mean, just generally they did. And, uh, and they'd say, well, Steve, have you got sort of a multi-speed drill with sort of, you know, Phillips screwdriver setting? Yes, of course I have. How stupid. 
Do you have a brush that is not electric but can pick up off all surfaces? Yes, of course I have. Do you have little um, uh, Afghan rugs in your bathroom? Yes, yes. I've got about six, including little prayer mats and everything, which I use just by the just by the loo. I don't know why. There must be some godly thing uh, about it. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've got all of that stuff. I've got everything. Steve, do you have a thing that chops vegetables and it's not electric? Yes, of course I have. Of course I have. Do you have, um, what else? What else do people ask me for? Oh, just usual. I mean, anything electrical, I've actually got. Of course, trouser press. Not only trouser press, a Singer flat iron press, which looks like something off Prisoner Cell Block H. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. Trouser press. I've had a Corby trouser press for the last 40 years. I've got an electronic fly swatter, which is shaped like a tennis racket. Yeah, of course I've got one of those. Of course I've got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing I haven't got. Chopsticks? Absolutely. Chopsticks, quite, quite normal. Yeah, I mean, you could ask me anything and I, I would have it. You know, do you have any DVDs? About a couple of thousand, I think. Do you have sparkly jackets? Of course I have. Of course I have. No, we don't do anything rude, do we? If, if somebody sort of asks you what you think I've got. I've got everything. There's nothing that I've not got. What have I got in the kitchen at the moment? I've got a thing for taking pain away, which is a machine which you strap onto yourself, which is very nice. I've got the miniature Hoover accessories, which so you can you can do a keyboard and everything else. We've not seen those. You know, your 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 keyboard on your computer. And it's got sort of little tiny hose, which fits on the end of your normal size hose. And then you can do the, the keypad. Oh, you've got everything like that. Battery operated lights, yes. Solar lights, yes. Electric lights, yes. Coloured light bulbs, yes. You know, I mean, everything. Everything. Mugs. You know, do I have sort of, you know, different mugs from all our radio stations? Of course I have. Of course I have. I took them home. Fast as they appeared in our cupboard, I whisked them away. <laughs> so I represent all of the global branding. I love it. I absolutely love it. I look on it. Do you know what I've never done? Never, ever done in my life. I've never made a phone call in the office. In any of the offices, in 40 years, I have never, ever used a company telephone to make a, to make a phone call. Never, ever. Because I don't know how to operate it. I know people say you just pick it up and dial, but it never seems to work for me. No, I have a mobile phone. And, uh, and that's how it works. I'm still waiting for the code to be sent through for the, um, which we're waiting for. for oh, wait, uh, I'm just going to do it now. I could do it now. Oh, well, I'm going to read it out on air, am I? Although I might do, just to add interest to it. Uh, Steve, I'm looking for a drill. Yep. And Dave O'Brien's book on Black Friday. Yep. I have Dave O'Brien's book. He signed it personally to me. The two are not related. What, Black Friday and the book? <laughs> Oh, the drill in the book. At, um, have you been in conversation with Matt Damon or Ryan Gosling? No. No. I think, oh, uh, producer wishes. You see, I mean, I'm never that bothered about things. I don't know. How many advent calendars would you consider to be the correct number to have? And have you bought a gin calendar, says Donatella? Yes. I have got a gin calendar. In fact, I bought two gin calendars. Two gin calendars. And I think Corey's got one of them. Did you have one? Or did Thomas have one? Yes, you had a gin calendar. He's, he's probably re-gifted it. You know what he's like. But, uh, and how many... I, I just forgot. How could you forget it? It's the most unusual present you'll ever be given. The baubles. What do you think it is in there? Coloured water? It's, it's blooming gin. That, the shampooing? Ooh, poo. And uh, how many advent calendars would you consider to be the correct number to have? Two. Two advent calendars, one to eat now, which one of the team has already started doing. And we've only eaten three windows, Steve. Lies. And uh, been six now, there you go, I told you. By the time we get, you know, to the end of the weekend, he'll have eaten the old lot. And then you have another calendar to start at the beginning of uh, December. You've eaten them both. You only had one calendar. Oh, thank goodness for that. Don't want to spoil you. I might bring in a tin of Quality Street. They're on special offer in Tesco's. Three pounds something as opposed to five, which is good, isn't it? I might might go for that, actually. Uh, Steve, I've got a million DVDs. Mum says, you have too many. Or oh, people tell me that, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't take any notice. 
Uh, Steve, you talk of buses, was on the R68 to Teddington yesterday, says Matt. There were a load of school kids swigging a bottle of vodka. Yes, I know. They, 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 they get people to go and buy it in the little corner shops. Uh, what have you got against Radio Shropshire? Everything. It exists. Okay? I think all BBC local radio should be closed down, except stations that have friends of mine on them, in which case they should stay there forever and a day, and they should be given lifelong membership of the BBC club. <laughs> BBC Radio Shropshire. We actually discovered that we have more people working on our show than they've got listening, which we thought was, was, was sort of fantastic, actually. It, it sort of amused us. And then we started singing the jingles. BBC Radio Shropshire. Doodle -doo -doo -doo. That's how they would be. Uh, also, have you got a dog grooming kit? Um... Well, if I had a dog, then I would have the dog grooming kit, but I don't have a dog. Got a hostess trolley? Yes. Of course. My mother had a hostess trolley. Of course I have it. Uh, <laughs> another one here, which says, which says, which says, uh, uh, five degrees in Loch Caron today, light drizzle. Loch Caron, doesn't that sound nice? It sounds quite nice. It's probably a dump. I always have to go by the producer, who's apparently of the Scottish Loch, Loch Caron. Lot Karen, it's, uh, it's, where is it? Um, oh, I can't find the blooming thing. It was on, there you go, look. Five, five degrees in Lot Karen, and, uh, have a great day. Two hours left on the night shift, says, uh, just Big Craig. Aye. <laughs> Lock Karen. So what are you arguing about with it? What's it got to do with... No, it's not Lock Karen, it's Lock Karen. That's what I've just said. Oh, you don't know that, do you? Oh, there you go. Useless, honestly. Absolutely useless. Uh, Steve. Uh, Steve, Steve, Steve. Uh, this one here. Oh, somebody else asked me about, are you saddened by Vince Cable retiring? Not particularly, not particularly. He seems to be, uh, he seems to be okay. Seems to be surviving. They all have money, don't they? They've all ended up saving all their money. Uh, Steve, I work as a taxi driver of the night time and I'm an undertaker in the daytime. I work on our local community radio on the Isle of Sheppey, and I tried to structure my show like yours. Obviously, it doesn't work, says Bobby, but I talk about you a lot. The, tr the trouble is, I tell you, here, here, is, here is the best advice you will ever be given. Here is the best advice you will ever be given about radio. Don't ever copy anybody else's. Always be yourself. Always be yourself. And <laughs> my friend Michael says, to be fair, he says, all BBC local radio should be closed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. I mean, I mean, you know, just just take the cash. He says, <laughs> just take the cash, take the money, and run, Michael. Uh, send me a picture of yourself. I haven't had a picture of you for ages and ages. Steve, I've got the trousers back on today, as the shorts gave me a rotten cold. Oh dear, honestly, that's not very good, is it? Don't want a cold. I haven't put shorts on for ages. I just sit around the house in pants. You know. Hoping somebody's going to ring the front doorbell, but you know, never, never happens like that, does it? Mormons or somebody like that, you know. Hello, <laughs> have you seen Book of Mormon? Oh, it's so funny. Hello, my name is Elder Price. <laughs> it's such a good show, such a good show. Go and see it. Uh, also, coming back on the television. How? Oh. That's the programme. Producer had never heard of it, so he never bothered writing down the name of the show. It was called How with Fred, Fred Dinage and people like that, and uh, and they go. Um, so and so, so and so, so and so. How how do radio microphones work? How? And that would be it. Would be an a, a program that explained things to you. It's good, isn't it? And that's so they're, they're thinking of bringing it back. Please God, it's not with Philip Schofield. Can't they find somebody else? Find somebody else. Don't want anybody from a reality show because they'll all end up being a little bit like sort of Scarlet Moffat, you know, the ever blossoming and ballooning. Uh, Steve, uh, sorry. And out of a job. No, she's got loads of things in, in the pipeline. Have you got a fidget spinner? I've got, uh, hello? Hello? I've got fidget spinners that spell out the name of playing cards. So, in other words, you, you give somebody a pack of cards, you go, da 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 pick out a card, don't look at it. It's a great trick. And uh, and then you get your, your, your spinner, spin it, and their card appears in lights. How cool is that? Okay. I've also got an aeroplane that when you... I've given it to my brother, actually. That when, when you turn it on... Uh, the propeller spins around at the front and it spells out Merry Christmas in lights. How cool is that? Why? Somebody says, have you got a goblin tease made? I had a goblin tease made. Now, and unfortunately, the, the producer, sorry, the assistant producer, and uh, I do that to make the other one a bit on his toes, and, uh, you know, if we sort of say he's my first producer, and then is my 
rising star producer. But anyway, yeah, rising star producer, yeah, yeah. As long as it keeps you on your toes, I don't mind. Anyway, the goblin teas made was a thing that the idea was that you would sleep throughout the night and then you'd be woken up in the morning by a flashing light on top of it and your tea would be ready and all you have to do is lean out of bed and pour it into the cup and you've got yourself a nice hot cup of tea. The unfortunate thing with goblin teas maids is, yes, it has the pot of water which it then heats up and pumps it. The action of it pumping it into the pot wakes you up. So consequently you wake to the sound of gurgling. You think you become incontinent. And there's all these sort of gurgling noises and water splashing about all over the place. It's quite disconcerting. And so I had to stop because I seriously thought I was going to the toilet in bed. I hadn't actually managed to get out of bed. It frightened the life out of me. So I thought, no, we shall do without the teas made. So instead I've got a hot water machine uh, in the kitchen, which you just push a button and it fills the cup up with, uh, with hot water, which is lovely. Uh, Trolley Dolly Wayne, is it Corey or Thomas on duty today? Both. Both. We have both of them on. Reporting for duty. They are here in their official uniforms. And, uh, Corey's the one with the... doesn't bother getting his hair cut. And, uh, Thomas is the one who does get his hair cut. But unfortunately, he's got a rash at the moment, which we don't talk about. Uh, mainly because... mainly because... They, my, Michael sent me a photo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, oh, well, that's my favourite photo. We all went, um... Oh, that was definitely my favourite photo, as Michael will, will testify. Where was that? Oh, it was outside the Barmy Arms, wasn't it? My God, that was a day. That was a day. That was lovely, wasn't it? Such a good photo as well. Such a good photo. Oh, well, we'll have to do it again, Michael. Have to do it again. Do you own a pair of hair straighteners? Now, that would be ridiculous. For somebody who doesn't have any hair, what would be the point of having... Actually, I've got to get my hair cut today. Might go and get a little trim, as they say. Lock Karen is in the Highlands. I've been to a tartan shop there. It's a pretty little place, says Pat. And I think the area is Wester Ross. Wester Ross? I don't know anything about it. He's, I don't even think he's Scottish. I think he just... Uh, look, Wester Ross. There you go. Wester Ross. I mean... Yeah. Are you Scottish? Do you, have, you, have you heard of any of these places? Have you heard of Edinburgh? Have, have, have you heard of Glasgow? Anything like that? Have you ever met Wee Jimmy? There must be loads of Wee Jimmys up there, mustn't there? And you've never heard of Westeros? He's, he's never heard of it. Yeah, well, that's, that's where she thinks that Loch Caron is. It's in the Highlands. It's in the, you know, the Highlands. Oh, you take the high road and I'll take the low road. I'll be in Scotland for ye, for me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond. I only know it was Lo Loch Lomond because we used to have the, uh, the placemats. <laughs> Which is good. And what, dear? What's the matter? Is that... Yeah, Carl, look at love. I don't know what he's on about now. He's wandered off. James says, I've got a large hand-carved and painted wooden moose ornament. Do you have one? I don't think anybody's got one apart from you. It sounds disgusting, doesn't it? Out of town with Jack Hargreaves, sat in a little shed showing you how to make a fly for fishing. Do remember that very well indeed. Do that very well indeed. Uh, Grizzly Adams in a diaper. Oh, I notice nobody's claimed the Euro Millions jackpot, says Stuart. Well, it's definitely not me. Definitely not me. <laughs> uh, another one here. Somebody says it's... We know this. We did mow it the other day, Anthony. Don't repeat yourself. Makes you sound stupid. It's mow it. Mow it, mow it, mow it. Because he has to keep repeating it because it's a bit simple. When we were young, Steve, calendars had no chocolate in them, just religious scenes. Yes. Yes, they, uh, they do. Now you get, uh, they're, they're, I didn't realise I brought in two of these calendars the other day. I had no idea. You, you were eating one, so you're not having this one. And uh, I brought two in because they've got chocolate behind each door. That's the incentive, isn't it? A little bit of chocolate. Fred Dynage is still on TV. He reads the Meridian News every night. It's the original Fred, says Bill, as opposed to what sort of look-alike. Look-alike and sound-alike, which sounds quite nice. Uh, also, 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 have you got a xylophone? Had a xylophone. I got one to, uh, to, to play with some years ago. And I've got an Etch-a-Sketch. Steve, uh, uh, another one here, uh, oh, that was sent to Darren Adam. I quite like the, the question, can anybody think of any other words that fit into the song, The Grand Old Duke of York? <laughs> you could have a field day, couldn't you? I've already thought of new words uh, straight the way in. Got the 0530 from Haven't to Waterloo three days this week, late every day. It crawled all the way in, and no apologies, Steve. 
says Peter at Haley Island. Ah, I know. I told you, one of the annoying things, for my train, you've got to go right to the, the front of the, of the platform, right up there. It takes about ten minutes to get there, by the time you've got the Sherpas and the dogs and the sledges and the elephants. And you get to the end of the platform, then the train arrives in late and they say, well, actually, it's not going to where we said it was going. Now it's going straight through to Ascot, or it's going straight through to Staines. And you think, well, why didn't you tell us that before? You must have blooming well known when the train pulled in, and then we could sort of actually, you know go and find another train. So useless. So useless. One of my earliest memories, Steve, says Kevin, was the parents' teas made going off in the morning. Sounded like a demented Dalek. Yeah. You got woken up by the water whizzing from one pot to the other. It was, it was quite ridiculous. Quite ridiculous. But, so, and I, and I so wanted one. Mind you, I wanted a pogo stick, and I never, I never got a pogo stick. I had a ball you sat on and bounced, you stuck it between your legs. You don't remember that one? That was like a big, a big ball you jumped up and down. A space hopper, that's it, space hopper. Couldn't remember what it was, actually. Oh, did they? They're quite dangerous, actually, when you think about it. I had a, did anybody ever have a truck? You know, one of those remote controlled trucks? But this was a big truck. This thing used to get up speed, like, you, so when you, you push the, the button on it to start it, it reared up at the front. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Steve, I can't wait for Nick Abbott and Carol McGiffin's podcast. Should be hilarious, you think? Why? Why would you think that? Why would you think? I mean, it might be dreadfully dull. Might might, might be one of those sort of podcasts. Oh, I couldn't listen to that again. But they have done them before, I think. Uh, I uh, bought one of those haircut combs. Yes, it was a comb with a blade in it, and you ran it through your hair. I think it was from somebody like Katel, I think. He said, I ended up looking like John Mills of Ryan's Daughter. <laughs> I just bought something to keep the inside of my car quiet. Fits right over her mouth. <laughs> Very funny, isn't it? Very sort of funny. Uh, right, 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 right. And uh, I, I like your conversation, says Wayne the Trolley Dolly with Corey or Thomas. He says, do you take them out to Joe Allen's for Christmas? No. No, absolutely not. No, we don't do anything like that. Listen, do not misconstrue. We work together. We don't socialise together. You know, it's, 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 it's much easier that way. And <laughs> my friend, uh, my friend Rich, you know, from over there, he says, stop talking about hoovers. You've only reminded me I've got to spend a decent wedge to replace mine this week. Mm. I've just bought a Henry. I've just bought another Henry. I've already got one Henry. I bought another one. And it's, um, it's uh, re rechargeable. So I don't have to plug it in. I just plug it in to recharge the battery. And I bought it on Amazon. There's all sorts of... I've also got an upright, which is a rechargeable. In fact, all of them are rechargeable. I've only got one, which is not rechargeable. It actually plugs into the mains. So good luck with that one. Goblin, somebody says. You wash your mouth out. Ridiculous. Uh, Steve, I can't remember the last time I bought a chocolate advent calendar, says Georgia. Oh. What was the lady's name on how? It was Bunty. Bunty. You must remember Bunty. She was on How. It was a great programme. I loved it. And also there was Gaz... Was it Gaz Top or Gaz Beadle or something like that? Gaz Top, I think it was, who was on there. I loved it. I loved it. It was a great programme. It was educational. Very educational. Steve, I watched the Bill, Columbo and Love Thy Neighbour on DVD last night. Really enjoyed it. Love Thy Neighbour has a, has a go at... Uh, uh, they go at each other. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, that's the whole idea. In fact, the funny thing is, even though people said it was terribly racist and all the rest of it, it was the couple next door, Nina Bade and Semple, wasn't it, who always got the upper hand. They always won in every sit power through the week. You have done your Christmas shopping, haven't you? Have you? Tell me you've done your Christmas shopping. Tell me you, you've started being advanced about it. I only, I only say that because in our business, we have to kind of plan Christmas earlier on in the year to make sure we've got enough programs to go out so what we're doing at the moment is we're commonly known in the business as stockpiling stockpiling so we're doing interviews for in conversation which we're saving exclusively for the festive season because we think they're that good and they also seem to fit into that category of good programs for the festive season so there will be a couple of thank you a couple of our really good repeats We've got, we've, we, we've sorted out a few which we think, I'm not going to tell you who they are, I'm saving it. But it's, it's a case of planning. So we've basically got Christmas all sorted. It's all sorted. We have the interviews, we have the, uh, the links which we'll be doing for them. And, you know, as the weeks go by, we sort of plod on and record all the links and it, it works quite well. So it's called planning. Planning. So the producer said to me this morning, 
he said um he said i'm glad you told me to sort of start stockpiling at the beginning of the year because that's the only way you can do it you can't just leave it till the last minute and i do feature quite a lot on lbc over the festive season you're going to be waking up uh, to me for breakfast i'm going to be covering for nick ferrari for about five days i think which uh, always adds a bit of interest a slightly different program as you can well imagine uh steve lock Caron is in wester ross it's on the north coast 500 scotland's answer to route 66 thank you very much indeed i don't know if you remember my mum had a hoover that was like a ball and glided on air so i used to sit on it while my smart whilst my mum was hoovering well i've never heard of that that sounds very peculiar uh another one here but it says uh, john mccrick in his underpants celebrity big brother that's the picture i get when you said you sit in your underpants indoors says ant keep up the the great show have you got a soda stream yes Pineapple ice bucket? No. No. I could probably get one, Gary, if I, if I wanted one. And uh, James says, my wooden moose is lovely. I'll buy you one for Christmas. Please don't. Please don't. I'm, I'm at the moment deciding on what wreath to put on the front door. I believe that wreaths are very important to put on the front door to signify that beyond this point, Christmas, it is a going well, which is good. Uh, another one says, I'm a huge fan of Nadia Sawala, and I've discovered she does a weekend vlog on YouTube with her family. She's so entertaining. Yes, she's been with us uh, a few times. Her father uh, listens to the program. I don't know if he still listens to the program, but uh, yes. Do you have a button ear? No, but I did. I did. Somebody thinks I'm starting a family of Henrys. I did think about that. I did, I did think about it. I don't know why. If I had a big house, a really big house, if I'd won the 105 million, which I didn't, uh, then I would have definitely vacuum cleaners on every floor, hidden in, in cupboards which I think could be quite a nice thing. Don't you think so? Yes, of course. That would be the thing to have. I love stuff like that. Uh, Steve, my Henry was the best. We got eaten away by the shark. Thank you. And uh, I'm still trying to work out what this uh, vacuum cleaner is that floats on air. Are you sure it was a vacuum cleaner? It could be anything, isn't it, really? <laughs> uh, right. The papers. Oh, dear. It's so bad for uh, for Andy. Yes, Randy Andy, now Prince Andy. He'll, he says he'll talk to the Epstein cops. Better remember his story. Better remember the story. Um, and it's in every paper. Uh, there's pages and pages and pages. Her Majesty forced to act. Charles stepped in over the scandal. Duty calls for the Queen. And uh, hunt for Epstein's helpers. Uh, plus... Uh, the uh, prince andrew and i think buckingham palace's uh, hierarchy as well also decided that the emily makeless interview would save his royal career unfortunately it's in fact killed it stone dead <laughs> the curse that is emily makeless you know asking she didn't ask all the right questions there were loads of questions she could have come up with perhaps she was perhaps she was intimidated you know and that's oh that's nice uh, and that's why that's why uh, also a Labour candidate is facing an investigation of whether she wrongly secured a council flat. This is somebody given, her name's uh, Apsana Begum, was given the Riverside property. Do you know a council flat's worth £330,000? Can't believe it, can you? She was given the property two months after moving out of her estranged husband's home. Questions are now being asked over how she jumped the, uh, the housing list of 18,000 people. That'll be one, won't it? They'll be explaining that one away later on today, I hope. And then there's a commuter who brushed his teeth at a tube station in Russia, then spat onto the platform. There's a picture of him. Uh, this girl, blood and transport worker Melissa Thermidor, was disgusted when she spotted the man on her journey into work. She'd been waiting for a Northern Line service from Euston when she saw him cleaning his teeth without water on the platform. She said, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. People sort of shifted, but nobody said anything. Uh, clearly spitting is unacceptable, says London's chief customer officer. Well, get him. He looks like a prune let's see his picture let's see his face and then somebody know i'll tell you who he is he'll be horrified to think he's in the papers today next thing is you lose your job pal if i was an employee you definitely wouldn't be coming back into work again adele roberts risks ruining roman kemp's career by accusing him of prejudice so says vicky patterson dj adele 40 and apparently has now come out as gay i had no idea i'm obviously the last person to know these things lashed out when roman questioned why her luxury item was a snap of jane mcdonald because Adele turns out to not to know anything about Jane McDonald, know any of the hits or anything at all. John Barrowman, who took part last year, said Adele may have been using Jane's popularity to land votes, even though she admitted knowing none of the songs. Poor old Roman. Poor old Roman. 
So, uh, but Martin Kemp uh, says, I've just voted for my boy to eat kangaroo watsits. That'll show him. <laughs> if that's your father, go blimey, what hope. But he's, uh, he's, he's talked, talked about all sorts of things, actually, including uh, George Michael. Plus, 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 ice to see you. Uh, this is over in Hyde Park. They've got a big ice sculpture tent. I think you have to pay to go into it, but they're worth seeing, these ice sculptors. They're really good. Big, big sight. Big sight. If you're coming to London, uh, we have a big funfair. The food is very expensive. I think somebody should curb the amount of money that people have to pay for food. But you can get toffee apples and candy floss and all sorts of delicious biscuits with your name iced on them and things like that. And a lot of toe curling rides. These are the biggest rides that tour. Over here, we've got little rides for our travelling fun fairs. The, uh, the uh, European rides are enormous. I mean, they are simply huge, but they're not cheap either. But I do love a good roller coaster. Always frightens the life out of me, especially when they sort of go around the top and you think, oh, God, we're going to crash. Oh, God, we're going to crash. <laughs> it's the kind of thing that keeps me going. Rod Little, talking about uh, the thing that's got me about the Prince Andrew stuff is that people were surprised. Surprised. First that the prince seemed a bit thick. No, really. What were you expecting? Penetrating shafts of wisdom. It's Prince Andrew. FFS. He has the IQ of a box of polyurethane all-weather garden ornaments from B&Q. 1599. And surprised. Second that until yesterday he wasn't repentant for having a friend of the horrible Jeffrey Epstein. Listen, it's Prince Andrew who spent his entire life mixing with appalling people. In between playing golf, Arab arms dealers, Russian gangsters, grizzled old tyrants... But credit to good old Emily Maitlis, she actually asked sensible questions and listened to each reply, but didn't follow it up when he said about the uh, the party. Whose party was it? Come on, tell us. People want to know. I was going to say, it, it, it can only get worse. I don't think it can actually get worse at all. And then, of course, barking mad, stupid Lady Colin Campbell. We should remember that he was... Uh, Epstein was not a paedophile. What? What, what do you call a 14-year-old? She was so stupid. Almost beggar's belief, actually. She thinks she's going to run her place as a wedding venture. Ooh, ghastly. Can't think of anything worse. Uh, Mylene Class popping her third child, three-month-old Apollo, into a sort of uh, a leopard print baby carrier. I wonder if she's advertising them. Do you think it's a free advert? That's what I think. Chris Evans... Surprise stars of the Sons Who Care wins by handing them out charity checks worth nearly £200,000. He was on with um, uh, Pip, and, Pip and Holly the other day and gave them money. So uh, he obviously loves doing it. He gets an awful lot, uh, an awful lot out of it, actually. And uh, well done to him. Well done to him. Roger Daltrey's having an operation to get his voice back in shape. He's seven, What is he? 75. People are definitely living longer, aren't they? Definitely. Much, much longer. Uh, also, uh, the... Echo Warrior. This is uh, a picture of uh, Greta Thunberg, a time traveller too, they reckon. They found somebody from 1898, looks exactly the same as her. That would be so funny if time travel was, was actually very popular. Uh, Steve, the floating vacuum, says Matt, was the Hoover Constellation. Never even heard of it. Never even heard of it. Well, and uh, I've got a Henrietta, which is quite cute. Yes, so they, there's a whole, there's a whole, um, whole raft of Henrys, isn't there, really? But uh, some idiot's bound to jump on the bandwagon and scream sexist with the Henrietta. I think you're probably right. And uh, Steve, now Andy's retired from public service. Is he entitled? No. He doesn't get the money anymore. He loses that. But the Queen will give him money. I mean, to be honest with you, he's running a multi-millionaire lifestyle on, uh, on beer money. I don't know how he's managing it. It's probably because he's after freebies all the time. You know what he's like. But he does lose the money. He loses 260000 a year, whatever it has to be. But, uh, as I say... And, then, and do you remember, only a short while ago, he was trying to get his ghastly daughters. It is like Cinderella all over again, isn't it, really? That, uh, to get them put on the, on the payroll to make them sort of members of the royal family. I don't think so. Thank you very much indeed. The best thing that family could do would be to disappear. Go, go abroad. Go and stay abroad. Don't come back. Go and live in Verbier. Go there. Stay in Verbier. Ridiculous. Uh, around 30 troops suffered food poisoning after eating a pork dinner at the Barrack uh, Cookhouse. This is at Bovington Camp. Somebody said it was pretty grim. Oh, I bet. I bet. Oh, I can't think of anything worse. And the dad of two, remember he died. Uh, he was uh, dangling upside down at the top of a 250-foot chimney. And it's because of brain pressure. Dreadful. Plus, a female O2 worker accidentally left a stunned dad a voicemail declaring, My eyes will light up. 60, 
whatever. She was talking about her weekend plans to a call centre pal after trying to contact Anthony Hughes, but the mobile network employee failed to hang up and made her X-rated boast. Oh, dear. It's not very good, is it? Somebody overhearing your uh, your conversation. It's like, you know, if you, you say to somebody, if I looked through your, your telephone, would I find anything that would be, let's call it embarrassing? Amazing how many people get when you're not. Here's poor old Victoria Becker making a signature move whilst filming Jimmy Kimmel Live, the fashion Easter. This is the most ghastly old lady outfit you've ever seen in your entire life, with a bag that only matches the shoes. I mean, since when do people go out with matching bags and shoes? The dress is a complete disaster. It's uh, printed... Uh, with sort of autographs over it or something, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's an old lady dress. She's out of touch with everything. Not a blooming clue. Chain of bra shops. Oh, no, I have to tell you this one in a minute, because it's five. Nice to have your company. Thursday, 21st of November in the 60s and early 70s, Steve. Uh, when I was a young boy, every Christmas, my father used to get the Ronco Buttoneer 2. When she passed away, my wife and I found 12 of them in boxes, never opened. You should hang on to things like that. Buttoneers are probably worth money. There were all those, that, that Ronco and Ktel and stuff like that that came out. I thought it was great. I still love it, actually. Nikki wants to know if Fergie will stick around with Andy now the money isn't rolling in. It's amazing, actually, how quiet she's gone. If only she'd stay like that. If only, but, uh, you know, she does tend to open her mouth at all the wrong moments. Of course, she'll be probably bigging him up again the next time somebody asks her. I think the whole family should disappear. Not the whole royal family, I just think Andrew, the two daughters, well, one of them's married anyway, so she can stay well out of things, but uh, very embarrassing for them. Quite clearly, as we pointed out on the programme yesterday, he didn't have the slightest thought in his tiny pea brain of a mind to think about his children. He's brought embarrassment and shame on the children. What are they going to do? They're going to hold their heads up high with somebody going, your father's a bit odd, isn't he? That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Uh, 84850, oh, stevenlbc.co.uk, and, uh, it says, nice to hear the LBC election advert, you're not featured on it, what would your tagline be? Go and vote. <laughs> that would be my only tagline, go and vote. Somebody said you're still driving the Cinquecento. Oh, not for a, not for a week and a half. Not for a week and a half now, we don't, we don't go back in that again. Even though, what was I thinking about the other day, I've got to have something done, and I can't remember what it was. It was nothing that was important, nothing that sort of worries at all. Uh, Steve, Jeffrey Epstein's Wikipedia is a revelation. Well, I mean, it, I should imagine now it's probably been faked so many times, so many times. Uh, and, uh, a lot of people asking about his, uh, his money, Andy's money. Does he, does he get the money? No, he doesn't get that. He doesn't get that. That, uh, that has ceased immediately. But he's supposed to have a fortune of 56 million. How he's got that, I've got no idea. Seriously, I mean, that can only be through hanging about with the wrong people. He doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything at all. A chain of bra shops. You'll like this one. Not a lot. A chain of bra shops now allow people who identify as transgender to try on undies in the changing rooms. It follows other clothes stores which no longer have single-sex facilities. Lingerie retailer Bravissimo says, When people who identified as transgender or non-binary come into our stores for a bra fitting, we welcome these customers into our fitting rooms. Non-binary describes those who feel our, their identity is neither male nor female. I mean, you don't kind of think there'll be some people pretending so they can actually get to change in a room where there are people taking their clothes on and off. I don't like the idea of people trying on underwear anyway. I don't mind a bra, but certainly you know, nothing else. Uh, another one here. Nine out of ten complaints of sex-related incidents in changing rooms at public swimming pools and sports centres are connected to gender-neutral facilities. I mean, as, as they've said here, any man who says he's a woman can enter any change room previously reserved for women. Has anyone asked teenage girls or their mothers who's going off to Topshop on a Saturday whether they want to share their changing rooms with full-bodied men or older women or Muslim women or any women at all? Store bosses are pointed out they have individual cubicles. Oh, OK. Well, it makes it slightly better, but not, uh, not much better. I've got a photograph here. You can't see it, but it's a photograph of Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid, taken when he was 17, from 1877. And uh, he posed for the portrait uh, with these people. They're all playing cards. He was 17. I can't remember how Billy the Kid ended his life. Was he shot dead? Most of these people were. Billy the Kid. But anyway, the print is going up for sale in Texas. Only one of two could fetch nearly a million pounds. I mean, what you'd want to do with a picture of Billy the Kid. Find out how Billy the Kid died. It, was, it sounds like a, a shootout at, at something. Or perhaps he was hanged, I don't know. I can't remember what happened in those days. I just know he was famous. 
Billy the Kid was famous. He was called Billy the Kid because he was young and he looked young. He was baby-faced. And they kind of like people like that. So here we go. So, oh, no, that's not Billy the Kid, is it? That's not Billy. No, it's not. Oh, that's the sheriff. Oh, right. Go, go down. Go down. No, other way, other way, other way, other way, other way, other way. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Right, Billy the Kid. So here he is. So, then he, he died when he was 21, which is actually quite young, isn't it? Quite young. He robbed a Chinese laundry, tried to stay with his stepfather, blah, 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 blah. And uh, he was tried and convicted. Oh, he was sentenced to hang, but... He escaped from jail, killing two sheriff's deputies and evading capture for more than two months. And it was Garrett, wasn't it, who then shot and killed Bonnie in Fort Sumner, July the 14th, 1881. And it's amazing, actually, legends that he survived that night grew and a number of men claimed to be him because they didn't have television or anything like that. Occupation, castle, cattle rustler, cowboy and ranch hand, but dead at the age of uh, 21. He was, he was five foot seven at the age of 17. He was just basically another chav plank, wasn't he? Bit of a thicko, you know, going out there. And uh, he apparently, uh, he was born Henry McCarty, also known as William H. Bonney. He killed eight men and uh, before he was shot and killed at the age of 21. My godfathers, honestly. Must have been very lawless, wasn't it? We all sort of romanticise about things like that and go, oh, Billy the Kid, and you think, no, he was just a cold-blooded murderer. You know, and he was uh, strung up. Well, he wasn't. He ended up being shot dead, which was probably a lot easier for him. Uh, didn't a friend of Billy shoot him in the back? I don't think it was a friend of his. I don't think so. It was, it was Pat Garrett, wasn't it, who actually killed him. Pat Garrett. I don't know enough about Pat Garrett to in engage you in conversation. See if Randy Andy's run. No, he's not Randy anymore. Oh no, no, no! I should imagine there'd be nothing going on in that department. I mean, where where can he go? Where can he go? I mean, the only one he's got sort of uh, supporting him is ghastly uh, Fergie, you know, and she's gone very quiet. I should imagine somebody said, "Listen, he's stepping back from all his royal duties. Say nothing, because you bet your bottom dollar she'll be another one of these apologists." Which, she won't better keep it shut for long. She doesn't learn. She, she hasn't learned anything. The older she gets, the more stupid she becomes. Uh, also, if he's running low on money, Steve, he could get a job with Pizza Express. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that's even funny in this day and age. Imagine being said, I mean, I don't know what he's going to do. Nothing. Perhaps he can try gardening, talking to trees or something like that. Or just go on permanent holiday in Verbier and stay there, which would be a good idea. We don't need him here. Sales of posh, savoury... Pastries have soared to a £1.3 billion a year. Apparently you are more than happy to fork out for Cornish pasties. Oh, wait till your mouth salivates. Uh, Cornish pasties, sausage rolls, slices, quiches and flans. Oh, how lovely. Could eat it. I could eat any of that now. A Cornish pasty. <gasps> oh, dear. A quiche, a flan, anything like that. See, my wife, wife and I went to the opening day of the Ideal Home Show yesterday, says Simon. It was brilliant to see snow everywhere, underfoot, beautiful trees and traditional live music. Lots to buy. Much recommended. Yes, that sounds like Essex boy and, and wife or girlfriend's day out, doesn't it, really? Uh, Steve, in Canary Wharf, next to the gym, they have a male-female toilet. Yes. Well, that, well, they've had those on the continent for ages. Because you're going into a cubicle, they don't have urinals there or urinals, they, uh, they have just cubicles. So it could be a woman in the next door cubicle to you or, or not. I've got no idea. I have been in quite a few, as you can well imagine, having worked in Vienna for quite, uh, quite some time. Quite normal over there. Quite normal. Uh, here we go, still loads of adverts. I don't know. I've got loads of Christmas lights, but if, if I go up to Squires today, there's a chance I might want to buy some new Christmas lights. I don't know why I've got this obsession with buying lights. I've got loads of the blooming things, but uh, still like them. Still like them. Uh, so the big problem uh, with Andrew, he's mummy's boy. Also, mates. Does he have any mates? Somebody says he's totally incompetent when it came to his social life. Surrounds himself with dodgy people. Yeah, he surrounds himself with dodgy people. <laughs> that kind of sums it up, really. Uh, you know, the buffoon highness, mummy's boy. He believes, he said he's a classic spoilt younger son. For years, the Queen, who said to view him as her favourite, has ignored his foibles and indulged in every whim, breeding in a stubborn streak. He thinks in... I said to you the other day, he's so arrogant, he'd be thinking, I'll do this, and then it will, it will just go away and I'll carry on with my life. Unfortunately not. 
I mean, you know, certainly not in my lifetime. I've never heard of anything like this where somebody actually steps back from any royal engagements and private engagements. I've never heard of it before. Seriously, never. I never thought it would probably happen. It, it certainly didn't come into the equation, did it, when we were all talking about it the other day. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, w will anything happen here? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I quite fancy getting one of these Fit Watches, or whatever they're called, Fitbits or something. I quite fancy that idea. Or an aviator jacket. I've got, to go. I've got a coat, and, I've, and I've, I was going to swap it today and wear, wear a different coat coming in. But I didn't get around to doing it on time, so tomorrow I'm going to be wearing my thick coat. They had one in Marks and Spencer's the other day, which seems to be my sort of sensible shop, which is good. Uh, Steve, if you could uninvent something so it never existed, what would it be, says Greg? Prince Andrew. I think we'd like to uninvent him so he never ever existed. <laughs> Steve, any any news from Eamon and Ruth? No, no, no. He's uh, he's still looking forward to Christmas. Well, he's looking forward to the eating side of it, I suppose. And <laughs> so that's why the, 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 there's never any sort of... Uh, uh, the outlaw who was shot in the back was Jesse James. He was hanging up a picture in his house when Robert Ford shot him. Well, um, Billy the Kid was shot. That's all I can tell you. He was shot by Pat Garrett. That's all we know. Whether he shot him in the front or the back. I mean, he managed to evade justice for two months. He was due to hang. And that can't have been much fun, can it? Well, they go... I mean, it's almost like Prince Andrew. As I say, he must be sitting at home now, going through everything in his mind. What else can resurface? That's what he's going to be thinking. His first thing is, you know, up until now, he could have done anything and has done everything, and nobody said a word against him. Nobody said anything. They're all family. They all, you know, forge ranks. I don't think this time nobody, nobody wants to uh, to be seen with him, to hang around with him. Companies are dropping him like hot potatoes. Really. Uh, Karen says if he's proved guilty, well, he's he's not on charge for anything. He's not been charged with anything at all. There is no investigation into him. There is no charging of him. He's not due in court any time soon. He's said that he he will talk two people about this there's there's ru rumors that he might want to do another interview but the girl who is at the uh, center of this she's already if you were to run for prime minister what would the name of your party be the decent party the decent party you know it would be you know we're not messing around i'm sorry we'd be sorting out the unemployment benefit like there's no tomorrow yes oh yes 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 we don't want anybody sort of i'm sorry you're you're unemployed what, what why are you unemployed well, i can't do any you know we'll, we'll find you something don't worry we're going to get you off benefits you know none of this i'm sorry sorry but you know we get more money on benefits no no that's out the window straight away we're, we're going to have people back working again because otherwise you get into a culture of just sitting on your fat bum and doing nothing and uh, I think people should should contribute to society. Why should everybody else have to have to pay for you? If you if there's a genuine reason, well then I can understand it. But there's a lot of people fiddling, as we all know. See them in the courts every so often. Uh, Steve, 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 uh, Amber, big fans. And can you? He's withdrawn Steve from public duties for the foreseeable future. Basically says, I know too much and I can't handle the pressure. Says Colin. Well, I mean, when they say for the foreseeable future, they mean forever. That's what they mean. In other words, looking far into the distance, he's withdrawing from this. Not that he ever contributed very much to it. He just dressed up in a few sort of little outfits and um, and then sort of went round playing golf. That was his big thing. He, he played golf in between staying at Epstein's place in New York, even though sometimes he couldn't recall whether he'd stayed there or not. And uh, maybe they, they could live on the royalties from those children's books that Fergie claimed to have written, says Jan, some years ago. Yes, Budgie the helicopter, wasn't it? Didn't it bear a striking resemblance to something else about a helicopter? But uh, that's the trouble with Sarah Ferguson. She's always been somebody who sort of plagues on other rich people. I told you, a friend of mine went out to a very rich place in Thailand. It was a retreat. And so she booked in for a, a massage the following day. And, and then Sarah Ferguson arrived because she knew the owner of this spa treatment place, which was very exclusive, and basically sort of said, uh, I'll be taking that, uh, that sort of thing. Now, you'll be doing me tomorrow for the massage and all the rest of it. So a friend of mine got bumped backwards. But she was thrilled. Not, not definitely. So, I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen to him now. I mean, I would think the best thing to do is go and live in Verbier and just keep yourself out of the newspapers. That's the only thing. And if the police come a-calling, you just go and help them as best you can. That's it. You can't ask for anything else. But it, it couldn't have gone any longer. The papers were asking too many questions. Uh, questions are being asked in the House. They're, they're just asking questions. 
Nobody's charged him with anything. It just is very peculiar. And uh, he didn't seem, when he did his interview with Emily Maitlis, lovely though I'm sure it was, it's a case of he didn't mention how sorry he was for all the victims. In his resignation letter the other day, resigning from the royal family kind of thing, not that he'll, you'll notice any difference in his lifestyle. He'll still be sort of poncing around the world in private jets, I should imagine. Not going to be taking buses, is he, any time soon. But he didn't seem to offer any any sort of comfort to the people who've been abused by Jeffrey Epstein. In the thing, it did. You know, I apologise to those people, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Monica says, you just reinvented Conservative Party, the normal Conservatives, not the Brexit-focused idiots of today. You got my vote, says Monica. Do you know, I reckon if I stood for, for MP, I could probably get in. I would think, you know, on my warmth, cuddliness, my honesty. I think so. I think you could get in. Yeah, but if, if not that, Mayor of London. Uh, I mean, definitely, I, I, I could do Mayor of London. We'd have sort of, you know, it'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? I think. And if I was running a political party, free bicycles for everybody. OK, free bicycles for everybody. And if you try and sell it on eBay, we take your benefits away. OK, that'll be a fairly good one. Uh, also, we won't have any climate protesters stopping you going to work. We'll have buses that run on time, trains that run on time, and we'll all be nice to each other. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? You know, if we all came and went, hello, how are you today? Oh, it's going to drive you mad, isn't it? Can you imagine all the, all the uh, hearing Eamon Holmes going, hello, nice to see you, he goes. I'm thinking... I look around the sitting room at that moment. I always think, don't tell me he's hidden behind the settee. Because <laughs> it would have to be the settee. But, uh, no, it's, it's all these sort of people. We're not, no, no, we're not nice enough, unfortunately. We're not nice enough to other people, whereas I'm always nice to people. Because I always think, you meet him on the way up, you'll meet even more on the way down. You imagine if they all of a sudden start saying, that's Steve Allen, he's a right meanie. He's a right, he didn't buy his team anything for Christmas. A bit like working on The O'Brien Show. It's a, it's a case of, you know, you sort of work on these different people's shows. You'll say, well, you know, what, what do they actually get you at Christmas time? Nick Ferrari takes all his lot out for what can only be described as a gigantic, woo, booze up. Which is uh, quite... I mean, some of them the next day, they look quite quite sickly. But I don't believe in doing that because I've got two of the healthiest people uh, working not on this show, but on, on my other show, two of the healthiest people working on it. Uh, one is a vegan who's on a diet permanently, and, uh, and the other one's Matt Sadlin's producer, who's also my producer for one day of the week. They're, they're my... What's the matter now? Honestly. They're my favourite people. They're sort of... It, they're healthy. They're very healthy. Nick is healthy. Well, I mean, Nick is not healthy when he works with me because he, eats, he consumes two bags of donuts. He has eaten eight donuts in, in one sitting on the programme. I mean, it's almost like you sort of eating the chocolates out of the advent calendar, you know, that sort of, that sort of level. You've only had 12 chocolates now. Yeah, you've had six, I know. Were they all different flavoured chocolates? Were they lovely? Or those sort of different sorts of things? You couldn't tell. Just shove them all in your mouth. I know, it's marvellous, isn't it? Of course, I'm enjoying watching the weight pile on, because I've noticed you're getting further and further away from the driving of the desk. You know, you're practically up against the wall, aren't you, really? Because that's how big his stomach has gone. <laughs> Steve, could you do your imitation of the Queen and say, Andrew, you're grounded? No. No. I don't think it works, actually. I want to have a little, have a little practice. Andrew, you're grounded. No, it doesn't work, does it? It's not going... I mean, she, I don't think she'd say that. She'd just say, you're a right little pain in the rear, aren't you? You've made it. Your, your, your father's furious. Furious. Edward? No mention of Edward. Have you noticed that? There's no... You'd think Edward would say something, or the whole family. Could we send them an email and go, did you have any idea of how you're feeling about good old Andrew, everybody's favourite non-person? Uh, Steve, you talk of unisex toilets and cubicles. There's a massive one at Fabric Nightclub in uh, Charterhouse Street. Fabric. Wasn't well, the place that was closed down for a while, Fabric? Look at this. I know every... There's nothing I don't know. It's phenomenal. You always get, I used to have a producer years ago. I won't mention his name. It embarrasses him because he still listens. And uh, and he used to, I'd, I'd say something. He'd say, are you sure? And he'd go onto the internet and he'd come and go, oh, yeah, it is right. I said, I'm never wrong. Never wrong. Seriously. I know it's embarrassing, but there you go. Uh, plus, uh, somebody talking about Jeremy Corbyn, a YouGov poll, said that Jeremy Corbyn came across as more trustworthy and in touch in the TV debate, which is wonderful. Uh, Brian says, I wonder how Majesty magazine will cover this episode. Do they do proper journalism? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I know how they're going to cover it. I can tell you now. They're going to have to say that he's stepped down from his royal duties. And, you know, the reason is patently obvious to anybody. But uh, they had to do that in case it damaged the royal family even further. 
Nobody wants the royal family to be embarrassed. We don't want the Queen. She's, she's reached the age of 90 plus. And I don't think that really at that age she should be troubled with stuff like this from, you know, from various members of her family, extended and otherwise, who insist on bringing the royal family into shame. You know, I would, I would have, and he's, you know, he spent 7.6 million pounds doing up his house, Andrew. 7.6 million. Where does he get this money from? Where is it from? Either way, bad news. Bad news. Steve, I say the letter was written by a sensible adult in Her Majesty's household, not Andy. I'm inclined to agree with you. I'm inclined to agree that somebody else wrote it for him and then it was given to him for approval and then they issued it and then he packed his bags and sold it off down the river. <laughs> Steve Allen, the best thing since bread was sliced. I know, what a brilliant idea, isn't it? Slicing bread. Who ever thought? What did you do with it up until then? Just ate the whole loaf in your mouth, shoved it all in. Big hunks of bread. Warm. I like warm bread. It's nice. When I used to go and buy it years ago for my, my mummy and daddy, I'd go and get a, a baguette. We didn't know it was a, we called it a French stick. I don't know why. We never, nowadays they go, oh, do you have a small baguette? And you go, no, but we've got artisan bread. And you go, that's very nice indeed, but I want a French stick. Do you have a French stick? Well, we have a, we have a baguette. No, that's a French stick, isn't it? And then as you were going home, you'd take little bits off it to eat on the way back. So when you got back, your mother got a bag full of crumbs. <laughs> you used to love it. Would love to have been a fly on the wall when Andy told the Queen on Sunday that he thought the interview went fantastically well. <laughs> You're probably right, actually. Uh, Steve, if you were Mayor of London, yeah, but which Mayor of London? We have two Mayors of London. We have Mayor of the City of London, who tends to be a businessman, who's very rich, and then we have the other mayor, who looks after the rest of it and obviously loves the attention. So, it depends which mayor. We would have the most Christmas lights in every street, says Mark. You would, actually. Every, ev everywhere there would be lights. Mind you, you drive around London at the moment. This would be a good time to drive around London while the traffic builds up. And you see how many great lights we've got. There's loads of great lights. Savile Row's got some lovely lights. All the way down to Piccadilly, there's lovely lights. Oh, there's lovely lights. Really nice lights. I'm a little bit worried about the fact that Twickenham appears not to be having a Christmas tree this year. Obviously the council have wasted, sorry, spent the money on other things. Like what? I can't imagine. I don't like people saying to me, Steve, how are you? It's so insincere. If I wanted somebody to assess my well-being, I'd be in the doctors. Well, I always say that. My, one of our uh, former presenters, Mike Dickin, who's not with us anymore, uh, people say, how are you? And he'd go, my health is not in question. And I, I don't think it's insincere to, you know, somebody saying to you, how are you? I think that's just our way of going, are you all right? I say it to the producer on a daily basis. Say, how are you? How are you? You know, are you well? How are you, you little tinker? How are you? You know, how are you? Tickling under his chin, you know. He then rolls over and we start playing that game again. But uh, you always ask people, don't you, how they are. It's just, I mean, you're right. We don't, it, it doesn't really mean anything, but... But it's, it's a, a simple matter of just being polite. <laughs> uh, 84850cvlbc.co.uk. We read everything out on this programme. We're not one of these programmes which starts sort of deciding, do we, you know, read this out or do we not read this out? And so uh, always, 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 we, we, we just run with, with everything, you know. Uh, so, uh, Will's agreeing with me that definitely take away the unemployment benefit from the bone idle in this country. That's, that brilliant. Brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you agree with me on that one. i everybody else agrees with me as well. I'm not paying benefits to somebody who's perfectly capable of working. Definitely not. You'd have to be an idiot, wouldn't you? You couldn't balance the books at all. Dermot O'Dreary gets booked for gigs by people who actually want Dermot Murnahan. Oh, boy, they must be disappointed. And theatre bosses have had to put signs up in the foyer of a theatre because they have to warn everybody. Why do they have to warn people? There are scenes featuring smoking. Smoking. I mean, that's how bad it is. They've had to put a... I mean, that's like saying, you know, come into our theatre, everything's going really well, there is smoking and the ceiling might fall down. That's what you have to sort of watch nowadays. But no, smoke, they have to warn people about smoking in case somebody sort of moans about it and goes, oh, you know, it's, you know, why do you... Why do you end up with these things? Why do you end up with these things? And uh, and you get, well, that's just the way it is, actually. That is just the way it is. But uh, love it, love it, love it. It's fantastic. Daily Star this morning. We'll come round to in a moment. Attack of the Clones. And the Scrooge ban on, wait for it, 
Christmas crackers? Good Lord. 14 minutes to six. A check on the road and rail this morning. The LBC, LBC Travel. Please don't break Caitlin uh, over in the jungle. Caitlin is 70. We've all agreed that, you know, fantastic body, but a very fit bloke. Very fit bloke. And so obviously hasn't lost that, that fitness and has kept at it. 70 years old. The body looked amazing. But in fact, Caitlin Jenner's lover, called Sophia, who's 23. I mean, that's a huge age difference. 50 plus years nearly was so le less a little bit less of that 48 years difference is another uh trans as well it's an odd relationship i don't know how it works but there you go uh plus scrooges want to ban the selling of christmas racker crackers to cut plastic rubbish waste management chiefs say the festive uh favorites along with wrapping paper napkins and tablecloths are wrecking the environment now bosses at business waste want people to make their own using loo rolls and tissue paper what's the difference it's exactly the same as the ones you're buying it's just that the 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 bought ones look so much better but uh, we do fill up sacks of rubbish at christmas we do i think last year we did about four sacks full of rubbish you just you throw all the rubbish if, if you sit there surrounded by paper you can't find the presents anymore so what you have to do is uh, you throw it all into bin liners and then put them outside for the for the dustman but because it's all paper it all pushes down it's all recyclable i think most of it is recyclable 40 million crackers are bought every year they're chucked away within minutes yeah go oh dear the snowflakes they're all out there aren't they oh snowflakes how awful. Poor old Will, who wrote a moment ago, actually, luckily, he was endorsing what I was saying about unemployment. He's only got 11 followers, poor soul. I feel a bit sorry for him, really. Don't really have any friends. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? So, Sooty and Sweep sold for a glovely £5,000. Uh, they were given by their creator, Harry Corbett, to two young fans. Because you could go and buy Sooty. I think he bought him on Blackpool Pier or something. But uh, Charles Hansen... Uh, the auctioneer said we were honoured to sell these wonderful objects relating to a puppet which has stolen our hearts. But, of course, there were quite a number of sooties. There is one in the magic circle. There were no oh, my God, Fuzz, what is she wearing? Poor Molly May Haig wearing a bikini that looks utterly ridiculous. I mean, the hair badly bleached, a bikini that is just so trash. Very, very embarrassing. But she's re revealed her love for Tommy Fury, who she fell for. Isn't that nice? That'll end in tears, probably in about a week's time, I should imagine. Bargain hunters will blow 8.57 billion over Black Friday weekend. On what? Brits will spend more than Italy, Spain, Belgium and Holland combined. No, they won't. No, they won't. It'll be the usual people fighting over some naff television somewhere. Very boring. Uh, Steve, uh, if I was Prime Minister, I'd change the name of credit cards to debt cards says john driving to newcastle yes i mean i love the way that see the trouble is the the way to manage credit cards and this comes from the top this comes from the top is to pay them off at the end of each month so you get the month credit but if you if you pay the minimum you're paying nothing and the 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 ratings the, the rates for them are phenomenal i think barclay card were doing something like 36 percent of my book what the rate of inflation isn't even that it's a it's a dreadfully bad way of actually sort of managing your money unless you pay it all off at the end of each month so every month i pay my credit card off if i've used it which of course i have used it because i use it for the uh, for the car coming in and a few other little bits and pieces i get the card done then i i pay for it on the credit card but at the end of each month pay it all off so simple as that you can't do it any other way if you're doing it any other way you you're, you're really in a bad way uh, another one here, uh, listening with great interest about your advent calendars. I've got one arriving soon that's artisan beer related. Oh my lord. I receive a box of beers every month and last night I had a bottle that tasted sublime. It was a chocolate vanilla stout. Shame I only had one bottle. Nearing Bath, on my weekly jaunt, says Bigger Frank. It sounds lovely, doesn't it? Chocolate vanilla stout. I have to be honest, but I can't, I can't drink anything like that. Don't know why. Perhaps it just, it all tastes revolting to me. Beer um you know even cider i don't like they just go it's only pressed apples i go oh not really is it it's got other things in it so i never fancied that beer mild you know bottle of lager all these foreign beers and stuff like it just doesn't interest me they just don't taste nice they really don't they really don't and uh, steve uh, if when i ask how are you and the reply comes back quite weak then i continue and find that they have a problem they need to talk about says marilyn oh god i'd avoid everybody like that you imagine you go to something how are you and they go i'm not been well and you go oh god stay well away from me please i'm only going for positive people positive people who work for a living you know this this idea of, oh i've not been well oh it started on oh, that's awful stomach ache and then oh shut up 
shut up it's turned out they've eaten prawns or something something bizarre but no never ask anybody how they are because once they start going into medical history you might as well go and stand in the chemist and have a much better conversation with the staff who at least know what they're talking about uh steve uh, you've given me great pleasure well there you go perhaps that'll be a court case i don't know whether we're allowed to do that but it's part of the service you know you can listen to the program and you can enjoy it. oh look faddy little faddy george michael's former lover well one of many but uh, keeping the cold at bay with a scarf, but not really wrapped round his neck. If you're going to... Oh, that's a lovely dog. Um, you, you have to put a scarf round your neck. The idea is to protect your neck. You don't just drape it over your shoulders. It looks a bit gay and camp. Oh, sorry, that's George Michael's fatty again, isn't it? But uh, he went for a stroll near the travel lodge he calls home in London. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. This is a rare condition of a dog uh, called Ranger. He's a German shepherd. He won't grow any bigger so it's it's just a rare condition it means that he stays the se he's so cute he's so cute i mean i think any dog that comes in puppy size is cute and this one's lovely the owner is shelby of phoenix arizona says he still loves playing with his sisters he's only tiny he's only tiny bless him i'd take him in like a flash definitely that could be really cute couldn't it something about small dogs they're not, they're not very threatening, and we used to have Alsatians. Well, my father used to have Alsatians years ago, and uh, I think they're lovely. But a, a, an Alsatian puppy. Oh, please. Please, please, please don't buy me one. <laughs> There's somebody listening going, oh, we've got some dogs here for you, Steve. You'd like this. Uh, Steve, uh, oh, somebody talking about um, uh, James O'Brien got three mad calls in a row. Sometimes he gets four, they just don't put the last one through. Uh, you put them through. Was it your bag? Like, oh dear. Did he get three three funny ones? Complete mad royalists. You mustn't pick on the royal family. There are royal... Oh, was it one of those type things? It's his royal highness. No, it's Randy Andy. You know, we know what he is. We know what he is. There's nothing royal about him at all. His behaviour is certainly not royal. I mean, his behaviour is disgraceful. So you get three royalists. That's unusual. I didn't think we had royalists anymore. Especially not where it was concerned with a man who hangs around with a convicted paedophile. I mean, really, I'm sorry. We don't, we don't forgive that at all. We don't. You briefly mentioned an ice axe on display. Uh, it's currently a polar exhibition at Spink. On display, you'll see a polar expedition medal from the early 1800s to the current day, along with other polar expedition items, including the ice axe left behind by Captain Oates as he left the tent. Each item, that was the, I'm going outside, I may be some time. He was ill, and he didn't want to hold everybody up. And so he went outside and uh, died in the freezing cold temperatures. He had, he had all sorts of problems, gangrene and everything else. But uh, each item on display has a short storyboard with it. The exhibition closes on the 24th of November, raising funds for the Endeavour Fund, set up in the memory of Henry Worsley, says Simon in Sutton. Are you something to do with it? You seem to, seem to be quite an expert on this thing at Spink. I quite like the idea. I mean, things like that, you know, have a, have a poignancy, don't they? They do have a poignancy. So uh, are you involved with it? Uh, Steve, thank you for literally making me laugh, says uh, Cheryl and Milton Keynes whilst on my commute. I hear you loud and clear above the mood hoovers who can't work. Yes, there's loads of them, aren't there? I get really annoyed by people sitting by cash points. Okay. They all seem to develop plaintive voices or something, like they've wandered in from Love Island, you know, and they can barely string two words together. It's all very embarrassing. But uh, So now I know that uh, James O'Brien's mad callers are put through by my AP, who then goes on to do the uh, the phones on the on the programme. How, how long do you do the phones for? Is it half an hour? Quite enough for you to find three mad people. <laughs> I bet he loved it. I bet he loved it. Yeah. And said it was like the old days of when people used to shout at you on phone-ins. You know, you're just against them. I used to do, whenever I used to mention stories about the cat, welcome back, uh, stories about the Catholic Church, people used to phone up and go, you're always against the Catholics. And you'd go, no, I'm not. I'm actually quite a religious person compared to, compared to most people. <clears throat> but unfortunately, if it's fact, you have to report it. If you make it up, that's actually different. Um, uh... Uh, Steve, the decent party, that's what somebody asked me. They said, you know, if you were going to go into politics, what would your party be? And I said, the decent party. And we'd have nice people, and uh, and it would be all pensioners and young people who've got a purpose in mind to do things. We'd give far more benefits to pensioners. Absolutely. You know, I'm not having anybody. And also, I'm afraid I am short, sharp, shock treatment. I'm none of this. Uh, we're going to give you two years suspended for six months. No, 
you're going to prison. Okay, simple as that. And you're going to lose your job. And uh, if you if you then commit another crime, we put you on a ship and we send you to Australia. Okay, they can deal with you out there. I'm sure they're all Russia is fairly popular. Hong Kong's very popular at the moment, isn't it? There's a nice place to send students to. They're all trying to get out, but they're not having much luck. They're not having any luck because once the soldiers worked out they were escaping through the sewers, they literally let them escape and then they grabbed them and they've said that every single person over 18 will be prosecuted and you know their human rights record, don't you? Not good, not good. Take a short uh, break for the news at uh, six. You know somebody has stolen a knitted baby Jesus from a pub. One landlord had three toilets stolen from the gents in two months. Who would steal a toilet? Well, I can imagine. But, uh, strange. And also the story of Michael Jackson, who could face trial. This is thought, isn't it? Yeah. So we were talking about pensions during the, the break, because I've, uh, I completely forgot about my pensions. One of them I've had since I was 16, believe it or not, but it was, it was peanuts. I mean, it was a, it was a silly little pension. It was worth, you know, nothing. I mean, it's not a huge amount of money anyway, but I've got two of them, and they both matured because you passed 65, and that's when they came out. But I've decided I'm, I'm leaving them. I don't need to touch them. And I get the government pension as well now, which I'm even more surprised at. So I haven't touched that one either, because you leave it and they, they invest it for you, uh, which is quite nice. Nice to have your company. Welcome along to Early Breakfast on LBC with Steve Allen. Uh, for Thursday the 21st of November as we get ever closer. Christmas lights are all up all over the place. They really are all over London. It's twinkling light. And some really nice lights. Some really, really nice lights, which I think sort of cheers up. If you're sitting in traffic jams, this morning, my, my driver in, I hadn't had this particular driver, did manage to find the place, and so that was always a bit of a bonus when they do that. And um, so he's sort of waiting, so I get in and we pootle in. Halfway through the journey, his phone rings and he chats away to a friend of his on the telephone, which are the strange. They normally cancel the call if they're on, a, on a, a gig, but anyway, that's fine. And then we come into Piccadilly. We get nearly to the Ritz, which if you know Piccadilly Circus, the Ritz is just a bit back from it. And then he indicates left, and I thought perhaps he just indicated to go into that lane. No, no, no. He went to turn left. Because we're heading down to Piccadilly Circus and then down to Trafalgar Square and then round and up to Leicester Square. And so he goes to turn left. So where do you think you're going? And he goes, and he pointed at the sat-nav. I thought, it's, it's straight down this road. I felt like saying, you have driven in London before, have you? I've never heard anything like it. Seriously, he was following sat-nav. But you do hear of people who drive off cliffs because they are following sat-navs. And they seem to believe that the sat-nav knows everything. They need to, uh, they, they, they need to actually talk about it a little bit more because obviously sat-navs need reboosting, don't they? Uh, another one here which, uh, this is from Liam, it says, don't comment about Hong Kong or China on air. LBC service hasn't been censored anywhere in China. We'd appreciate if it stays that way. We have to talk about it. It's front page headlines. Um, front page headlines, Liam, with only one follower. So not much change there, is there really? Uh, my vote is for you, says James. The decent party rules Britannia. Yes. Steve, I can proudly declare on oath I've never been unemployed or claimed any benefits in my 45 years of work span, says Dev. Ever since I set foot in this great isle at the age of 16. Me neither. I've been unemployed. I've been unemployed when I first came out to London. I didn't have a, I didn't have a job, but uh, never claimed benefits. Never claimed benefits. Wouldn't even think about it. I don't think my family ever knew what benefits were. Seriously. But uh, somebody said to me, Steve, even my limited social circle, I'm amazed by the number of people who are perfectly able to work who live on benefits. A classic one, a lady with agoraphobia who organises and attends social events at least every other night. What they don't know is I report them. It's my taxes that are paying for their party lifestyle, shown as in Lancaster. Yes, I mean, it goes on all the time. And then they, they, they go to me and they go, oh, sorry, uh, you actually claimed you couldn't lift anything up. Well, we have footage of you lifting up. Wasn't there a benefit claimant? helpline where you could phone up and report somebody. I had a next door neighbour once. He was claiming benefits but he was working as a minicab driver. It was really quite odd. And then I reported because we, we have around our way illegal drivers but the police don't do anything about it because they're getting rid of the people out of the pubs at the end of the night so they, they seem to be quite grateful. And in London it's a huge problem. They've never managed to solve it. You get people pulling up along the side of the road. Minicab? Minicab? 
Seriously, I mean, I've, I've been out with the police on numerous occasions to try and stamp it out because it's all sorts of people and they have customs there and immigration and uh, we were sort of ferrying that they have fake passengers. They said, oh yeah, just drive down here, turn right into the street here and that's where the police pounce. And uh, it was it was fascinating to watch. Absolutely fascinating. And it's such a huge problem. Any other town doesn't have, or any other city, the problems that we've got, you know. It's ridic ridiculous. Chris says, make sure you don't get that driver again. It's stress. You don't need that early. Actually, I'm never stressed at all early in the morning. I don't, I don't do stress. Not really. I might have things that annoy me, but, uh, but never, never stress. How can you be stressed? Like when somebody wrote in, was it Noah, and said about, about the chairs, and you think, I sit for three hours in a chair, cups of tea brought to me, although I, ha I did make the last one. If it comes up to the news, I can go make my own cup of tea. And, uh, and you sit down, if only the studio were a bit warmer, but I have a horrible feeling if the studio were warmer, I'd fall asleep. I'm terrible like that. You have to, you have to keep studios cold. And I had somebody in the other day, actually, and I did apologise to this person. I said, I'm so sorry, the studio's ice cold. And they went, sorry? Yeah, yeah. I said, and he said, he said, that's all right, that's all right. I, he said, I've been in a few studios. I tell you, it was Colin Thackeray, actually, because he was 89, I thought, <laughs> perhaps, but I, he was obviously made of sterner stuff than I thought, and he was very good. But uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't suffer with stress at all. I get cold, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I could put a coat on. I'm definitely going to go out and buy this other coat today. I've seen it. It's a bit more than I wanted to pay, but I'm going to go and get this other coat. I tell you what, what tempts me into a coat? Pockets. Pockets. I need pockets. I've got to keep wallet, insulin, travel pass, all tissue, not tissues, uh, hanky, all sorts of things. So you need a fair number of pockets, which uh, which is good. So Michael Jackson, ooh wee, uh, he could face trial ten years after his death. Uh, his accusers will once again try to claim millions in compensation. This is Wade Robson and James Safechuck had lawsuits relating to sex abuse previously thrown out in 2017. They hit the buffers over a time limit on cases, but now Bill 218 has extended California's limit on reporting child sexual assault. Uh, their lawyer says all they've ever wanted is their day in court. The Jackson family lawyer, Howard L. Weitzman, said he was confident the case would be dismissed. Yes, I mean, there are lots of people who jump on a bandwagon. I mean, I don't know, I wasn't there. But lots of people jump on bandwagons and they, they see a way of getting money out of somebody. You know, if I say this, I mean, let's face it, Paul Burrell's made a living out of coming up with a load of old poppycock about Diana. Really, he was a servant. He's a servant who lost his way and he's milking it. Dreadful. Uh, Richard Branson parties with Mr Blobby. In a, f in a film marking Virgin Trains' departure from Britain's railways. Uh, there's another company, uh, Trent Italia, will take over next month. So Mr Blobby's making an appearance. M Mr Blobby is really a guy called Barry Killaby, who had it off to an art form. I mean, he would sort of come on, Blobby, 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 and then he'd just fall over for no reason. There'd be something, then it was hilarious. And when we did the uh, Knowles house party, which we took around the country to various racetracks, Mr. Blobby came with us. So I've seen him with these things on. The legs come as an attachment, and then you put the whole suit over the top, and it's just sort of, it must, he must get so hot. I think all he wears is a pair of shorts and a little t-shirt in it. But then he'd come on stage, and he sort of, and then he'd just fall over, and it would be the most hilarious thing you've ever seen. It was almost as good as watching, was it Pip Schofield? doing Ed the Duck, and Ed, Ed the Duck would do something, and it would just, you'd, you'd look at him and you'd think, this is so funny. This is just so funny. Certain things just get you, don't they? And at this time of year, we need a bit of, uh, need a bit of uh, fun. Shona says, there is a benefit fraud report line. Just Google, free phone, you don't need to give your details. No, I heard about that. If, if you think your next door neighbour's fiddling, then uh, you, you can report them. You don't have to say who you are or anything like that. Uh, somebody said no slurping today. Are you kidding? Well, we've obviously not been listening to this programme then. We've slurped our way through it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We always do slurping. We don't, we don't not do slurping. Somebody said the other day, if you went out to eat, would you slurp? Of course! Not only that, I eat with my fingers. On the plate, if I'm eating liver and bacon, I just pick it out and chomp it like that. And definitely slurp. Good Lord, honestly, I've slurped more Prosecco than you've had hot dinners. I love it. And you go manners. Psh, could teach you a thing or two about manners. <laughs> delicious and what else we got what else we got uh, da, 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 da. Jonathan in Southport uh, believes absolutely 
but uh, people on benefits. He says the majority are not shirkers or cheats. We didn't say the majority. You need to wash your ears out, boy. You need to listen properly. We didn't say that at all. We said we're going to sort out the people who cheat the system. So there you go. Stop bashing people who have no other choice than claim. Oh, I bet Jonathan's one of those who claims. You can just tell, can't you? Technically, there's a shortcut through Orange Street. No, Monica, it's been closed off for the last three days. They've closed off the road completely. They put cones across it. So coming uh, next adjacent to the National Gallery, you can't go up there. Can't go up there. They, they, they put the, uh, the close signs up. Oh, that's the way we always come in. I always go through uh, through Orange Street, but uh, not for the last three days. They've closed it off. I wonder whether it's going to be that, uh, whether it's going to be open this, this weekend. We're trying to find a day that all of the boys on the show and me can to, can sort of go to the uh, to the fun fair so we can have a toffee apple each or something, or chips, or we can have a waffle, or, or we could have hot chocolate with brandy. That sounds nice. And cream on the top. That's quite nice. That's quite nice. As long as it doesn't rain, we're fine. If, if it rains, it's miserable. <laughs> uh, Philip was Gordon the Gopher and his lordship, Andy Peters, was Ed the Duck. <laughs> I still see Andy now. Actually, occasionally Andy will sort of uh, text into the, uh, the programme, which is quite nice. And uh, Steve, help me with my song. No, we've already discussed this. You've missed the, the whole point of the song The Grand Old Duke of York. The next line is, he had 10,000 men case pending okay that's the way you leave it you don't need, you don't need to embellish it you don't need to add extra words the producer tried to do extra words with it but the last line just fell flat it ended up with the word viagra for some reason and uh, and i said we don't need something like that being brought into a child's nursery rhyme but i wonder where it came from the grand old duke of york he had ten thousand men nobody complained about it did they nobody sort of wrote in and went that's a bit of an achievement how was that possible uh, but he had ten thousand men this is the one who marched them up to the top of the hill and marched them down again when they were up they were up, and when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. You could actually make sort of some sort of song about it, couldn't you? Because uh, it's a Dutch adaptation. And believe it or not, the grand old Duke of York is also sung to the tune of A Hunting We Will Go. Remember that one? But the, the, the one that came from the Dutch scouting movement was the hero Prince Maurice came with a hundred thousand men. With them he went up the hill and also down again. And when he was up, then he wasn't down. And when he was halfway up, he was neither up nor down. So that, that's the original version of it. The Dutch adaptation of the song replacing the grand old Duke of York, who sounded marvellous, but I just couldn't work out why he was marching him up and down the hill. I, I didn't see any, any point in that at all. I mean, was, perhaps he was just, perhaps he was some sadomasochist or something. All these mad loony royals, aren't they? They're all over the place. It's not good, is it? And uh, Tony says, perhaps Prince Andrew and the Duchess. He calls her the Duchess, doesn't he? He's that old-fashioned. Unfortunately, she's no more royal than you or I, thank you. Brandy and Bailey's walking around Winter Wonderland, Steve Bliss. It is. It is. I've had it a couple of times before. It was lovely. And we went on something, because I told you I went on a ride with my friend Paul. And, uh, and it was a ride that wasn't, it said if you've got heart problems, don't go on this ride. When I came off it, I felt quite ill. I had to sit down. I was, I was so bad, it affected me quite badly. And so we went on a very gentle ride, which was just like a little, a little Ferris wheel, which just went round, but very slowly. I don't want anything that's too fast, but I can do with the boys. I could do a roller coaster. And there's one where you hang. It's suspended and it goes up. And then you get to the top, and normally there's something under your feet, not this one. You're now swinging in midair as it goes off, and then it whizzes round the corner, and then whizzes round the other corner. Oh, yeah, you'd like it. Have you ever been on the tall tower? Have you been on the tall tower where you go all the way up, pitch black, and then you sit there? And then all of a sudden, it drops. You do the ride in Vegas, Steve, on top of the Stratosphere Hotel. Yeah, I didn't rate that at all. I didn't do anything for you. There used to be a roller coaster that used to go round the building. Then they did away with that. Then they do this thing which it shoots you to the top. That's quite nice. But you know the worst thing at the Stratosphere? You can bungee jump out of one of the windows. <laughs> we saw somebody being linked up to the uh, thing and you leap out into, into the void. No thank you. Although we suddenly realised that Thomas has got a bit of a phobia about rides in fun fairs. He said, oh, I, don't, I don't do rides in fun fairs. I thought, you blooming well will. If we take you there, you're going to get on the thing. If we have to march you up to the thing and march you down again, we shall take you on all these rides. We're going to go on the little roller coaster where you go round and then all of a sudden it just drops like that. And the other thing, the tall tower, you'll be going on it. 
You'll be going, there's no point in going to a fun fair otherwise. You can go and stand there and watch other people screaming, but, you know, you have to do it as well. So we're, we're actually going to take him. And we get, no, we are, and we're, we're taking security, and you will be manhandled onto the ride, whether you like it or not. Yeah, the waltzer. Oh, no, I hate the waltzer. I hate the waltzer. That just means you spin round. That's, that's very Well, they've got another one which flashes with lights, and it just goes, it's called the snow toboggan or something. No. A friend of mine did the flying carpet. Have you seen that? You all sit on this big thing, and it goes back, 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 and then up and over the top. I don't know why I wanted to do it. I said, please, please, please don't do it. Please don't do it. Uh, Steve, if you're looking for a coat, try Private White VC, handmade in Manchester. Very, very nice. The shop in Manchester is next to Strangeways, but they've got a shop on Duke Street in Mayfair. Oh, never heard of that before. Private White. Sounds a bit, I couldn't wear a white. I saw a man walking through London the other day wearing all PVC. PVC hat, PVC trousers, PVC coat. A fetishish thing. Uh, Steve, Steve, Steve. Um, greatest slurpage I've ever heard. Fantastic. And uh, Steve, a very fine flurry of snow at Heathrow ten minutes ago, says Eddie. Could be a white Christmas. I, d I mean, I don't think it'll be white Christmas. It'll be slush Christmas if we're going to have a Christmas at all with snow on it. But they've had it in various parts of the country. Oh, I'd love to see some in London over this weekend. That's always it. There's, there's a great Christmas card, which is members of the Horse Guards, Royal Horse Guards, in the snow. And they're red tunics. And it looks looks really fantastic. And I thought, that's nice. That's why I don't mind sitting indoors and staring out through through the window with a bacon butty in one hand or some sausages from our canteen. That'd be quite nice. And and just looked out of the window at the snow. It looks so pr London looks so pretty. So pretty when it's snowing. Not much fun to walk through the pavements, though. Really bad. Really, really bad. So, you know, if you've seen a, uh, a, a flurry, we keep our fingers crossed, it might be there a bit later. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? A flurry and winter wonderland. With sort of, we can have a, a mulled wine or the hot chocolate. Be very nice indeed. Somebody says, how many steps did you do yesterday? I was useless yesterday. 2,595 steps tuesday 3842 and monday 5822 if you notice i'm slowing down this is not much good is it i'm supposed to be sort of sort of fit well not really i don't think anybody would ever class me as fit but i thought i was doing a little bit better steve talking of benefits i went to a 60s uh, golden oldie show in hull saw at least two thousand pound in winter fuel allowances on stage says kevin <laughs> i love it when they do those things noreen's our, our expert on on going to these uh, these shows and the superman wire on Fremantle street oh that's my best bit that's my best bit the i never went on it but you'd stand there having a drink i was drinking i don't know i was drinking vodka and coke or something it was a bit of an odd thing to do i'm watching people on the zip wire going over your head it looked fantastic i love it Fremantle street's the old vegas it's got the smoking Marlborough man there which is huge huge which i loved it uh steve 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 uh, listening in Sri Lanka, sunbathing, says Sonia, after a breakfast of banana flower curry. Oh, that sounds quite nice. <laughs> banana flower. I don't know what that is. You're very glam, aren't you? What do you do for a living? Good Lord. Always worth trying new flavours, says Sonia. Sunbathing. Sunbathing after breakfast. Oh, imagine having a curry for breakfast. What a delicious thing to do. What if I could have curry for breakfast? No, I can't. No, I'm going to have... I'm going to get pigs in blankets, I've decided. Uh, Steve, I expect to see Andy on four in a bed or come dine with me in the near future. Oh, <laughs> dream on. Four in a bed would be a great one, wouldn't it? Old news, I realise, but, you know, still good. Uh, Jackie says, Queen Victoria had a naughty son as well called Dirty Bertie. Yes, they, I mean, well, mind you, Queen Victoria was a, was a bit of a goer in the bedroom department. She had nine children. Nine children. I mean, she was. Don't, don't ever be fooled by the little old rotund woman. She was. Uh, she was well going. Uh, are you going to win Winter Wonderland? Yes, uh, Steve. I vehemently must protest. At dim view of beer. I'd like to uh, proffer that you should try. No, I don't. I've never done beer, and I have no intention of trying. Robin, I can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, I just. No, no. It has to be prosecco. And in fact, I'm, it, it's either prosecco or vodka. And prosecco is a lot easier. So today, when I'm having my tea, I shall have some prosecco, which is quite nice actually. And of course, tomorrow's Friday, so we love Friday, do we not? Uh, here is, here is, here is. Oh, this is a. No, I don't want to do that. It's a nasty story. <laughs> it's a nasty story, but it emanates from Russia. 
and no, no, I don't want to tell you. I can't tell you. It's, it's it's too dreadful. Talking of dreadful, here's this ridiculous picture of Victoria Beckham, a fashionista. I think not. She calls it a signature dress. It's the biggest pile of rubbish you've ever seen in your entire life. You know, the old ladies wearing some really naff clothes recently, really naff clothes. But there you go. I'm sure people would love to be seen out in it. But the trouble is, it's too obvious, isn't it? Too obvious. See if you were right, Ian Wright, losing it in the jungle. I'm telling you, bad temper. Ask anybody. He'll tell you. Bad temporary and right, known for it. You know, he'll he'll argue about just anything stupid. It's either because he's ignorant or he he just thinks he's uh, special. He's a dreadful whinger. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's awful. He's like that. Really terrible. Uh, Steve, I started listening uh, after hearing you on Moyles' program. Now I'm addicted. Says Ian the Skip. <laughs> he says uh, far too early uh, banging on about christmas you're joking it's never too early all the lights are up every christmas light is up in london all we're waiting for now is the tree for trafalgar square that might i haven't even looked actually i've got a little market behind it i nearly got a hot sausage the other day but i decided against it and they've got the tree up in covent garden they've got the one up uh, off uh, pall mall but the uh, the the erection in uh, trafalgar square is i mean it's it's i don't know how big it is Seriously, you, can, you know, when, once you sort of look upwards like that and you fall backwards, you realise that it's too big. Could be 20 foot, at least. It's just that the lights are rubbish on it. Everybody else's lights are better. My lights are better. I could decorate that tree. Get it sponsored. Get one of the big lighting companies in to put the lights around the tree and do it properly. The scrubby old lights they've got on it. It's always white. Always white. Put some colour stuff up there. Goodness sake. There's so many decent decorations that you could put on the tree. I wonder what they do with it after. I suppose they just sort of cut it down don't they and then sort of shred it or something i'm trying to work out which rides to take the producer on first at uh th it's no good sitting there shaking your head like a big girl's blouse you will be going on some rides because what we do is i shall lull you into a false sense of security which will take you on something that's fairly easy going you know and then gradually work up to the big boys ride you know and some of them then no you are going i don't, don't go shaking your head like that i shall the swingy one is the best yeah he'd, he'd like that and we make sure he has chips before he goes on. <laughs> You'll love it. Otherwise, what's the fun of the fair? There is no fun of the fair for you, is there? It's you like eating, drinking, and looking. Well, you can look at your feet as you sit on this ride high up in the air. That's good. Look, there's my feet. There's my feet. Oh my God, it's moving. It's falling over. It's falling over. Yeah, they're not a waste of money. They provide. Listen, I can stop you sweating. Hello? I can give you an adrenaline rush, and then the adrenaline rush will stop you sweating. I mean, there you go. I mean, to be honest with you, Winter Wonderland should be on the NHS. You can solve all sorts of people's problems. I mean, especially the sweating thing. Wouldn't that be a godsend? No more having to go tss in the morning. Huh, cold. You know, like that. Never have to do that in the morning. Tss, uh. Or failing that, you have a, 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 a deodorant which has got a ball in the top that moves and your hairs get jammed in it and you ah and you have to go to work with the with the thing hanging underneath your arm it's not a good look i saw probably just me i know but I, I saw return to the planet of the apes the other day since when did apes learn to talk since the lion king the lion king they talk those lions i mean the training at disney is phenomenal they train them to speak and speak english they also do Swahili, I believe, but they 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 fantastic, actually. Really nice. Uh, Steve, Nick Abbott is very, very, very anti-royalist. Oh, I, I mean, you know, of the Chancellor. All of that with Nick Ferrari at breakfast from 7 this morning on LBC. Uh, pasty sales, pastry sales. Apparently we like anything like that. We like pasties and uh, pork pies and sausage rolls. And uh, Tristan Hogg, Bosch at a posh brand, Pie Minister, I think. Pie, yeah, Pie Minister. He says, all too often we grab a ready-made pastry snack, wishing a more appetising alternative existed. The worst places are the stations. I mean, seriously. I don't know what's in some of their things, but it, it doesn't look very... I think they should put a list of ingredients up so we can see exactly what's sort of going on. Especially in the sausage rolls you buy on the stations. They're absolutely awful. I've had one of those. I mean, if, 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 if that's sausage meat, they've disguised it very, very well. Uh, 84850, steve at uk. Uh, another one here. Have you ever visited Harry Potter Land at Universal? No. No. I've never been to... I've been to Universal Studios, but I've never done the Harry Potter thing. 
So that's, that's, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not really that particularly bothered about Harry Potter. I quite like watching the films, but the, the fervour that when, when they all appeared down in Trafalgar Square a few years back was unbelievable. I've never seen so many people out there. Same for One Direction in Leicester Square. The, the girls out here were just absolutely amazing. Uh, also, what do you think about the 20 mile an hour zones around Twickenham? Yeah, we've got some roads around Twickenham where they put 20 miles an hour. Because I sat behind somebody the other day and I'm thinking, push the accelerator, and then I realised it was 20. I don't know why, but put it this way, in London you never reach anything above 18, do you? <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, it's my boyfriend's birthday today, so he's 51. God, that's an old boyfriend, isn't it? His name is Steve. How exciting. 51 years old. What do you, well, how do you celebrate when you're 51? Do tell. Do tell. Uh, Steve, if, you, if you're taking your producer to Winter Wonderland and he's worried, best take some wet wipes. Yeah. I mean, don't we, he will be going with us, but there's no two ways about it. And he will be, be doing me a favour and humouring me by going on a ride. I mean, because that's only right. If I say, I'm not going to, you know, make sure he comes to harm. We're going to look after him for the sake of his parents. And, and I'm the boss. I'm running the shebang, so you're definitely coming to Winter Wonderland. We shall have a couple of drinks, we'll wander around, and we will select a ride that we think we all want to go on. It'll probably be in the children's playground, but we'll we'll still go there. Or perhaps we can do the, the Helter Skelter, or something. That, you don't do the Helter Skelter either. You are Mr. Bloomin' Misery, aren't you? I've never known anybody. Ooh, let's celebrate our birthday. Let's not. Oh, shall we have jelly and ice cream? Don't like jelly. Shall we have some ice cream? Don't like ice cream. Okay, shall I buy you a nice present? Don't want any presents. Well, what do you want? I want to be left alone. I want to be alone. Yeah, well, you will be. But unfortunately, we'll be sitting either side of you in the carriage. <laughs> As we go up, tiddly, up, up, and down, tiddly, down, down. Oh, yes. Straight into the earth. Uh, Steve, 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 Steve. Will you be buying a leather <laughs> helmet and goggles to go with the flying jacket? There's a thought. There's a thought. I could do that, actually. I could do that. That'd be quite a nice idea. But uh, def definitely wet wipes. Very funny, re read the sweating. I know. Sometimes it's a gift, this programme, isn't it? It's a gift that keeps on giving. It's the gift that sort of puts you in a good mood for the day ahead. And also the picture. Because some of the rides, as you go down on the last uh, thing like that, um, it takes a picture of you. So that, that would be our official Christmas card from the programme, wouldn't it? That'd be great. We can then post it on Twitter and go, Happy Christmas from all of us. And he, here's actually Thomas with his tongue sticking out, being sick. <laughs> That'll be so funny for him. Uh, not for us. Duchess is Cockney rhyming slang. Oh, right. As, a, as in my old Dutch. Oh, really? Well, it certainly could be that, couldn't it, in the case of Sarah Ferguson. Uh, also, uh, you're getting uh, Doctor Who next year. You're not getting it uh, this year. And uh, what have they got? Channel 5, got some new documentaries. Michael Portillo... Take it. I, I quite like Michael Patilla's train journeys. They're, they're fairly good. Uh, Anita Rani is travelling to the Ganges. And uh, also in store, Thailand set Elephant Hospital, which sounds quite nice, doesn't it? Caroline Flack, back from building a... Sorry, from filming a promo for the new 2020 winter series of this dating show. How dreary, another lot of useless people. And it's the final of RuPaul's Drag Race, with the fabulous three competing for the crown. Davino De Campo... <laughs> Kind of fits. The Vivian and Bag of Chips. Joanne Webb loves it. Absolutely loves it. She's so excited by this. She's, she's more obsessed with drag than the producer is about funfair rides. You know, but we try and be nice to him. We're going to make sure he has a, has a good time on it. When we used to have the funfair outside of here, we now have a Christmas market. Um, it, was, it was lovely. It was lovely. And they had a thing that used to come quite close to the building. <laughs> quite, quite close to the building. But, uh, but good fun. Very good fun. Uh, Steve, do you ever go ice skating? I've been ice skating. I'm not very good, actually. Steve, uh, I'm currently on a train to Cork. Have you been there? What, for a Cork? Um, no, I've never been to Ireland. I've never been. I quite like to go. I quite fancy. Do you know what I really fancied doing years and years ago when they talked about it? These horse-drawn carriage holidays where you've got an old caravan and the horse, and you just meander through, through the lanes. I mean, the horses just sort of oh, 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 take it all in their stride, don't they? That'd be quite nice. And you can go on the roundabout at the fun fair, and they've got the horses, and you can go, and you just ride up, like Mary Poppins, and then at the given moment, he pulls a handle, and, the, and, and your horse takes off and goes through Winter Wonderland into the countryside. You're doing it. I'm telling you. you. Well, you are doing it. I mean, whether you like it or not. You, 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 yeah. Of course.
course we can catch you. I'm a champion runner. I've got cups and medals. I tell you, Superman has nothing on my legs. Nothing. Um, we, we will definitely catch you and we will pin you down onto a ride. It'll be something simple to start with, but then we're going to sort of, we're going to up the ante. I work on the assumption the more mulled wine we stick inside you, the more chances that you'll be amenable to it. You will, because otherwise it, it shows selfishness and thinking about yourself as opposed to other people's happiness. And if you don't want to ruin the happiness bond that we have between us, you'll be getting on the ride with me. Whether you keep your eyes closed throughout the entire thing, or I have to handcuff you to myself. Okay. That sounds very sinister. <laughs> also, a little bit of fun, I think, added to the uh, proceedings. Uh, Steve, I'm taking my very good small friend Dave the Giant to Le Gavroche this Saturday. Please ask him not to go uh not to go in the wooders beforehand you're going to the gavroche good lord above honestly they're obviously taking anybody in there now aren't they uh steve ryan mark's been fired from the apprentice whoopie what a useless piece of work he was i didn't realize just how stupid he is obviously another one of these delusional has-beens but the trouble is he hasn't been anything yet tanker driver phil says i'm coming to london next weekend okay well you'll probably see us we'll be at winter wonderland we'll be the ones where the ride stops at the very top and all we get is screaming and tears from the producer i told you not to bring me i want to go home said in a scottish accent you know but uh, as i say we'll we'll stop the sweating which is good news he says i'm going to the ice bar paddington on ice i told my brother about that he was thrilled and uh, i'm gonna see wicked wow visiting belfast hms on sunday morning followed by sunday lunch on the 34th floor of the shard and staying for two nights on the london supper yacht hotel anchored on the thames blimey that sounds fantastic. And also celebrating 60, 60th birthday in December in my marriage to the long-suffering Jill. I'll look out for you, says Phil. How? What a nice load of things to do. We could do that as well. We could do the ice bar, couldn't we? We could go to the ice bar and then we could uh, go up the shard. That's quite nice. That's quite high, isn't it? We could go up in the lift all the way to the top of the shard. That'd be really fantastic. I think an app, we could abseil him down. What we do, we don't tell him, but in the lift, we just connect him. Put, put your arms around his waist, connect him up to a loop, and then cl click him on the thing at the back and then go, oh, look, let's have a look over here. Push, and out he goes. I mean, that would be so funny, isn't it? You'd watch the colour of his trousers changing on the way down. That'd be worth worthwhile watching. Uh, have you ever rung in to another LBC presenter's show? Not personally, no. I have been on other presenters' programmes, but I've never rung in. Why would I ring in? I work in radio. <laughs> that would kind of defeat the object, wouldn't it? No, I've, I've been phoned at home about things, and um, and so, but I've, I've never actually physically rung in myself. They've called me, but I've... I've... Morning! Uh, thank you for ruining this week's Apprentice by saying you got fired, you saddo. Nothing worse than sad little snowflakes. Yeah, it was the 19-year-old... Uh, the he got fired. It's good, isn't it? It's in all the papers. Perhaps you can't read, I don't know. Uh, Daily Star. Daily Star today. And uh, it's Attack of the Clones. This is Emily A. Tack, who's proven quite successfully what a dreadful presenter she is on the television. I've never seen anybody so bad. Uh, plus fears over Caitlin. There's no fears over Caitlin. She's 70. She's been there, done it, bought the t-shirt. Killjoys wanting to do away with Christmas crackers. I don't know why. Who are these boring people? Probably the same people who watch The uh, Apprentice. And they go, oh, you mustn't tell us who's been kicked out. It's been on the television. Kind of tough if you missed it. That's your problem, isn't it, really? Uh, also, here's uh, Kylie Jenner dressed up as a Christmas package in no clothes at all, which is very entertaining. And newsreader George Allegaia says he didn't ask what his chances were of surviving bowel cancer. He soldiers on. He soldiers on. I didn't do the show, did I? I didn't do the piece about Vince Hill the other day. The, uh, the lovely Vince Hill. Nice, nice man who's, uh, who's, uh, who's not particularly well at the moment. So we send him our very, very best wishes and lots of love. Uh, Apprentice reject Ryan Mark Parsons has claimed a female candidate may not be a woman. He's the youngest useless person I've ever seen on the television. So now you've actually got rid of him and uh, kicked him out. I mean, he was so useless. I've never met anybody so stupid in my entire life apart from anybody who's on Geordie Shore, the only way is Essex. And uh, guess who opened Winter Wonderland the other night? They managed to drag up Gemma Collins, who's now admitted that she's going to lose weight with that fat waste of space of a boyfriend. And uh, But I'm thinking, but wait a minute, aren't you taking those injections, dear? Or has that turned out to be a load of old hooey? I think probably a load of old hooey. The sun this morning...
Uh, Boris's election pledge, 465 quid tax cut for every worker in Britain. Well, that's going to make a difference, isn't it? Uh, Prince Andy, Her Majesty strips Andy of royal duties. He says he'll talk to the Epstein cops. Uh, which is good news. Shame he didn't do it before, actually. Could have saved an awful lot of time and trouble, couldn't it? If this thing had not played out in the way that it has done, it, this could have been a completely different ending. Now, we've managed to get rid of him out of the royal family. He will not be representing the Queen or doing anything else or taking in private engagements. His charities look like they've all suffered. Uh, people have dropped him. Students in universities where he's been Chancellor have said they don't want him there. Why would you want the association? Why would you want the association? He didn't realise. Unfortunately, Andrew has always been, throughout his entire, I call it, working life, I'm not too sure whether work comes into it, he's always been a pain. He's always been arrogant. Nobody's ever liked him. He's been deeply, deeply unpopular with people. But, you know, pfft, what can you do? He's a member of the royal family. Um, I think they survived to fight another day. The Queen didn't look at all stressed yesterday. I think she's just decided that's what we would do. I think she deals with it. Da, 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 done. And that's it. Uh, another one here, another one here. It says, uh, I listen every morning on my way to work, says Flo. When do you put your Christmas tree up? I've got two going up today. Actually, John will be putting up, uh, I think with, with Callum, two trees. I've just got to work out the lights. I've, I think I've got the lights from last year because I have so many sets of lights. Or I might go up to the garden centre and, uh, and see what lights they've got and pick something, pick something different. But, I mean, how much different can you have apart from flashing? I never have static lights. I like lights to do something, fade in and out, flash different colours, anything to make it look a bit more exciting. So that's quite nice. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. Another one here. Uh, Dave the Giant is also Admin Dave. They're the same person, Steve. And I can't tell you all his other names, but he answers to all of them. I can well imagine. I can imagine. And, uh, Steve, I fancy my housemate. Female, what should I do? Leave the country. And, Steve, I thought the grand old Duke of York song was about the incompetence of George at Waterloo. Wellington uh, apparently shoved him at the edge of the battle out of the way and he constantly marched the troops up and down a hill trying to become involved. We were caught halfway up the hill and cut to ribbons by the French cavalry. Well, you know more than I do. You know more than I do. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. Your enthusiasm paints a really fun picture full of excitement for your winter wonderland trip. Your producer uh, needs to get a grip. A great big Jesse. You're a great big Jesse, you are. Uh, it's from somebody writing it. I'm not telling you. And uh, <laughs> do you listen to your shows on a Saturday, says Noah? No. I've never listened to one of my shows, ever. I've caught little bits, but I've never... Why would I listen to a show? I did it. I'm, I'm not that much of an egotist that I need to listen back to them. Thank you very much indeed. I've never thought about that, actually. I've never thought... Somebody asked me that before. They said, have you ever listened to your shows? I went, no. No. Why would I? It's me. I know what I'm like. Five, two, uh, seven. Come on, if you're rushing to catch a bus, try, try and... You need to take the radio with you, don't you? Take the radio with you, but plug yourself in. It's much easier. Uh, the Daily Mail. Guess what? Prince Andrew forced to quit royal duties after a dramatic intervention by the Queen and the Prince of Wales, so they say. Well, I don't know where this comes from. And so he stepped down... A uh, bombshell comes hours after the mail confronts the palace with fresh claims. It's the arrogance. It's the arrogance. I bet one of his daughters is going, Daddy, what have you done? You've screwed my wedding up for next year. As I say, as long as we don't have to pay for it, also he doesn't get any more money. So, but with a personal fortune estimated at over 50 million, where that comes from, I've got no idea. But uh, the Express today, Andrew shamed into stepping down. What would he do? I don't know, go and grow vegetables, I suppose, or something. Or go to that £13 million uh, Swiss chalet in Verbier. Go and stay there. Can't think of anywhere else he could go to. It's, I mean, it doesn't really make any... I don't care where he goes. I really don't care. As long as he takes Sarah Ferguson and the kids with him, I'm more than happy. Uh, the Times, PM pledges tax cut plan for millions of workers. It'll never be me, I can tell. Uh, also, Jose Mourinho has uh, texted Harry Kane to try and persuade the striker to commit his future to the club. Church of England's offered repentance, saying that Christians are to blame for anti-Semitism that led to the Holocaust and prejudice in modern, modern politics. Oh, that's right. Let's blame the Christians now. Uh, the Guardian scandal forces Prince to suspend public duties for the foreseeable future. That's the telling line. The foreseeable future, as far as I'm concerned, is the rest of his life. There's no way he can come back. Come back as what? 
Come back as what? I think there's a, there's a lot more that's going to come out, and I don't think it's going to be pleasant, and that's why they've obviously made the decision, let's, let's stop it now. So he's effectively resigned as a working royal. Not that, not that anybody ever thought he did anything. Everything he was taken away from, he sort of carried on mixing with despots and Russian mafia people, all sorts of people he shouldn't have been mixing with. And then, of course, the, uh, the top of the thing was uh, a convicted paedophile, who even after he was convicted, he went to stay with wasn't good but he's finally shown sympathy with Epstein's victims but uh, he certainly didn't do it on the TV interview and he had every opportunity to do it the palace declines to comment on whether he keeps his private allowance from the Queen reportedly 250,000 um, I'm suspecting that that might continue even though I mean perhaps they, they could rely on the income from Sarah Ferguson's little budgie books or not as the case may be uh, another one here very quickly says uh, I've just uh, got a new car today with a new radio that has a screen and it's got a photograph of it. Yes, I know you 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 get the photograph of, of Steve Allen as well bizarre isn't it really <laughs> I can't get over that at all. I think that's uh, fantastic. Uh, Angela says, I fear Thomas may have the last laugh when he's sick all over you. He wouldn't be because I'd push him out of the car. It's as simple as that. Every, every, if I thought it was going to get to that stage, you'd be out. Be out completely. Thank you very much indeed for your company this morning. It's uh, been another chilly morning and I suspect that this weekend it's going to drop a little bit, uh, like a minus ten, dare I suggest, which is very, very cold. Uh, before I go... Let me tell you what's coming up on my free podcast for today. On my little bit extra, Posh talks about the joys of not seeing her husband. Marriage sounds really healthy. Katie Price dances to a stripper song as her daughter cringes in the background. Parenting really done well. Not. Chris Evans takes his trousers off on this morning. Lucky viewers. And TripAdvisor has to shut down comments on the Pizza Express that Prince Andrew claimed to have visited. Just ruins everything, doesn't he? Apparently, they, they get very upset at being called fat in the... Well, we, we are a nation of fatties. I mean, I speak as a, as a fat person. Not hugely fat, but, you know, enough to, to kind of think about it. Uh, yesterday, I went and bought a new coat for winter, and the woman proudly told me in the, in the shop... It's, I mean, I have to tell you, this is going to sound really awful, isn't it, really? This, this, this woman was Polish, working in Marks and Spencers, and I've discovered that the Polish people who are working on the tills talk to you like a proper person. And she said, um, I, I gave her the coat. I said, oh, can I have a bag, please? And she said, do you know, she said, this is our most popular coat. She said, this coat was the most popular last year and this year as well. And I, because I'm so surprised when somebody speaks to you. If you remember the, the bloke when I bought my pants last time, I bought 20 pairs of pants. Because I'm peculiar. And he said, oh, stocking up for the winter. I went, no, they're not for me. I thought, because there's no answer to it, is it? Then makes them look a bit... So, the second time around, he didn't bother asking me. But the one with the coat, she said, this was our most popular coat. I said, well, to be honest with you, I think I bought it last year. But I'm blowed if I can remember where I put the blooming thing. I mean, you'd think, honestly, I'd find these things. But uh, I've got a few, few coats. I was going to wear it this morning, but I haven't fathomed out where all the pockets are. And it means emptying this jacket and the pockets into, uh, into that as well. Had a very nice day, though, yesterday. Very nice. The, tra the train turned up on time. The train turned up on time. It was unheard of. I nearly waved. I nearly brought out a brass band at Waterloo Station. I nearly sort of said, I was going to tell Lenny I was going to go to the train turner. It was actually turned up about 21 minutes past. It normally turns up about half past. And then we all have a rush to get their peasants off. They get off, off the train. And there's always some dingbat, isn't there, walking towards you, reading a book. Like a scene from The Sound of Music. It really is, you know, walking towards you. What are you doing, Marta? I'm reading. And um, so that was like, I managed to get rid of them. And the train departed on time. Well, actually, it didn't. It was a little bit late. And then I mentioned something this morning. I thought that the producer, you know, in keeping with his culture, in keeping with sort of trying to bring him into the uh, overnight family, I said, oh, guess what's coming up for auction? And he said, what would that be? And I said, it's a lock of hair belonging to Bonnie Prince Charlie. A lock of hair belonging to... And he went, oh, I think that's awful. I think that's disgusting. I said, it's a lock of hair belonging to Bonnie Prince Charlie. You'll never... That's, uh, that's tantamount to bringing him back to life, as far as I'm concerned. Isn't think that amazing? I think that is absolutely fantastic. But he, he wasn't remotely interested. Uh, also, uh, the council slammed for their new festive decoration. It's not the most festive thing you've ever heard or or seen. And there's also one council to raise some much-needed funds. They've got an original Magna Carta. It could be worth about 20 million. And they've been told, well, they, they, they think they might want to sell it or may 
just a cute little hat on, honestly. It's so sweet, that hat, isn't it? I quite like that. Well, it's, it's, that is, you know you lose 90% of your heat, through, you do, through your head. That's where you, that's where you lose, you, and your brain cells as well, don't they, Thomas? But no, it's, it's not only, doesn't match anything there, does it, really? You're very, you're very uncoordinated. You're not colourblind, are you, by any chance? I'd, it's all about, it's all about utility. Where'd you learn that? Which university did you go to? It's all, it's all uh, Warwick. Oh, we all know about Warwick University, don't we? You weren't in the, uh, you weren't in the rowing team, were you, by any chance? Did you? Oh, you were born with a cardigan on. It's lovely, though, it really is. I mean, I, as I say, I never get tired of seeing your wardrobe. It sort of, it parades itself in front of me on a nightly basis. It's like it's got its own arrest. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice, actually, really. Very nice. Not sure about the scarf. People have got this new idea of wearing scarves now, which is, if it's long enough, you sort of loop it round and then push the thing. It's really naff. OK, I don't want to make a big deal about it. But it's not the kind of thing that, you know, you should wrap it round like I do. Make yourself look as though you're a bit trendy. Make us look at, you know, as though you went to sort of, a, you know, prep boy from uh, from New York or something. No, you don't. No, you don't. No. The hat's nice. Does it have a label on it? Does it tell you who who, who made it? Was it somebody... Thinsulate. Oh, right. China? <laughs> Only guessing. You don't think... Oh, you think it's made in this country? <laughs> How unusual. Uh, I wonder where. It's very nice, though. It sort of... It does look a little bit like, like a... What is it? Is it thin... Oh, you've ruined his hair now. Look, his hair's ruined. Oh, dear. Look at that. It's two. two. What does that mean? It's two from Sainsbury's. I don't know what, what that means. Does that mean that it's it's made in a place called Two, or it's there are two of them? It's oh, it's a brand. Good. Is, is that Sainsbury's own brand? You think? Oh well, I've never been to Asda, but it's very sweet of you to mention it. <laughs> Obviously, you look at me and you see something very common. And uh, I don't I don't think I've ever been to Asda. I've been to Lidl. Aldi. Well, I went in and then came out again fairly quickly. Uh, maybe the only thing they're actually good for is foreign biscuits. One of them does German biscuits, and German biscuits are much better than our biscuits. Much better. They, they, they have the nice biscuity things with sort of a layer of chocolate on, which is lovely. It's no good doing your hair now. It's wasted. And, um, and so that's quite nice. Where else? Where do I go regularly? Waitrose. I like wandering up and down the aisles on Waitrose, and also Iceland. But I tell you who's, who's got the best pickled onions. Where did I get them from the other day? I went to a garden centre, and I bought a big jar, like a big sweetie jar, full of giant pickled onions. And I oh, don't like pickled onions. Oh, you bunch of wusses, honestly. Honestly, one of them, one of them doesn't do pickled onions. One of them doesn't do fun fair rides. That's what I have to take you. We can take you to the fun fair, can't we? We can take you to Winter Wonderland. Thomas doesn't apparently do fun fairs because he's frightened of the rides. Yeah, I did mention it to Sam who's been setting up breakfast, and I said, I said, we, we were going to take Thomas to, uh, to the, I said, but he, he won't go on the rides. He said, you'll have to sedate him. I said, funnily enough, <laughs> we'd worked that bit out already. If we sedate him, then we can get him on a ride, Corey and me between us, and he can sit there in the middle of the seat, completely out of it, just staring straight ahead. Because they have a lovely giant roller coaster there, and you go around the top, and you seriously think that you're going to crash to the ground. I mean, you don't, but you feel that. And then when you do that big drop, do you like fun fairs, Connor? Do you, would you, would you, you're partial to a fun, would, would you go on a ride? Would you go on a ride? Oh, right. Do you have a favourite ride? Do you have a favourite ride at the fun fairs? What would it be? Probably something for, for The one that, mirit, that mimics a Ferris wheel. Oh, right. It starts off and it goes, yes, far higher. Have, have you ever done the very tall tower there at Winter Wonderland? Have you been to Winter Wonderland before? Oh, well, why have loads of people not been to it? It's amazing. They have a very tall tower, and you all sit round the outside, and it goes do, 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 until you're up above the trees, and then you sit there, and you sit there, and your legs are dangling over, and then all of a sudden, he pushes the button, and you drop. So you leave your little spherical objects up there, and the rest of you kind of travels very fast down, and that's that first bit where you go, whoa! It was really great. And then it goes up again, but it, it, it doesn't have the same effect second time around. But that's, that's quite a good ride. So you like the big... It's a, a circular thing which tips up on edge, doesn't it? And you go round, in essence, yeah. Have you done the flying carpet? That's quite nice. When you swing backwards, forwards, and all of a sudden it goes, whoo, over the top. A bit like the pirate ship kind of thing. And they've got a lovely roller coaster there where you sit in a carriage, and then normally there's things underneath your feet. But, but this one, all of a sudden you're swinging in mid-air. 
and then it goes round the corner and it sort of swings out that's very good we're going to get him on that one that's going to take a little bit more of the uh, of the drugs i think to get him up there because it's it that's going to be a, a tough one because you have to hold him upright to get him onto the thing i don't like i don't like ones where they go whoosh, over to this side then whoosh, over to this side then whoosh, oh, i don't do that no i'm not really big into twisters no nor the no definitely not not the waltzer definitely the the waltzer just goes round and round and there's a break do, have you ever used the brake the idea is that they spin you and then you put your foot hard on the brake and then it holds it then you let it go and it whoosh, off round you go again that's really good and you, yes you feel as though you're on a waltz i know really do hey hey off you go looking like nanook of the north great see you there with captain oats outside the tent that reminds me it's the second time we've mentioned that uh, that exhibition that's got all these things it's got the actual pickaxe from oats when he went outside the tent and said i'm going outside i may be some time they've got his his pickaxe he left it there but he had all sorts of illnesses but he went bravely out to freeze to death so that the others would have a, a better chance can't say i'd be doing the same thing anytime soon i really wouldn't i'd be going okay we're drawing short straws steve and i'd be going and and they go it's it's you and i'd be going should we draw them again Let's draw the straws again. I went out to a garden centre. I bought some lovely, um, you know, you stick these pipe cleaner type things in, and it's sort of. A lead. I thought it sucked it up, but it doesn't. You have to turn them over, and they're sort of like they're reeds, a reed diffuser. You've seen reed diffusers, so I bought a couple of those yesterday. One in grapefruit because I like grapefruit very much, and then I got a couple of. It wasn't bills I got in. Oh, that's right. It was sort of announcing the end of my mortgage basically saying you're, you're screwed and uh, we've got your money thank you very much indeed when you think how much you pay in 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 sort of um, extras on your mortgage it's ridiculous the next time we'll be doing this steve is uh, is in uh, december which is which is literally around the corner mm. look i found it you do find some unusual mugs here and i found this one today look at that <laughs> i found that one i think it's probably henry's i've pinched it anyways lost that that's going <laughs> I nick all sorts of things, I tell you. Mainly, mainly mugs. Here, we have so many mugs. It's not gross, it's lovely. You really are Mr. Misery today, aren't you? Ooh, I had a drink, Stephen, and I really ate a load of food. What sort of food did you have? It'll be something ghastly. It'll either be, wait for it, pizzas or burgers. Or ribs. Or something like that. You did have a burger. Oh, you went to Nando's. Nando's do burgers? Oh, chicken, but of course. The most overpriced chicken in the entire country. You had... Halloumi fries, honestly, you're living the dream. The main course, double chicken burger with fries. I didn't know they did garlic bread. They don't do it because we have um, a mini Nando's in Twickenham. So it's, it was the first one. In fact, I think it still is the first one. And it's small, so it doesn't have the whole menu. But they've been. it used to be an Indian restaurant. In fact, it's been a couple of Indian restaurants. Ever since it became Nando's, for some reason, people seem to be addicted to chicken. I've never known. I mean, it's, it's packed every single day but uh, at least i got my trees up yesterday and then i'm debating real tree uh uh inside or fake tree i can't decide i really fancy a tree that's already pre-lit i can't be bothered and fagged with draping lights around it anymore i've decided i'm always looking Re aren't real trees messy no 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 i always have a non-drop and if you keep the tree outside, the cold weather keeps it. It's only reason it drops its needles is when you put it inside with central heating because it's like, it's like a bunch of roses. If you stick them in a vase, they will droop within two days. Same for a Christmas tree, unless it's a non-drop, but most of them do drop. And you've got to water it. You're supposed to put it in a container that holds water. It'll drink a litre of water a day. Easy. It's a growing thing. It's a tree. It's a tree. It, it, it thrives on water. So I had one one year, and to be honest with you, it was very nice when I first first decorated it. And like, uh, really, so, really festive. Well, by, by the end of day two, I had a twig in a pot and a mound, and, a, a mound of all these bloody needles everywhere. It was awful. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, but if you keep it outside, which is where we have two of them, uh, they don't drop at all. It, it goes, it comes down the same as it went up, fully clothed in its needles. Which I quite like. It's three times a day. Oh, dear, your tree must be huge. Honestly, that sounds hits the ceiling. It's like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Did you see that film? 
Oh, you should watch it. It's so you. It's so you. And uh, one of it, they actually go into the forest, and it's the Griswold family Christmas tree, and they go, and there it is, and a shaft of light comes down. So they, they cut this, this tree down in the forest, which apparently you can do over there in America, in National Lampoons, and they take it home, and they, they, they don't realise just how big it is. So when they unwrap it in the house, the top of it pings straight through their ceiling, and they've also inherited a squirrel that came with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic, just that whole sequence about trying to light up the house, because the Americans do it so much better than we do. And uh, every day I always get somebody going, oh, it's too early to talk about Christmas. No, it's not. It's never too early to talk about Christmas. We are up to the, what are we up to now? 22nd, 22nd November. I mean, it's less than a month away. Less than a month away. You get paid this coming Monday, and then your next payday is just before Christmas, unless you're one of those companies that don't, but our, our company here pay us before Christmas, which is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful. But then just remember, from the moment you get paid before Christmas, you've got six weeks before, and all those bills are going to start coming in. End of January is a pretty expensive uh, time. So I, I try and uh, work it out. Steve, you need to taste the livers in Nando's. The livers? these people doing this stuff and uh, 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 another one here and uh, oh yes everybody talking about well Prince Andrew again you know smiles at the photographers hello and waves like there was no shame whatsoever and then Sarah Ferguson hello hello the woman who brought shame on the royal family so many times small wonder nobody seems to like her Let's, uh, let's wait to see how it all uh, all turns out, shall we? Uh, Dion says, you say you have everything. Do you have a washing machine? Yes. I have a washing machine. It's a washer-dryer. It's a washer-dryer. I always have washer-dryers, actually, strange. I don't know why. It's, so it drains, and then it goes into the... And it blows hot air through the machine. That uh, still doesn't alter the pants situation. Thing. You can't use that one. That's just ridiculous. Nobody's going to buy that. Um... Rich millennials, sorry, don't. Oh right, rich rich millennials are advertising for a fifteen pound an hour butler to make them avocado on toast. Have you ever heard of anything so naff? Avocado on toast. You go to Patisserie Valerie if you can find any still open, and uh, you go. Oh, uh, avocado on toast. I did have it a couple of times. God, it's boring. It is so dull, so dull. But I bought myself another. <laughs> get carried away with buying these things they've got a new range of non-stick pans in robert dias and saucepans but they're in black and sort of gray and so they look much better normally the non-stick pans you can see the marks on them but this one is black so i've now got i've got saucepans and uh, and i've got the frying pan in in the center which is fantastic i've got the, the these copper tone pans as well in fact to be honest with you for a person who doesn't cook and can't cook i've i've got every cooking implement known to man Look, no, have you seen, there, there is a copy of Le Creuset. It's done in one of the supermarkets. They make something that looks identical. It's very expensive. But I've seen little, have you seen the little tiny ones? They do a little tiny pot. It's like for mid, midget people eating not much food. Dwarves? No, just little people who don't have a big appetite. Nothing to do with their, their height. But little, it's tiny. It is so, so tiny, this little Le Creuset. And they come in all different colours and they look fantastic. I'd love to buy, if anybody's thinking of buying me one for Christmas. Oh, you've not, have you? Oh, oh, your 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 present to me is better than a Le, Le Creuset pot. Oh, what could be better? Two Le Creuset pots. <laughs> I went to have a look round. As I say, I bought these uh, these pickled onions the other day, not in uh, in Waitrose, in a garden centre, and they were really good value. I thought they were good value, about eleven pounds for a huge jar of them. I gave it to my brother. I wasn't sure if he was pleased or if he wasn't pleased. So yesterday I got carried away. I got carried away. I had to go and supervise the trees being uh, erected. And uh, and so my... Uh, and, th and I got carried away and I thought... Because I bought Corey, this train set for underneath the tree, I thought I'd buy one for my brother. So I bought one for my brother the other day, which meant because his came from a garden centre up the road from me. But uh, the one for my brother, I've seen it on... Uh, on Amazon. It's the same, it's exactly the same one, I think. And so I've ordered that for him. And I had to send him a text message last night going, I've sent you a train for the tree. God, he must think I'm mad. Seriously, I mean, I, I have to explain myself to most people. <laughs>
I don't care. He's getting married shortly. Then they're off on honeymoon. Go, where are they going? Vienna. Going to Vienna. So I've given them all, all the, the heads ups on where you go to in Vienna, what you do, you know, try and get one of those travel cards. So best to take a little picture with you, a little passport type picture, because then you can put it on their travel card and that saves you a little bit of money, which is quite good, isn't it? Like that. Uh, Steve, uh, Long Acres Garden Centre in Bagshot, good selection of lit and unlit trees. Yeah, I just fancy, a, I think I fancy a, a lit tree. So you just literally plonk it down and and there it is and then you drape it with um that glittery stuff which i quite like actually uh jeremy corbyn has claimed billionaires own the tory party they are obsessed they're obsessed with money corbyn and his lot aren't they i've never known anybody lily allen apparently cried tears of joy when she heard that corbyn was going to start raiding the rich good i hope he raids you first dear you're the one who's got 15 million quid Cause it imagine you don't have a record contract, so uh, you know all these people who go, oh yes, we're all in favour of that. Why, why don't the poor try and make money for themselves, like the rich people did? Not all the rich people started off rich; they went out and worked. Huh, that old-fashioned word, worked, a little bit like here comes the bus. You know, I mean, and what have what have Labour poli uh, promised you? Buses, more than three thousand new buses. What a load of old cobblers! Seriously. They might as well say to you, and, oh, they're, they're also, wait a minute, where did I read this? So here we go. 3,000 new bus routes. Wow! Plus tax on big oil firms to fund a million green jobs. 5% pay rise for hard-up nurses, police officers and teachers. They're going great guns for this one. Free home care for millions of our elderly and free prescriptions. And where's this money coming from? Jack and Ori, Jack and Ori, Jack and Ori. Okay, it's a load of old codswallop. They'll, they'll tell you anything. As I say, all we really want is somebody to say, and you all can come and pick up a Cinquecenta, and we're going to give you a year's free petrol if you'll vote for us. I'll do that, then I'll switch my allegiance. Ridiculous. James says, I'm a fellow tea slurper. Good. Good. Any chance of hearing Andrew and his ex on In Conversation very soon? Well, we'd love to. I mean, I think, I hope somebody's advised uh, Sarah Fergie Ferguson, keep your big mouth shut, you're making it worse. As if it could get any worse. Andrew was going to be off on another freebie. Sorry, a fact-finding mission to Dubai today. And uh, Cassera has been out there as well, enjoying the hospitality of people. They love the old freebies. Oh, they love the freebies. Because all the people they mix with, the despots and all the, the other dreadful, dreadful people that uh, Andrew and uh, Fergie have hung around with over the years, are now coming back to bite them on the bum. It's not looking very promising, is it, really? I don't know where it goes from here. I really don't know. I can't predict. They were, I was listening to it on the television last night, and I woke up early, actually. I must have had something on my mind. Probably Christmas, I should imagine. And, uh, and I was sort of thinking to myself, I was thinking, you know, where does this story go from here? Will he become exonerated? You know, when they say he's stepping down for the foreseeable future, I bet he'll still be going out there ha taking the freebies because he's still Prince Andrew. The, the people he's mixing with, they couldn't care less what, uh, what people are saying about him. Why would they worry about it? Why would they worry about it? They're not going to worry about stuff like that. That's the trouble. That is the trouble. It's all this sort of, it's this sort of, it's this sort of jealousy. Because they've all got liquid cash. They, d the royal family don't have liquid cash and the, the Queen is frugal to say the least. You know, you won't find, won't find her shopping in old VB shop, you know, or any of the other members of the royal family. Sarah Ferguson will probably collect a few freebies along the way. But uh, I love the way she was smiling as she went into Buckingham Palace. Like, this was just nothing at all. They weren't interested. It was just, hello, I'm back, I'm back. Ironically, the Queen wasn't at Buckingham Palace when Fergie turned up, thank God. And if Philip had been there, I think, <laughs> taken her out into the back garden and thrown her in the lake. Just out of uh, just out of interest, but it it is that they don't have that money, and they're fascinated by other rich despots' money. That's what intrigues them. So basically, you can buy yourself in, can't you? Didn't somebody? What was it? Who took somebody along to Buckingham Palace? Sarah Ferguson had organised something. What sort of sway has she got on that royal family? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know because she's thoroughly unpleasant at the moment. But it's when she smiled, it annoyed me. I don't know why I got annoyed. I just remember thinking, and what one of the news programs said, you know, she's heaped more shame on the royal family than anybody else. And of course, the answer is yes, she has. The toes sucking, the fake shake, the uh, sort of freebie Fergie all around the world. I mean, just ghastly. And then she goes on about Andrew, who's such a marvellous person. She's almost as mad as old Lady Colin Campbell. 
the one who really doesn't doesn't understand what the word paedophile means she thinks it's perfectly normal we mustn't get it wrong with those you know i mean you listen to her and you start thinking you really are mad as a fruitcake aren't you absolutely barking mad anyway the good news is that everybody else agreed with me and she's been dumped from turning on the christmas lights in tetbury <laughs> that'll teach her darling engage your brain before opening your mouth it's always the uh, interesting one uh, also uh, why is nobody doing a mylene in the jungle mylene means standing under a shower okay and with your bikini thrusting your boobies out and then hoping to get a picture and then they put it in the paper because uh, but that's why some of them take out 30 or 40 bikinis and i'm going to tell you a little story okay it's not to go any f oh can i tell you i don't know yeah i'm going to tell you anyway i'm going to tell you anyway because it's 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 all good fun it's all good fun and uh it's uh, it's uh it concerns a photographer in Leicester Square, we have photographers who hang around the square to see the famous people that come in and out of our building. And uh, there is one young gentleman who I see on a fairly regular basis. He always goes, hi, Steve. I always go, hi. And uh, he generally takes a picture of Mylene. And so I said to him the other day, I said, who are you waiting for? And he said, uh, Mylene. I said, you must have loads of pictures of Mylene. And he said, yeah, she's, she's got a new, new baby range to launch. <laughs> so so that's what it is and she had her she came in with her baby in like a papoose thing i think she's promoting those i just wander out with my little hat on and that's it not promoting anything apart from myself trying to get to the bus stop in time i got to the bus stop in time the other day managed to get the 139 which quite is uh, the time so i cannot believe that somebody who's scottish would not want a lock of hair belonging to bonnie prince charlie i mean that's like holy grail is it not? Perhaps I've got the wrong end of the stick here. That's like sort of, you know, Mary Queen of Scots, a lock of her hair. Would you not, I mean, would you not think? Would you not think? Anyway, I always get those wrong, actually. All, all, the, all the things that I think would be a total collectible, people then go, oh, no, definitely not. Because they used to do that years and years ago. They used to get little lockets and you'd put your child's hair in there. And that would be the uh, that would be the keepsake, which would be quite good. Robbie Williams says Elton John sent him to rehab and saved his life, which is probably quite right, actually. Uh, also, they've got a lot of people asking about why uh, why nobody's doing the shower thing, which is which was has been standard in the jungle for ages and ages. Uh, here's Andy's aide getting the boot over the TV quiz. Also, the sun is still offering 10 grand if you know where the Ghislaine Maxwell is. They're very keen. The prince's staff must quit the palace. So they've done nothing wrong, but they're out on a, on a limb. And then here's Sarah Ferguson grinning all over her face. Obviously, like it's some huge joke, I suppose. Uh, also, uh, another one here. This is what every because now everybody's promising you everything everything i mean they are really promising you all sorts of things and um and they're they're, they're sort of what did they ask the other oh, i tell you what i saw the other day andrew neil was very good on television he was trying to find out from a member of the uh from the conservative party uh how many houses they'd built you know they had this manifesto some years ago and uh, the woman in question said well i'm, I'm not actually really sure he said, would like to hazard a guess and she went mm, no not really he said zero nothing you've built nothing at all it's all empty promises which i said before in the in the time of an election they'll promise you everything Conservatives promise you this, you're going to get that, you're going to get a free chocolate egg or a free map of the map of Monday or something. You know, the only people who aren't promising you anything are the, are the Lib Dems. And then one of the papers today said that the Lib Dems could align with the Tories. Well, they stated, Tom Brake categorically stated on LBC yesterday with Nick Ferrari, there was no chance, even though the uh, Libs had uh, aligned with the Labour Party some years ago for the Lib Lab Pact, as you remember. But he said, no, we're not aligning with any other party. And it's, it's very interesting, the arguments that are going on on the television get better and better. Vinnie Jones says he'd love Guy Ritchie to make a movie about his life. God, you're that boring, mate. Uh, what's a story? Oh, go and see that. He believes his journey from working on building sites to having a top-flight football career and then working with A-list as an actor to make great screen adventure. In your dreams. In your dreams. You're boring. Listen, your, your little reality show died on its proverbial. He said, uh... You know, it's, it's it's just ridiculous. He's obviously living in some cloud cuckoo. Like, you watch the next thing, he'll have to do a reality show. Well, I'm oh, sorry, he's just done one, hasn't he? He's just done the X Factor thing, so he can get some money in. 
He says, we, we loved living there. This is in L.A., but taxes are a nightmare. He said, people say with the taxes you're paying for the sunshine. Um... Yeah, but it didn't work, did it? You didn't get a career out in uh, out in L.A. It was a shame, really. But there you go. That's the way it happens. Uh, somebody tried to nick some bloke's dog. He was stabbed by a thug. Aaron Aston was attacked in an alley as he walked his French bulldog, bulldog Vinny, ironically. It's worth uh, two and a half thousand. Self-employed gardener Aaron said a man approached him and asked how old the dog was. Aaron said, uh, I told him. And he said, great, that's nice. Now give me your effing dog. So I carried on walking and he crept up behind me and punched me in the face. I hit him back and thought he'd stabbed me in the ribs, but, he, but he'd stabbed me. I thought he'd punched me in the ribs, but he stabbed me. I picked up the dog and went to my mates. It was only when I saw the hole in my jumper that I realised I'd been stabbed. He's still got his dog. He's still got the dog. Well, hopefully the CCTV will find this person. What sort of person steals somebody else's dog? I mean, really? I think it's about time we went for the American idea. We equip ourselves with mace or something like that. I loved it the other day. They had some little bloke. It was one of these police interceptor action programmes. And this one was breaking up kids' fights. And the kid who came in, effing and blinding like there was no tomorrow. He'd been pepper sprayed. He was 15. He was Polish. And he pretended he didn't speak any English. So they had to get an interpreter in, because otherwise it's a ridiculous uh, sh uh, scenario. And uh, then they called his father to the police station. They said he, he, he's going to be locked up in the cells here. And um, his father said, good, pepper him again. He said it might teach him some manners. No manners whatsoever, this boy. He was so arrogant, I thought, you know, we're, we're heading for a disaster. Heading for a disaster. It's not good, is it, really? Matt Lucas is on the hunt for a companion to make him happy. And, uh, so I'm sure he'll find somebody, actually. He's quite charming. He's quite ch just, just remember, though, you have to separate the person on the television to, you know, the person that he is. Makes it much easier that way, doesn't it? Uh, also, Harry Potter star Rupert Grint has admitted he nearly quit the movie franchise aged 16. He's 31 now. He played Ron Weasley. Said he was struggling with puberty and feeling angsty at the time. He's thought to have earned 40 million. Now, there's somebody you could do a thing on, not dreary old Vinnie Jones. God, blimey. And a cash strap council, which I told you earlier on, is, uh, is threatened to sell off its original copy of the Magna Carta, valued at 20 million pounds. Wow. They were going to exhibit it in their new 700,000 pound uh, town hall exhibit. But uh, somebody said they should consider leasing it to museums. They do that all the time, don't they? I don't know whether or not just seeing the Magna Carta is going to change your life. They've got one down at the um, the British Library, down at King's Cross. They've got somebody there who's uh, who's uh, who's exhibiting it. I mean, and to be honest with you, I've seen it, but I was I was you know because I I can't understand what it says. I know it's in English, but it's in sort of old English. It, I mean, it's rare, and I appreciate the fact that it's rare and it's very historical. But that's about it. That's about it. But if it's worth 20 million, can you imagine actually ending up with one if one came up for sale? If you're a multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire, you, uh, you, you can do things like that. Uh, Steve, 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 Steve. They used to make jewellery out of deceased loved ones' hair years ago. Our oldest jewellers in the high street had examples of this, says Jackie. Yeah, they used to do everything, didn't they? Everything. They, 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 didn't, uh, they didn't think about it too much, I don't think. Steve, uh, Fergie did everything but wave a Union Jack out of the limo. I can see the Queen telling her to take him and, uh, and marry him again. Oh, no, just to keep him quiet. Oh, God, no, no. She's a hanger-on-er. She's a hanger-on-er. But uh, she's got a nasty side, as we've seen demonstrated on YouTube. You can't miss it when she's asked a question she doesn't like. She looks at people as if they're dirt. Really? Well, we're now looking at her in the same kind of light. 84850, uk. Uh, Steve, I wanted to say I'm an Uber driver. Listen to your show if I have no riders. Uh, which is quite nice, actually. I don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm to be found in many, in many taxis. Did you get the coat from Marks and Spencers? I did. I did get the coat from Marks and Spencers. Quite expensive. About the most expensive coat I've ever bought. Just under two hundred pounds. I mean, it's a it's a big, thick coat with a furry collar and all the rest of it, and a furry hood. Looks quite nice, actually. And you know, squires do a good fry up. It's okay. It's okay. 
it's not the most wonderful thing I've ever had, but it's it's possible. You get six items for four ninety nine or whatever it is. I can't remember. Uh, Steve, I'm sure you bought your coat last year, says Lindsay and Cole. I have actually. No, it wouldn't be in the boot of the car. It'd be hanging up somewhere. But where? I've got no idea. But I do buy coats every year. I've still got a camel coat that I've not worn. I might wear it for the brother's wedding, actually, because I'm sure I'm sure by that time it's going to be really, really cold, really cold. Uh, also, Steve, our courts are useless here. Not one youth has been jailed for lighting bushfires. Yes. Did you see Rod Stewart's train set? He's not calling it a train set. It's not called a train set. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful, Dallas, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a train set. What did they call it? I can't remember. They didn't call it a train set, did they? Rod, Rod Stewart's thing. It's not called a train set. It's called... Train Town. No, it's not called Train Town. It's not. It's definitely not a train set. It's so far superior to a to a train set. Look at it. It's uh. Here we go. We have the name of it. It's called a a railway city. Railway city. That doesn't sound right either. It was called something else. Definitely not a train set. Train set in for sort of naff little thing. This is a work of art. Full a full railway. Could that be it? Full railway. Adult railway. Oh, sorry, but I can't understand what you're saying. It's really difficult. You're not enunciating very well, are you? Model, Model railway. Okay, thank you. Very lax with the uh, with the language this morning, aren't we? Might have to go back to night school. Start learning. M -mod Model. He was trying to say model railway. That's what it is because it's so sophisticated. Look at it. It's sophisticated. Oh God, it's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it really is. It's it's like the whole of a city, but it's just brilliant. It's a, the, wait a minute, can you go back? Go back. The cars obviously move as well, don't they? I have a feeling everything... What a beautiful thing. Took him tw 23 years. And that's where you... Oh, look, there's a boat as well. That's what you can do when you've got money. A railway model exclusive. That's the magazine incident. It's a rod street. It's beautiful. Do you think it all lights up? Do you think if you turn the lights off, the whole city lights up? That must, that must look fantastic. God, I'm very jealous. Very jealous. I mean, you know, some people have model railways, some people have train sets. This is a model railway, and then some. Fantastic. Uh, Steve says, Chris, by the time your brother's wedding comes, you'll decide on another coat. Coats and hoovers are your thing. Well, it, well quite a lot, actually. Coats, hoovers, pants, socks, Prosecco... Uh, what else do I get a lot of? Oh, most things, actually. Most things. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn has claimed billionaires own the Tory party. They were doing a thing on the television the other day, how much money has come in from, uh, from people, uh, donors, to the party, and the Tory party get the most donors. Labour were at the bottom, which surprised me. I thought Labour would be having loads and loads of people, but, you know, you can't have it all right. James O'Brien got three mad calls in a row, because we now know who put them through. We now know who put them through. Oops. Made for good radio, though, didn't it? People talking about it. People talking about it. It's a model railway layout, says Kevin Milkman. <laughs> it's blooming nice, whatever it is. I think it's fantastic. Uh Never pending, a non-league match has got spot kick in history for equalling English footy's longest penalty shootout. Taunton Town and Truro City needed 34 kicks to settle their Southern League Challenge Cup tie on Wednesday. After finishing normal time at 2-2 and extra time at 3-3, the shootout ended 12-11 to Taunton, with midfielder Jack Rice netting the winner. I didn't understand a word of that at all. I read that out and I didn't have the faintest idea what I was talking about. That was absolute drivel. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I was rubbish. I can't commentate on football. If somebody said to me, OK, what, what could you not do? Football commentary would be it. And he's coming out to the uh, business now. He's number 11. Hold on a sec. Number 11. OK, that's, uh, that's Peter Maybet. And, uh, you know, because you know, I wouldn't know who these people were. But apparently all the commentators, God, they're boring, they, uh, they know who everybody is on the, on the football pitch. I never learned that kind of thing. Oh, funny. I just, I, uh, sorry? Oh, well, up the Aston straight away, I mean, obviously. Up, up the ass, as we call them. <laughs> but I, I just, I couldn't ever do anything on foot. I can't, when I just read that story about never, never penned it, I thought I was being really clever. I thought, go on, show people you can do football. And I'm halfway through reading it, I'm thinking, this is rubbish. You're talking drivel. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? And so that's why I thought I'd be honest with you. 
That's why this 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 program gets the audience because people can't believe it. Even I can't believe it sometimes. One of these days, I'm going to rush home and catch the end of it so I, I don't miss it. <laughs> I wonder what I'd be thinking if I was this. I'd be thinking this bloke's mad as a penny. Seriously, I don't. I just don't. I couldn't get it at all. So I thought I might as well tell you. I have done sports shows. Yeah, I've done a sports show. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to know anything about sport to do. I mean, I, I told you I covered two general elections. I don't know anything about general elections either. Still managed to uh, to sort of you know stick my six penneth in. I've discovered that when I sit down and talk to Theo, I'm quite well up on things actually, much better informed than I thought I was. I can now actually sort of throw a decent sentence together. Look at that at my time of life, thirty nine and three quarters, and I can still throw throw things together and still throw people off the scent. It's fantastic, fantastic. Right, what are we going? Uh, also. Strange enough, Kevin the Milkman, Kevin the Milkman, uh, is just about to deliver Guy's milk. You know, Vinnie Jones was saying he'd actually like uh, Guy uh, Thingamy to... Uh, oh, come here, you stupid machine. What's it doing now? What is it doing? No, not doing... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute, I shall discover how to do this in a minute. I'm not having much luck, I'm afraid. How do I take rid of that thing there? I can't, because otherwise I'm going to... Ah, oh, that's better. Yes, uh, because Guy Ritchie, says Kevin the Milk, when you're talking about Vinnie Jones, I'm just about to deliver Guy's milk. I'll knock him up and ask him what he thinks about the idea. Oh, do please, just say Steve Allen called. <laughs> talking to socks, the best of Paul Smith or Boss in John Lewis, next to the Bentall Centre. No, see, I'm using um, socks from Costco. But they're, they're branded socks. They're branded socks. Much nicer. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was a roofer in North West London during the 1990s and re-roofed an extension. Uh, Vinnie Jones is, uh, has helped his dad build. Dad was a builder, obviously. Also put a new flat roof on David Suchet's house in Pinna. Very nice man. Not afraid to get on the roof with us to have a look. Wasn't really peak of his fame at the time, so I wasn't sure who he was until later on. Seemed to be a very pleasant man. And his wife gave us tea, says Phil in Bournemouth. That's what their people are like nowadays. I can imagine Mr Suchet's wife giving you a cup of tea. Would you like a cup of tea? That's the British way forward, isn't it? Would you like a cup of tea? Have a cup of tea. Go on. You will. You will, you will, you will, you will. Have a cup of tea. We love tea. It sort of sets you up for the day. And for the, uh, for the week. Wayne says, I'm listening to you. I'm itching to put my tree up. You can get cream for that. Lana Kane is very good, actually, for the itching. That stops it straight away. He says, I'm going to do the Selfridges Christmas shop first. I saw the film last Christmas at the cinema last night. It wasn't all that good, but it was great if you like Christmas decorations and lights in London. <laughs> Needs to be a bit more... A little bit more for me on a on a film. It, it didn't get great reviews, as you know. Uh, Steve, look up the stealth roller coaster at Thorpe Park. Show it to Thomas and Corey. Get them on it, you think, says James. The stealth roller coaster. You'd like the stealth. Yeah, oh, don't, don't be so disagreeable about things. I mean, try and open your mind and sort of come into our world, which is all happiness and lollipops and pink ice cream, and, and a roller coaster called the stealth. And it's... It'd be nice you could do, do the stealth. Have you seen it? You think you've been on it? Can you put it up for me and show me what it what it looks like? We can go on it together. We're going to sit on the on the front of the stealth roller coaster, and uh, and see what it looks like. Here it is. Oh no, it's an advert. <laughs> Adverts are very boring. I think actually, well, no, they're not. They're they're not boring at all. If you're listening to this this program, but if if you're trying to watch something on YouTube, it's very annoying, very annoying. So here we go. So this is stealth, stealth. Even the very name makes it sound butch. Oh, oh. Look at the queues of people. Look at the queues of people waiting to get on it. Oh, my goodness me. Here we go. And so I love it when they, they, they mount the camera at the front of the car. And then off it goes. I think I might have seen this one before. Here we go. And it goes. It shoots it up into the air. And then over the top. Oh, God, Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Oh, don't, 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 don't show Thomas that one. He won't like that bit. There you go. See, look, it's all right now, isn't it? Just a nice tiddly, 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 tiddly pom as we're sort of... There you are. Look, we're just going round the little bit of track. Woo, woo, said Thomas. Woo, woo. Chuffity, chuff, chuffity, chuff, chuffity, chuff, chuffity, chuff. It's, it, it, there's such a long queue. Oh, look, they're building probably another one of these things. And uh, here's the uh, speedway and... Oh, now all of a sudden we come head-to-head -head with another roller coaster that appears to be on our piece of track and is heading in our direction. Loads of people queuing for it, though. A few hundred. And here we go up again, up again, and over the top, and... Don't bother looking down, Thomas, you'll be sick. <laughs> Isn't that the best ever? What do, we, what do you mean, what's the point of it? He just said, he said, what's the point? Because it's a thrill-seek. 
isn't it? You're seeking a bit of thrill. Oh, dear, honestly. You'll have to hang on to our toffee apples when we go on it, then. <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve. Uh, why was Fergie at Buck House the other day? Do you know, I have no idea. No idea. Perhaps they were sort of saying to her, by the way, there's no more money for you and we're kicking him out of the house. I don't know what's going on. We, we'd be the last people to hear about that. Seriously, last people. And uh, Maggie says, I think this country should be run by you and Theo Usherwood. Problem solved. Well, I'm sure we couldn't do a worse job. I'm sure we couldn't. We could, we, we, we could have a go. I'd like to have a go at it. I'd like to have a go at being London Mayor. Just see what that's like. Do you remember Nick Ferrari when he was going to stand for London Mayor? Then he said, I, I can't take the salary drop. He said, so <laughs> decided not to do it. Uh, Nicky on holiday in Mauritius, feeling discombobulated, hearing your voice in daylight. Will Andrew go ahead with the big wedding for Beatrice next summer? No. She said she, she just wants something small. I thought, well, you picked the, pick the right husband on that one. Uh, I think it's at all price. I'm here for ages. <laughs> I mean ages. <laughs> ages and ages. And, uh, Steve, we're staying in a part of the country, I think, you know, just north of Southampton, at the Premier Inn at the airport. Fabulous bed. Later this morning, taking my parents, who are in their 80s, to uh, Aylesbury, just outside Winchester near Maxwell. My father was the dairyman at a farm there in the 50s, and he wants to see my christening entry in the records in St Andrews from 64 years ago. Mum thinks he's going soft in his old age. Soon to be Christmas, says Mike. Wow. That's a journey and a half, isn't it? That definitely is a journey and a half. It's fantastic. And uh, you talk of Christmas trees, how grand and tall is the one in Kingston High Street? Well, if only it was real. It's not real, it's just fake, put put together in pieces. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And uh, and somebody else says, uh, Nicky and Holly, like that. Tony is a black cab driver. He said, please don't call our uh, Uber taxis. The only taxi in London is the black cab. That's a taxi. They're, they're private hire, aren't they? Uh, also, somebody else asking me about why Sarah Ferguson was a buck house. I don't know, but the big smile, sort of, obviously, perhaps she thinks nothing's going to happen. Perhaps she thinks it'll all go away, actually. But it won't. Shane says, uh, Steve, cold supermarkets have just released glazed ham flavoured crisps for Christmas. I thought you could just say it was going to be a glazed ham. We're not see a Christmas ham. That's from Hairspray, isn't it? I was singing a song, actually, earlier on. You know, I am a Mormon, you know, because I'm Elder Price. And uh, it was good, actually. I was singing it. And then, then, Sam, who was setting up breakfast, he said, oh, that's from House, uh, from Book of Mormon. Why are you singing Book of Mormon? I said, I don't know. But no, I don't. I just quite enjoy singing it. Love, love roller coasters, says my brother. He says, but sick on a teacup ride. Or anything that just goes round and round. And, oh, no, thank you. Not very much indeed. But he has been on stealth. Still doesn't help the fact that we're going to have to sort of knock him over the head, this is my producer, to get him on the ride. And then when he wakes up, we're going, Steve, where are we? We go, shh, back to sleep again. <laughs> Could be good, couldn't it? He'll love it, and then he'll come out, and we, we would have solved a problem. We would have solved a problem, because actually we would have, uh, we would actually got him onto a, onto a ride. Steve, is Lady Colin Cam? No, she was, she was brought up in Jamaica. That's why, that's why the accent is somewhat off-kilter. Um, and that's, and that's it. That's it. I forget how many children she's got. Is that two or three, isn't it, really? Uh, also, Sheila Fogarty was getting odd calls the other day. I've met her uh, producer, Jack. I don't know where he came from, but I suspect it was out of London. Is he, does he come from out of London? Where? Nottingham. Right. Yeah. Nottingham. Where, where Robin Hood comes from. Sherwood Forest and all that kind of malarkey. Right. Wow. How interesting. I love Nottingham. I've only been up there twice. Tw three times. Three times I went to, uh, went to Nottingham. I tell a lie. Four times. I've just remembered another... Wait a minute. There's another one. No, they're not joking. Joking. Uh, also, also, also... Oh, I'm getting all the, um, the thing now. I'm getting all everybody else's uh, little tweets that come through. Which is quite sweet, actually. Uh, also, also, right, what else are we going to pull here? Let's have a quick look at this one. What paper's that? Oh, Daily Star. Let's have a look at the Daily Star. Rock and roll horror. This is the Fair Thugs, the Flares. They had fl flares at a show. This uh, this Gallagher fan, Liam Gallagher fan, Stacey Andrew, fears she'll be scarred for life after being hit by a flare at a gig, leaving her with horrific burns. Don't talk to me about burns. I know all about burns. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, also... 
Jeremy Corbyn vowing to transform Britain by renationalising the rail, mail, water and energy industries. An estimated, how much? £83 billion pounds splurge. Well, they must be printing notes. I can't think of any other way we can afford it at the moment. We don't seem to be doing particularly well. Uh, here we go. There's uh, a lot of people... Uh, trying to get through the the jungle they're only in there for a few weeks it's nothing very important is it not going to change it oh look we've got the news coming up in in about a minute and a half caitlin jenner has revealed her children still call her dad but uh they also refer to her as she in the same breath harry redknapp fears ian wright could blow at any moment he's a very petulant little boy is ian wright he really is and um, also Cliff Parisi said earlier this week he signed up to keep the tax man at bay. We think that's what Ian Wright's got. We think he's got a huge debt to pay off. Because I like it when people pay it. The trouble is you've earned the money. People like him earn serious money and then they go and then they sort of declare themselves bankrupt. And you think, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know if he's ever declared himself bankrupt. But it's a case that that's what they do. They need to go into these programmes to make the money. If nobody invited him in, I mean, how, how does that work? Uh, Steve, 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 uh, here. You mentioned libraries. The two in Richmond are amazingly grand buildings. Well, I think one's a grand building. I don't think the other one's a grand building at all. The one next to the Richmond Theatre is not at all grand. The one down the, uh, Whitaker Avenue is very grand, really. That's quite good, isn't it, really? Do you think people are, are sort of getting more and more excited about podcasting? Was he bragging at the drink? Oh, he's terrible. When he's had a drink, he's awful. He's really, he was bragging. They had a drinks party last night. A drinks party. Um, but uh, he, he was sort of bragging about, oh, how we're number one on the podcasting. We're number one in our time slot. Nobody comes anywhere near us. And since the last time they told us about the figures, that's why everybody's very pleased. Very pleased at the moment. We put on 100,000 new listeners. I mean, where do they come from? Is there a sort of, I mean, we can't find enough police officers on the streets and people to run the trains and the buses and things like that. Yet I can find 100,000 people who choose to listen to LBC at this time of the morning, which is unbelievable. I've known people turn their lives around to listen at this time of the morning. People go, I go to bed early, Steve, and then I, I set the alarm. I go, good, good for you, good for you. I mentioned a while ago, didn't I, my friend uh, uh, Paul Cooper, his, uh, his father died. Uh, the other week and uh, they've got their funeral coming up next week which unfortunately I can't make because of the the time it is and where it is although I have been to the place before and uh, and I'm, I keep meaning to get some flowers for Pat who's a lovely lovely person and uh, I wish them all the very best for next week they're gonna they're gonna close the shop I think it's the first time they've ever closed the shop and uh, you know, because it's it's quite a big big deal actually, and we keep we keep getting these sort of things. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I expect people to be here forever and a day, as indeed does everybody else. So uh, I wish Pat and uh, the family all the very best. I mentioned it, and then Paul said to me the other day, he said we we actually found it. <laughs> they've learnt to podcast. They found it on the on the podcast, which was uh, which was good. I don't like to lose people that I like. It makes me upset. You know, I'm, I'm sort of generally one of the, those people who seriously believed, as you do when you're young, that your parents are going to live forever. You really believe. You, you can't believe that one day they're going to be taken from you, and it seems to be. I mean, it, we either go from one extreme to the other, don't we? I mean, I mean, I think, to be honest with you, Brian, I mean, he was he was a fighter. He was absolutely, no two ways about it, he was a fighter. And, uh, and he'd, he'd achieved a, a good age, but you just think a bit more would be nice bit more would be nice it does shake your your faith doesn't it just a little bit so i wish them all the uh, the very best for next week on that and if you're going through something very similar i know exactly what it's like we've all been there the older you get the more chance i spoke to a friend of mine mike the other day who's got the hairdressers in twickenham he's been to four funerals in as many weeks i mean it's dreadful it's dreadful you need to sort something out uh, right. Loved your company, Steve, for early mornings whilst in Nairobi and Dubai for the last two weeks. Uh, Rich says, uh, back in awesome bath, but up with jet lag and a cup of five roses tea. Having a good laugh at today's show. Always a hoot. In bath. I've, no, I've, I've not actually, vi I've been to bath, but I've not visited bath. If you get, we just dropped somebody off. And, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story, actually. When I was uh, living in London, I, I shared a flat with, uh, with, two girls which then became three girls so it's three girls and me it was like a sitcom diane angela and somebody else and um and angela 
came back from holiday one time. They knew my parents, but they didn't know them that well. She came back from holiday. Bear in mind, my parents lived in Berkshire. She gets to the airport. She's got no money, so she phones my, my family at home. I didn't know she had the phone number, but at oh, those days you probably find it in the phone book. And uh, she phoned, and my father drove all the way out from Berkshire to the airport and drove her to Bath. My mother was furious. <laughs> She said she just had the audacity to ask for a lift, not just to sort of somewhere local, but all the way to Bath. She had to go all the way up to the airport, which is actually easy on the M4, and then he went to Heathrow, and then back on the M4 to go all the way down to Bath again. You can imagine, can't you? <laughs> uh, Steve says, Christy, what about this Giselaine Maxwell? Why don't the police want to question her? I think they, they do. The son of offered a £10,000 reward, if anybody knows where she is. Well, I mean, I don't know whether or not she sort of changed her appearance or something like that. She could, she could solve so many questions, so many questions that, that, we, that people have, have got. Because bearing in mind, he's not been charged with anything at all. There's nothing he's been charged with. They're just merely asking questions, but they're not getting the answers to the questions that they thought they were going to get. He thought he was being honest, but then it turns out he obviously was being a little bit economical because people have different recollections. People have different recollections. Somebody says, if he's so stuck for money, oh, he's not stuck for money. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. And I tell you for why he's not stuck for money is because in the paper the other day it put him down as his personal fortune was put at 56 million well now he's managed that on no job i've got no idea can't have been flying helicopters on what a million a year or something of course not where's it come from he bought a 13 million pound chalet in in verbier where's it? he spent 7.6 million doing up his house in windsor great park i mean where does this money come from we know that he sold the house that the Queen gave him and Sarah Ferguson. I mean, that was a nice thing. Sorry, sorry, Mum, we've decided we don't want the house. We're going to flog it to some despot who paid three million over the odds for it and then promptly pulled it down. Uh, the Outward Bound Trust has gone. We used to we used to sort of aspire to that when it was uh, Prince Philip. Uh, also, I mean, the list of companies that are dropping him, the University of Huddersfield, don't want anything to do with him. They all took a vote and they went, no, thank you very much indeed. I mean, if in years to come or, you know, around the corner next year or something like that, this this thing turns itself around and it turns out he was telling the truth, although some of it is, is slightly peculiar. You can't quite work out why he would do certain things. Um, then I can understand it. But at the moment, they had Princess Anne out and something last night. Of course, people are doorstepping and going, so do you have any comment on Prince Andrew? Of course, nobody's got any comment on it at all. It's almost like they brush it under the carpet. But if you looked at for Sarah Ferguson, as I say, the woman who'd heaped embarrassment on the royal family. Oh, dear me. Uh, Steve, I reckon Thomas would get more of a thrill telling you and Corey that he's found Nessie than going on a roller coaster. How, as we all know, Nessie is just a teddy that promotes Scotland. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't found Ness. He's, he's still he's maintaining this, this, uh, this lie that basically it's, uh, yeah, Nessie exists. I've seen it. He's seen nothing. He's had a couple of sherbets at a local hostelry, the Happy Haggis, and he left there and, and then he went to Loch Ness and he stood there and Nessie came out of the water and gave him a kiss on the end of his nose. And ever since that day, they won't serve him in the Happy Haggis. So he's had to go to the, the Brigadoon pub, which is fantastic, because they, they, they have a lock of Sooty's hair, which is in a little sort of uh, thing you have to ask to see it. I remember going to a pub, strangely enough, in, in Huntingdon. And in this pub, you could see Dick Turpin's hat and cape. I mean, isn't that the oddest thing? And you looked through a little hole in the door, a little spy hole, and you looked through it, and they said, that's Dick Turpin's hat and cape. Why he left it there, I've got no idea. Stand and deliver, by Jove Matron. And, uh, and he, he, was, he was the highwayman. In fact, on every crossroads, there'd be a gibbet in years gone by, and they would be hanging people who, um, who, who wanted to rob the stagecoaches. It's not good, is it, really? You didn't have stagecoaches up on the Highlands, did you, really? I should imagine it was just horse-drawn things, or just horse vehicle, just horses. <clears throat> it doesn't do well up there, does it, really? Do you know, I thought yesterday, I thought yesterday, I thought we were going to have snow. I really did, because I tell you for why, the, the sky went quite grey, 
and I remember thinking, oh, this looks like it could be snowy weather. It looked like the, the snow, and I thought to myself, because somebody had said yesterday, they wrote in and said that they'd seen a bit of snow up at Heathrow. And I said, well, that looks quite pretty. I mean, I, I don't mind watching it. I've got my snow shovel, pound in B&Q, and it's a really, it's a professional type. Anila says, uh, morning, Steve, after the Queen and Prince Charles, we may begin to see the end of the monarchy. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. I'm a huge monarchist. But uh, currently it's an institution, but all the younger members are branching out doing their own thing. No longer looking like the traditional united royal family. You're absolutely right. And, I mean, I should, that's, why they had to, that's why they had to make that decision. You know, Andrew, out. You know, but, and, and they, they, they probably think it's all going to blow over. It's not. It's still full in the papers today. To be honest with you, I wish it wasn't. I would like to think that he's sitting at home, ruining the day that he ever bumped into Mr Epstein or hung around with him. But unfortunately, the royal heads are turned by people who've got loads of money. It's an obsession. Sarah Ferguson plays it really well. Really well. I mean, you know, wh who is she? Nobody. Nobody. She was a jolly hockey sticks girl who kind of embarrassed herself and it's a royal knockout. Mind you, they all embarrass themselves, including Prince Ep In fact, if you think about it, actually, they've had loads of things that have embarrassed them over the years. When we had Squidgy Gate tapes, didn't we, with Charles talking about uh, Camilla and stuff like that, and then we discovered that Charles had been having the affair with Camilla for a long time, and yet Diana didn't know, and then you get those people who are big supporters of the royal family um, and will support them to the ends of the earth. But the trouble is you can't with this. You know, you cannot have a senior member of the royal family hanging around with a convicted paedophile. You, ju it, you just can't do it. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, whether he's the most marvellous person, whether he's much respected, you cannot have it. Kevin the expat says, Steve, I wake up one hour earlier than I actually have to do every day in order to listen to you. Listening to the Steve Allen Show is a habit. It is getting to be a habit with me. It is true, actually. It is true. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one of your new listeners that came over and started listening because of your friendship with Mr Moyles on your sister station. I enjoy your no-nonsense, light-humoured attitude as I drive along in the morning, says Matt the Trucker. Do you know I get loads of truckers? Loads of truckers on this programme. In fact, the producer said to me, my God, there, there's another trucker. And, uh, and I said, we, why do we get loads of truckers? I suppose because actually, if you're sitting there behind the wheel, it can be a bit boring, can't it? This time of the morning, this is the time to do it if you're driving some of these big, these big truckers. And everything is just Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. I know. Yeah, you're right, actually. I mean, I haven't done Brexit yet. I mean, I could do if I wanted to. But to be honest with you, I don't... Uh, I feel there is so much of it. Oh, but I do, I do get... Well, they haven't said anything yet. But, um... But they, they, I think I'm off the day after the wedding. I think the 13th, I'm pretty certain, of the uh, election. The election. The Did I say the wedding? <laughs> OK, so somebody's getting married. All right, what's the matter with that? Uh, stealth, says James. This is the ride that we can't get Thomas on, but I reckon we could do. We could pop a little, like a little sleeping draft, like they do in all the old Marx Brothers movies. They pop a sleeping draft in, and then we just, ah, like Mr. T. I ain't getting on no plain fool. That'll be him. I ain't getting on no roller coaster, done in a Scottish accent. And, and we'd be going, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And here we are, we're going on it. And he'd be going, where, where are we going, fool? Because it talks like that, uh, and, uh, and then and then and get to the top, and then sometimes on the roller coaster, the big ones, they then stop it right at the top, and you go no, no, and then you all put your hands in the air, like you just don't care, and and all of a sudden then, whoosh, as it hurtles towards the ground at well, I can tell you in this one, naught to eighty five miles an hour in two point five seconds, it drops vertically two hundred and five feet. It's amazing, says James. Oh, I want to take him on it. I think he should. As my producer, I think, see you later. Great to work with you. <laughs> She's quite mad, you know, quite mad. <laughs> she starts waving through the door. Bless her heart. I've got a little thin bit of glass in my door, which makes me feel like less I'm in a box and more I'm in sort of a submarine. You know, glug, glug. I've now decided I like uh, Colleen Rooney's Christmas card because it's got the boys, which is Kai, Clay, Kit and Cass. Uh, wearing their Jim Jams, looking at Father Christmas. They've had a few taken. And uh, he's a, he, a good-looking Father Christmas, and they're all... Si bless their hearts, honestly. Aren't kids so grateful? When they're little, when they're little and they get Father Christmas presents. And then I was in a, a garden centre yesterday, and there was uh, a mum in there with her little girl, and all I could hear the little girl saying, Christmas, Christmas. 
and she ran over to a pile of toys and things like that at Christmas. And you think, and then you look at the picture of the, of the Rooney's. I mean, they are adorable. They are absolutely adorable. If you were looking for ready-made family, yes, please. They're so good. And they're all. They've all got the expression on their face, like, ah, oh, it's Father Christmas. You know, they've obviously never seen him before. Well, probably if they have, because let's face it, I think Kai is ten. Kai, Kai might have kind of twigged to this one. But uh, Clay is six, Kit is three, and Cass is twenty-one months. You know, if you can afford to have a big family, I'm all for big families. All for big families. And this is this is fantastic. So uh, apparently, we're not eating turkey anymore. Load of old rubbish. Fifty-three percent of restaurant menus in Britain will have meat-free alternatives. Yeah, there's an alternative. There's nothing to say you have to eat the blooming thing. Goodness sake, apparently. Research by a foodie firm found that the ZZ restaurant chain has jazzed up its Christmas offering with a jackfruit, Italian hot pizza and roast aubergine rotolo, a pizza express, way, sorry, uh, the, uh, and at the Mexican chain Chiquito, vegetarians can have piri piri oomph fajitas. I love a fajita. Don't you? Have you ever had fajitas before? I love it. I tell you, I love doing it. I love putting the, the shredded chicken on. Is that the fajita? And then you pour, and then you put sort of chopped peppers on, and then you put the tomato salsa on, and then the sour cream. That is the killer. And it dribbles down your chin, and you get, oh, you get it on your chest and everything. It's fantastic. I love it. Can't beat a good old fajita. Very nice indeed. They don't do them in Marks and Spencers anymore. They've actually stopped doing them. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, I keep trying to find something. At the moment, I, what? At the moment, I'm sort of, I'm torn between, I think it's called penile chicken or something. I, well, I, I don't know. It's, it's Thai. Well, no, it probably isn't, actually, but that's what it looks like on the thing. And, and that, that's quite nice, and that's got little bits and pieces. And I'm meant to try it with, um, it's, uh, the, the, and you have it with jasmine rice. Is it Penang chicken or penile? What is it? It's, it's, a, it's a dish. It's, it's from Thailand. And I've had it on quite a few occasions. <laughs> is it penile? Oh, it's not penile. Oh, right. What is it? <laughs> what is it? What am I having? What am I eating? Nobody tells me I'm a stranger in town. I'm having what? <laughs> Panang chicken. Well, no, it was close. It was close. Wasn't that much difference. Goodness sake, honestly. <laughs> Well, I quite liked it anyway. I've had it a few times this week, but I'm sure it's fattening. So I might have to stop doing it. And and every time I go into um, into uh, Greg's, I can't find the pigs in blankets now. They don't have them out early in the morning. Uh, Smithy the trucker says, I'm listening in Italy. One hour from, uh, I don't know where you are. Is it Naples you are? My goodness me. Somebody says the British royals will be gone in 25 years as poverty and overpopulation will increase. What are we going to do with all the buildings? What are we going to do with the buildings? Buckingham Palace, which was not built as a palace, it was built as a private home for the uh, Duke of Buckingham. The royals saw it and thought, we'll have that. I think they did the same with Windsor Castle. I'm pretty... Could be nice if you say it was like a museum now. It is like a nice museum. I wonder what will happen to the royal family in years to come. Well, I mean, obviously not in my lifetime, but in a few other people's lifetimes. I mean, I like having them, you see. That's the trouble. I remember somebody accused me of and said, oh, you're so anti-royal. You go, no, I'm not. I'm a big supporter. I don't like the hanger honours. I don't like the waste of spaces that are there. People who've never done a day's work in their life. I'm expecting everybody to be like Princess Anne and the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. You know, people who work their socks off. People who work their socks No matter what, what's been Annus Horribilis for Her Majesty is, uh, you know, is something that she's weathered. She's like, how old is that reporter? Only 12 or something on Sky News. Does he know that he's, does his mummy know he's out? He's the Sky News Australia correspondent, Jackson Williams. Hello, Jackson. Oh, no, he's a very, he doesn't even look like he shaves. Bless his heart. Do I, can we hear him? Oh, we can't, no, no, let's not hear him, no. But he, he, they're very young, aren't they, in Australia? I know it's a young people's country, person's country. And uh, Steve, 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 uh, the Rooney's kids are getting the best presents this year. A title deed. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Lady Victoria Hervé says uh, Ghislaine Maxwell has the black book, and if this comes out, many, many other big names could be there. Yeah, I wouldn't trust a word Lady Victoria Hervey tells you. She's had to come back from America, hasn't she? Boring the pants off everybody. Uh, Steve, Christmas Day without... Turkey pigs in blanket. Turkey pigs in blankets. Well, I've never heard of that one. That's a new one for me. Uh, also, the US will be a place of exile for um, Andrew. Poor me, Megan. 
and henpecked Harry. Yes, I mean, they, they could actually start a new life over there. Because, you know, they, they brought attention to the royal family. Let's call it attention, because it, it doesn't quite sound... He's very young, isn't he? Really is. Look at him. The microphone's nearly as big as he is. He's not married, though, I've noticed. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sonia in Sri Lanka says, You'd love it here in the home of tea. The hotel staff keep trying to give me green tea. It's very healthy, but yuck, give me builder's energy. I know. When I had my heart operation years ago, the surgeon, who was Tony Blair's surgeon, as you now know, uh, said to me, you should start drinking green tea, Steve. Very familiar, I thought. You know, Steve, excuse me, Mr. Allen. Although when you're there, I mean, as I say, it's, at, at hospitals now, it's a, they give you these gowns to wear that have got nothing at the back. Nothing at the back. It was, I was open to the elements. You've got the front, but they don't let you wear your pants. What's the reason for that? I never worked that one out at all, actually. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? Uh, also, 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 uh, a lot of people thinking that the royals might uh, might disappear out. Uh, it's also Scarlett Johansson's birthday today. So, uh, should you see her, wish her many happy returns. As Hollywood's highest paid actress, she'll probably have a pretty good birthday, you would think. Says Phil in Bournemouth. I don't know what, what, if you're really rich, really, really super duper rich, is it doing odd things for your birthday? We all know that Victoria Beckham takes out the entire clan and they all have to sit there being thoroughly miserable in some dreadful place. <laughs> <laughs> they never sort of, I don't think they've got friends. <laughs> Steve, I googled uh, an old love the other day and found a 2012 obituary. He was only 51, says Constance. Oh. Yes, that's awful when you actually discover, isn't it, that um, that a person that you've known for ages has actually uh, has actually passed on. Uh, my wife and I are off to sunny Edinburgh today to see Romesh and drink lots of mulled wine, says Patrick. Yes, well, that sounds very nice. Well, you'll love Romesh, as you know. He's a, he's a very good lad. Um, another one here. Uh, Google, so no, we're doing that one. You've got to visit Bath, Steve. It's beautiful. See the Royal Crescent, visit the Roman Baths, take an open top bus tour, says Kevin the Milkman. My youngest son lives nearby and we regularly go to Bath. Only downside, murder to find a parking space. That's the same with loads of places. Like I went to Bournemouth some years ago. That's trying to find, uh, trying to find a parking space down there. It's murder. It really is. Bex in Twickenham says, Where in Berkshire are your parents? A cemetery. Uh, not actually a sort of place as such. And Steve, I cancelled my purchase of a new car from, uh, where was it from? I think it was from, uh, Mercedes. I've lost the blooming thing now, wait a minute. Uh, because they've, they've changed the radio. Have they? Well, you don't want that. You only want it if it's actually got a radio that picks up this programme. That's how it is. I keep telling people who are sort of worried about that I've turned into another presenter, a female presenter, on our AM service. And I keep saying, you need to, uh, you need to go and get another little radio that does FM, because I'm on 97.3. A load of people know that, actually. Steve, my uh, gran knows a thing or two. Her view is that Prince Andrew's a wrong un. <laughs> well, I have to be honest. I have to be honest. I mean, we wouldn't be disagreeing. He must be sitting there thinking, all these people are attacking me. Normally, I just, you know, but he can't do that anymore. We're, we're, we're not buying into it. Steve, I'm watching the Bondi vet, which I love, but I've turned the volume down so I can listen to your show, says Jean in Croydon, and I won't miss your wonderful humour. I like the Bondi vet, though, don't you? Isn't it such a good programme? The Bondi vet, he's, he's a vet based on Bondi Beach. And it's really good, actually. It's really good. I like programmes like that. I still like the, um, the, uh, the four in a bed things. I love that. I love that. That's right. I cancelled my purchase of a new Mercedes. They don't have a DAB radio. I wouldn't have been able to listen to the show on the way to work in County Durham. Do they not? Strikes me as being a bit remiss. Even I've got it in my car. <laughs> uh, also, also, a lot of people talk about stealth. And, uh, Steve, I've opened the... F <laughs> says Gary in Frinton. The first door on my Diane Abbott advent calendar. Do you get the gag? The gag is because it's... It's now, and she's, she's not very good with figures. <laughs> Poor old Di Where is Diane Abbott gone to? Where's she vanished to? We used to so love her popping into LBC, give a little chat to people. It's amazing how many people don't understand the figures. They don't seem to go in armed to interviews. If you watched Andrew Neil yesterday, it was classic. Classic Andrew Neil. Of course, I used to follow Andrew Neil's show on LBC. Andrew Neil used to have a show on here, and I, I would follow on. It was charming. Absolutely charming. Really nice. Steve, sour cream first on a fajita, grated cheese last. 
No, sour cream last, I'm afraid. That's, that's how it's supposed to be officially. How come the marriage of Sophie and Edward works so well? Well, probably never there with each other, are they? I don't think so. Spends a lot of time in America. Tony the Trucker says, on the way back to London from Devon. Love the show, keeps me company. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We're just, we're just here to keep people company. Jackie says, wear one gown undone on the front, Steve. Undone on the front. And another gown undone on the back. Problem said, they only give you one. Matt says, will you be watching Celebrity X Factor? Louis Tomlinson's performing. Oh, God. I think I can live without that. I think I really can. I mean, you know, it's very nice that he's managed to get a good uh, good programme for a launch, but, you know, whether people go and buy things anymore, I don't know. <laughs> Ants. On the television, it's celebs go dating. It's a bunch of dreary old has-beens who, frankly, only going on it for the money because they need the money. So who have they dragged out, and I mean dragged, for this one? Amy Hart. Poor old soul. Nobody go out with you, dear, because you're boring. And Dean Gaffney. There's a cheat if ever there was one. Dean Gaffney. God in heaven. The ex-Love Island star and former East Ender would be looking for love. No, they're not. She's just appearing on a television programme. She's going to have a job because nobody wants her. Other people are appearing. Amy Childs. God, you wait till you hear her speaking. I mean, she couldn't be an adult if she tried. Towie star. So that's from there. And James Locke. A bigger bore you'd be hard pushed to find. Made in Chelsea's Olivia Bentley and Hollyoaks Hunk. Uh, Malik Thompson Dwyer. Oh, double barreled. Yeah, and that's where it finishes. But poor Amy Hart and Dean Gaffney. God, what a ropey old lineup. Dean Gaffney, I ask you. Is that well odd? I mean, really. And Amy Hart, poor soul. I feel a bit sorry for Amy Hart. Her career's gone absolutely nowhere. So, I mean, but she does get to invited to all the freebies. You know, would you like to come and, um, we're just sort of propping up a new makeup counter or something. Would you like to come to that one? Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Rio Ferdinand reads his wife. Oh, I told you. I told you. What did I say? Kate Ferdinand thinks she's some sort of celebrity. She's bringing out a new diet and fitness book. Oh, do us a favour, for God's sake. How does it gets worse and worse? Oh, well, no, it can't get worse than this one. This one actually makes the I'm a Celebrity Eating challenges palatable. Recipes from the 1950s, twin bananas with Spam or ham and hollandaise and hot dogs form the crust of a cheesy pie sure to make you queasy could be followed by a tomato refresher complete with gelatin and a gravy cube that's how disgusting actually i do like a hot dog i am partial to a hot dog i could eat hot dog i must get i'm have to get some hot dogs now aren't i Oh, I'm going to have a shop today. I don't care. It's Friday. Push the boat out, Steve. I've got a few quid in my pocket. I mean, so we get paid on Monday. I'm going to go mad today. I'm going to go. I might buy a box of matches as well. Woo! Unbelievable. Why not? Get out there and do it. It's nearly Christmas. I thought I can let myself go. I don't know what to treat myself to this uh, this year for Christmas. I always try and treat myself to a to a sort of some sort of little present. Sometimes it's stupid. Having d decided to send my brother this train for going under the tree, I bought him the tree and now I bought him the railway to go underneath. But Corey showed me his and uh, it was very nice. It was very nice and it makes noise, makes train noises. And lights up as well. Yeah, fantastic, we love it. Uh, Steve, when I've got an airport run in the morning, it goes ignition on, Steve Allen on. Well, you are a very wise person, Ate. You definitely are. I mean, I think that's a, I think that should be it, shouldn't it? Do you think we could push for another 100,000? You know, we sold the tea towels, come on. We, we did tea towels, but surely we, we can sort of get some more people. Or failing that, I was going to say, could we actually get higher in the podcasting list? I don't think there is anything that goes after one, is there? I didn't want to sort of say that. But, uh, yeah, after one. Is that amazing? After one. Should we get one, two, one, two and three would be brilliant. You'd need to tell all your friends, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, young people. Yeah, you have to download a little bit extra, the whole show, and in conversation. You don't have to listen to them all, but they are worth listening to. Seriously, I mean, even, even I think they're worth listening to. We have to, we make them. We make them here. There's people in this building who are very jealous. You can tell when, they, when we sort of go outside and they look at us, they go... Still number one, are you? You know, and I always go, listen, don't make a big deal about it. It doesn't make any difference. We're not bothered by it. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> of course we are. Of course we are. Did you see the new Tesla pickup truck? Says Paul. Looks like a prop from a 70s sci-fi movie. I don't even know what it is. 
a tesla pickup truck well i have no idea what you're talking about it's i, I don't uh, i don't drive uh, a pickup truck and I've, I've got no interest in driving let's have a look at it see what it looks like does it look interesting oh lord i couldn't be seen driving something like that oh that that the new the official tesla oh right looks like something off star wars doesn't it not sure if i like that or not depends how far it doesn't look like it's got any speed whereas mine's got ra 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 Mine's got a load of speed on my it looks it looks nice, but it looks like something out of Star Wars, really. <laughs> so, ignition on, Steve Allen on. I think we should do car stickers. Should we do car stickers? Steve Allen's my number one texter or something like that. I t I've texted Steve Allen, have you? Sorry? Honk if you're listening to Steve Allen. Can you imagine? I like the idea honk if you're listening to Steve Allen. I've now started, I've, got, I've gone mad, haven't I? I've now started talking about Steve Allen in third person. <laughs> Which he probably is, to be honest with you. Uh, Steve, are all the anti-royalist people looking forward to having President Boris uh, or President Corbyn as head of the country, says Helen? Oh, don't ask me things like that. How am I supposed to know? I've got no idea. Uh, Steve, apparently the reason people have to remove their underwear for an operation is because the nylon could potentially cause static electricity. I don't wear nylon pants. Nylon po Who wears nylon pants? Not a proper material. Nylon... <laughs> yeah, gory. <laughs> Those nylon pants. You, he's only got to rub his legs together. Spark, smoke, you get everything. It's terrible. Nylon pants? I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> yeah, this is before he puts the pants on. Whee! Da -da 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 -da. It can't be because nylon... Could, because I don't wear nylon pants. <laughs> I've never even heard of nylon pants. Doesn't seem to work at all, actually. And, uh, Steve, the Andy Gate situation has coincided with the new season of The Crown on Netflix. I've just ordered the box set. It just arrived yesterday. I might, I might watch it today. <laughs> uh, Steve, if you're partial to smoked haddock chowder, you must try Cully and Scully's one. Tesco stock it. I bung in a big handful of frozen peas. I like frozen peas, but I drink all my soup out of a mug. A big mug. All my soup comes out of that. Had a chowder included. Whether or not I could get peas in there as well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not too sure. Might have to. Might have to go and check that one. I love the idea. I open the first door of my Johnson Advent calendar, Steve. Only to find another door, and behind that another, and another, and another, and another. Such a good gag. Such a good gag. We won't repeat it again, but it's very good. Steve, if you come to Bath, says Tomaz. That's with the S Z. So we know where you come from. He said, I'll find you a parking space. Just let me know when you're on the way. I've driven taxi here for 13 years. I know Bath very well. See? Ask a taxi driver. In Bath, they might be called taxis. Steve, I think Randy Andy. Well, we don't, we don't call him that anymore. We're not calling him that. We, don't, we call it, I don't know what we're calling him, but it's not that. Um, he would happily pay money to this girl. No, he wouldn't. If he's disputing it, I would think the next thing that he'll be wanting to do is take out an injunction against her. Did you know, you might not know, that the interview that she recorded with Panorama was filmed before Andy did his thing. She's done hers, but she's a bit, uh, a bit fed up that it's not actually been transmitted yet. So, uh, soon, 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 soon. And, uh, Steve, I'm getting very worried about you. Why are you buying things you don't really need? It's an addiction. You can get help, says Mags. What do you mean? I, d I never buy anything I don't need. Everything I need. Everything I need. I mean, you, you must be, you're coming over as jealous now because I'm buying things. Oh, no, I need everything. I don't buy things I don't need. And if I, d and if I don't want it, I give it to other people. I'm a very generous person. Very, very generous. So it, I never deliberately buy something. Oh, no, definitely not. Steve, I love your show. You've got me laughing out loud all the time. I work early shifts and miss you on my days off, says Sophie. And uh, Del says, I've ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know what comes first. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Quite mad. Quite mad. Ignition on. Steve Allen on. It's my new slogan. Uh, Steve, I've actually started to work earlier now, starting between 2 and 3 a.m., just to make sure that I never miss your show. Definitely a highlight of the day, says Monica. That's what we like to hear, Monica, my favourite cabbie. We like to hear things like that. It's always good. Steve Allen on board. Car stickers. We've definitely got to get car stickers, haven't we? I wonder how many... Because you don't see car stickers for radio stations anymore. 
You used to see them in the back of cars. You'd go up to Nottingham and have Radio Trent or whatever it happened to be. And, uh, you know, LBC stickers. But you don't... Do you get them over America? We don't get them in, in England, do you? I've never seen people driving around with, you know, a sticker on their car. Do we ever have radio cars? Yes. Yes. Yes, we had... In fact, we had three um, 4 by 4s because I borrowed one for one of Knowles' things, uh, which was diesel, logoed up with all of the LBC stuff on, and we had a radio car, which was uh, all logoed up for LBC. So, But now, you see, when, when they go out, they just do it on their telephone. It's, you don't need the radio car. In fact, I'm not even sure that radio stations have radio cars anymore. Christine, how are you? She's in Ireland. She says, where did you buy the train for around the Christmas tree? It sounds lovely. I'm your biggest fan in Ireland. Ten years listening. It's on Amazon. Type in Christmas tree train. And it's about 13 quid, Christine. And if you've got Prime, they deliver it for free. Yeah, it's on Amazon. They, they have a few other. I had one that um, blew bubbles. The train. And that was quite a bit. It wasn't on a railway. This is a railway just for going around the bottom of the tree. Or you could probably get a, a tree railway where Santa goes round every two minutes going, ho, ho, ho. But th th this one comes with train noises and a light on the front of the train. And I think it could be battery. I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced. Uh, Steve, the idea with stickers is great. I'd stick one on my rear bumper. Good. Do you know a medium? There, it's a set of traffic lights that change to red with no other car in sight. And the pedestrian crossing goes green and invisible pedestrians cross. Happens regularly at 5.39, says Stephen Formby. <laughs> I'm so bored with traffic lights. I seriously am. We don't need them in London. Early hours of the morning, just leave the traffic lights alone. Turn them off, for goodness sake. Much easier. Uh, so that, that's where the, the train set comes from. Uh, see you Monday, Steve. I've got to turn you off now. I've arrived at work. Well, that's a bit of a, we don't want excuses like that. We don't want any of that kind of thing going on. But uh, I suppose if that's the way it is, that's the way it has to be. Uh, another one here very quickly. A lot of people liking the car sticker idea, because after we've done the tea towels, car sticker's good. Steve, I feel very sorry for the Queen, says Lisa in Antrim. Yet again, she's been made to feel anguish because one of the, because of one of the children. Yes, yes. Have you thought of setting up a YouTube channel? I think adds an extra and live streaming of the show. What? Well, I don't know how you do that. I wouldn't know how to do things like that. I mean, just listening is enough, isn't it? Really, and then podcasting, which is uh, which is good. We like we like the podcasting. We're very very happy. Steve saw a brand new Bentley Continental yesterday. Stunning car. Have you upgraded? Says Carl. Not yet. Not yet. It's on the cards. Don't worry. It's on the cards. <laughs> Just need the lottery win. Uh, no, I don't actually. I don't. I'm just. I can't. I can't make up my mind. I don't want a two door, and all I keep seeing at the moment is two doors, and I don't want a two door. I like the idea of you taking your friends out. You open the door and you get into the car, not pull the seat forward, climb over. The, it's very uncomfortable, and I feel a bit, a bit uh, sort of stifled. Uh, right, five forty-five. Let's get a check on the road and rail this morning. The LBC Trust Heavy Company. Steve Allen, Fluffy, Fluffy Dice for the mirror and the car. Oh dear. And then some poor old uh, snowflake. Why be so ostentation and own a Bentley? Because <laughs> I can. <laughs> the new Bentley Flying Spur is what you need, Steve. My friend Chris always sends me details of that. Uh, Steve, after Thomas has got you parked, check out the rooftop pool at the Thermal Bath Spa. Ignition on, Steve Allen on, says uh, Robin. Steve, the front of the new Tesla pickup looks like a 1960s Morris J-type van. Oh, right. And uh, he says, have a Google. There's nothing new under the sun, says uh, Simon, the night bus driver. And uh, <laughs> Steve, I bought a Ghislaine Maxwell advent calendar and there was nothing behind the doors. <laughs> well, where is she? Where is she? Fantastic. Off later, Steve, to meet Demi Moore at Waterstones. It's a sold-out event, but my neighbours uh, can't go, so they gave me a ticket. Oh. What's she doing? Was she promoting a book? Sounds a nice thing to do, doesn't it, really? So uh, you can't just sort of turn up uh, unless you've got a ticket. It's one of those ticket events. 11 minutes to 6 is at the time. Do you remember biscuits that came... Must have you. Lo loads of you must remember this one. Biscuit tins, which were shaped like... Well, in this particular case, from Huntley and Palmer's, like a double-decker bus. It was clockwork as well. I think you wound it up and you lifted up the lid and there you put your biscuits inside. Well... A retired couple had one 
shaped like a double-decker bus that was in a cupboard for 25 years. So somebody said to them, listen, you should sell that. It's very nice, you should really sell it. So they have. This 90-year-old uh, Huntley and Palmer's container was a 1929 collector's item. It was spotted by the auctioneer and it made £3,100. They were delighted because we all remember though, all those biscuit tins. They were a lot more adventurous than they are now. I mean, now you get a picture of pussycats on the front, don't you? And they go, oh, it's pussycat. What have they got to do with biscuits? I never understood that. I can understand dogs. It's always little puppies. They're always quite good, aren't they? And uh, Jay says a Bentley simply shows class and breeding. And a few quid. Uh, Steve, talking to teddies, I bought a nice teddy bear for the cats in WH Smith the other day. They love it. Yes, I mean, they do like things like that, Matt. It's the way it is. Thank Crunchy, it's Friday. Did you buy your crackers, says Jenny. No, I haven't got them yet. I can leave that till fairly late. I've only got to get them, but what I'll do, I'll try and sort of get them and then drop them down to my brother for the, uh, at the wedding, because he'll have his car there, so I'll say I, I bought the uh, the Christmas crackers. And, uh, oh, here we go. Mentioned by Thomas. Ignition on, Steve Allen on. That's like, it's like a hashtag, yeah. We're going to make it trendy. If you could repeat that, please, to everybody that you know, even if you don't know many people, still resend it. It's always worth it. <laughs> I love the. I never get used to how these telephones work, but it always amuses me actually. So ignition on, Steve Allen on. <laughs> how cool is that? Uh, another one here. I've been looking for jackets for my partner Don, and after entering my Sparks card details, I got a forty pound, forty pound reduction. Oh, we did the same, says Jan in South Nord. No, no, I did. I didn't buy a, um, a jacket. I bought a coat, but I haven't bought it today with me. But it's very nice. It's a big, heavy coat. I shall probably wear it tomorrow, I think. <laughs> Dell says you need the fake arm hanging out the boot with the slogan, Steve Allen killing the competition in the morning. So good. So good. What a good idea. I'll never get away with it. Somebody said you, you could have sort of a, a joint um, sort of slogan with uh, with joanne webb my partner and i steve are enjoying your show in our matching lbc bed jackets and a cup of chamomile tea well i know you're fibbing because they don't make bed jackets we've never that's the only thing we've never made we had normal jackets t-shirts came in a variety of different colors and uh what else do we have oh i've got loads of bits and pieces at home i'm bringing one in for the producer a very special piece of thing um uh, mainly because I've, I've got more than one of them and we, we gave them away years and years ago. Well, I think we sold them, actually. And it's a little LBC radio. A little tiny radio. That, it's got, got batteries with it. And it's got little earphones. And you can listen to 97.3 on it. <laughs> and I, I opened a cupboard the other day in the kitchen and discovered a few. A few. It's quite nice, isn't it? I like collecting that. And I've got loads of the, uh, the posters that we did, the big poster campaigns. I've got them in sort of uh, format to fit the wall. Things like that, which are quite good. I could open a museum, actually. The milk bottle, the LBC famous milk bottle. Mugs, everything. We had a, a LBC. It, it was good because the milk set off the uh, the actual logo of the of the station. It was very good. We've had loads of stuff. I had a jacket with my name on. Embroidered jacket. I thought you used to get so hot in them. Uh, Steve, uh, I knew you were magical, but can you believe that the begonias are still in bloom, says Beverly. Planted all those months ago when you planted yours, going strong for Advent. I've still got three begonias doing very well indeed. They don't seem to be killed off by the freezing cold weather. It must be a bit hardier than I am. Steve Allen, the man of the hour. Oh, so-so. That could be a so-so. Uh, the paragon of virtue, Prince Andrew, drives a Bentley. Yeah, the difference is I bought mine. <laughs> I think he has a personalised number plate, doesn't he? It's uh, D-O-Y for Duke of York personalised number plate. Well, that is potentially very embarrassing. You talked about the radio car. I have a radio chair. It's an electric wheelchair, says David, that I put a small FM radio beside me with speakers behind the bum. I'm too big to fit it in now. All oh, right. Brilliant idea, isn't it? I mean, I love things like that. Have you ever had a speaker pillow? Sorry, a speaker pillow? Yeah, speaker pillow. Where the, the speaker is in the pillow, so when you lie down, you can hear it. You just plug it into the side of whatever it is, which is brilliant. Uh, 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. And uh, another one here. I love shows, Steve. Like four in a bed and come dine with me. One show which will bring on a host or guest meltdown over a, over a poached egg. Oh, they fight over everything. 
Oh, I don't think the breakfast was very good. Goes some snooty man the other day. I looked at him and what are you on about? Goodness sake. Locally sourced would mean Tesco, M&S, Lidl or Sainsbury's. They all do that, don't they? <laughs> I love it, actually. Harry in Sutton. Best place for you, mate. God, what a dump that is. Sutton, I'd forgotten, actually. But Wallington's all right. He says, driving a Bentley in London demonstrates how selfish you are with no thought for the environment, pedestrians or cyclists. I hate cyclists. Hate cyclists. We had one on the, on the train the other day. I wanted to get him off. Because you're not supposed to take cycles that don't fold up on certain trains in the morning and this irritating little man fairly an ancient put his thing up women had to stand next to his blooming bicycle i nearly took a picture and tweeted it going this is the epitome of selfishness and i have what do you mean no thought for the environment my car you could sleep with my car harry but i don't expect you to know that you'd be a bit too old to know about things like that and uh, but that's what it is you don't uh, i don't pump out any fumes at all that's why i don't pay any extra uh, na, 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 na. <laughs> megan's very quiet of late considering she's a new champion of women's rights well they're frightened to say anything now aren't they i bet harry said don't say anything don't say anything perhaps they'll take the attention away from us Oh, no, I mean, at the moment, it's, uh, it's all... I mean, do you think they've all phoned him and gone, really sorry about your association with a convicted paedophile? And he's gone, oh, it's OK, it'll be fine. I'm just worrying about the wedding next year. Because it's it, it runs, it runs, it runs, it runs. And, of course, the new series of uh, The Crown starts. I mean, it's a gift. It couldn't be any better, could it? Imelda Staunton is taken... I mean, she is fantastic. She's ever so shy. But uh, she plays Lady Bagshaw in Downton Abbey. And uh, she, I saw her and her old man, who is also in Downton Abbey, walking through Regent's Park some time ago. And I was so tempted to say hello, and I thought no. Because <laughs> they're private. You know, they're private people. They were lovely, actually. Uh, Steve, I'm suffering from cloth ears this morning. Is it engine on, Steve Allen, or ignition on? No, it's ignition on. Ignition on. So, engine on, ignition on. No, it's not. No, it's ignition on, Steve Allen on. That's the one. Forgot my own catchphrase. Look at that, this time of the morning as we head into the festive season. Uh, who's been selling a lot of books recently? David Walliams. Apparently, books worth 100 million. It's everything he touches. Gangster Granny, Mr. Stink, The Beast, Ice Monster. It, uh, it just all, it just garners a lot of money. It sold about 25 million copies of his uh, of his book which is amazing isn't it i mean absolutely amazing oh here's that irritating picture will drive you all to distraction sarah ferguson arriving at buckingham palace for what i can't imagine more embarrassment for the queen would it be sarah i only asked here because you have been a total embarrassment up until now uh, now face the fbi the duke is told as a new victim emerges uh, gloria alred has uh, introduced everybody to uh Tila davis and she's basically saying, you know, come clean. Now, the future looks very bleak for Prince Andrew. I mean, to be honest with you, this is the kick up the rear end that he needed. Because it's taken the wind out of his sails, the arrogance has been taken out of his sails. And uh, he is just an ordinary person, but uh, with sort of... I mean, it's it, different if it was something like he was accepting money from foreign despots. But it's not. It's more serious than that. And that's why it's very, very serious. Very, very serious. Uh, Steve, really enjoying the show this morning. Give himself the day off. How lovely. That's what Corey said he wanted to do earlier on. He wanted to give himself the day off. He's been out and had a few sherbets on a Thursday. What have I said? No, no boozy woozy on a Thursday. It's never good. But uh, tucked up in bed with tea and buttered toast. Lunch with friends at town and dinner at the Garrick, says Mike. Well, sounds too perfect for words. Steve, first time texting, five-year listener. Thank you. My wife took me to Bath for my 50th. Beautiful place. We went on the walking tour, the comedy walking tour. There you go. You could do that, Thomas. You could do the comedy walking tour. It's ten quid. I've ever spent. said it was hilarious. Highly recommend it. There you go. There's something else for you. All these offers, people coming in. A ten-year listener there. Ten-year listener. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, John from Banbury. Wasn't there a nursery rhyme about ride a cock horse? to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse. Rings on her fingers, bells on her toes. She shall have music wherever she goes. Big Rich said he was taking me to La, Vrago to La Gavroche. Turns out, Steve, it was the gravy nosh, says Dave the Giant. Oh, dear. 
Mitch and uh, Ellie with New Junior, the tight wad. <laughs> I thought it wouldn't be Gavroche for some reason. I don't know. And uh, also, you've got me through uh, the last few weeks because I lost my, uh, my mother-in-law, so you've helped me put a smile back on my face. I don't like this losing people malarkey. I don't. I'm, I'm clinging on as long as possible, I've decided. <laughs> but uh, thank you for your company. It's always uh, very, I'm always very grateful. Tell your friends, a cold morning. Mind you, at least it's not raining, but unfortunately this weekend, we get rain. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to dampen your ardour. That's the problem, isn't it? If you're going to go to Winter Wonderland, way on the roller coasters, you don't really want to do the things that are on the outdoors because you get drenched. You can't sit there with an umbrella up on a roller coaster screaming, can you, as you, you hit the first drop. But, uh, of course, by that time, Thomas would have passed out. <laughs> you get to the first bit as you sort of climb up. I've seen that. Have you seen that before where somebody's passed out? They're doing the slingshot and it shoots them up in the air and they pass out. <coughs> Shouldn't really laugh at other people's misery, but to be honest with you, there's a, there's, is there a funny picture of, of some, a what? Who is it? A good, good video. Somebody passing out and they, and also people being ill on rides, which I think is actually, is actually quite funny. Quite funny. Actually, I've just realised, I'm sure that Mr M, uh, uh, on his show, I'm sure he had a car sticker. Because I think my, I don't know what I call him now, my brother's new wife's son, Matt, I'm sure he had a car sticker. Oh, this is it. This is the guy passing out. So he, he, he looks as though he's, he's going to be okay. And it's a slingshot. This is where they hold you. And then they just, they pull you back. And then... They let you go and you shoot up into the air and you can see that he's not looking forward. He's, he'd be like me, he'd be like a very, very nervous passenger on a thing and it's going to go. And he's on a date with this girl. He's taken this girl. He looks petrified, doesn't he? He absolutely looks as though he's going to brick it. And here we go. Look, ah, 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 ah. He doesn't like it. Gone. There you go. He, and it, back again. Ah, 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 ah. He really hates it. He doesn't like this at all. Uh, no, she's gone. She's got that, and she, her hair's gone all over the place. Oh, how hilarious. How, oh, no, she's back. He's gone. No, he's back again. <laughs> Unfortunately, they have cameras on this thing, and it's it's the most, fr he's so frightened. I'd be like that. Because all you've got is this thing that goes over your shoulder to keep you in the seat. And then he passes out again. He passes out so many times. <laughs> no, and then he's back again. Oh, my God, we're still up here. That's what I like. Uh, Mark in Shoreham says, an alternative slogan, don't miss the SAS, Steve Allen's spike. Oh, I'm not sure about that one. We do use the spike a lot. We do use the spike a lot, as you know. Uh, Steve, I was just reading, every policeman who was in Prince Andrew's security has a log of everywhere he went, times and dates. Yes, they do. They have to keep it. So they know where they are. Otherwise, I mean, if something had happened to him, they'd be able to go, well, we know where he was earlier in the day. He was here, and that's, that's how it worked out. And they keep them for 30 years. We know that because they've told us. So why have they not got them out? Why has somebody not gone, listen, we can tell you exactly where he was on that day, because here's the thing. He might have gone to Pizza Express. He might have gone to Tramp, but it will be logged. Why have they not done it? I don't know why they've not done, why they've not done it. It's so annoying. So annoying. I got my first transistor radio, Steve, uh, for my birthday. It had one of those little, uh, little white earplugs. I remember going to bed, and the first news was Elvis Presley had died. Any idea who the presenter might have been? No, probably not. Uh, he did have stickers. Mr. M had stickers. They printed them too big, and they filled the whole rear window. <laughs> uh, Josh says, what are you going to do with your matches and hot dogs? Well, hello. I have candles. I have loads of candles and hot dogs. I just like hot dogs. I might even go and buy a packet. I talk about talk about pushing the boat out. I'm, I'm sorry, mustard? No, not really. No, French mustard. Yes, French mustard, which is quite nice. Or there's a German mustard called Senf, which is like a sweet kind of mustard, which is quite nice. It beats the stuff that takes the roof of your mouth off. And uh, I could have. The, I might go and buy a packet of chopped onion. Because they do it in M&S, they do a packet, and you could just sprinkle it in the frying pan and then pop the hot dogs on top of it. But the trouble is you can eat a whole packet of hot dogs. It's not like, it's not like big, thick sausages, is it? Mind you, I might today actually have a big, thick sausage. I might go, I, I, you can't stop me. I might go to Kingston 
and have uh, have one of their their sausage. They're ever so expensive though in Kings. I don't know why because I know what they pay for them. And uh, Angela says, "Have you ever seen a video of somebody being sick on a roller coaster?" I haven't, but I have seen a video, especially if they're at the front and you're behind. Huh. No, but I've seen people eat it. Do you remember seeing there was some boy? It might have been um, uh, a, a, a sort of a television program, and they they're scouts. He tried to drink a drink, and of course it goes all over him. He's absolutely covered in a drink. Chucking it down in Woodford in Essex, says Mark in Woodford in Essex, drenched. Something nice about being isn't drenched great. Isn't drenched great, but not when it's freezing cold out there. <laughs> we don't want to go out today. It's the Feast of St. Celia today. Are you off to Holy Mass, says Donny. St. Cecilia was leaping up and down, wave your knickers in the air. Do you remember that one? That was a pop tune from some... Am I that old? I'm only, remem only remembering these things. Well, where did you come in in the pop hit parade? Who, who was top of the pops when you were younger? Britney Spears! Oh, oh God, I feel feel so desperately sad and old. Britney Spears. No, no, no. We remember, you know, Saint Cecilia, leap up and down, wave your knickers in the air. They played that on the BBC. Top of the Pops Orchestra, trying to get their, their tongue around that one. Uh, another one here says, 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 John from Tewkesbury, chucking it down to Woodford. And um, another one, that, so lovely, uh, Chris in Hampshire says, news just in from Devon. A four-foot-tall spiritualist has escaped from uh, from Dartmoor. <laughs> That's probably a joke here, actually, I should imagine. I haven't quite got that uh, that little bit of it. And uh, somebody says, surely you'd be much better driving a smaller car at your age, something easy to park, like a Piesta. They're, they're for peasants, aren't they, Harry? Poor sad old man, honestly. You've got nothing to look forward to, have you, really? Nothing. He says, P.S., I'm younger. No, you're not. Not called Harry, you're not. No, 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 you're ancient. I know you are. I know you are. I can see a picture of you. I know exactly what you look like. Ancient. Uh, Steve, Diane Abbott's happy today. She went for an IQ test. It came back negative. Thank you. We've got the old ones. Poor old Diane Abbott, honestly. And uh, back down to three degrees in Loch Caron today. Big Craig is telling me this. We've now formed a bond and a friendship, which I quite like. It is Friday, though. It is Friday. But you do get me tomorrow. Uh, Book of Mormon last night. Enjoyed... Uh, enjoyed quite a bit of it but i didn't think it was particularly memorable also think i'm suffering from an allergic reaction says georgia to the grapes in my wine oh nothing worse nothing worse nothing worse is it really terrible 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 and uh, another one here just back to oh somebody else says uh <laughs> talking forward to christmas and chemotherapy john in banbury was the one who told us about that listen you can always look forward to things like that in russia you can take a high altitude uh, flight in a MiG-25. Would you like to do that, says Colin? No, I wouldn't. No, not my sort of thing at all. MiG-25. I like the idea of somebody else doing it, me watching, but I don't want to do it myself. Good Lord above, I want to, I want to live. And uh, Monica says, I really don't understand moaning about the weather today. Nice, warm, dry. And all the uh, passengers, apparently, for some reason, very grateful for a warmed-up cab. I know sometimes my cars I get in the morning. You get in and you have to say, put the heating on, it's a bit cold. I've just come from the cold. I'd like to go into something that's a bit warm. Definitely. I'll put the heating on in my car now, which is fantastic. It's like a furnace, like an, an inferno in my little car, which is fantastic. Mm. Another one here. How about an umbrella which, when closed, displays ignition on? Yeah, and when fully opened on each segment, had Steve Allen on with the logo underneath, says Mark. Could be. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. Try, try, try and look the other way. Trip. <coughs> hey. <coughs> always two. Why is it always two? Why is it always two? I was sitting next to, I told you, I was sitting next to Sheila Fogarty's producer the other day. He didn't stop sneezing. I'm very surprised I didn't come down with influenza or something. I mean, honestly, and I haven't had my jab, which is a bit noisy. How do you fit a hard-boiled egg into a milk bottle? How do you fit a hard-boiled egg into a milk bottle? It's very easy. You get a nightlight, you put it in the milk bottle, you light it, obviously, and the nightlight sits at the bottom, and then you just sit the egg on the top of the milk bottle, and as the candle burns, it will suck the egg into the top of the milk bottle. Did you know that? It's, no, well, you, you've actually taken the, uh, the eggshell off, 
I think. I think so. Much I'm just having a quick check here. But uh, you, so you set light to a piece of paper, drop it in the bottle, place the egg cover in the bottle, and watch what happens. It gets sucked through the hole without splitting and drops into the bottle. That's because the burning paper consumes all the air in the bottle, creating a vacuum. So it's a peeled, hard-boiled egg. So you take this. So you hard-boil an egg, take it off, sitting on the top there. Put some paper in there, and it will. You'll watch it be sucked in. Worth doing. How do non-stick saucepans stay non-stick? It's like super glue. Why does it not stick to the inside of the plastic container it comes in? But how do non-stick saucepans stay non-stick? Well, it turns out they're coated with an almost frictionless chemical coating that repels other molecules. Trademarked as Teflon in 1945. Amazing. Absolutely amazing, the things you learn. How do you get a ship in a bottle? Everybody knows the ship in the bottle, don't they? They actually make the ship and then the masts fold down. And so when you push it in, then they pull the masts back up. Oh, everybody knows. Why do we all know that one? But uh, the, the hull of the boat is made separately. I've got a milk bottle at home with a pack of cards in it and a pair of scissors. And I know people who can put a pack of cards into a milk bottle sealed pack of cards there's a bloke in canada who who makes them probably blokes in this country as well and as if we didn't tempt you enough with the fact that how oh, could be coming back how did the medieval knights in a full suit of armor get onto the horse with great difficulty they had to be winched on and uh, there was sort of a it was a harness and a, and a pulley however if the knight was knocked off his mount in battle too heavy to move, he would lie helpless on the ground at the mercy of the enemy soldiers. So if you fell off your horse, there wasn't much chance of you getting up again because when you were on the ground, you couldn't move the armour. I've seen Henry VIII's armour, a little short, fat thing he was, honestly. And uh, he, his, his armour is uh, is on display. You can see what it looked like. Very clever. I quite fancied a suit of armour. But I think I'd rather have um, sort of C-3PO or something like that or a stormtrooper. I'd like, I'd like one of those outfits. Not to wear. Not to wear. Uh, Steve, how do you get a nightlight into a milk bottle? Oh, honestly, you're just not adventurous enough, are you, really? Have you ever tried knitting your own scarf, says Diane? No, no. Why would you? You can pick them up so cheaply, as I was only saying to Ollie, one of my producers, the other day. You can pick them up so easily, and, uh, and then he loses them. <laughs> Teflon came out of the space programme. Well, it was trademarked in 1945. And uh, that was it. And another one here. Are you going to buy the Robbie Williams Christmas album out today? Battle for the number one album, says John. I might. I might. I, I, I generally sort of like to keep up to date with the beat combos doing the rounds, and uh, that could be mine. After the news, I'll tell you about my uh, two guests for In Conversation this weekend. My first guest, a comedian and fan of this very show, and my second guest, a food critic with an award-winning beard. So, 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 after the royal scandal, I did point out to you yesterday that, um, you know, not content with Randy Andy, which he obviously sort of relished, oh, no, no, no. Dirty Bertie. Dirty Bertie. I quote from the Pall Mall Gazette, Dateline, November 22nd, 1899. Remember it well? You should do. It came from the Royal Correspondent. The story reads as follows. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, is under intense pressure to resign from all his official duties following sensational revelations about his debauched behaviour. His whoring, gambling and unsuitable friendships have all been laid bare in an exclusive interview he granted to the Pall Mall Gazette, an ill-fated attempt to salvage his reputation. As a number of leading charities sought to distance themselves from the Prince, Her Majesty Queen Victoria summoned him to Buckingham Palace for crisis talks. Sound familiar? I thought it would do. Yes. I mean, contrary to what you might have read the other day, that uh, Prince Andrew uh, offered to step back from royal duties, I think the Queen and uh, Prince Charles said, you will step back from royal duties. There's, no, there's no, no way out of this. It's just getting worse, and it's heaping embarrassment on the, uh, on the royal family. Uh, Steve, get yourself to Herman the German shop or online if you fancy a sausage. They've never got them ready. I gave up with them ages ago. They're down by Charing Cross. Three times I've been in there at the time and I've gone, oh, can I have a, a Bradford? Uh, seven minutes. Well, don't open the bloody shop then. Don't waste our time. Unless you've got stuff to sell. You think I'm sitting around for ten minutes while you cook something? Absolutely not. Very shoddy. 
Steve, do we have to keep Prince Andrew as Duke of York? Um, I don't, I don't think he loses the title. He just loses all the privileges. But there again, I mean, he never actually worked very hard. Raining in York this morning, off to Manchester this weekend with daughters to see a live show of our murder podcast. It is good as yours. And we're coming to yours next month, says Sally in York. Ah, super, because we've still got, I've got a um, show at the Magic Circle, 21st. And, uh, and then in February... February, we've got the uh, the show at the Leicester Square Theatre. You like that? Let's hope the weather's gone better, actually. Steve, where, where do you get milk bottles from? Um, well, Kevin, the, the milkman's got milk bottles. I know in the uh, in the super... Actually, some supermarkets have got milk in bottles. I remember that. It does It does happen, I promise you. <laughs> uh, see, the only thing in my milk bottles is rainwater, says Kevin. There we go, he's back again. It's bucketing down in Tottenham Court Road. <laughs> Dear, honestly. Wouldn't the milk in the bottle, Steve, put the candle out? It's a thought, isn't it? I should have thought of that one. Uh, did you know that Henry VIII's body exploded in his coffin? Um, I believe somebody's body exploded at Cyan House, but I can't remember because the gas is built up because he was a fat old thing, wasn't he? I think. I, um, I know somebody exploded the, uh, the coffin. Uh, Henry VIII was not short. He was six foot tall. Someone else's armour probably, well, he probably borrowed it or just stole it, I should imagine. Because uh, I've seen his uh, his coffin because it's in St Paul's Cathedral. He never got to reside in it. I don't know where he's buried, actually. I'm really not sure. Uh, Steve, there's a video of a man catching a mobile phone uh, on a roller coaster that fell out of somebody's front pocket. Do you know, I lost my wallet the other day. I put it down and said, I just made a phone call to change the time of the uh, of the car for me in the morning. And then I couldn't find the wallet. I went round everywhere. Turned out it was in the bathroom, sitting on a pile of country lifes. Really ridiculous. My first guest on In Conversation this weekend is a British comedian and actor. Since breaking onto the scene in 1998, he's been an ever-present on the touring scene. An ever-present comedian. He makes regular appearances on panel shows such as 8 out of 10 cats taskmaster and the comedy world cup as well as hosting channel 4's stand up for the week as an actor he starred in the movie swinging with the finkles and more recently in the series devils he's also a big fan of this show it's paul chowdhury he came in to talk about his latest tour live in it and how tough it is starting in the comedy profession well, there wasn't even any money in those. Oh, right. You know, it takes years to even get paid 20 quid at a gig. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I actually broke into the two major clubs in England, the Comedy Store and Jonglers, within two years of stand-up. So I thought, oh, actually, people are paying me for this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got won a new act competition early on, got 50 quid, gave it to my parents, that kind of thing. Oh, that's nice. You know. That's nice. I, I would expect no less from you. No <laughs> less. Was it difficult because of your ethnicity to break in? Were Back they a bit then, wary? Yeah. There weren't, it wasn't, uh, I started in mid-98, you know, so, oh, right. so there wasn't much diversity around then, yeah. you know, I'd break into the clubs and when it came to the TV breaks, it were few and far between, and you were kind of judged on your ethnicity, but I'm mm. British, I was born in London, so I know. <laughs> I'm more British than I am, I couldn't even do a Bollywood film. <laughs> Oh, believe you me, he could. Oh, yes, he could. Paul Chowdhury, who's in conversation with me over this weekend. As well as Paul, I'll be talking to the writer, the food critic and jazz musician. As a food critic, he's won multiple awards for his craft, whilst also appearing as a judge on many shows, including Top Chef Masters and Master Chef, and authoring many books on the art of culinary critique. As an author, he's published multiple fiction and non-fiction best-selling books, such as The Marble Kiss, Day of Atonement, and My Last Supper. He plays piano with his touring jazz ensemble. He's won Sony Awards for his work in radio, and he's even got an award-winning beard. It's Jay Rayner. Jay came in to talk about his new podcast, Out to Lunch, and how he became a food critic. All right, I'm a print journalist and have been, although I do many other things now, but I have been for 30 years. And by the time the restaurant column came up in 99, because the incumbent was moving on, I was exhausted by being a journalist. I was the uh, one of the long-form feature writers on The Observer, right. and I needed a specialism. And um, it is a writing job, first and foremost. People say, oh, I'd love to be paid to eat all that food. And I say, I do the eating for free. It's the writing I get paid yes, for. Yes. Um, and that's, that's sort of the key thing. So there are many, many people who could eat many more meals in many more restaurants <laughs> than I can. It's whether they could then write a column 
brought out me for 20 years, which doesn't make you feel like, oh, it's, well, there are some people who think this. Obviously, oh, rain has gone out for a trough again. <laughs> it's, it's about the pros. Um, yeah. I, my job is to sell newspapers or the digital equivalent thereof, not to sell restaurants. So what are you looking at in a row? You, you said it starts outside. I also believe that. It, it goes from outside to the reaction of the staff inside, the way that you're treated. I'm not looking for sort of bowing and scraping. I'm just looking for somebody to be, hello. Yes. It's very simple. It's very I mean, simple. I've, al I've always said, I used to do a show. I do a lot of live shows. There's, um, I've got a new one at the moment. But I, I did one about terrible restaurant experiences called My Dining Hell. And I always said, uh, I, I, I quoted Tolstoy, in which, uh, at the beginning of Anna Karenna, the thing about happy families, and unhappy families, said all good restaurants are good in the same way. They have tables, they have chairs, they have food you want to eat, and staff who are not psychopaths. All bad restaurants are uniquely bad. They find different ways to muck it up. Uh, it's remarkable. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm looking at everything. It, from the moment I look at the website, I dealt with one recently where the r r website said we cater for dietary requirements, but we do not cater for dislikes. And oh. I thought, well, who said hospitality was dead? Certainly not Jay Rayner. In conversation with me this weekend, along with Paul Chowdhury. You can hear me talking to Paul and Jay tomorrow morning from 6 after the best of Steve Allen, and on Sunday evening from 9pm. Or if you can't join me this weekend, you can listen to the whole thing by downloading Global Player. Just go to the App Store on your iPhone or iPad, or Google Play on your Android device. Well worth doing, I promise you. Steve, I think Henry VIII is buried in the chapel at Windsor. Really? I'm not sure, actually. Can we find out where he was where he's buried? I know that his uh, coffin was used for somebody else in St Paul's Cathedral. I can't remember who it is. Was it Nelson? Might be somebody. But uh, I don't know where they put Henry VIII. I've got no idea. Uh, also, also, the reason we drive on the left-hand side goes back to jousting. I don't know. I mean, it's just all over the place. Uh, Steve, what are these shows you talk about you do in theatres? Oh, it's a nude uh, event. <laughs> As if. Uh, somebody says he's buried at Hampton Court. I don't think he is. I don't know where you'd bury him at Hampton Court. Can you find out where he's buried? Henry VIII, where's he buried? Find out. I don't think he's buried Hampton Court. Yes, can the assistant do it? I'm oh, very slow. I mentioned it twice. Goodness sake, what do you need to do here? Take all your clothes off and wave a flag. Hello. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the world. Britons never, never, never shall be slaves. He's buried at... Oh, he's buried at St George's in, uh, in Windsor. There you go. Charles I is buried there. That's what I told you, lost his head. And uh, they only know because they opened the coffin and there was a separate head in the in the coffin with what remains of him. And they knew because he got a little a little beard as well. Interesting, isn't it? So that's where they are. They're Windsor. They're Windsor. Jane Seymour could be there as well. There's a load of royals buried uh, all over the place. Frogmore's very popular for the royals. They seem to like that one. And uh, St. Peter Unvincula. Seymour's there as well. Are they in the same place, do you think? Are they sort of buried separately or... Seymour, yeah. And Charles I, all in the choir. All in the choir? Oh, right, choir, yeah. Yeah, Q-U-I-R-E. Uh, as opposed to C-H-O-I-R. <laughs> Promising to transform the country with a marquee pledge of 75 billion towards social housing. Nick will be asking, are these plans radical or are they just unfeasible? That says the man guilty of, hit, of killing Helen McCourt is due for release from prison, despite never having disclosed where her body is. 30 years on from her murder, Nick will be joined by Helen's mother, Marie. Plus, Nick will be speaking to the mother of the late Harry Dunn, who says she's been disgusted with Dominic Raab over his treatment of the family's legal action against the Foreign Office in the wake of her son's death. All of that and more this morning with Nick Ferrari at breakfast from 7 this morning on LBC. That's quite dreadful, isn't it, really? Quite, quite dreadful. Uh, Viddy Jones has done another piece on coping without his wife. I mean, he, uh, how many pieces has he done so far? He must have done loads of them so far. Uh, also, uh, you've got that dreadful shopping programme with, uh, with Keith Lemon. It really is truly dreadful. I mean, seriously, I don't know why anybody ever thought he was funny. It's these peculiar hats which were previously worn by the Diddy men. Uh, so, uh, a lock of hair. I still think this is a good story. The lock of hair belonging to Bonnie Prince Charlie to be sold at auction. That's like when they opened the, the coffin in, uh, in Royal Chapel, Windsor. They discovered Charles I's body, the head separately, and they knew it was him because he had a little beard. It'd be like somebody cutting that little beard off and going, that's Charles I's beard. That's, that's sort of, that's genuine antique. Genuine antique. I was watching another one of these antique programmes yesterday. I, um, 
I actually get sort of quite into antique programs. I would love to be able to identify things at car boots. You know, you sort of go along there and they pick it up, turn up, no, nothing. And, it, and, they're, and they're looking for things which they can make money out of. It's very good, actually. It's very good. Uh, my friend Stuart Manning, he says, I shouldn't, but I am. So he's having, I don't know what it is, actually. I don't know what he's bought here, but it's something that you heat up. But uh, sadly, no, no pigs in blankets. See, that is, that is for me, definitely, this morning, the pigs in blankets. It's got to be the thing. If I don't get them, I'm going to be so grouchy, which is, which is very unusual. Very unusual. Uh, also, what am I looking at here? I'm looking at something else, actually. I see that uh, Maureen Lipman has had a blistering attack on Jeremy Corbyn and Labour with a mock version of her BT advert. I don't know, it gets worse and worse, doesn't it? People complain about everything. People complain about everything. And, um... Who's this one here? Oh, this is Stuart as well. He can do all sorts of things. He says, I think the royal family should take Andrew's HRH title from him. I, I don't know what, what the protocol is. Seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm, I sort of worry about what is the protocol of, of something like that. Somebody steps back from their royal duties. You then take the title away and they become a commoner. I don't think it works. I don't think so. Although, I have to be honest, I'm probably likely to agree with you. So, this lock of hair belonging to Bonnie Prince Charlie to be sold at auction. I mean, it's, just, it's Bonnie Prince Charlie. I mean, for goodness sake, he's not here anymore. It would be the most amazing thing, wouldn't it? Most amazing thing. The Clangers creator. <whistles> Remember that one? Uh, leave £288,000 in his will. See, I thought if you left that in your will, that's the price of your property, isn't it? Doesn't that sort of get added into it? Uh, also, £150,000 can buy the Victoria Cross of the hero who swam the river to raid the gun post. Uh, the Crankies vowed to make a panto comeback which is good and the navy recruiters please don't call snowflake applicants fat they get very upset so i mean you can't have somebody in it though i mean you're supposed to be the height of fitness and fat would not be the height of fitness at all uh school packed lunches are full of junk says prue leith I wouldn't disagree that was only for the people who didn't have a school dinner we used to have school dinners because I, I quite like the school dinners. I, I'm, I'm sure my mother wouldn't have sat there and made sandwiches. But my auntie, uh, for her children at school, would make sandwiches the night before and freeze them. In fact, she'd make quite a lot of them. Then take them out, put them in a lunchbox. By the time I got to school, they would have defrosted. So you could freeze cheese and tomato and stuff like that. So that's good, isn't it, really? Andrew's Crisis Summit, it rolls and it rolls. Sarah Ferguson then turns up. What it's got to do with her, I've got no idea. But there again, as I said before, and the papers are saying she's brought embarrassment on the royal family time and time again. Plus, finders cheaters. Two metal detectorists. I always wanted a metal detector. They found all this Viking hoard. Ingots, jewellery. And what did they do? They started selling it privately. They didn't declare it. You have to declare it. It's treasure trove. Found guilty. And uh, we're waiting for sentencing on that one. Uh, I love the way they, they tried to cover their faces going into court. Because in all the other papers, we can see exactly what they look like. Plus, plus, plus. Wait a minute. The Christmas uh, rail strike is on. That's going to disrupt you. All the people coming to town doing shopping. Union militants that are pressing. I thought we'd seen the end of this stupid farce of going on about sort of disrupting everything. The only people it's affecting... Are us. Why do we get affected by this sort of It's so annoying. But it's, it's going to cause disruption to millions of people. Millions of people. And it's, it's going to affect it's going to affect you if you're Christmas shopping, for getting home, for going out. I luckily have lots of opportunities of getting home. Might take me a bit longer, but I, I can manage it. Warren thinks, white Christmas. He says, I reckon about three weeks' time, white Christmas. Do you know, I mean, it is cold. It doesn't necessarily work, though, does it? That when it's cold, it snows. But I, I seriously thought yesterday, I looked up into the sky and I thought, whoa, that looks like it's going to start tipping it down. Uh, definitely. Social media is killing relationships more than ever before. The amount of people who are using social media for finding relationships, but at the same time, it can kill the relationship. Uh, also, viewers will be more frightened. I say viewers, I'm sorry, that's you. Uh, frightened by the new Doctor Who series. I've never been frightened by it. Even when I was little, the Daleks came out and, um, you know, there was nothing very frightening about it. I didn't think there was anything very frightening. I never went, ooh, no, no, because we first started watching it in black and white. John Bishop says being a parent is hard. And the postman who smashed the opium gangs in China, plus the Toby Carvery, will deliver a Sunday roast to your door. You, you order it, it's like eight quid, 
and they do on one of these delivery companies. I wonder how warm... Are these, do these things arrive hot or whatever? When you... I mean, I've never done it. When you order a takeaway pizza, is it hot when it arrives? Oh, right. How do they keep it hot? Oh, they go quite quickly. Oh, right. That was interesting, isn't it? I, I, I only just thought about it a minute ago. I, mean, I thought about, you know, should I order Chinese takeaway? And then I think, yeah, but most of it would be cold when it actually got there, because they only stick it in the back of their sack thing, don't they, really? Oh, dear. Uh, so, Outward Bound and Huddersfield Uni have ditched Andy now. In fact, literally, the uh, the list is growing by the day. A lot of people... There's a few people who've said that they'll they'll reserve their rights you know, not jump to conclusions, but that the students voted him out straight away, so then he has to do it. He must be thinking, he must be there, having been throughout his entire life terribly, terribly arrogant, and it's a case of, you know, he's long funded the jet-setting lifestyles of his two daughters, who don't appear to do anything at all. They have jobs, but nobody's ever seen them there. So Eugenie and Beatrice, who's the bride-to-be, in the wake of his fall from grace, what what now for Papa's little princesses? I wouldn't mind, but they're sort of their their voting age. You know, I wonder if they knew what was going on. I wonder if they they were also aware of these things. I don't know, but uh, but they had a picture taken at a ball in Windsor, where they sort of dressed up, and Andrew puts his sort of funny little medals on and his hat and all the rest of it. But uh, not anymore. It's all collapsed. But, and he loses the money, apparently. Although I was totally convinced that the Queen would be paying uh, for it. Would have thought so. Would have thought so. And uh, 84850, all found gold and silver treasure belongs to the Queen. Yes, it does. It's, tr it's called Treasure Trove. It's called Treasure Trove. And that's, the, uh, that's the, uh, the only way you can describe it. But you're supposed to hand it in. And what they do is, museums can buy it and then you get the, the proceeds, but you've got to hand it in. This, uh, this, this pair, Leighton Davies and George Powell, decided not to. They reckon that uh, it was worth about three million pounds, some of the coins. I mean, it's, it's really quite, uh, quite rare. Dug up on a farm in Herefordshire in June 2015. I mean, 300 coins, priceless uh, gold rings, a dragon's head bracelet. I mean, the sort of stuff you just don't expect to find. And they thought, we'll have a bit of this. But anyway, they could be, uh, they, <laughs> they actually could be sort of spending their, their time in prison. So, uh, they'll have time to reflect. Time to reflect. And feel sorry this morning for an ex-beauty queen. She's called Charlotte Thompson. Uh, she's got a partner, he's called Joey. They're a very nice couple. And they've got a lovely house. Uh, £600,000. Unfortunately, it's falling off the edge of the cliff. Their, their garden's gone. And they're just waiting she said, we've been liaising over the past 12 months. There are plans in place to rebuild and shore up the cliff. Uh, the cliff fall has affected a tiny bit at the end of the garden. Nowhere near the property itself and not in an area. But the trouble is, they are living on the edge. It could be a wee bit dangerous. Terry Gilliam celebrates a birthday today. Many happy returns of the day. Terry is 79. Good Lord. And Jamie Lee Curtis is 61, the daughter of uh, Janet Lee and Tony Curtis. Uh, also, on this day in 1963, which is November 22nd, With the Beatles was released, sold more than a million copies, and Angela Merkel became the first female Chancellor of Germany in the year 2000 on a freezing cold Friday. I mean, it really is. It's a most ghastly weather, and it's not getting any warmer, is it? Although they've said this weekend, and in fact already, I think, the rain has started. Uh, front pages. Daily Mail revealed the next queen for TV's The Crown, and uh, it's going to be Imelda Staunton, who is a fabulous little actress. I mean, seriously. She's, she, I don't think she realises how, how good she is. Uh, also, families face the triple whammy of tax rises, price hikes and lower wages as a result of Jeremy Corbyn's colossal socialist spending splurge, experts have warned. Daily uh, Star today... Wrighty's tax hell. They think that Ian Wright could actually be in the jungle because he owes a huge amount on his uh, tax bill. Which actually, if that is true, and that is the case, then I have no sympathy for him whatsoever. He's earned serious money in his lifetime. Serious money. And continues to do so. If these people spend it, that's their big problem. That's their big problem. I don't think we should have television programmes made to help out tax avoiders. Uh, jungle bells. Nobody's going under the showers. Nobody's going under the showers. I don't. I think it's become a bit naff and passe, hasn't it, really? Plus, uh, flare thugs destroyed my boobs. This is a Liam Gallagher fan. Stacey Andrews 
She was hit by a flare at a gig. Who on earth took a flare to a gig? I've got no idea. Uh, the Sun, Jezza Christmas tax shocks. Labour's plans to clobber workers. Why is nobody doing the my uh, the uh, the uh, the Mylene? And uh, shamed princes smile as top aide axed. Which is lovely, isn't it? Of course, nice to pass it on to somebody else. The office is closed as well. And Furious Fergie joins him at the palace. I don't know what she was doing with it. She sticks her beak in everywhere, doesn't she? But uh, there she is with a big smile on her face. As if this was like an everyday occurrence. Oh, don't worry. We're still going to Verbier. We're still living in a £13 million thing. And I'm still living rent-free with him. Honestly, it really is too awful for words. Now Andy in Gulf Trip Row. He was due to be going to Dubai to toady up to people again. They've all been there. They've all been there, and uh, Prince Andrew was uh, was meeting here uh, at the Royal Windsor Horse Show, the King of Bahrain. And uh, probably, well, we're going to pop over, you know, me and uh, Sarah and the, and the two children. <laughs> Labour's Manifesto, Daily Mirror, on your side, 3,000 new bus routes. Well, they're going to be building new roads, do you think? I don't know whether that works, does it really? Billionaire Tory donor bungs Boris a million. Actually, the, the Tory party was streaks ahead of everybody else. It was like the money that they had coming in was something like five million. Five million. And, and then the, the Labour Party were way down the list on sort of about 250,000, which was very odd, wasn't it, really? Uh, another one here, somebody called Florentina. I don't believe anybody's called Florentina. Absolutely. And uh, it says, I've been driving over 20 minutes now. You've not said anything about Katie Price. You missed the beginning of the programme then. I can't help if you're late to the game. Goodness sake, honestly. Uh, also, uh, Steve says, Neil, I remember being scared of the Cybermen. Were you? I was never. F I don't. Well, I don't think I was scared of anything like that. Uh, the Express today: the shocking proof our world is drowning, and it's just a, a lot of mess. A lot of mess. Plus, Labour's manifesto uh, claimed that only the well-off will pay for Corbyn's spending spree. As I said before, even we got a, a clip in that Lily Allen was delighted. In fact, she burst into tears of joy that he was going to clobber the rich. And you think, well, you've got fifteen million quid. You're rich. Perhaps he'll clobber you as well. You know. I love these people that say, I'm protecting my money, and I? Prince Andrew, crisis summit at the palace. He's waving to the, for, to the press like it was some jolly or something. <laughs> you have no idea. Have you read a paper, sir? I don't know why I called you, sir. Uh, plus, £25 million pound birthday jackpot must be won on the lottery Saturday. So, it's always this money, isn't it? Which uh, Perhaps Andrew will buy a lottery ticket. Although he's supposed to have a fortune of about... 56 million where it's come from we've got no idea we can't fathom this out at all i can't work out throughout his entire life where the money's come from 56 million i mean he paid that so that there's no mortgage on the verbier chalet it's 13 million pounds worth him and fergie stay there and the children and else. i think it's rented out during the week for some fantastic amount like sort of twenty five thousand pounds a week uh, here we go. Prince Andrew refuses to drop pitch at Palace despite quitting public duties. Let's face it, I'm sure that they'll, they'll have that one as well. Uh, the metal detectorist found guilty of stealing a Viking treasure trove worth three million. Ghastly pair, these ones. George Powell, 38. Leighton Davis, 51. Failed to tell the authorities they found this stuff. So they started selling it privately. Make it a fortune. And half of it's not been recovered. Ghastly people. Prison. <laughs> the Guardian. Uh, Corbyn unveils Labour's most radical manifesto for decades. And so here it is. He says the party's election offering was full of popular policies. Well, it's certainly what the people want to hear, isn't it? Whether or not the, we, we can actually find the money for it remains to be seen. Uh, another one here. I downloaded and listened to four of your podcasts on a flight from Australia. So, uh, fantastic. Oh, four of the podcasts. Oh, keep, keep downloading, please. We're hoping to achieve by next week, first, second and third place in the, po in the podcast charts. At the moment, I've got number one, but I'd quite like my other two podcasts to move. I mean, even if you don't listen to them, but just download them. Because we'd, we'd, we'd quite like to do that one. That'd be quite a nice thing. Won't happen, of course, but it doesn't matter. Uh, election fears, apparently, according to the Times, made Charles call for the Duke to be removed. Must be very difficult when it's your younger brother, isn't it? And you have to start doing things like this. What will he do now? Jigsaws, I should imagine. I can't think. I mean, what else is he going to do? He's not being allowed near anything, but he can still go to official engagements. I don't think the public are going to take to that. They really aren't. I think what the public want him to do, certainly in America we know what they want him to do, they want him to go and talk 
to the FBI and tell them everything he knows. He's the only one who knows what went on. He's the only one. Nobody else knows, do they? It would be quite nice if he if he came clean about everything and started saying, well, you know, this happened, I stayed... I mean, he, he, he's tried to justify certain things, but the, the British press are not buying it at all. They're really not, and you, and you feel... I mean, in one way, I feel a bit sorry for him, but he's kind of heaped it on himself because he's had this arrogance throughout his... Uh, throughout his life, where he just sort of, he snootily looks down on everybody. Well, this is the time everybody's looking down on him, because it's all collapsed, him and the family. It's just not, not happening at all. Not happening. And I don't know where it goes from here. I suppose the next thing is he flies to America. He's had to cancel Bahrain. So what is he doing now? What will he do, sit at home? Will Sarah Ferguson go, oh, there, 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 because that's not going so well either, is it? What was she doing at Buckingham Palace? Nobody knows. Nobody really knows what she does at all. I always remember seeing her being into that. That program just comes back to haunt me. The one where she sort of had a, had a little bit of a strop because he dared to ask. You know, somebody actually dared to ask something that was in a book. I've talked about this before. Well, you know, I haven't talked about it to me. That's what he was trying to say to her, but he couldn't get the words out either. He was, he was probably, and of course, they, they obviously ran it and going, well, this is it. Cut that piece out there. She goes talking to her minions. Oh, there you go. Been brought down to earth with a huge, big bump at the moment. And that's just about it for this morning. It's, uh, it's gone by really, really quickly this week. It really has. We've had some lovely guests to talk to. And uh, don't forget this weekend's In Conversation. Tomorrow morning at 6 till 7, Paul Chowdhury and Jay Rayner repeated Sunday night at uh, 9. So I hope we don't get drenched getting out of the building, but I have a sneaking feeling we will, but it doesn't matter. Just uh, let me tell you what's coming up on my free podcast today on my little bit extra. Katie Price's Pink Range Rover is repossessed. Heart bleeds, things going from bad to worse. Cheryl teaches her two-year-old how to meditate. I hope she's not taught him how to fight, too. And uh, this morning, viewers are left terrified by a creepy human-like robot. More human than most of TOWIE. Made in Chelsea and Love Island. And the Victoria's Secret fashion show is cancelled. The boys around here are devastated. Seriously. Heard of turnip? I mean, I've heard of Brussels tops. But I've never heard of turnip tops. Can't hear you. Why can't I hear you? No, I'm not hearing you. Oh, muff. Oh, you're coming through the wrong side now. Wait a minute. Try again. Oh, that's better. I'm all over the place with my headphones, I tell you. Very nice, thank you. Uh, so, anyways, we've got a cup of tea. We've got the newspapers. We've got, uh, got some heating going. Stoked up the fire. We'll put another tempence in the meter. It's fantastic. Uh, it turns out that Beatrice, we're told by one of the papers, I mean, wh whether this is true or not, helped set up the Newsnight interview. Big mistake there. Not the brightest family, are they? But, uh, I mean, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought a month ago, when we first started talking about this, that it would see the downfall of Prince Andrew? And, you know, everybody's delighted. Apart from a few people who wrote into the BBC. Dear BBC... They always write in, don't they? And they sort of go, I'm absolutely... Dis Somebody said, some poor old soul, honestly, was droning on about the uh, the Andrew interview, saying there are other news stories. And I thought, well, they, they covered all the other news stories as well. Unfortunately, Andrew, it was, it was just an hour of bashing Andrew. Well, I'm terribly sorry if you see it like that snowflake, because there's always a snowflake, isn't there? And the, but unfortunately, the, um, the support for the royal family is dwindling almost on an hourly basis. I mean, the rate we're going, they're all cancelling Christmas at Sandringham. We're very busy. We're shopping from the Argos catalogue. You know, we, we can't make it up there to see. So, in fact, we know that Harry and Meghan are not going to go. Uh, we know that... Um, we don't think... Uh, we're not sure about Andrew. I mean, <laughs> I don't think he's... Going, apparently, apparently, here's an odd one, he doesn't have any friends. That's what they've said. All his friends tend to be these girls that he hangs around with, of which there are numerous photographs. And, uh, but he doesn't have any proper friends. You know, mind you, I don't think Sarah Ferguson's got proper friends. I mean, she really is an, odd, an oddball. Uh, plus, uh, what do we have here? Uh, Joe Swinson. Remember Joe Swinson? Good. Branded a hypocrite. In 18 months, she took 77 flights. 70, I couldn't believe it, 77 flights. Heston tops the posh festive treats. About 375 quid if you want um, Christmas uh, lunch with Heston. I mean, admittedly, I'm a huge fan of Heston. Huge fan, but I think, you know, sometimes, if there's four of you or five of you, can you imagine? That's 400, you're, you're looking at, you need a, you need a mortgage. Uh, also, the Euro Millions. You know, we, we said that we've uh, we found a winner. They're British. 
for some reason, that always makes me feel a bit happy. I don't like to feel that we've, uh, that we've sort of, you know, sweated over buying a blooming ticket for this thing, and we've ended up with, with nothing. Uh, and that's, it's gone to a Brit, so I, I kind of feel, I mean, I know it's Euro millions, but I kind of feel it's ours. Uh, also, the council tearing down posters for charities and church services. The company set up by Jeremy Corbyn's son goes into liquidation. Something to do with um, marijuana and stuff like that, I don't know. He's calling it NHS, National Hemp Service. Uh, plus, Nottingham, home to the country's rudest people. I mean, who can believe that? Who can believe it? I mean, surely it can't be, it must be Hounslow. Hounslow is full of very rude, but all sorts, there's rude people everywhere. They're not just indicative of Nottingham, are they? I don't think so. Uh, 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. Uh, thank God the Prince Andrew saga is over. Uh, it's not. It's absolutely not. I wish I could say it was. He's on the front page of every paper. New Prince Andrew girl, he blew raspberries into my breasts. Well, how is that possible? I mean, you can put a raspberry... Well, I don't know. Epstein paid me to entertain him. He said I should pose for Sexy Mag. It's just getting worse, isn't it? It's getting worse. The only paper that doesn't seem to put him on the front page is the the Daily Star, yes. They've actually put him inside all the, uh, all the rest of it. Plus, how many more people going into the jungle are in there to pay tax bills? It turns out that Ian Wright might or might not owe a small fortune. Um, and then Jacqueline Josser had a tax bill in. What, what is the matter with these people? I said the other week, I was getting a bit, a bit sort of fed up. You know, little people, like us, have to pay our, our taxes. People who are earning loads more than we are, you know, people like Nick Abbott, you know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden people go, and especially if they're in showbiz, especially if they're in showbiz, and, and so you've got two people out of EastEnders, who I would think the average salary in EastEnders would be, for somebody in, in you know, normal bit of the cast, not sort of mega, mega star, 100,000 a year, 120,000 a year, I would think that would be reasonable. If it was somebody bigger, it could go up to 400,000 a year, but it, it's not as much as you think. They can earn much more, you know, going into another branch of the business. But anyway, so you've got Jacqueline Josser, the bloke who played Minty, he owes money all over the place to the tax man. When they've earned it, why don't they put some aside so that they can pay their, their tax bill? Jacqueline Josser has got a sort of a boyfriend or husband or whatever it is now. I've got no idea. But he must be earning money. I mean, I, I, find, it, I find it quite disturbing that the tax man comes a-calling and, and they go, oh, I haven't got the money. And you think, well, where is it? Where is it? And the answer is, they've spent it. Well... That means, as far as I'm concerned, that they're mishandling their money. Highest earning stars of EastEnders, Adam Woodyatt and Danny Dyer. I would think that. It doesn't say. They say, you know, um, they earn between 200 and 250,000 uh, pounds. Casualty, Derek Thompson earned 350 to 400,000 and Amanda Mealing, 250 to 300,000, which is quite a lot, isn't it? So you've got the people like. Uh, Jane Beale, Letitia Dean, uh, Tamika Empson, Scott Maslin, people like that. Between 150 and 200,000 pounds. Well, I mean, if they can't manage on that, there's something the matter with them. Unless they're sort of falling into the uh, Sarah Ferguson camp, she can't manage it. I mean, she couldn't manage a light bulb. To be honest with you, I mean, she was rumoured to be five million pounds in debt. Somebody said she's got not a clue about money. Not got a clue about anything, really. That's why, you know, you watch the, the fallout of, of her. But apparently she's supporting Andrew all the way through, which is good news. Somebody's got to. He doesn't have any support from anybody else. Do you see them doorstepping the other one? Well, they didn't doorstep her. Princess Anne. She gets out of a car to go to a thing. Hello, hello. I didn't actually say hello. And I just made that bit up. And, um, and they ask her about, about Andrew. She doesn't say a word. You know why? None of them like him. You remember a short while ago, he couldn't be bothered to get out of his vehicle to open a, a, a gate on the Windsor Estate. What did he do? He drove through the gate, and we picked up the bill for repairing the gate and the, uh, and the, the vehicle he had at the time. He couldn't be bothered to do a, a you know, a one-mile trip around it. He's that arrogant. So, in fact, it was quite pleasing for everybody who hates him, which turns out to be 95% of the country at the moment. Uh, there's only a small 5% who go, oh, he's really a nice bloke. And you go, I don't think he is. He has history. He has history. And so, everybody's quite delighted that he's been brought down. I think he's surprised. Having watched his sort of face on this thing, he thought, oh, I'm getting away with this, I can do this, I can tell him anything and they'll do it because I'm Prince Andrew. Unfortunately, the papers didn't react like that. They, they reacted completely opposite. Completely opposite. They were determined to sort of, to make him, you know, to, to, to get rid of him. 
and to push it enough that the Queen, together with Charles, we're told, the worst thing was, and there she was, little Miss Madam, little Miss Madam Sarah Ferguson, who turns up at Buckingham Palace, and to let everybody know who she is, she winds down the window, and so they can see and does a big smile for it. I think, are you really in the real world, darling, or are you not? And the answer is, she's not. Uh, so, we we'll take all your texts and emails. So, they said, no, so just going back to the jungle, there's quite a few of them paying off tax bills, including Ian Wright, I'm told. So, there's Ian Wright, Minty, Jacqueline Joss, who else is paying off a tax bill? These people, it dis it's absolutely disgraceful. Uh, Daniel O'Donnell uh, wants to have an affair. Oh, well, who doesn't? I mean, come on for Christmas. Christmas, I mean, that's the best thing, isn't it? You have an affair. I mean, people will be having office flings. That's why I don't go to the party. It's not worth it. A couple of sherbets on anybody's. There's no point. Seriously, I'll stand in the corner. Just, yeah, bring it on, bring it on. But uh, there, there will be the office party. There will be people sitting on top of the photocopier, taking a photocopy of their bottom for some reason. And people have to guess who it is. We did a thing one year. We had pictures of us as children up on the board in the office. And people had to sort of guess who it was. I was fairly obvious. Good looking young man, you know, tall. And, uh, and I looked like me when I was younger. I didn't look any different. Uh, plus, there is a killer on the loose in the jungle, and I mean a killer. Less than an hour out of the camp, they found the body of a man in a sleeping bag. The police have gone into meltdown trying to find out who it is, and if it's somebody who is uh, who is still at loose, who has perpetrated the crime. Martin Bashir, to get his own chat show, please God no. The last thing he did was 20 years ago when he interviewed Diana. It wasn't exactly the most difficult interview. She just sat there and played up to him. Yes, there were three in our relationship. It was a bit crowded. And we all went, oh, that's a shame, isn't it? You know, because her husband was cheating. Phil Vickery's got a stir-up Christmas cake. Uh, Labour's pledging uh, payouts for 3.8 million women denied pensions. And, um, what was the other one? Oh, a week of sopping wet weather. Really, ghastly, 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 ghastly. But it's only water. It doesn't really make any difference. And the couple who went with their metal detectors, we found two this week. Oh, by the way, don't ever go metal detecting and keep what you find. There was two boys from Wales. I say boys. One was a man. One was sort of, you know, barely out of pants. And they, they dug up a Viking hall on a farmer's land. And as opposed to handing it in because it's treasure trove, they decided they would sell a lot of it off privately, making in the proceeds about 12 million quid. One's gone to prison for 10 years, the other one's gone to prison for seven years, because it belongs to the Queen. It's found in the ground. And if you find something in the ground, I mean, obviously, barring cemeteries, it belongs to the Queen. And so it's treasure trove. And then what they do is they, they put a market value on it. But the, 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 these two old crooks decided that they would line their own pockets. Now, of course, they're lining their own pockets, but it's in prison, which is a shame. But there was another couple who went out, and they turned an absolute gem up in a turnip field, of all places. What did they get? A hand grenade. They found a hand grenade. I mean, the one thing you don't do if you find a hand grenade is you... I mean, I wouldn't know if it was live or if it wasn't live. I'm assuming if it's still got the pin in, it's OK, because you take the pin out and then you go, hand grenade, and then you throw it like that. And, and that's how it works. In, in their particular case, I'm assuming they ran like heck. Eamon Holmes is in a race storm. For, now, you'll have to excuse me on this one because I wasn't, I wasn't aware of this either. You'll have heard of the word, but I'd never heard of this word in this context. He called Meghan Markle uppity. Well, I've never heard that before in my life. I know, I know the word uppity. It's like if somebody says, oh, you're a bit uppity, aren't you? And you go, it's, it, it, it's like a little bit full of yourself kind of thing but apparently it has even worse connotations so uh, they, they, they've said that he won't be using the word again well he's like me well he's not like me he's fatter than me but he uh he, he used the word and he didn't know what it was it's like years ago you remember i i got into trouble because i called sarah ferguson a strumpet and it made it onto have i got news for you they actually said which local radio dj <laughs> called Sarah Ferguson a strumpet and nobody guessed it was me and so I was on the because we didn't know what it meant I thought it was a funny word that Kenneth Williams would have used Wah, strumpet kind of thing and apparently it means hooker we had no, we went through every book under the sun to try in fact we had no idea no idea what things mean so it only goes to prove there are all these odd peculiar words out there which have different meanings check I suppose beforehand but I wouldn't have known I'd have been the same as Eamon Holmes I'd have I'd have said that I wouldn't have said it of her but uh, it's certainly there. Certainly there. Uh, apparently, if you're going to a party, party today, 
do not take a bottle of wine. Apparently, it's very naff. If you're going to a dinner party, you don't take... What do you take, then? I mean, you take a box of chocolates or something, or perhaps better food. <laughs> Get... You've taken exotic fruits, have you? What would you call an exotic fruit? What do you... Have you, you t oh, right. Wow. What do you do? Sort of take a basket or something in, go, happy holiday. Look, I brought your basket of fruit. Uh, six. Oh, how lovely, honestly. When, when you went for dinner, producer, you pick some exotic fruits and put them in a, in a bag. Isn't that nice? He's so caring. So caring. I, w I would just take probably flowers. I wouldn't think, if I was going to a dinner party, I wouldn't take wine. Because if, you, if you're taking wine, you might as well take your own blooming food. Might as well get, you, so you sit there and you go, I couldn't eat any of that, but don't worry. Oh, ding dong, there's the doorbell. That'll be Deliveroo. And Deliveroo can, because otherwise, you, you know, you don't want to eat food that you might not like. You know, I'm, I'm always very, very careful about things like that. Actually, I, to be honest with you, I don't really go out to many dinner parties. I mean, not not because I don't enjoy eating, because because I do. Because I do. But it's a case of, I can't do anything during the week. They had a little drinky poos party during the week, and my assistant producer was well the worse for wear the next day. Somebody obviously was forcing drink down him. I mean, he doesn't normally drink. He's one of those sort of people. But he, uh, he came in, oh, so I feel awful. And I said to him, what is my hard and fast rule? <laughs> Steve, Ian Wright believes in UFOs. Uh, does he? He's, he's, he's very nasty, isn't he? He has a, he has a very nasty, uh, very nasty temper on him, I've discovered, which somebody uh, predicted a little while ago. Uh, Steve, please shout me out more so I can get, uh, get famous of my ideas and make some money. Well, obviously not. You'd be a total failure. I can't help somebody. You, you can only get through something. I noticed another Ryland show coming up on the television. It's basically like the apprentice, not the apprentice. God, that's bad. The other one where you go in the Dragon's Den. It's the same thing, only with Ryland hosting. So it's a sort of, sort of fairly camp version of it. But it's a bit naff. He's, he's, he's wearing himself out. Loads of work. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it's going to fizzle out. All the fizzle. So how many flights did Boris Johnson, Nicola Sturgeon, Jeremy Corbyn take in the last 18 months? I've got no idea, actually. I've got no idea. I don't know. I'm just telling you that 77 seems quite a lot, doesn't it? Don't you think so? 77 seems a lot. I wouldn't like... Oh, you're talking production matters. Oh, right. You're talking production matters. So 77 just seems a lot to me. Even if he took 30. And also, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure he does. Oh, what are you saying? Are you sort of saying that it's a Daily Mail story? I don't think it is. I don't think it is a Daily Mail story. Eh, wrong on that count, then, aren't we? Gets embarrassing, doesn't it, really? Oh, we need to take a break, I've just realised. I'm always missing breaks on this programme. You know why? So many things to talk about. Still to come, Petra Eccleston says former husband, who's called Mr Stunt, is no billionaire. I always thought when I saw him he looked like a bit of a fake. And are you a percher, a curler or a hoverer? Which one of those are you? Company at Steve Allen's Early Breakfast. Sunday morning in London town. And I uh, hope you're well wherever you are at the moment. It'll be somewhere that's wet. It's guaranteed to be wet, isn't it, really? I see that uh, Strictly Judge Craig Rebel Horwood has blasted viewers who were offended by the show's recent same-sex routine. They, they should watch something else. I have to be honest, I couldn't believe it when they said... I mean, I could imagine one or two numpties complaining about it. But in fact, uh, it was about 200 people complained. Even though they... Oh, sorry, 189, give or take. Craig said Strictly gets between 10 and 13 million viewers, so 189 complaints. Who are those stupid people? Who seriously would complain about something like that? Did they write into the Hollywood studios when Fred Astaire danced with another man? Or was that different? You know? And the answer is it was different, I suppose, for that, uh, for that particular generation. But 189 people could actually be bothered to write something and complain about it. In the same way people complained about the Andrew interview. There's always going to be some snowflake somewhere who's living on cloud cuckoo land. We love our royal family. It's marvellous. You're attacking our queen. No, unfortunately not. They're just asking Prince Andrew some fairly straightforward questions. Let's face it. They didn't bully him into doing the interview. He practically begged for the interview. Practically begged. Nick Ferrari, in his column in The Express today, says the royals are preparing for a frosty Christmas. I think it's just... You could just imagine, it's, it, on, on the crown, they'll be doing it. The Queen and Prince Philip sitting at an empty table for 24. There'll be nobody there, just them. And the Queen going, I don't know where they all went. Because they all just... Because you, you don't invite Sarah Ferguson, because she's persona non grata. And uh, you're not going to get Harry and Meghan because they're off trolling around the world because apparently life is so tough in the royal family. And uh, Andrew, will he go with his daughters? I don't know. Where else he got to go? 
I mean, I wonder actually how long Sarah Ferguson's going to stick around. Now he's got no income, all of a sudden he, he, he's not such a great prospect. Because up until now, he's actually bailed her out on occasions. Because she's so blooming useless at managing... I mean, you would think the, these people who come from that side of society would be sort of well-versed in it. But, I mean, we've all watched Made in Chelsea. You've never seen such a bunch of idiots in your entire life. And The Apprentice, a classic example. They actually got rid of this week of the most peculiar person I'd ever seen on there who sort of spoke like, a little bit like that. And, and I was beginning to wonder what he was and uh, in, in terms of business. And it turns out he's something to do with sort of upper-end marketing and all the rest of it. He came up with the biggest pile of claptrap you've ever heard. Seriously, it's really embarrassing. Uh, Steve uh, went to dinner party at Prince Edward's home and took flowers, went down well, says uh, Matthew. He's obviously not there. Were you just sort of squatting or something? <laughs> uh, also, also... Uh, who is who is sitting in for you two weeks today? I've got no idea. They do, I, they don't tell me things like that. Yeah, I, I've really got no idea. No idea. I, I, does it say anything on the the the, the, oh, the list? Must be out actually, mustn't it? I suppose. Yeah, we'll have a little look. Have a little look. Uh, also, 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 call for the midwife movie. Do you know I've never seen that program, but I don't think it's aimed at me. I don't think I'm part of the. Uh, Part of the uh, the audience configuration. Bill Turnbull's being supported through his cancer battle by Sean Williams. Good, good. That's what we like to see. He's a nice man. He's a very nice man. Uh, calls for action as drunken violence on the rail soars. Do you know? I tell you that, that. Why don't you just issue all police officers with with tasers and sort out all these drunks? It gets worse and worse. They had somebody the other day, and uh, they were in our nice little. But I've seen it before. And I think it's called border control or something like that. And that's where what they do is they, they watch people getting off flights. And people give it away. They look around nervously. They sweat a little bit. And uh, this, this particular pair of Neanderthals uh, get stopped. They've also turned up with the family. You could tell what sort of family it was. The wife had tattoos up her arms. And her arms were like hawser cables. I mean, seriously, they were big, big arms. And, um, and they had lots of cigarettes. Because they thought that they'd been to Europe. They went, no, no, no. No, you might have been to Europe, but this is the European Union, OK? They didn't understand that. That was obviously beyond their capabilities. And so their cigarettes were confiscated. Why? Because they went through the Red Channel, which means nothing to declare. And there's a bit there which says, if you're in doubt over what you've got with you, pick up this phone, pick up the red phone. It was written in English for them. And, uh, but obviously the father who started effing and blinding at the poor customs people who were standing there. And the, these two pair of numpties had obviously brought in fags to flog. And so they said, no, you, you, you've come from Turkey, 200 cigarettes. And so he went, right, I'll take 200 cigarettes. No, you, you can't have them now. You've gone through the red channel. So you lose your 200 and you're supposed to sign a thing. Uh, you know, you, you can put... And, of course, they were effing... Two hours they stood there arguing the toss. Whereas there was no way that they were going to get their cigarettes back. They were so stupid. And at one point, the uh, the uh, man from the customs... Because the blokes were going, oh, I'm going to lay you out. I'm going to flatten you out. You know, I worked hard for this. The government... I thought, oh, you're just one of those sort of people, aren't you? You're a plank. And, and they, they were going to lay him out on the floor. By which case, they would have been arrested. And uh, then they'd have gone to prison for about 10 years, which would have been marvellous. But in the end, they had to trundle off with their little little tails between their legs, looking a bit stupid. But uh, why why customs have to put up with stuff like that? I've got no idea. Really is dreadful. Uh, what else have we got today? Oh, yes, a lot of trees are going up, aren't they? A lot of trees are going up, which is quite nice for Christmas. In London, I mean, all the trees have been up for ages and ages. Although I'm, I haven't looked at Trafalgar Square. Have they got their tree up in Trafalgar Square? They, they might not have, actually, yet. Covent Garden's up, yeah. Bottom of Regent Street, that's quite nice. And actually, all the um, Savile Row's got all their lights up. Really nice lights in London. I don't know what they've got um, in Regent... It'll be sponsored, won't it, in Regent Street? And that's what that's what normally happens. Which, actually, I'm, I'm not... Um, I'm not particularly bothered by that, but I do like to see lights. But if you notice, they're all white lights. Is that the new thing for Christmas? White lights? White lights. Why can't we have coloured lights? You know, red, blues, green, stuff like that. No, you like white lights. How dull. No, I like coloured lights. I like coloured lights. I'm still going to put mine up, actually. I have, I've got two trees up at the moment. So I'm looking forward to uh, another one, which I think will probably go uh, go next week. Which is good, isn't it? Uh, what have we got the people today? Here we go. It's uh, why Saffron is still single. Apparently she's on Strictly. 
Uh, Jungles Minties, Real Life Tragedy. I mean, I, I wouldn't go anywhere near that programme. Apart from that, that, most of them are broke. What do they do? Do they ask the agents? Have you got a list of people who aren't working? And so they sort of put all these people on there. Gino De Campo, Campo Gino, has told how fans flocked around Gordon Ramsay like he was Elvis Presley. They're well, not going to be flocking around you, are they? Dear me, honestly, you and your fake British accent. I mean, come on. So, we do this and we... I mean, honestly, you could speak normally. You must have learned that in prison, surely. He did spend two years in prison, I'd just like to let you know. Uh, also, 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 a musician... Oh, I've got to take a break. A musician who begged the family of Bee Gees Morris Gibb for a DNA test has finally got evidence that the singer was his dad. That story's in all the papers. And who's going to be uh, who's going to be winning in the jungle? What are the latest odds? Roman Kemp's at nine to four. No sting in his tail. The whole camp gets on with him. When do they start doing evictions? I don't, they must be coming up to eviction shortly. Who knows? Ke ke. Who knows? Uh, apparently, the date for the Trafalgar Square Christmas lighting ceremony has been announced following the tradition of the tree being lit, if only. Uh, but they'll be putting lights on it, not very good lights. 6 pm to see the towering trees glittering lights. They're never glittering, they're rubbish. They're rubbish, rubbish, rubbish lights. They're the worst lights on any tree. I've got better lights on my tree. You right wind them round the tree. You don't have them going down in lines. Rubbish. Rubbish. Get them sponsored. Get somebody professionally to do it. Please. Let's have a check on the the news, shall we? 5.30, the latest head. When somebody goes into the jungle, am I missing the point here? I thought they just went in there and they give them stupid things to do, like stick insects in your mouth and stuff like that. It's just a, I mean, it's, it's just a way of getting people sick quite quickly. And then they start doing their stories, like, oh, they needed to go in to pay their tax bills and stuff. I couldn't give a toss about that. I really couldn't. The latest one is Dad tells Soap Star's amazing tale of how he beat tough childhood. Everybody had a tough childhood. What is this? This is Cliff Parisi's dad. This is the one who is in another programme at the moment. He did nine years in EastEnders, then nine years something else. But apparently he hasn't got the money for his tax. So uh, they'll have to sort of find that from somewhere. But apparently you have to pay Australian tax on your money. Because you're working out there. So I'm assuming they're, they're going to take little bits of it. Which is all right. I mean, I, I don't have a, a problem with that. I find it marginally entertaining. Especially when you, when you sort of try and work out exactly how much they've actually got. Uh, and how much they're actually earning. How much are they earning out there? Some of them are not earning very much. 20 grand. But it's only two weeks' work or something. It's not difficult. You've only got to sit there and shove some foreign object in your mouth. Discuss it. should be no, no hardship for half the people in there, I think. Uh, have you decided uh, how to vote next month? No, but I am voting. Which is, which is the key thing. The key thing is voting, not saying, oh, I can't be bothered going out because it's raining. You have to, you have to go out and vote. Uh, Gemma Collins, the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, here she is, big as ever. Uh, she's always liked a good party. Not really. No, she hasn't. That's the trouble. She's too old for it now. I mean, she's coming up to 40. Nobody at 40 behaves like a three-year-old. Do you know what she wants to do now? Wait for this one. I mean, you know, we haven't had any rubbish from her for some time. She wants to join the... Illuminati. I mean, you know, do you think she even knows what it is? The Towie Diva apparently spends hours at night studying conspiracy theories about the mythical group. No, she doesn't. The fat lump lies down in bed and snores like a whale, I should imagine. Uh, somebody said to her, uh, how, how do you join? She says, I don't know. I don't know, but apparently I've got to talk to Jay-Z. He's not going to talk to you, love. Why would Jay-Z know anything about it? Speaking on her podcast, Gemma invited the group to get in touch, insisting she was not afraid. I mean, is she... Are you, are you from another world, dear, or something? I wish you were. But uh, she says, uh, somebody said, you know, they, they, they give you subliminal messages, and again, it all comes back to this ultra-mind thing. She says, I'm not saying it's gospel, this is the theory of the Illuminati. She thinks somebody's given her a new word to say, like sort of, in, in Joey Essex's case, it was ream. Everything was ream. And we all looked at him and thought, you are a bit stupid, aren't you? Apparently, reality star Gemma, reality failure, what's she, what's she succeeded at? Nothing. She says she's aided by the fact that its symbols appear on dollar bills. And that's it, apparently. That's how dim she is. Gemma says she believed in mind control because she vibrates differently to most people, meaning she's nocturnal. She says, I radiate on a different frequency than most people. You certainly don't radiate, dear. You really don't, unfortunately. I think you might, vi you, you might vibrate. She says, I know I'm a bit different to other people because I'm awake in the night like all mythical creatures. <sighs> you are terribly stupid, aren't you? I mean, seriously, I know more intelligent five-year-olds. Petra Eccleston has hit out at her ex-husband, James Stunt, 
calling him a horrible, narcissistic man. I always, always thought he was peculiar. Now, mind you, the Eccleston sisters aren't the brightest pennies in the box. Uh, also, uh, bingo clubbing craze brings down the housey, which is lovely. And um, apparently, talking of woolies, fancy crocheting a clitoris for this Christmas. There is a, a, there is a, a, a vagina museum. It's opened in London's trendy Camden town. Uh, dedicated to gynaecological, gynaecological uh, anatomy. And the gift shop's proving a real hit with folk wanting a quirky present. <laughs> Imagine. Sadly, the, um, the cat pendants are all sold out. But there's still plenty of crochet other things <laughs> in stock. A member of staff could always tell fellas where to find them. Da 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 Yes, I know. Oh, leave it, I'll do it myself. So much easier, isn't it? And uh, friends stripping for a saucy calendar to fund a dad's cancer fight. It's amazing how many people just want to get their kit off nowadays. Prince Andrew included. Yes, we've all got the picture of Prince Andrew with no kit on. That's a bit of an embarrassment, isn't it? And the front of, uh, of Love Sunday magazine, they've got uh, the world's strongest man eats 8,000 calories a day and he splits sofas just by sitting on them. Yes, we, we found it. It opened this uh, in 2019. They're looking for... I mean, I really... Can't. It's open today, 11 till 6, if you want to go to the uh, to the museum. It's the first bricks and mortar museum dedicated to that part of the anatomy. And, and the good news is it's free. Free admission. It is lovely. They're, they're not going to charge you, which is unusual for Camden, because most people up there showing that uh, always get to charge. Uh, Daniel O'Donnell, the Irish megastar, reveals his secret fantasy, I want to have an affair. Good Lord above, honestly. Don't want to talk about things like that. Daniel Donnell, O'Donnell fans, will be going, woo! Love an affair there. You know, people go to his house. He has, um, he has a tea party every year, and thousands of people go to it, and he, he makes pots of tea. For people, which I think is, is quite sweet, actually. He came into us, and he, he's, he's a very quiet man. So, what, what do you put down to your success, Daniel? I don't know. I think it's the public. I think the public like me. And it, he's so quiet. So at one point, I thought I'd gone deaf. <laughs> uh, no, it says, do you have to check you've not been rude about a celebrity before inviting them on to uh, In Conversation? No. No, absolutely not. No, don't need to check anything at all. Uh, another one here, another one here. Blackpool Illuminati, says Paul. She probably doesn't know. No, it says, are your daily or Sunday papers better for your, uh, entertainment discussion? Um, well, actually, it varies. It varies. Sometimes the, uh, the Sunday papers are very, uh, very good for me and forthcoming. Sometimes we sit there and we get it's very light in the Sunday papers. And, uh... Another one here, a caller told Eddie Mayer we should all feel sorry for Prince Andrew for the scrape he's gotten into because the royals have a terrible time and aren't normal human beings. Well, they're certainly not normal, that's a fact. But uh, I don't think we feel sorry for Prince Andrew. He's been an arrogant little so-and-so for years and nobody likes him. He's, I mean, I've, I've not found anybody apart from the few little snowflakes who turn up, you know, for any little sort of out here. I think it's disgraceful. Our royal family is marvellous. They do so much good for the country. No, they don't. No, they don't. Goodness sake, you could leave them quite easily. It wouldn't make any difference. Listen, if the whole royal family disappeared tomorrow, nothing would change. People would still come to this country. They're not coming here to go, oh, any chance of saying Andrew? Any, any chance of party invite or something? You know, told he has nice parties. Uh, boxing legend Mike Tyson admits he can no longer train without getting high on cannabis. Dear. Slightly disturbing, isn't it? And Michael Jackson's roller coaster career will be made into a Hollywood biopic. Um, comes uh, with the blessing of the family. Well, it depends how they do it, I should imagine, which could be good. Uh, also, Corrie star Kim Marsh. I thought she was out of Corrie. I thought she was leaving Corrie or she's going or... You don't watch ITV. I oh, know. The producer's got a television and he picks up the BBC. And only sort of, you know, upmarket things. But anyway, she's revealed she was almost blinded by her pet chihuahua. She had to go to hospital after the dog accidentally clawed her with his paw. I'm sorry to tell you, dear, nothing accidental about that. The dog hates you. I mean, quite clearly, you know, you don't get little chew out. They're just such little things, aren't they? I mean, you could snap one in half with one hand. <laughs> That's what it was going for. That's what it was going for. It's terrible. She says, I, I went to the opticians and uh, they told me there was a small lump on the eye. Put me on ant antibiotics. But over the next few days, nothing. So she said, well, the drops will work. Don't worry, dear. I make a big drama out of it. Sorry? Have I ever had... Yeah, we had a dog, yes. We had a cocker spaniel called Jasper. He never clawed my eye, actually, but he did, he did go mad. 
They have a history of going mad, and our one went mad in the end and became very snappy. But that was because when my mother had taken him out for a walk, because you know what it's like, you see a dog, oh, it's great, we've got a dog, we've got a dog, we've got a dog, take it home, nobody wants to walk the bloody thing. It always comes down to your parents who go, is somebody going to take the dog out? It needs to get the dog sick, and it his legs crossed at the back, going, I need to go to toilet now. And so our little one, we bought as a, as a puppy, uh, down from where my, my prep school was. And we saw it, and of course, it's always, you know, the last one. They go, oh, there's only one left. And Okay, we take him out. So we took him home. And because you've got to, got to buy all the accoutrement. The basket, the blanket, the bowls, the dog food. I mean, completely forget. I just thought they ate the same as us. My might on toast. But uh, no, and so li little Jasper was a little cutie. A little cutie, and he was lovely, and he spent most of his formative years sleeping. Until one day, my mother took him out. And uh, she took him out for a walk, because at the end of our road in Brentwood, it was all fields. Now it's the uh, South End Arterial Bypass. I mean, the fields have gone, I'm afraid. It's all disappeared. And so, and she was taking him for a little walk on his lead, because we, we never took him off the lead, because, you know, it was just that kind of thing. And what did he do? He stuck his face into a wasp's nest, which was at the bottom of a tree. Now, this really annoyed the wasps. Don't want to make a big deal about it, but he pulled his nose out... And it was like a scene out of a cartoon. Wasp buzzing around all over the place. And they stung him on his nose and everything else. So obviously, yeah, yeah, you don't mess with wasps. And so his little nose swelled up. And he was he yelped all the way over. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Because they can't tell you. You just know that they're suffering. And after that, he started to go downhill a bit. And still nobody wanted to take him out for a walk. You know, we just opened the back door, shove him out, shut the door again. You know, knock on the door when you're ready. That kind of thing, and uh, that's you know, not, and uh, in the end, they they had to uh, they had to get rid of him. I, I went to school one time, came back, and he wasn't there. And I remember saying to my mother after about a week, I said, "Where's the dog?" You know, because you kind of miss it, don't you? After a week, you sort of should check where the thing is. And she said, uh, "Well, he he st he started biting. He see because he he just because I don't know what it is about spaniels." Uh, perhaps he didn't like his name. Well, he thought it was quite a good name, Jasper. Sounded quite posh, didn't it? Jasper. I hear people calling their dogs like Ben. Ben. You could be calling anybody, couldn't you? The servants or anything. And uh, so we, we sort of had him, and we, we never had another. So we had a cat after that, an awful lot easier, who died of fur balls. I mean, because <laughs> I told you, cats, like, if it's a long-haired cat, and ours was a white long-haired cat with lovely blue eyes, it was lovely, but it was really hairy. You know, you get, and we used to have a patterned carpet. <laughs> Who doesn't? And it was white hairs all over the place. And then what they do is they lick their fur. I don't know why they just lick their fur. In fact, our cat would lick anything, believe you me. And it would, it would lick everything. And then it would get fur balls in the stomach. But to get rid of them, it would go into the garden, eat grass. No, proper grass as opposed to rolling its own fags or something, you know. It would eat the grass, which would make it sick. And it would cough up the fur balls. And it would go, <coughs> and up would come the fur balls. And, of course, if it started doing it in the sitting room, my mother would go mad. You know, the cat would sit there and go, <coughs> my mother would go, get the cat out, get the cat out. It's going to be sick again. And the cats go, <coughs> like that. And we're going, I don't want to touch it, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> cat, you push it towards it, you know, the cat still go, <coughs> arching its back and all the rest of it. till it finally got to the garden. You don't remember that? It could be the middle of winter. Sometimes if it was snowing, we lost the cat for days on end. Until next door, who had an aviary. They had a lovely aviary with all different doves and pigeons. And, well, the cat got in there, didn't it? We opened up the garage door to discover a ton of feathers. I mean, we, we could have done pillows. Seriously. I mean, underneath the car was the remains of these pigeons that the, that the cat had got. And... I mean, feathers everywhere. It was all we had to go around and apologise. I'm terribly sorry. The cat's like that, and uh, and then and then I I only discovered actually a few years back what happened to it. It died of fur balls because they just clog up the stomach, and it, I suppose it didn't have any more like that to to sort of go. And it, we didn't have much grass in those days because the cat had eaten most of it. And uh, and then we had a hamster, Judy, Judy the hamster, who was given to us at a petrol station <laughs> when we were on a caravanning holiday pegs lucky heather usual sort of thing and uh, so we went off and we were in this garage and for some reason i don't know where we were and, and, and they said oh um we're, we're all moving would you like our hamster so we went so we inherited a hamster which came in a wall's ice cream tin 
called Judy, and she came on all our holidays with us. All our holidays, Judy came with us in the tin. She was quite lively. You have to handle hamsters a lot, because if you don't, when you handle them, they'll, they'll bite, and they're quite sharp things. So we, Judy was very, very friendly. In fact, the person who got the most value out of her was the cat. The cat got a lot of value out of Judy. Judy would be in her cage, and she would come alive at night. So all you'd hear at night time as you're in bed is her on the wheel. And so, and the cat would sit there lying on its back, you know, playing, and Judy would sort of tempt the cat and all the rest of it. So much so that when, when finally Judy expired after what seemed like years, it was only a couple of years, I think, they don't live very long, and we, we buried her in the garden, you know, as you do when you're kids, put her in a little box. The cat was so enamoured, she dug her up three times, brought her to the back door like it was some trophy. My father opened the back door, see the cat sitting there with a big smile on its face, and there was poor, stiff as a board Judy, who didn't look so good. So we kept, in, in the end, we had to bury her and put a brick on top so the cat couldn't get it off. We weren't allowed pets after that. People complained. <laughs> Don't let them in. It's Steve Allen's early breakfast. Uh, Nick Ferrari, in his column today, writes about a couple who threatened to take a primary school to the High Court over its religious assemblies. They've won their battle for alternative arrangements for their two children, Lee and Lizanne Harris said their kids were unhappy with Bible stories that they heard at Burford Primary School in Oxfordshire. Really? says Nick. As I recall, stories about Jonah and the whale, David and Goliath and the parting of the Red Sea were some of the best reasons we're going, uh, for going to school at that age, as Christianity, along with other major religions, is such a major part of how our lives and laws are run. What's the harm in giving primary school children some helpful insight? I agree. We thought the Bible stories were great. Absolutely fantastic. Why, well, parents? You know what parents are like nowadays. Never, never please anybody, can you? As a bride to be, she lost more than six stone thanks to a hula hoop. Uh, she was fifteen stone, and now she's uh, she's uh, transformed from a size eighteen to a size eight, and she does it with hula hooping. I mean, I I did try hula hooping once, and I have to be brutally honest. I'm absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. I obviously don't have the movement in my uh, in my hips that I should have. Monopoly mad Neil Scallon's board gaming collection is worth a bank busting quarter of a million quid. He spent most of his earnings as an airport courier on building his hall, which already runs to 2,681 different versions of Monopoly. Isn't that great? He said, I try not to spend over 200 quid on a set. I mean, I love a game Monopoly, but at Christmas time, we, we, we could never be bothered by playing the, the full version. So we used to do the, the scaled-down version of Monopoly, which means you throw the dice, whoever gets the highest can pick um, a set of cards, you know, a set of hotels, whatever it is, and put hotels on there, should you so desire. Because we always used to go for the blue ones, Angel Islington and all those other things. Uh, also, a mum has told how she was savaged by a terrifying 45-minute attack by a friend's dog. Rachel Anderson was looking after Adele Johnson's two children on Boxing Day last year when the Siberian Husky Storm went for her. I mean, dear God in heaven, I mean, it sounds quite dangerous. You don't risk these things at all. But um, she says it's causing a lot of, lot of distress. A lot of Adele says, I don't want to comment on the incident. My children and I have been through a lot with this and don't want to be dragged up again. Too late. Too late. You've got page 23 of the, uh, of the Daily Star today. I mean, dear God, it looks dreadful. You want to see what's happened to her arm? Her arm is just... Oh, that's a nice Monopoly set. This is an 18-carat version. Uh, the set of dice alone are valued at 10,000. 42 full-cut diamonds for the number dots. Wow. It's in the Museum of American Finance. It's gold and jewel encrusted. Worth, they think, 2 million. Wow. You'd be frightened to use it, wouldn't you? You'd be frightened to use it. 2 million quid for a Monopoly set. That's quite nice, though, isn't it? I mean, it'd be nice if somebody wanted it. If you were, if you were looking for a present to buy me for Christmas, this would be this would be acceptable. I could cope with something like that, just about. <laughs> uh, Steve, should uh, Prince Andrew uh, rescind his royal title? Well, I, I don't think so. They've, they've just taken him away from anything that involves him. To, although he can still turn up to Trooping the Colour, Remembrance Day, Cenotaph and all that kind of stuff. It's just that he doesn't have a role to play in the royal family. Why? Because he's blooming useless, that's why. As somebody said, what, he actually had a role to play in the royal family. Doing what? Apart from lining his own pockets. Really not pleasant. Really not pleasant. Uh, Steve, I prefer the Bible films, which is weird. Usually the books are much better. I, my favourite, thank you, my favourite is King of Kings. Have you seen it? King of Kings is a great thing. It is, it's Hollywood's version of the Bible. 
and it's got the same recurring theme that runs all the way through it, which goes dun 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 dun, and it's really good. But apparently, when they were doing the bit where he's preaching at the beginning. All of the extras were people who lived locally. They didn't speak a word of English. They were just told, you know, OK, everybody move forward now. And they all moved for... Uh, but it's beautifully done, but it runs for hours. I mean, seriously, it's, it's a long film. And then it goes, intermission. You think we're now watching it on DVD, you get an intermission. But it's great. But King of Kings, if only for the music. And the actor, who died quite young, I believe. Who died quite young, but it's just tremendously done. It really is. If anything gets people sort of watching that. Uh, Steve, I heard the other day, like old films, have you heard of a composer called Ron Goodwin? Well, Reach for the Sky, 666 Squadron. He did all of those things. Down. I um, only no, did the same theme tune again. But, um... Down, da-da-down, da-da-dun-dun-dun, da-da-dun-dun-dun. Was that Ron Goodwin? Battle of Britain, yeah. About, so, about better than I thought. Yes, that was different, yeah. Was it 633 Squadron, I think? 633 Squadron, I'm pretty certain. Ron Goodwin wrote loads of things. There's albums out of Ron Goodwin. I've got most of them at home. But, uh, 633 Squadron? 603? 633, yeah! See? Memory's not gone completely. But he did... Did he do the... Oh, who did the, the film from The Trap? The music from The Trap? Because you know the piece of music... And if I, if I sing it to you, you will know what it is. Did he do The Trap or was that somebody else? The Trap. Music by... Here we go. Wait for it. It's like waiting for... Did he do The Trap? God. Yeah. Do you know what this is? It's the marathon. They use the marathon music. But it was beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. The Trap. It goes, it, I mean, it starred Oliver Reed and Rita Tushingham. And it came out 19, I think about 1966, something like that. And they obviously found this piece of music in the middle of it. And they went, that's what we want. And I always remember watching on the BBC them doing the coverage of the thing. And then you see all these people pounding the streets, whether it's wet or dry or whatever, with this dun 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 And for some reason that cupboard with a with a voiceover just kind of made the marathon what I mean I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But uh you know but really lovely. Oh good I'm glad that my memory's not failed me with Ron Goodwin. Ben Hur's my favourite biblical film, says H. Was it was it biblical? Wasn't there an odd piece in Ben-Hur? Didn't they put it in years later? There was a homosexual piece in there. I believe a lot of homosexuals in Rome, apparently. Giant gay club. Giant gay club. whole whole of Rome was like it. And uh, Steve, Steve, Steve. Uh, so Ben-Hur. Have you been to Dublin? No. I keep telling people I've never been to Dublin. No. But I've been to me. Ha 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 Song title? No, never mind. Okay. I'm 74 years old. And... Um, and I was under the impression that no human being living on this planet till yesterday, I noticed that even one human being, being one young lad, gave ten pounds to a to a beggar. Yes, well, you live and learn every day, don't you? I saw somebody giving a fiver to somebody sitting by the side of the road. And I, I wanted to say, he's, he's here every day. <laughs> he's making more money than most of us. Uh, another one here. Are you going to see Frozen? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Uh, Ron Goodwin uh, says that Julie wrote the music for The Prisoner. Really? We used to use that. We used to use the, the prisoner as an LBC uh, advert on the television. And the, and the tagline was, I am not a number, I'm a free man. And it was indicating that you could be a free person. And in fact, we, we had it. It was very good, actually. It was a bouncing ball. Do you remember the bouncing balls from the prisoner? Very good indeed. What's this one? Is this the, is this the prisoner? Is it really? Oh, I like all that sort of music. No, it's not The Prisoner. That sounds like 633 Squadron. They always had this sort of, you know, big sort of, big sort of thing. Uh, the, the Prisoner, I think, sounded different. That was Ron, Ron Grainer, who was different from Ron Granger. It was all sorts of people. All sorts of people. But there's great people. But Ron Goodwin, I think, wrote the most. Seriously, really, really smashing stuff. But I did like The Prisoner. I didn't understand it. It was filmed in Port Merion, wasn't it? Didn't they use all those, that bizarre place of Port Merion for the filming of it? And I just remember there was a giant ball bouncing along a beach. But mind you, I never got the Avengers. 
Seriously, the Avengers was most peculiar. Most peculiar. But I always found it entertaining. So I bought the box set. And I know you're probably feeling really, really bad this morning, aren't you? Because now that we, for some reason, we seem to have started Christmas parties early. And little drinks. To, I mean, normally you wait till December to actually get... No, no, no. Now November. And people have started having, having drinking. Even my brother... I sent him a thing the other day because I sent him a train set to go around the bottom of his Christmas tree because I was having one of those moments. And uh, he said, I'm in, in bed. He said, I went out drinking the other night. <laughs> I thought, you can't do it. Honestly, you get to a certain age and the drink drink affects you in, in different ways. Uh, so, Nottingham, home to the country's rudest people. Well, I mean, how do they know that? What do they do? Ask four people who told them to do one. You know, that then makes it rude, does it? I shouldn't imagine that any more rude in Nottingham than they are in Manchester or Birmingham or Seven Oaks or Bromley or anywhere like that. Uh, don't take wine to a dinner party. They don't really know what you're supposed to take to a dinner party. And I suggested food. You know, take your own food, take a little plastic bag, pop the stuff in there, and you can take it home and eat it later. And just say, I can't, I've got an allergy. Because nowadays people are quite panicky about allergies, aren't they? It's amazing how people get them in restaurants, never get them in other people's homes. Uh, telly chef Gordon Ramsay mobbed like Elvis in America because he's got about three different programs running over there. It's very popular. He's he's a very popular person. I mean, what what else can you say about it? It's he's a popular person, and people like the. Pro I love the programs because you look at the food in these restaurants. It looks blooming awful, and they turn it up. Then he goes into the kitchen and suddenly works out that this this food that they've served up has been sitting festering in some dirty old fridge i mean how these places are allowed to stay open i've got no idea and then there's always arguments in there because there'll be some hot-headed member of the family saying listen my food's been good enough for years and they go listen there's nobody in here that's why the place is empty because your food is rubbish about time that the brits complained a bit more like the americans the americans complain and I see no reason why the British shouldn't, but the British don't. They sit there going, this is absolute rubbish. Waitress comes over, everything right? Yes, it's lovely, thank you. We don't, you know, we're not honest, but the Americans always, always tell you the way it is. <laughs> it's rubbish. But of course, we're all frightened, aren't we, that somebody's going to spit in your food. They're going to take it back to the kitchen and the chef's going to do something horrible to it because you criticised his sort of uh, loving little, uh, little creations, I think. Uh, a lot of people talking about... Um, um, uh, apart from poor old Prince Andrew. I say poor old Prince Andrew because he must be wondering when this is going to go away, and the answer is, it's not. In fact, if anything, it's going to get much worse, I think, because now you've got... I mean, it's... and uh, I mean, the whole thing is... The, the, the whole family are a disaster. A disaster. You've got the two, the two daughters who, you know, I'm sure they're very lovely and they're so wonderful. But if you remember, Andrew wanted them to be brought into the royal family so they would then earn money through doing engagements. Well, you'd feel cheated, wouldn't you? You go to an investiture. Who have you got? you got Eugenie. What? Give us another one. Get out. Get another one in. And so you've got her and the dreary sister Beatrice, neither of whom, seriously, have got any sense of fashion at all. In fact, the second wedding next year we think could be held in Italy, because the bloke she's marrying, I mean, she can't find anybody out of European royalty, so she's marrying some bloke who's got a child with some other person. What is going on in the royal family? I don't know. And uh, so you've got Andrew, who's never actually done a day's work properly in his life. He really hasn't. He, all he wants to do, he wants to play golf and hang around with despots. And they fund his lifestyle and hang around. I mean, even with the best will in the world, you can't explain away why, even after he was convicted, he stayed at Epstein's place. That's why he was peering round the door. Have I been spotted by anybody at all? Yes, by the press, dear. The press spotted you. And so it's basically brought him crashing down. And uh, it looks likely that Sarah Ferguson is going to go roughly the same kind of way. Because uh, she doesn't really know what's going on either. She's always been useless with money. Never very good at all. And uh, he's always sort of helped her out, I think. Although the press are now asking the questions. How on earth can he afford a £13 million chalet in Verbier? On what, where does this money come from? He's never earned this sort of money. Oh, my brother said it was my stag night. I forget about things like this. <laughs> I still don't want excuses. Why do people have to get drunk on their stag nights? Why do people have to get... And then you spend the next day going, oh, I don't feel very good at all. I did it here. I didn't do it here, actually, but it was close. I went to the Arkiva Awards a few years back to collect an award. I didn't know I was collecting an award. They just said, oh, come on, they, they, you know, management here really want you to go and all the rest of it. Because I rarely go out. I'm like sort of... 
almost monastic in existence. You know, I'm at Vespers early in the morning and then I sort of stay in bed all day, chanting sometimes. And so I went to this thing and then they said, don't worry, we, we get you a, a cab home afterwards. Well, I was so tired. I was so, so tired. I've never been so tired in my life. And so I go home, I get home, I've got enough time to get changed and then get the cab back into work again. And then thinking, if, if, with hindsight, I should have changed it. I had two interviews the next day. And they were in things I knew nothing about at all. They, they weren't even, I couldn't, and I couldn't concentrate. Halfway through one of the interviews, I closed my eyes. And then you know when you can feel yourself going, you think, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Whoa, here we are back in the room. It was really the <laughs> worst experience of my life. Worst experience. So I've decided now, if ever I get tired over, uh, over sort of doing, doing something, then I block out the next day. It's the only way to do it. Oh, look, Molly King, what do you do, dear? Apparently, she's, uh, she's a singer. <laughs> Not for years. And uh, she's well-suited modelling a tuxedo-style Christmas outfit, which, to be honest with you, is the wrong size, Molly, showing too much leg. And uh, she's, uh, she's showcasing various fashion brands for, for Littlewoods. That's lovely. She does a radio programme. You won't have heard it. Uh, you know, because it's like one of those... Because she's tried everything else. The singing didn't work. I wonder if Sarah Harding's getting on with the, with the singing still. We had that disaster, didn't we? I always remember thinking, why did she not sort of play that better? You know, she went on uh, I'm a Celebrity, the Celebrity Big Brother, whatever it was. Unfortunately, uh, she doesn't do very well with alcohol. And so, consequently, um, she, they, they stupidly gave her alcohol on the programme. And if you go to YouTube, you can watch the meltdown. Now, some people, have, uh, me, I just get affectionate. I'm the world's worst drunk for being affectionate. Seriously, I mean, I just drape myself over anybody. I don't care. And, uh, but she became aggressive. Very, very aggressive. And it's, it's almost an embarrassment to watch the meltdown and the breakdown of the girl who sort of used to, she was known as a ligger, which means that she went, you know, to various parties. She just basically got drunk. And, uh, and that was it. But didn't, but didn't do very, very well with it. But they, they kept giving her alcohol. I mean, because it was, it was a gift for television, not for her. But a gift for television. It's a shame, isn't it? Steve, you like the Olympic flame. You never go out. I do go out, actually. I'm out now. Look, I'm out here. I'm out here. I don't know what I'm doing today, actually. I was, I, I was, I was going to go and have a quick peek round Winter Wonderland. But then uh, I keep sending things to a friend of mine who's obviously either on holiday or he's, or he's disappeared somewhere. So <laughs> Which doesn't matter, actually. Uh, and somebody says, have you ever watched a film in the cinema in 4DX? What's that? 4DX? No, I've, I mean, I'm not into film. There's an IMAX cinema down at Waterloo. I've never been there. I've never been there. I, I don't mind seeing the, the new Frozen movie in that, because I shouldn't imagine it'll come up in anything in my, uh, <laughs> in my uh, television. It's just a normal bog standard television with a built-in DVD player, which is slightly peculiar, isn't it, really? Uh, Steve, 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 says George, I've not been too well recently with depression, but listening to your family pet history had me literally in tears of the good kind. You are a medicine. I, I, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's true, actually. So, can I, let me just tell you what 4DX is. Is it better than IMAX? Do you need glasses? I remember wearing glasses when I went to Disneyland. Uh, it's the brand name for a 4D film cinema technology created by... Uh, CJ Four Duplex of South Korea. Oh right, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I don't care. It's just, it's just watching a film, isn't it? I don't. I don't. When we did the, um, when we did, did Glorious Technicolor, and it came up. Technicolor. We should go. Ooh, it's in Technicolor. And then for for all the Thunderbird stuff, Super Marionation, which came up in the same sort of box. But when we went to Disneyland some years ago, I had a friend who worked for a company called uh, Getaway America, and they said, "Would you like to to come to America?" And I thought, "Yeah, well, okay, I'll manage that." And uh, and we go to Disneyland, and they had a thing there where they give you the glasses as you walk in, and you put them on. But they they were like normal sort of reading glasses. They they look quite good actually. And the film started. And it was this thing where there's a ball starting in the middle and then it floats towards you. So all you see is people's hands up trying to touch the ball in front because it looks so real. I mean, it was very good. I think we saw Thriller 
uh, in there and a couple of other things. It was really quite interesting to see these things which you think are coming out at the screen or they'll put you on the front of a roller coaster and it, you feel as though you are, whoa, and a whole th audience lurches forwards. I went to one at the Planetarium in Madame Two Swords and they had something in there which was, it reacted to the screen. So at one point the, the chairs vibrated and then it squirted water at you. Well, I wasn't very happy with that. So, you know, I was wearing a nice shirt and, and they had a, and we all went out. Of course, it's all full of kids. I'm like the oldest person in there. I'm glad they've arrested that, uh, that bloke on the train who was abusing that Jewish man and his, uh, and his children. Is there something in that? Perhaps he's got some sick illness or something. Dear God. And you, he's been, he's been arrested. Is it talking? Did you see the woman, the, uh, there was a, a Muslim woman who was, who was attacking him. She was like, well, don't you speak to them like that and things like that. And people have been saying, what a brave person. What a brave person. Uh, 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. And uh, another one here says, uh, da, 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 da. I've lost it. Apparently it's very common in America for people to take the different courses for dinner parties. Is it? And if you're going to a shelter, I should imagine, it can't be for normal dinner party. If you go to a dinner party at somebody's house, normally you sort of get there and somebody's created the dinner, isn't it? It might start a main and dessert. My, my parents used to give dinner parties because they were in the forces. So, in fact, most, most weekends, in fact, if not every weekend, Friday, Saturday, there would be dinner parties. Because I could always tell the next morning, because we, we would be sent off to bed. You know, they go, OK, uh... Andrew and Stephen are going to say good night, and so we'd sort of come out and go good night. It was like it was like the Von Trapp children without the other five, <laughs> and we didn't sing. And uh, and I always remember actually because my my auntie used to come around quite a lot to our house. I mean, she didn't live near; she just turned up, and um, and we'd have to say good night. So they'd say, "Well, you go, you, you go and get yourselves ready for bed, and then come back downstairs and say good night to everybody." And I always remember it to this day because she was more horrified than I was because I had pajamas, stripy. Always pajamas were stripy. I don't know why, but my mother had this thing about not sewing up the fly, and and I can remember at the age of I think about thirteen coming downstairs to say goodnight to my auntie, and as I leant over, it fell out. <laughs> and I, I was more shocked, her or me. And I remember thinking, I remember saying to my mother the next day, maybe we'll sew them up in future. Because some people wear their pants underneath, not me. Not me. But it only fell out the once. <laughs> my auntie was straight into rehab and started drinking. It was all a little bit traumatic for her. Uh, 6.15, the show this morning with uh, Andrew Pearce. I heard him yesterday and up for discussion today, the Conservative Party manifesto launch. The serious disorder in Birmingham overnight as a fight breaks out at a cinema complex. The Uber fights a rearguard action as the regulators weigh up the London ban and many other things as well. Andrew Pierce with you at seven o'clock this morning on LBC. So I mentioned earlier on that there's a, there's a couple of people in the jungle, one of them being Ian Wright, the other one is Cliff Parisi, who appear to have uh, tax problems, uh, and now Jacqueline Josser. Apparently the tax man hit her with a tax bill before she entered the jungle. It's a very odd one to do, isn't it? What sort of company she got that they, they hit her with a tax bill? Because she would have gone to her accountant the accountant would then have sorted out the uh, the tax and then they would send it off to the tax man like is normal. Then the tax man would write to you going, we confirm the uh, the figures, blah, 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 blah. So this is in documents filed by the former East End uh, actresses now liquidated firm Puka Bash Limited. So £32,000. She owes twenty one, nearly 22000 in corporation tax and 10000 in VAT. The mum of two. I mean, it really, it just really annoys me. She's had children. Pay your bloody bills first. She's married to that plank, Dan Osborne. She also got two grand in accountancy fees. Her spokesman said there's a small amount of tax which she's paying back in stages. Well, £32,000. That doesn't sound like a small amount of tax. That sounds like a hell of a lot of tax. But it's so annoying. She's earned the money, and yet she can't be bothered... You know, all they do is nowadays, because they make it so easy, they just go bankrupt, don't they? Terrible, really. Uh, have you seen the lights in the Inner Central Arcade in Covent Garden? Hello, I work in London. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, also, uh, uh, Jeanette says, we, we've had fur balls, funny fanny museums and a pyjama wardrobe malfunction all in an hour. 
you're lucky. <laughs> I'd hardly ever mentioned it before. Uh, also, Steve, listening to you from, uh, I can't pronounce this, it's West Cork in Ireland, uh, says Noreen, I've given my cousin Mari a Steve addiction. Is it a place called Eries? It's not really a place called Eries, is there? Iries? We don't know, actually. But uh, it's West Cork in Ireland, so that's, that's, that's quite nice, isn't it? We think so. Uh, also, Ollie and Putney, he says, stop it. I'm crying with laughter from your little accident while saying goodnight to your auntie. <laughs> you don't think about it, do you? You just never think about things like that. I can remember sitting sitting in a pub with my godchildren some time ago down in... It's a similar story, so brace yourselves. And it was wooden tables, and everybody was sitting down, and a bloke came and sat down at the table directly opposite us, so we're all in sort of line of fire. And when he sat down, he was wearing a pair of shorts, and it fell out. But you don't want to say anything to him... So, my godchildren are sort of there as well. It's fallen out. It's fallen out. You know, otherwise you'd have gone, excuse me, downstairs. Just sort that little bit out. <laughs> I get it all the time. Yes, put the mouse back in the house. No likey, no lighty. I watched that programme the other day. I've just realised it's very irritating. There's some very odd people that they put on that thing. I mean, they, they really, there's some very odd people on there. I can't believe it, although you can when you hear them talking, that the, these people can't find partners. Ridiculous. Um, 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 here's uh, uh, royal expert Jenny Bond. We love Jenny Bond. Has called the Prince Andrew scandal extremely damaging to the monarchy and compared it to the three similarly scandalous events. And uh, so there you go. I mean, th 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 to be honest with you, I think what with Sarah Ferguson, the toe-sucking, the fake shake, what was the other thing she had as well? Oh, yeah, borrowing the money off Epstein, 15,000 quid because of her huge debt. She's been a millstone around their neck for ages. And then, of course, there was the, the disaster, which was the it's a royal knockout. I mean, that really was. I can remember vividly to this day, Prince uh, Edward, fairly theatrical, uh, sort of organised it all. And then when they had the, the press there. And he said, so, what did you think? And apparently the uh, the press went, it's all right. He went, oh, thanks a lot. He got, he got really up, he got really sort of fractious about the whole thing. My friend Rich says, you're one of a kind. Yes. <laughs> Much, that's like the old joke, isn't it? It's like, you know, one of a kind, and that's like the, the man walking down the road with, with a teddy bear in his hand. And somebody says, where'd you get that from? And the teddy bear says, I won him in a raffle. It's an old joke, but it's, uh, it's quite... You get it? You get it? Thank you. Da, 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 I'm here all week. <laughs> I can do it again. Steve, would you ever do an in conversation with the GC? I don't think she can string two words together. She's too old as well. We don't do old people on the programme. Well, apart from me. Uh, another one here. And da, 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 da. Listen, so it's, it's pronounced how is it pronounced? Iries, says Michael. Iries. There you go. I live and learn every day. Every day is an education as far as I'm concerned. So, Iries, West Cork in Ireland. Thank you very much indeed. Now, what did I have here? Let me try and... Oh, there's Prince Andrew again. Here we go. He is the gift that keeps on giving, and now we've got Sarah Ferguson in on it. I love the way she's sort of, she's sort of defending him, you know, and you think it's probably you that's, that's led him down this stupid path. Perhaps they thought, you know, that between the two of them, she, she just defends him and says what a marvellous man he is. The two daughters pitch in, and we all go, oh, that's okay. But unfortunately, it didn't work like that, and that's what I think, because throughout his entire life, he's been a pain in the rear end to everybody. Boorish, dull... You know, really snooty. Apparently, I told you the other day, some, a, former, a former servant who worked at Buckingham Palace said they, they, they take him in a cup of tea in the morning, like... And he, they go in, they go, a cup of tea for you, sir, and he'd go, F off. And you think, what a rude, fat, bloated old man he is. And very boorish, I'm afraid. The royal uh, hit on one girl here. He blew a raspberry into my... Isn't that... Is that a raspberry? For that mean, goodness sake, everybody does that, don't they? Don't we all do that? You do it on your arm. We used to do it when we were little. <laughs> don't you? That was quite funny. We did it on your arm when you were seven. <laughs> or not. I don't know. Is that... No? Oh, there you go. Uh, so, how are we doing in I'm a, in I'm a Jar? Well, I don't know. I really couldn't care less anymore, actually. They were all horrible. But apart from Roman Kemp, who's just a bit too cutesy-cutesy. I mean, he is like your Aunt Mary's apple pie. Jacqueline Josser. I mean, really doesn't contribute much. James Haskell's not the brightest penny in the box, is he? 
Uh, Ian Wright's just got a nasty little temper. Obviously some issues there. Kate Garraway's lovely. Somebody said she should have had her roots done before she went. And at the moment, we're, we're suffering with Richard Maidley. How old is that man, for God's sake? What is he, 12, 13? He, sort of, he wears sort of trainers and sort of... He's way too old to be wearing stuff like that. Way too old. Oh, there's somebody here. A mega earner. £4.5 million pound mansion is renting out his home on Airbnb. This is uh, Adam Afray facing court action over unpaid tax. What is it with these people who don't want to pay their tax? Dreadful. Honestly, dreadful. Coldest winter in ten years coming up. They reckon it's going to be really frozzy poos, which is uh, okay. And Strictly star Saffron Barker has ruled out providing the hit show's romance because she's too busy. Yeah, Jack and Ori, Jack and Ori. Don't be so stupid. You're never too busy to have a romance. God, uh, what, are you working more than all the rest of us put together? No, you're not. Uh, as if Andrew hasn't enough problems, here he is, Chris Evans. Stopped by security near the Prince's Windsor Great Park home as he tried to take a shortcut through in his £1.2 million Aston Martin DB5. Wow. And then he turned up with a... I mean, it's a lovely car, isn't it? And then he uh, turned up with a, a Rolls-Royce Corniche. Convertible. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Somebody shouted at me this morning going in my car. I can't remember what they shouted because I had the windows up and I couldn't hear. I'm assuming they were telling me what a wonderful person I was, but, uh, you know, you never hang around to find out, do you? Uh, also, so this is Heston's top... Stop... Top food... Uh, Gordon Ramsay, 195 for Christmas lunch, and 350 for the New Year's Eve special. And uh, what, what what do you get for your 375 pounds? Can't tell you. It's always a surprise. Uh, Michelle Rue's Landau restaurant at the Langham, 125 pounds for a Christmas blowout, rising to 175 with wine. See, that's more... I like him as well, actually. I like him. Uh, plus, cheaper options. James Martin's Manchester restaurant. Uh, Three-course Christmas meal, 45 quid. That's very good value. Three courses, definitely. Marco Pierre White's English Chop House in London's Whitechapel. Three courses at 39.50. Rick Stein at his restaurants in Winchester, Marlborough and Sandbanks. £37.50. Well, that's very good because we actually paid more than that a few years ago. That's 69 quid. 69 quid for Christmas lunch, and that's even before you've had the booze. And you know me and the Prosecco. So, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a bottle just for me, as far as I'm concerned, which is very nice. Uh, also, also, when music legend Little Richard... Remember, do you remember Little Richard? He used to wear a lot of makeup, fairly camp. And uh, although I don't know what that tells you. Apparently, what does he do to ease his whole lot of aching going on? He sings to Tom Jones down the phone. <laughs> Lucille! <laughs> I can't do it. He's 86 now. I mean, not so much rip it up as hip it up, as he tries to take his mind off. Uh, somebody writing here, the award-winning columnist, Syra Khan. And here she is, Stay Strong Scarlet. It's just so marvellous. She's such a wonderful person. It's a real shame she lost her dream job. Well, she was rubbish at it, that's why. What are you, stupid? I met her this week and instantly loved her. Oh, God, there's so much love going on in your life, isn't there? It almost makes you want to vomit. She's made for telly. Yeah, exactly. If she sat on the top, she'd probably pick up BBC Two a lot better than the Ariel I've currently got. She's battled with her weight for years. She, she cheated people. What are you, stupid? She lied to people. She reckoned it was a diet. She went, she went to boot camp in Switzerland. So there you go. But uh, anyway, she felt more comfortable in her own skin filming that rubbish programme, the worst thing I've ever seen, the British tribe next door, where they went to Namibia. What did they leave them with? A waterfall. Fantastic. They took the house away. Couldn't wait to get rid of that one. God, some people write rubbish, don't they? It's all desperately trying to make something of herself. Robert Glenister is returning to Doctor Who 35 years after he first appeared in it. And uh, Martin Bashir is going to start off, you know, with sort of another another interview programme. He's also conducted interviews with Michael Barrymore, Geoffrey Archer, Charles Ingram and Michael Jackson. But he's only famous for, really, the Princess Diana one in 95. There was three of us in our relationship. It was a bit crowded. And that was all it came down to. Very boring, very dull. But uh, we'll, we'll, I've, I've, got a, I've got a Christmas cake recipe for you in a minute, so get, get, get a pen and a piece of paper. Only joking. Only joking. Uh, news time. 6.30, the latest headlines with crying to be. They, they, they've now started eking out the Victoria Derbyshire disaster. And so they say, and now here's highlights from it. The highlight is goodbye. That would be the highlight. Honestly, that's the nice thing about the BBC. You know, we're paying for it. I feel as though I've got some vested interest. What do you do to stop young people thieving. 
I don't think there is anything that you can do. You hear of people who nick cars. There's a teen here uh, called Luke. He was 18. He was in a stolen car, one of two that they'd thieved that day. And because they're only young, they don't know how to handle performance cars. I know because I drive a performance car and they say you've got to watch it. And of course people go around corners, they get chased by the police and all the rest of it. Anyway, in this particular case, it ploughed through two walls and a telegraph pole. He's dead. And you don't really know what to, what to sort of say to the parents, apart from the driver, Connor Stevens, also died in Lancashire. You think, I mean, I always thought that all these sort of crimes occurred down here. You see them on the police, you know, police interceptors and all the rest of it. And you watch these people and you think, you you know, you are going, they, they put out the stingers. If they're lucky, it works and it takes the tyre out. And then these things crash. And uh, both victims were from theft, and the Audi was stolen along with a second car. The motors were believed to have been travelling together at the time of the crash. And so now two people lose their lives. Admittedly, they were thieves. And you might sort of argue the toss that, well, they got their just desserts. But I don't know what you can do to say to somebody, listen, you've never driven a high-performance car before. Why would you think you could drive one now? The parents are now going to have the most miserable of Christmases. You know, going, well, he was a bit of a wrong one at times. And you just, there's no answer to it. I don't know what we can do. It's like people and drugs. I mean, I'm a bit, I'm a bit stupid when it comes to drugs because I don't do drugs. I do prescription drugs, quite clearly. I mean, I a stack of them and I'm very happy to take them. But I'd just be ridiculous. Imagine what this programme would be like if I was on drugs. Woo! Here we go! Woo! You are looking good. You know, it's just it's just not going to happen, is it? But yet I have heard people, you know, I've seen people on, on the television who quite clearly have had a little bit of assistance from something. And then later on they actually tell you, oh yes, I was addicted. I mean, the, the, the Sarah Ferguson, when she was done by the fake shake, do you know what her argument was for that? Uh, she, she talked to Oprah Winfrey. You can't shut her mouth up, seriously. I think some of that gorilla tape would be fairly useful, wouldn't it? But they, they, she said, oh, I was in a bad place and I was drinking. You know, that's how they actually put it in society. I just had a few sherbets, you know, and so she fell for the fake shake. And, uh, and then the moment she, she discovered, she, she gave the money back. But she is a catalogue of disasters. I mean, for somebody who's supposed to be an adult, they behave very childishly, which is not so good. Steve, your auntie's story has given me the first giggle since being dumped. I remember those horrible children's pyjamas, thank you. I know. Sue Ann in Stockwell, uh, that one. Also, uh, Trisha in Bedfordshire nearly crashed the car. Good story, I tell a good story. I have to be honest, even I think I tell a good story. Uh, in the Sunday Mirror today, Phil Vickery, on page 31, has got a rich fruit Christmas cake. Looks lovely. And uh, I think he's also got gluten-free bread recipe as well, which looks quite... A I don't do gluten-free. I'm not... I'm not I'm t is that artisan or is that not artisan? Is it something like artisan? I've never... Oh, it's for celiacs. Oh, right. One of my brother's daughters used to go out with somebody who was a celiac. I didn't know what it was. I had no idea. But you, you have to say in restaurants, he's celiac. And they go, oh, right. And apparently they're, they're, they're supposed to do something about it. I remember a friend of mine years and years ago, he... Um, he had a nut allergy because I never worried about things like that. You know, you you become ill after something, but you never ever thought that it was an it was an allergy. And he had an, and they had to start putting it on all of the all of the restaurant menus. You know, this contains nuts, or put it on a packaging because I've never thought about it. I mean, I, as far as I know, I don't think I'm allergic to anything. Well, I don't I don't think I am. Running out of Prosecco is fairly high up the list, I admit. So I did go and get some the other day, actually. And then I saw a lovely box of sweeties. They were licorice all sorts. And if I am partial to a sweetie, it would be a licorice all sort. And, and I thought, should I buy them? And I thought, it's just sugar. You can't have it. It's just sugar. And so I try and, you know, wean myself off things. And so I wean myself off that. And I haven't had jelly babies in years. Because people used to write in and go, you've had jelly babies. You could always tell because my mind and everything raced away very, very quickly with, with sort of... They, they're going to ban these things, these leaf blowers. They're going to ban them in, in one particular... Uh, one council is banning a leaf blower. Well, I'm not telling him. I've got one. I've got one. I've got a leaf blower. You could, there's a silent one in Holland Park. No. You've started hanging around Holland Park quite a lot recently, haven't you? You live in Holland Park. <laughs> We're so rich. We're so rich around here. We just live it. We just call it the garden. <laughs> Don't call it Holland Park at all. So here we go. Listen, Rosemary Schrager. You remember Rosemary Schrager. She apparently cooks on the television occasionally. But uh, she says, anybody who takes a bottle of wine to a party 
to, to, to a dinner party is an idiot. And uh, she says, one thing you can guarantee, they won't open a bottle of wine that you've taken. Your wine is probably better than some of the wine you've been offered. So, I mean, I don't know what... She says, take a candle, <laughs> a, a little bunch of flowers, some chocolates, but never a bottle of wine. Well, Mary Killen says, <laughs> at the very top level of society, we like Mary Killen. She's from... Have you seen her on Gogglebox? She wrote about me last Christmas. She met Mary Killen. She's the agony art for the spectator, and she's the regular. She's the um, she's the vicar. We like her. We like her a lot. But um, uh, she she talks about it. It's pushy to insist that your bottle's drunk. So I don't know. Are you are you permitted if you go to somebody's house and you have a, a nice dinner? Are you allowed to get a bit tiddly and then just eventually slide off the chair onto the floor? Are you allowed to get tiddly, or do you have to hold back? You can. Only get tiddly as a host. But, oh, right, OK. Oh, that's why I'm not invited to dinner parties. I'm always the embarrassment. I'm just going upstairs. <laughs> Stagger up the stairs. Steve says, Jonathan, in Southport, I had undiagnosed celiac for 40 years disease. And um, uh, ruined my life. Panic attacks, low blood sugar. I feel wonderful now on a gluten-free diet. Well, that's good news for you. That's very good news. And good news to... Uh, Good news for everybody else, actually. Steve, a friend's mother, replaced his zip with Velcro. He was so embarrassed when he went to the toilet in the pub and a loud ripping sound was heard when he opened his flies. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> We're so good at toilet things. You're, you're going to see it for the first time. This is the picture that haunts the Duke. This is Mark 2001, after the alleged night out at Tramp, or as he prefers to call it, fresh from Pizza Express, which we're not sure about. And it's a picture of uh, Prince Andrew with his arms around Virginia Roberts, taken at the Belgravia home of Ghislaine Maxwell. Do you know, considering it's, she's she's millionaire, so it's a very plain sort of house. Perhaps Andrew's used to things like that, but it's a, it's the whole thing is, is a little bit odd. And then three days later, March the 13th, in a club. He was in Tramp. This is the place where he didn't, he didn't know where the bar was. It's next to the dance floor, dear. OK, just thought I'd tell you that. But uh, there were loads of people there, so they would have seen him, but it's, it's just he wasn't there on the night that it was alleged he was there. And as if the Yorks haven't made enough catastrophic errors, here's Sarah Ferguson, dressed in a khaki robe and pink headscarf, discussing her work as a philanthropist at the Forum... Well, with, what, with what money, dear? You don't have any money. And so she appeared at a conference. To be honest with you... I mean, this is, she was toadying up to the Saudi crown prince. Now, you remember the Saudi crown prince, because this has come up before, who was blamed for that journalist murder, you know, Jamal Khashoggi, in 2018. And so Sarah Ferguson goes in, she accepts an invitation, and uh, she says here, you need to be focused. Only focus on one thing. And I'm saying, no, keep your open mind. I mean, where does she get this rubbish from? Has she been reading some sort of ridiculous book? If you want to write a book, she says, write a book. If you want to make tea, make tea. This rubbish they're apparently buying over in Saudi. I mean, it's, she is just dragging them down further and further. And Beatrice, we think here, was one of the key figures pressing uh, Andrew to go ahead with that disastrous Newsnight interview. Are they so naive? I mean, I don't like to say that, you know, being a member of the royal family gives you some sort of intelligence, because quite clearly it doesn't. But you do think that, I mean, they, they've got nobody to ask whether or not they're right. And of course, and in most cases, they're wrong. I know that the girls apparently have jobs, but uh, nobody's ever seen them there. They go very infrequently. They spend most of their time faffing around, pretending to be members of the royal family. Ridiculous. As the Girl Allowed band mates, Girls Allowed, deny nominating her for gruesome trials, because apparently Nadine wasn't that popular. I like her. I think she's good fun. I think she's, she's very successful. I mean, Cher Cheryl Tweedy went out to a restaurant called Bagatelle. Bagatelle in my day was a game that you played with marbles. It was a board, a Bagatelle board, and you flicked the thing and it went out and all the rest of it. Do you remember Bagatelle? Is it just me? Grade A at piano. A 
song called Bagatelle. Well, here, here's Cheryl out on the town. One of these days we'll see a picture of Cheryl pushing a pram, but I don't think it'll be in our lifetime, will it? The kid's going to be 17 before we get to see it. She's obviously keeping it indoors. Stay indoors. Apparently he's marvellous. Does all sorts of things. But anyway, Cheryl hasn't spoken to Nadine in seven years. Count that as a blessing, actually, Nadine. What do you want to talk to her for? Fate, 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 fate. Oh, yeah, I'm in court. Uh, fate, fate. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, also, you've got, um, Vote For Me, Dylan, going on the campaign trail. This is, uh, Dylan. This is Boris's, uh, dog. And so you can guess that we're reading the Daily Mail today. That's your Bible for today. Miranda quits the TV company she set up with David Walliams. They were once close friends. They're no longer partners. David Walliams falls out with loads of people, have you noticed? And I watched the Jonathan Ross interview. He's a right difficult interview, right pain. He could have been so much easier... But he, he came over as a bit obnoxious, actually, which was a shame. Which was a shame, because Robbie Williams came over quite well. And he's normally the one who's a bit of a pain, isn't he? But uh, he seems to have calmed down a bit. Charity and church posters torn down by almost half of councils. Apart from this freedom of information. Isn't that awful? Why would they want to tear things down? Do you know that we don't have um, a Christmas tree officially in Twickenham this year? We've got some scrubby little thing in a pot. The one in Richmond is vast, uh, millions of miles high. Our one is about ten foot tall. It's very pathetic and very bad news. Very bad news. Although I heard a story the other day about a councillor who had moved. I don't know who this councillor is. I mean, I really don't know. Because two weeks ago, we had really bad traffic in Twickenham. I mean, it was horrendous. And it turns out, so the story goes, that this particular councillor has moved to a road off one of the other roads and decided they didn't want taxis parking to pick up all the rugby fans. So they effectively closed the road for the day, providing us with the worst traffic we've had. Don't worry, we can always vote them out. You know, that's a good idea. If you get sort of idiotic councillors. I tell you, they're, they're, they're really mad, our council round, are we? Also, the drugs feud clue. This is a British businessman shot dead. Police suspect it's drugs-related. Peter Andrew Williamson died instantly when he was struck in the heart by one of seven bullets... This is in the Riviera de Sol. Uh, friends and relatives paid tribute to him. He was nicknamed Snaggle. Now dead Snaggle, I suppose. I mean, if you get involved with drugs and you start messing around with people, it's not good. Uh, somebody said, uh, devastated and heartbroken, still doesn't seem real that he's gone. Oh, believe it. He's definitely gone. Definitely. Uh, meanwhile, a 24-year-old Brit was stabbed twice in the leg in the popular holiday resort of Puerto Banus. Um, and it was people who sort of mix with all the... I mean, it's, it's, it's really, there's a lot of old rubbish out there. There really is. Um, 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 revealed. Huge investigation into tycoon suspecting of laundering 266 million. God, can you imagine that? you imagine phoning up the bank and going, can I just have a balance on the account? And they go, 265 million, 989. Thank you. Thank you. We can eat. Uh, farmers fighting back against rural crime gangs. They're building miles of three-foot-high earthworks. Go round Windsor, you'll find all the farms round there. They put huge blocks of concrete to stop people driving onto their land and setting up little sites. They managed to stop that one quite well. And a charity for child abuse victims has sacked its founder. After the Mail on Sunday revealed he had sex in a restaurant toilet with a woman he knew was molested as a youngster. He said he was ashamed of his actions. This is a man called Peter Saunders. And, uh... He was asked to resign on Friday by trustees of the National Association for People Abused in Childhood. He'd been suspended as a result of the report. This took place in 2008. 2008. But he claimed the woman had investigated the encounter but said he was ashamed of his actions. Good Lord, Andrew Pierce, you've shrunk. Look at you. Look at you. I didn't know it was you till yesterday. What's that? Have they all gone? All the biscuits have got. You've not eaten all the biscuits, surely. Have you eaten? Last week, eight donuts. Eight dough. I mean, seriously. Do you know what it is? It's like he just in. It's like an action. Oh, are you doing? It's like it's like an actional thing. Did you enjoy yourself yesterday? Did you enjoy doing the program? You love it. Well, oh, bless your heart. I mean, luckily I'm giving you a good audience on a Sunday morning, so you just got to hang on to them. <laughs> Have a nice program. Andrew Pierce with you. It's a cheap way of getting an extra plug-in for the programme, as you can well imagine. But he's with you at uh, 7 o'clock this morning, sitting in for Andrew Castle. Oh, we, don't, we don't know where Andrew is. Well, somebody must know where he is. He must know where he is. But uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too sure where he is. It's not tennis, is it, or something like that? Is it some tennis thing? It's a wedding. Oh, right. 
Oh, it was his daughter's wedding. Really? Oh, wow, that's nice. Hope they have a nice time. Uh, Sunday Times this morning. Boris, I pledge not to raise your taxes. They're promising you everything at the moment. Everything. Top brass plan to shrink the army. Well, it can't get much smaller, can it? And uh, Britain's biggest petrol head has admitted he has no doubt about the existence of climate change after an epiphany on the other side of the world. I love it when people have epiphanies. They're my favourite things to have. I don't think I've ever had one. But I'm willing to, oops, willing, willing to go for it. Sunday Telegraph is a picture of Boris and his dad, uh, called Stanley. They were out on the trail the other day. Uh, the train union leaders have been attacked for preparing a £600,000 war chest to support the biggest strike in British railway history. Tens of thousands of commuters are going to be basically shafted for the 27 days of Christmas chaos in southwestern railways after talks broke down on Thursday. The strike's going to run for 27 days. Thank you so much, guys. We're so behind you on this one. Thank you for ruining Christmas. Thank you so much. I thought it was just the Grinch, but no, it's the RA. Heavy company coming to the end of the uh, the program. Not just yet. We've got a few more, more minutes. Uh, I've got some more bad news for Prince Andrew. It's just dropped, on, dropped onto my desk. Uh, the Queen has cancelled his birthday party in February to mark his 60th birthday and uh, she was planning to host for Andrew and his charities. Well, there aren't any charities and uh, he's not having a birthday party. So no, no jelly and ice cream and a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat for Prince Andrew uh, because he's understood to be intended to hold only a small family dinner. I would think that would be a, a very good indicator. Very good indicator. So, uh, so that's it. Penny Junis says he's absolutely finished. If Andrew is no longer, and she knows... Mind you, she's a huge fan of Charles Penny Jr., a huge fan. If Andrew's no longer representing or supporting the monarch in any capacity, what's the point of him? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. He's just another hanger on her. Buckingham Palace said he would maintain his military affiliations for now, but would not take part in any events. I don't think that... Why would you want somebody like him at any of your events? You just really don't. And it's because of the association. Another source close to him said he wanted his daughters, Beatrice and Eugenie to take over his patronage roles. I don't think they'd want them either. I don't want to be rude about it, but I'm sorry, we're, we're looking at a family that needs to close down that side of it. But uh, they say that the Queen never gave her approval for the television interview. She's privately supportive of Andrew, but frustrated the scandal is overshadowing the work of the rest of the family. Exactly. Exactly. I should imagine Charles must be absolute. I mean, you are allowed to fall out with your siblings, aren't you? Allowed to fall out with your brothers and your sisters and everything else. But uh, perhaps he could go and disappear to his alpine hideaway. Uh, his office has been moved out of Buckingham Palace as well. So very shortly, he won't be to get through the gates. But I'm Andrew. I'm afraid, sir, we can't let you in. I'm Andrew. I mean, I'm Prince and We know who you are, sir. You're not coming in. This is Sir, the Sir Fergie. Say something to them. She's not in either. Very shortly, they're going to be banging on the doors, aren't they? Prince Andrew looking to Eugenie, or Eugenie, and Beatrice to take over his royal duties. Of course, we're all intrigued as to what these royal duties are, because nobody's ever seen him do very much. So, I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's, I think he's, he's on a, he's on a loser. I think he's on a loser on this one. I just, I just think he should, he should step away from it. They could do that. They can do that. It's entirely feasible. So the front pages. Here we go. This is the Observer. Johnson tax vowed to put money back in pockets, as I said to you last week, the week before. Uh, they'll be promising you everything. Yet nobody's offered us free petrol for a year. That would be a winner, wouldn't it? Or a free bicycle. Uh, also, the Sunday Telegraph. Jose Mourinho says he's bringing happiness back to football. Lovely. I wasn't aware that there wasn't any happiness in football. Uh, Boris on the Sunday Times. I pledge not to raise your taxes. Uh, Queen cancels Andrew's 60th birthday bash. Meanwhile, Prince Charles is in New Zealand. A six-day trip with the Duchess of Cornwall. You'd never know he was there. It's all been overshadowed by uh, Andrew, the brother who keeps on giving. Uh, also free inside the Mail on Sunday, Jamie Oliver and Prue Leith. 24-page Christmas recipe pullout. He's coming in to see me this week. We should be talking about things festive. And uh, John Barrowman in as well. Uh, Boris pledges triple tax freeze, an unprecedented warning from the ex-secret intelligence service boss. Uh, MI6 chief Corbyn is security danger. The definitive truth 
about the picture of Prince Andrew. Shows how long ago it was. I mean, his, his memory recall is fantastic. Uh, also, Miles will go after anything with a pulse, says his ex. You don't know who Miles is. He's a nobody. He's on a, he's on a reality show at the moment. Labour will pledge 57 billion to women who are denied state pensions. Front of the mirror, the son, Andy's pedo pal at Palace. Uh, yes. They've all been. I think you'll find that, uh, Jeffrey Epstein went as well. Man City wag war. And uh, they've been called t two people. They're arguing. So the usual wags, because I can barely string two words together, as we've seen with Rebecca Vardy. Uh, it's a case of you're a bitch, you're a slag, and all this. I mean, seriously, it's almost like some joke, isn't it? Really, can't believe it. Still trying to get over the fact that Daniel O'Donnell wants to have an affair with himself. I should imagine that would be the best thing, wouldn't it? A bit like Peter Andre. Uh, Saffron is single watch her dancing sunday people lags run a knife factory in prison they make hundreds of blades and ship them to other jails sounds like the best life you can ever have isn't it and uh, the sunday express pm my big christmas gift to britain you can read all about that i'm back with you this evening at uh, 9 pm for in conversation and it's very good it's very very good indeed it's very good. We have we have comedy and food. What better combination? Uh, Corey says, maybe the prince can come to your live show for his birthday in February. Corey, bless your heart. That's my assistant producer who's now started writing into the programme. It's now, it's got that desperate, hasn't it? But he does have a train set running round his Christmas tree. And my brother's got the same one. He got it the other day, he said it, it'll fit. I think his head's still hurting a little bit. McFadden said that he would have been a bank robber if he hadn't got a part in EastEnders. Money in? Money in? Oh, good. I know. Try and look a bit more excited. I mean, goodness sake, honestly. You just, oh, you just paid your rent. Actually, I, I've got service charge to pay. So, service charge. We have to, we have a service charge to pay, which I think is about 600 quid or something. It's very expensive. We have a lift. <laughs> what can I tell you? We have a cleaner. We have insurance. Everything costs money nowadays. It costs 31,000 years to live where I live. Ridiculous. Just insert, not for me personally, but split. Split. It's a lot of money, isn't it? It's always paying out now. It's a lot of money for a lift, isn't it? Oh, well done, now? Poppet. That's nice. You all right? Lovely. Even get your name at the top of it. I never get that from Thomas. I've never had names at the top of it. Now I get Corey's name at the top of it. Yeah. No, not my. It doesn't say my name at all. It just says Corey, which is lovely. Very sweet. I think Thomas has got his name sewn into every pair of pants and vests he owns. <laughs> like you used to have at school. I don't know why, actually. It's as if we were in the habit of lending your underpants out to people. I mean, it's like, we used to have that on all of my... My mother used to sit there sewing these caches labels into everything. Socks, vest, pants, shirt. I mean, I'm only assuming when I took them off at night, they were rented out to somebody else. I can't think of any other reason why that would happen. Oh, but could your mother not sew? My mother had a, had a sewing box... And in the sewing box, she had, I mean, can you believe, in the early days, she used to darn socks. She'd put, like, a wooden egg into the, into the sock. It was a special wooden egg. You put it in there, and then you, you crocheted or whatever they did. You knitted round it or something. And so, me, I throw them out now, and I buy another pair of socks. Well, obviously. And then I spoke a friend of mine the other day, and knowing me, and then after, after he, he told me, he said, oh, I suddenly realised I'm talking to the wrong person, I left my scarf and hat uh in his case when we went to the hippodrome and i forgot to collect it on the way back so he, he took it home he said I've, I've i've got your scarf and hat i said i've already bought them again i went out and bought another hat and another scarf he said i should have realized he said so and bless you there you go i thought i was coming down with a cold this morning i i got up and i was i was up a little bit early because they're resurfacing the road in twickenham uh, which is very exciting. So, and I, and I sneezed. I thought, oh dear. And then my throat was a little bit <coughs> like that. So I then, I then practice, you know, me, 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 me. It always works. Me, me, let's talk about me, me, me. Do you go one? Do you know, somebody said to me once, and I remember coming up with this cockamamie answer. Why do DJs, you know, mobile DJs, or people, uh, one, one, two, one, two, one. What are you doing? What are you talking about? One, why do you just say, hello, my name is Steve. And see how that sounds. All this one, one, two. Every DJ does it. Seriously, I've never heard so much trouble. Trolley? I don't know, whatever it is in my life. But I used to do it too. You got one, 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 two, one, two. Just to see what it sounded like. Because I didn't care how, how bad the music sounded. As long as my voice sounded good. That's all I, all I cared about. But one, one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> well, you got a sore throat. You pray to God that it's not going to last. I seriously prayed, prayed very hard this morning, going, please don't give me a sore throat. So I had a cup of coffee, 
And and I was sort of, <clears throat> la, 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 la. Of course, you look a bit silly, don't you? You're sitting in front of the television talking to yourself. I mean, if ever they put hidden cameras in, like the Celebrity Big Brother house, I'm going to look like the biggest prat under the sun talking to himself. Go, me, 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 mo, me, mo, me, mo, me, me, me. Because basically... Radio presenters, I mean, opera singers and singers in shows, they do something to protect their voice. Radio presenters, nothing. Not a thing. I don't gargle with lemon juice. I don't gargle with anything at all. You just go on air, you open your mouth, and you hope to God it holds out for three hours. Seems to have done so far. I've only had a few a, a few incidents over the years where it's it's just, it's gone. You wake up in the morning, you go, and you think, oh, it's not there. And it's horrible. Lost it for a week. I lost it on a... Um, on the recording of um, a pilot show for television for Terry Wogan. A company called me in and they said, we want you to learn this this show and then you'll, we'll, you'll, we'll, we'll learn to play it with, I think we had six celebrities in, and Terry Wogan and his management team will come in to decide if they want to do it. Well, something must have happened because we rehearsed it. I go home, uh, I wake up the next morning, gone completely. The voice has just... Uh, like that. It was awful. So I phoned them up and I said, I've lost my voice, I can't talk, I'm sorry. And they went, well, you're the only one who knows how to play the game. You've got to come in and do it because they're all coming in today. So I had to go to the other side of London and play this game. If it, nobody could hear a word I was saying. I might as well have sat there and whispered, which is how it came out. And in the, he didn't run with the show, surprisingly. Perhaps he thought that was the gimmick, have to whisper for the show. It was really odd. And I, was like that. And I thought, I wonder if that's nerves. Because I don't really get nervous about things like that. I'm not particularly bothered. I just sort of go in there and you do what, what you've got to do. I'm interviewing Ian Dale next year. Yeah, he came up to me the other day. It was really odd. And he said, I want you. I thought, oh, God, honestly, what a time to tell me coming up to my 66th birthday. <laughs> Should have told me 10 years ago. And, uh, and he said, will you interview me? And I thought, he's angling for in conversation. He's at, no, it's at a book festival. And he wants, why me? I've got no idea. I don't know where this has come from. He said, and it's, it's June. Well, I've never planned that far in advance in my entire life. So I'm interviewing him on stage at this literary festival, Twickenham. It's the Richmond and Twickenham Literary Festival or something. And so I'm, and perhaps he thought Twickenham is not too far for somebody to go. <laughs> as long as I get a cup of tea and a sausage roll, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy. It doesn't bother me. I don't know what I'm... It's a very cheap date. Very, always have been, thank God. Served me well in my time, though, I have to be honest. I call myself the Prince Andrew of LBC. I'm sort of one of those sort of people. I can't help it. It's great. I'll look at it. Look at me being controversial at this time of the pro. Ten minutes into the programme and already we've thrown in the A word. <laughs> Doesn't take long, does it? I go through the papers every day and I, I pray to God that... You know what's coming up for sale? If you've got ten grand, Rod Hull's Emu. Rod Hull's Emu is coming up for sale. Because you know that Rod was fixing a... Um, a TV aerial on the top of his house fell off and killed himself. And emus come up for sale for, for about £10,000. I'm, I'm sorely tempted because I'm thinking that was the only thing that Michael Parkinson hated. That was the thing that he, when he worked for LBC, he, we had a, a thing for all our best advertisers. And uh, the management said, oh, you, you must come to this. So there's me, Fred Housko, loads of other people there. And, uh, and Michael Parkinson was doing the after dinner speech. And he said, he said, I've interviewed da, 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 and all I'm famous for is that bloody emu. He hated it. It, it just completely took away his dignity. And it didn't just happen once. He wrestled him to the ground. He was, phew. I don't think so. I don't think he, actually, he, he might buy it and burn it. <laughs> that would be the thing. It's interesting, it's to come up for sale now. Perhaps the Magic Circle might want to buy it, but the trouble is it's a bit big to put in a, in a cabinet. You'd have to find a separate cabinet. But you're right, perhaps somebody should contact Parky and go, are you interested in buying it? No, really well, wouldn't we? That's what it'd be like. <laughs> but he said, after interviewing all these people, and all I'm famous for, I'm sodding you. <laughs> Which I thought was quite true, actually. I sat next to Fred Housko. If ever, you, if ever you're sitting at a, at a dinner, sit next to somebody you can talk for the for, for the country. It's uh, it's uh, it's the arm that goes round it is fake. His hand is inside, operating it. But it's so it's sort of, and then it used to be able to crumple its nose up. So its nose was made of rubber, and and if if, if it crumpled its nose up while it was looking at you. <laughs> You knew you were in trouble, and I'm afraid Parky. It's, I think Parky said something about it. Have you ever seen it? You've never seen it. 
Yeah, but yeah, but it's big. The, the, this thing is it's, it's the size of an ostrich. Yes, it's an emu. It's an emu. It's huge. It's not some little glove puppet. No, no, no. That was Orville. Orville was a green thing. Slightly different. I wish I could fly right up to the sky, but I can't. You can. <laughs> no, it was completely... Or Orville was the, was the green thing. And you're new here, yeah. And Emu was... Uh, to put it in on, on YouTube and you can watch. It starts off the interview. And, um, and it's, it seems to be going okay. If you've never seen it before, it's actually quite, quite scary. But this thing was known for attacking people who, who talked and go, you're a nice bird, aren't you? And if they dared to touch it, this thing would turn very slowly. The nose would, would sort of scrunch up. And look, and you could see he's sort of, he's moving his chair nearer. So the arm that goes round it, holding it together, look, see, it already starts trying to bite the chair. Then it turns the thing round. And any minute now, it's, look, it's, it scrunched its nose up. Once it scrunches, oh, it's now got him. Parky hated it. He could have killed him, wrestled him to the ground. Of course, the audience loved it. The audience thought it was the best thing ever. M Michael didn't like it at all. But it happened on every show. Every show that blasted emu was on it attacked the person. I mean, I, I got squirted by Sooty. Sooty came, <laughs> Sooty came in here, in his, in, not in this studio, in another one, in a box. He comes with a box, and of course, you know, and like that. And so, I forget who brought him in, actually. It might have been Matthew. And he said, oh, Sooty wants to say hello. Oh, not sure about this. So Sooty comes out, waves. I wave back like a complete idiot. Hello, hello, Sooty. And then he says, I think he's got a surprise for you. And I went, oh, I wonder what that could be. Sooty dives down in the box, comes up with a bloody water pistol and starts squirting me with it. I thought, we're surrounded by electronics. I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to be blown up in the studio. So funny. Eight is a very strange time, honestly. Well, mind you, they always say if you could remember it, you weren't really there. Or was that the 60s? Or the 50s? 90s, yeah. Mine was the 50s. <laughs> How dreadful is that? How dre and fact, are you not knowing who Emu is, then I could, why would you? Why would you know? It wasn't your sort of era, was it, at all? Well, what sort of puppets... It does look, it was terrifying. As I was to say, the, the, the key to Emu was if he started crunching his nose up, he was going to go for your throat. And it's the clangers. <whistles> yeah, yeah. Michael Benteen, the soup dragon. I don't remember that bit. Michael Benteen came in. What did he have? Potty time, didn't he? Which was, or did he have clangers as well? I can't remember. One of them did. It was potty time, wasn't it? Before, was it before your time? Oh, God, how embarrassing. Honestly, I remember it quite well. He came into L LBC, Michael Benteen, and started sort of being funny. But people in those days did. I remember when Eric Morecambe came in, and he walked through the newsroom, and he put his glass on, hello, <laughs> like that. Of course, the newsroom, all these hardened journalists, drunk. Uh, there were sort of fags on and all the rest of it. Who's that? It's it's um, it's uh, Eric, Eric Morecambe. Right. And I remember when we were in Hammersmith, I brought in... Um, God, who was that comedian who used to... Uh, Mr. Gribsdale, that one. There we go. <laughs> um, everybody will know who it is. Everybody will know who it is. No, I'm not doing a break now. That means I'm doing it on time. I, I have a tradition of not doing breaks on time. Yeah, you're trying to trick me into a break. I tell you what, why don't you think about that one, Steve? We'll go to a break while you're doing it. I'm not falling for it. I'm not falling for it. I stupidly gave Thomas some advice. When, when, he, when he said to me, he said, he said, how, how do you get presenters to do something? You know, to do an interview. And I stupidly gave away the key to it. I said, what you say is, listen, you should do this. You will be brilliant at this. And you, f and you play to our ego. The ego is, hmm, I'm really good at this kind of thing. Well, it then he tries it on me. Has he tried it on you too? And that's my fault then. That's my fault. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Who is this blooming... This, um, this comedian, who I can't think of, somebody will tell me, you need to tell me very, very quickly, please, because other way, the clue is, Mr. Gribsdale, uh, Norman Wisdom. Norman Wisdom used to have a habit of sort of pratfalling. He would come in and pratfall. He came into Hammersmith, and our managing director was Australian. I don't think he knew who he was at all. And he goes into the office, he goes, Hello, Mr. Gribsdale, like that and jumps up on his desk. <laughs> Poor Charlie thought he was going to be assassinated or something. Steve, who is this guy? It's Norman Wisdom. Uh, uh, very big in Albania. Uh. Terrible, terrible, but very funny. But he, And then he fell down the corridor a few times, which, of course, is only good. But they, they come from the old school. The old school was sort of prepared to do the act away from it. 
It's like us, isn't it? We, we, we go home and talk to the mirror. So, how was your day today? You know, me, 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 me. One, two, one, 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 two. Always work. Rod Hull was on the same show as Billy Connolly. And Bill saying to Rod, if that bird touches me, I'm going to break its neck and your arm. Yes, it was terrible. The Michael Parkinson out. You know, you remember it like it was yesterday because it, it goes down in the annals of history. A puppet takes over. <laughs> Till Brian Connolly came along and said, okay, it's a puppet. Somebody says, what a day for a daydream. Exactly, what a day for a daydreaming boy. And uh, many memories brought back. I saw the Barbara tribute to Barbara Windsor on TV yesterday. Very good. Uh, Jenny and Mitchum says, as to have pigs in blankets for two pounds. Very good. And uh, Debbie and Lester said, what's Eamon Holmes done now? Simon and I don't like him at all. It's not, I don't not like him. It's just that sometimes he says things on the television. Sometimes he's, I'm not, I don't know if it's an act or if he's just being a bit pompous or whatever, but he doesn't have the same sense of humour you want him to have. And he used a word, which to be quite honest, I mean, I had to, I said on Sunday morning, I've heard of the word because I thought it just meant, you know, you're being a bit above yourself. That's all I thought it was. You know, I didn't, didn't realise he had any other connotations at all. Neither did Tom Swarbrick. And he's had a much better education than I ever had. So if he didn't know about it and I didn't know it, also I didn't know the other one, which was selling you down the river. I never think about Why would you think about that? I thought that was just an ex where they came from. Of course, you never question. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there all blooming day, wouldn't you? Trying to work out. And I'm assuming that was to do with slavery. Dallas says that uh, egg was a darning mushroom. Was it? Well, it was a darning mushroom, yes. My mother had a box which had all um, needles in it, you know, sort of um, you know, needles for threading with cotton and all the rest of it. And she used to darn socks. She could sew buttons back on again. Most people can't sew a button on for love nor knife. Seriously. I still have one and I still darn socks and sweaters. Neil, in full ham, said, did you go to the Christmas exhibition? You I didn't. I didn't go, no. I was, uh, um, I don't know why I didn't go, actually. I was trying to find some lights the other day, and I know that Neil goes to get lights, and I can't remember which, which blooming place we went to, where you can get boxes of 1,500 lights in the box. I bought one the other day, which has got 2,000 lights in the box. You know, when you see, so when you see a box of lights with sort of 20 or 80, I think, pfft, piddling nothing to me. I want something that's got really a lot of lights in it. So I'm looking for, you know... To, somebody said there's a box of lights with 10,000 lights in it. Now, that's actually really nice, but you imagine trying to unpick them at the end of Christmas, unravel them from the blooming tree. And then somebody said there's another thing you can buy now, which I think we've seen on QVC, and it's a round ring which you put over the top of the tree and the lights are hanging down from it and they just go all over the tree. And that sounded quite good. You just lift the whole thing off and you don't have to wrap round the tree. Because I've got two trees outside with, I think, a thousand lights on each. Which is quite... I like a lot of lights. How, how long? Oh, God, goes forever. Goes forever. It's, uh, there's a lot. But, of course, the worst thing is you sort of wrap them round your arm when you take them off the tree. Put, put them in a bag. You take them out next year. For some reason, they've managed to turn themselves inside out and there's a knot halfway down. Where that comes from? So th this time round, because there were some knots, we've shoved the knot at the back of the tree. So you don't notice it. <laughs> but I'm definitely looking for more lights today. I've decided, oh, no, I can't go out. I've just realised you can't get out onto the road. They're resurfacing our road. So it's been closed. How they think we're going to get in and out, and they uh, really, I've got no idea. Even the buses are diverted. Yes, that was me slurping. We always slurp on this programme. You have to do it. It's the only way. I can't help it. Uh, 84850, Steve at lbc.co.uk. Susan Moscow. Moscow. I bet it's cold there. God, I bet it's cold. I always want, Do you know, I, I nearly went on a free holiday some years ago. They were doing a free cruise to Russia. And uh, we used to get holidays in the early days, then you would come back and do a report on it. So it was like a, like a little travelogue, like something colder going off to do something. And, um, and I, I got offered this Russian trip, and I remember thinking, how exciting. I fancied going there just to see all the things. I wanted to go to Red Square. I wanted to, I wanted to see everything. And, um, and Lenin's tomb, even though I'm led to believe there's not really much of him that's original now. The rest is sort of made up. He's sort of lying there, poor soul, bathed in, in sort of lighting, which is very odd. Uh, and, and then at the last minute, within the last week of it all sort of coming together, Blooming Cruise Company went bust. So I never got to go. And, uh, and I've never actually done it since. I've never sort of... I've been on some cruises. And um, I can't fancy doing another one. But I've decided I don't want one with kids. 
I really don't want kids. I'm afraid I've now got to that age where I just want sensible people, thank you. Kids running about screaming and young... P oh, no, thank you. Not very much indeed. We had to, had to drain our pool twice on the ship last time round because some uh, baby decided to go to the toilet in the water. They're supposed to wear special nappies, but of course the chav mother, and she was a chav mother, uh, didn't buy anything like that at all, so they had to drain the pool. That was out of action for ages. I suppose in theory we could have jumped over the side of the ship, but I didn't fancy doing that either. Not not my sort of thing. Uh, so, sleeper train. Oh, I tell you what's a good train. My good friend, my, uh, my chemist, Mr Shah, he went on the is it the Canadian one, which has got the dome, the bubble on the top of it, and you sit up there in the bubble? Is it called the bubble train? It might be called the bubble train, actually. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it looks fantastic. And it's got a big bubble on the top of it, and you can sit up there and watch the world go by. And it's all snowy and sounds wonderful. And I'm sure it's Canadian bubble train. Uh, no, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. It, it is actually a bubble on the top of it, it looks like a giant but some of these look quite good actually but it's it's definitely it's it, the canadian rockies i'm sure it is canadian rockies train Tri bubble train no what else would you call it i don't know what else you'd call it somebody will know the name of it. but he actually went on it said it was fantastic because every so often it has to stop while they clear the snow and I, I remember thinking, I mean, the, the scenery is absolutely stunning, isn't it? No, it's definitely a thing sitting on the top of the train. The, these look like the sort of an upper class, isn't there, on the train. Whatever it is, I quite like to do that. That sounds quite a good one, doesn't it, really? Orient Express, yes. It would have to be with a steam train. Some of them are done with electric. But, uh, you know, you've got to take loads of clothes on. You can't just turn up in what we're wearing. You've got to dress. But I love the idea of getting onto a train and being able to sleep. Because we always do that, don't we? But that's after we've had a few few bevies. And we sit on a train, we go, oh, and you wake up and you've dribbled down the side of your mouth, you know, clutching your Casey burger in one hand, which looks like a car crash. And, um, and, and you wake up, and then you try and pretend that you've not been asleep at all. But you know by the way people are looking at you, you've either snored or broken wind or both. The very idea. <laughs> Very idea, honestly. I can remember seeing somebody sitting on a train once. One of those businessmen on a Friday evening just staggered out of Fleet Street or wherever it was, and he bought himself a Casey burger, which was dripping in all sorts of horrible things. And he sat there, and he's moving back, and I'm thinking, he's going to be sick. He's going to be sick. And he was. Luckily, we all managed to move very quickly, because the moment somebody goes, and you think, no, get out quickly. But I'm actually much better. Years ago, it used to make me feel sick, somebody else being sick. Now, I'm not, I'm not bothered by things like that, as long as I'm nowhere near them. <laughs> you just try and sort of sit there and hope it goes away very quickly. I hate being sick. I'll do anything. I've stood outside in my pants before now to stop being sick. I, I, I really don't like it. I think it stems back to when I was a, when I was a child. I don't, it, the freezing cold air kind of sort of stops. I can remember going to the bathroom and thinking, oh, oh no. And then so you, you, you run the tap. I don't know why you run the tap. You obviously think running the tap makes you feel better. It doesn't. It just makes you want a wee. So you're having a wee. At the same time as thinking, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. And then you, you start sipping water. So I always keep water in the fridge. Always. I've got it in the taps as well, but it's in the fridge. And you sort of sip a little bit and sip a little bit. And then gradually you think it's going to go away. And then you oh, no. All of a sudden it's like there's a little inferno in your tummy. All of a sudden you can hear a bit of a gurgling going on and you think, this is not going to end well. Not going to end well. So, but I mean, I, I, it goes back to when I was a child. I remember going to my parents into their bedroom and going, I think I'm going to be sick. And my mother said, well, don't stand here. Go into the bathroom. I said, all right. Well, I'll get some sympathy. And, it, you know, you go to bed and you go, I don't feel very well, Mum. And so she go, right, I'll, I'll put a bowl down. So she'd go and get a washing up bowl, pour some dettol in it. Well, the very smell of dettol used to make you wretch anyway. And she'd put it by the side of the bed and she'd go, that, that's in case you're going to be sick. I'm thinking, if you put it down there, I'm going to get out of bed and tread in it. This is not, this is not going to end well. So I have actually sat by the front door with it open on a freezing cold night. God knows what the neighbours must think, but I thought, well, they want to look, let them look. And, uh, and then you, you pray that you're not going to be very ill. <laughs> you have to sit there, don't you, in front of the television, you know, with a big towel on your lap, thinking, if I am going to be ill, I'll be ill into the towel. It's much better. Steve, I bet your uh, mum had a button tin. Oh, she did. And do you know what, what tin it was? It was a tin that used to hold cigarettes, players' cigarettes, in a tin. In a tin, a round tin, looked like a little drum. And so she kept all her buttons in there, Maggie. Uh, Wayne, 
My trolley dolly says you'd love Moscow at Christmas. Similar to Scandinavia. Cold, snowy and beautiful, but blooming cold. He says, what's your favourite Christmas song? Oh, Wayne, I don't know. I have lots of favourite Christmas songs. Lots of... I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the carols. Big fan of the, We have a radio station in the building that plays lots of Christmas songs, but it's the carols which I get from, uh, from Classic, our station downstairs with my friend Sam. And those I love... Those I love. I mean, I, I do have endless carol CDs, which I play in the car. I don't know. I just like singing along to them. I'm not a particularly brilliant singer, but I think, of course, I'm wonderful. So I do sing. If, if anybody actually pulls up alongside the car, they probably think I'm on the telephone or something like that. My mouth is always moving, which is good. Uh, champions of a meat-free diet tend to be more passionate about the cause. Passion, apparently, being the operative word. Apparently, vegan uh, men are the best lovers. <laughs> Well, how do they prove that? That's ridiculous. I'm sensational. I mean, seriously, one-handed, from the chandelier, on top of the wardrobe, you name it, dressing up, I've got all the outfits, everything, buttons, dame, whole lot, you know, I can, I can accommodate any situation. <laughs> Sometimes I dress up as the captain of the Titanic. I always go, this is not going to end well. You know, I just like to, just like to sort of forewarn them. <laughs> The fun you can have, honestly. I'm lying, of course. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> but I always say that. If I actually say I'm really rubbish, you know, at the at the sort of the sort of the passion side of it, uh, then when it turns out I'm a sensation, they go, "Actually, you're really good." And you go, "No, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not really. I'm not really." More of your texts and emails in a moment. Eight four eight five zero Steve at LBC dot UK. The train is called the Rocky Mountaineer. So look for Rocky Mountaineer. That's what we're looking for. In the meantime, we're going to take a short break for the news on LBC and with the headlines this morning. For the Rocky Mountaineer, uh, Liam and uh, little Julie as well, it's definitely not that. This thing's got like a bubble on the top. That just looks like an extra deck on top of the train. Unless I've imagined the whole thing, which I think is highly unlikely. Uh, the bubble is called an observation dome or vista dome. Well, it's not on this Rocky Mountaineer. They don't, they don't have a... I mean, they, they, it's, well, they definitely don't have a dome. They definitely don't have a, a dome at all. Steve, your talk of buttons brings back good memories, as my dad was a buttonhole maker back in the 60s when garments were made. Then buttonholes and buttons were added by a specialist company. So we had a tea chest, says Rob, full of buttons of all sizes, colours and types. Yeah, a button tin. We used to play, and also we used to take them away on holiday, the button tin, and we'd, and we'd play cards when we went caravanning, and you'd use the buttons as, as your chips, because we didn't have any money, we just had buttons. And, uh, and at the end of the day, you just put them all back in the tin again, which was lovely. Shane says, my mum did the same thing when I was going to be sick, a bucket with Dettol. When I spent the Dettol, I know. <laughs> Alinka is in Ukraine. She says, it's very cold, minus one, but it feels like minus seven. Enjoying the show, waiting for breakfast. How lovely. What are you going to have for breakfast? I could have a breakfast now. I could have fried bread with beans on it. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? I think, I think somebody should actually turn this studio into a kitchen. There's enough room to put a small range in down the side. Little dish. We could have it just along that wall there. Just... We could have a halogen oven, couldn't we? Put it up on a surface where I'm not going to fall on it. Although, knowing me, I'd lean on it and the thing would blooming break anyway. But no, that'd be quite nice, actually. We should do a whole programme from a, from a restaurant. So we, we, we're cooking fried bread now. Oh, don't, honestly. How tempting. How tempting would that be? Especially on a, a Monday morning. And if you, if you get paid monthly, you get paid today. Well, most people do. Most people get paid on the 25th. Uh, so uh, enjoy... And it normally goes in at midnight, which is very exciting. Always very exciting. As we head ever nearer Christmas. Do you remember I said I was waiting for a code to come back? I file my VAT. I used to do it myself. Now they've changed the system. And I can still do it, but you need to buy this programme, which my accountant is dealing with. So he then has to write to him and say he's handling it on behalf of me. I then have to sign this thing, saying that's that. So. And so what they do is they send you a code which I then give to him so that he can input it and he can then do the uh, the filing of the accounts. Well, I can't find this code until I discovered the other day they have been sending it, but it only lasts for 15 minutes. So they send you this this number through, which is about six digits or something, and, uh, and it says you have 15 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes? He might not even see the thing for 15 minutes. And so I was, I was getting very stressed 
the other day and so I, I wrote back to them at the number that they they texted me on saying could you could you send it again please because it's the it's the only way i'm, I'm going to sort of to, to manage it because it's it just doesn't work and so they said the government gateway access code is blah 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 your code expires in 15 minutes and that was sent at 23 24 well i'm in bed at five totally useless to me totally useless i mean some of them are sent at ridiculous times absolutely ridiculous times so i sent one at 10 29 saying could you send another code i keep missing them it's like i missed a, an appointment at the hospital to get my eyes tested uh, being diabetic even though i've had my cataracts done and um and I missed the appointment. I phoned up to say I have to cancel the appointment. I know it's short notice. I did it that morning. Uh, then I got two two stroppy letters, basically saying, you know, if you, if you reject the, the next letter, you're out. So, so I thought that was charming. So then by, and by the next post, I got a thing saying, here is the time of your next appointment. Do not miss it. Pain of death. And, um, and I've checked it. Do you know what time it is? 4.15 in the afternoon. So I'm going to have drops put in my eyes at 4.15, when I'm just about climbing into bed at that time. <laughs> I daren't cancel it or change it. <laughs> I'm going to get into the most awful trouble. Awful trouble. Uh, the train is the Maple Leaf Express. Oh, thank you, Keith, very much indeed. And uh, Steve, getting married tomorrow uh, to my to my terminal. I'll partner then off to Cyprus for a cruise around the Eastern Med. No kids on board. Oh, well, that sounds fun. <laughs> An ex-FBI agent has told Andrew Pierce it's beyond the pale that Prince Andrew could be friends with Jeffrey Epstein and not have seen the things that are relevant and that investigators uh, want to know about and relevant. Well, I mean, I think between the two of them, Andrew must have not... I mean, unless he's a complete idiot. Who, who did he... I mean, did he not ask who all these girls were? You know, I'm sorry, who are these little flippity gibbet things? Who are they? And he'd go, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's just... I, you'd just ask, wouldn't you? I mean, to be honest with you, what was Andrew friendly with him for? Was it because he was a billionaire, or was it because he always had a procession of girls going backwards and forwards through the uh, through the houses? Very odd. Eight four eight five zero Stephen LBC dot co dot uk, and we take all your uh, your texts and uh, emails. So, can we try Maple Leaf Express now? We seem to be trying it. And the next thing it'll be Thomas the Bloomin' Tank Engine. So, Maple Leaf Express. No, it doesn't have a no. It doesn't have um, this observation car. I mean, it's it's got a sort of a top bit, but it's not a bubble. It's not a. T Ooh, well, it's got quite nice caravans, aren't they? I like the look of those. Freedom Express Maple Leaf Caravan. Do you know the American caravans are so much better than ours? So much better. And I like the trains. I mean, and, and at least in America, the trains look like trains, don't they? And it's so easy to fall asleep. So easy, to, the very idea that you can actually be sitting on a train, you have something nice to eat, a couple of glasses of wine or Prosecco, and then you go into your cabin and somebody's turn, turned the bed down, and you climb into it. I could stay there forever. Hello, would you like to wake up now? Nope, I wouldn't. No, thank you at all. I love stuff like that. Stuff like that. Uh, Steve, Rocky Mountaineer, a Canadian rail tour company that's the proud owner of Gold Leaf Services, has added four new trains to its fleet with another three set to be added in 2020. Well, all I know is this thing's got a round thing on the top of it, and I don't know what it's called. It's not the trains that we've seen so far, but bless you for, uh, for contributing. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, the baking giant Dr. Oetker gives back art looted by the Nazis. They still reckon there is a treasure train, don't they? Locked in a, in a hillside somewhere, a mountain, which is full of stuff that the Nazis looted. Wouldn't you like to find that? Wouldn't you like to find that? So it could go back to where it came from. They reckon it's full of gold and everything. The Nazis just stole, just stole. Uh, Ten million pounds worth of cocaine found in a van containing frozen fish. So there's somebody else who'll be spending uh, time, I should imagine, uh, at the pleasure of Her Majesty. Uh, Steve McFadden says he would have been a bank robber if he hadn't got a part in East Enders. Ben Fogle says telly fame isn't worth it. He's basically advised young people, try and find a job. Don't sort of rely on a reality show because you only have to look at this latest bunch of nobodies who sort of pop up and all they do is they just trowel on the makeup. Then they pretend that they've modelled uh, and designed some fashion items, which of course they haven't. And they go to parties and then they end up broke. 
and then they end up with nothing. And you think, no, if you'd been clever at a half a brain cell, all this, I mean, some of them are quite old. Amy Hart's at 27. That's practically finished, isn't it, in terms of work? And she's given up the job as a trolley dolly because she thinks she's going to be a celebrity. She's got no personality at all. She's about as boring as Jacqueline Josser in the jungle, whose family have come out and said, will people stop voting her for the Bush Tucker trials? Sod off. That's the fun of the programme. That's the whole idea. You, you get somebody on there that you know is going to go, eh, ooh, da, ooh, da, ooh, ooh, and you vote for them. We did it with, was it Daniel Lloyd or one of the two? Somebody like that who was in the in the jungle ages ago. And we kept voting for them because it was the best reaction. Jacqueline Josser, as far as I'm concerned, you know, concern, and even her husband, Dan, is sort of saying, stop, stop, keep picking on her. Have you seen the programme before, mate? She obviously needs the money to pay a tax bill. Mind you, she's apparently earning 40000 But the trouble is, in, a, in over there, you, you they, they take half of it in Australian tax. Why they just don't pay them when they get back to this country, I've got no idea. But I suppose because they're working, or how it works, I have no idea. But uh, so she'll walk away with, with 20 grand. Hope to God that she'll be uh, coughing it up to the tax man if she's paying back bit by bit by bit. Makes more sense, doesn't it, really? And uh, another one here, slight faux pas. Yesterday, Steve, I spent £1.32 to send a letter to myself. I made a special trip to the post office, open on Sunday, and despite having my address as the sender on the parcel and the addressee, both written clearly. I only realised when I got home, I looked at the receipt that the parcels were being sent to me. <laughs> Bit of a mistake there. <laughs> uh, Steve, as a uh, as a fellow Sprout lover, we are, we are Sproutees. I thought you should know that Walkers, and we know that, they've, they've been out for about three weeks. Where have you been? Go, but where are you living? Peterborough. Well, that's it, isn't it? Peterborough. I mean, obviously, quite clearly, not a clue of what's going on up there. Uh, plus, 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 wait a minute, uh, another sprout lover, oh, is there apparently another train here, Steve in some place, uh, it's, it's the Canadian train observation dome, try Canadian train observation dome, <laughs> God, we'll find it eventually, I mean, that's, that's the beauty, isn't it, of, uh, of Google, you can keep chasing this thing forever and a day, and eventually we actually get it. That's all I'm looking for. I don't care whatever else appears. I'm not even bothered about the blooming train now. I just want to see the observation. Do no, they're round. It's a dome, round. Oh, it's so annoying. Let's see. There's one there. That's the Otter Valley Railroad. That's a model train. That's not even real. We're now looking at model trains. Yeah. Trans Canada by rail and the Rockies, vacations by, yeah, okay. it's it's definitely a dome. That's what I thought it was. Anyway, perhaps I'm dreaming it. Perhaps perhaps it doesn't exist. Perhaps we're all looking for something that was never there in the first place. <laughs> Ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, Paul Hollywood's ex-barmaid girlfriend. Shut up, you boring old baggage. For goodness sake, it doesn't matter whether he was looking around for somebody else when he was going out with you. Go away. Go away, far away. Drive away, stay away. Don't ever come back. Oh, I think I'd like to do a programme about horses on the television. Yeah, and I'd like to win a million pounds. Go away. You just went out with him. He's been out with loads of people. You're boring. Go back behind the bar. Try and do something. Goodness sake, honestly. Former Love Island's Malin Anderson. Anybody on that one? Nope, not a clue. And once you've seen the picture, you'll be none the wiser. Visits a drug gangster in prison. And that's it. Latest NAF celebrity programme. You know it's NAF. It's got Caprice and Daniela Westbrook in it. Apparently, celebrities and their dogs. It's not a celebrity. Mind you, I was a little bit disturbed the other day to discover that Winter Wonderland, here in London, thinks that Jordan, soon to be bankrupt, and a woman who admits to taking drugs, is a VIP celebrity. <laughs> I don't think so. Mind you, some of the people that they sort of invite up there, Gemma Collins, all the failures, all the failures. Ridiculous. But Caprice and Daniela Westbrook, God in heaven. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, we found a footy supervan. He's 102. 102, bless his heart. He's still going, still going very, very well. Uh, plus, uh, ten, 10 grand, they reckon Emu's going to go for, which is quite good. And uh, Ian Wright, horrible piece of work, screams for his mummy in the jungle. 
He's another one I think he's got problems with the with the tax man. It's amazing how many people have problems with, with the tax man and they can't sort of, they can't get it sorted out. Everybody else earns the money and pays taxes and yet celebrities earning far more than you or I are the ones who, who don't bother paying. It's very annoying, isn't it? Steve, uh, it was a dome, now they've upgraded the train and have cars with full glass top decks. Oh, right. Oh, right. Well, there you go. Did Gemma Collins ever give her fee for I'm a Celebrity to Charity, says Jill? I can't remember. I, I thought she did. I thought she did. It took her ages to get round to doing it. As I say, you can't really believe anything she says at all. Everybody, welcome to Monday. Oh, I know. I know what you're thinking. Hate Monday. You had the weekend. Had a bit of fun. They always ask you, don't they? So, how did your weekend go? Everybody says the same thing to me. How did your weekend go? Oh, yeah, any other day. Just sort of potted around, did a bit of shopping. Because the weekends for me are exactly the same as during the week. If I don't have any interviews to do, then I, I can always I can always either put my feet up. But, you know, to be honest with you, I've started getting a bit, um, a bit sort of, I don't want to stay in bed any longer. I'll, start, I'll have a little lie down when I get in, just to you know, just pop my feet up for sort of 20 minutes an hour or something like that. And then I like to get up and get out. Because I think life's a bit too short to start sort of sleeping through it. Although people enjoy sleeping. And I'm the first one to go. I would absolutely love to go to sleep. Footy ace, uh, Damara Gray's naked girlfriend and newborn baby threatened with a machete in a terrifying raid on his home. The £18 million pound rated Leicester City and England under-21 winger's partner, Emma, was in bed with their six-week-old boy when the thugs burst in. They're said to have used Google to trace the footballer's home, escaped with £24,000 in cash. He kept £24,000 in cash and jewellery in the house. Uh, he was not at home, but Emma was left absolutely petrified. I'm not blooming surprised. I was the subject of an armed robbery. Some years ago, I mean, it was, when I say some years ago, it was like a long time ago. And uh, a friend of mine had a pub in South Ealing, which is uh, just sort of, just on the, the, the outskirts of, of Londinium. And uh, I was in bed, I was not very well, actually, and he was chatting to me before he, he toddled off to bed. And the door burst open, there were two men, with uh, one had a machete and the other had a sawn-off shotgun. And uh, they had balaclavas on. And he said, out of bed, and I went, I haven't got anything on. He said, out of bed. I thought, oh, where we go. In for a penny, in for a pound. And all they were doing is they were taking my friend, who was the manager of this uh, pub, downstairs to open the safe, and they escaped with, uh, with the money. I wouldn't recognise them at all. But apparently they were fairly... They, they, they'd been waiting all evening in the upstairs of the pub in the bathroom. And, um, and they got what they, uh, what they came for. People nick anything nowadays, don't they? Uh, sitting up in bed, Steve, with a rotten sore throat, enjoying the show. In the early 80s, I was a videographer... Horrible term for a cameraman who covered weddings and stuff. Weddings and stuff. I like weddings and stuff, actually. Uh, did, a, did a wedding. One of the guests was Norman Wisdom. Lovely man. Yes, he was. He was a lovely man, Phil. He really was. Uh, Steve. <laughs> uh, Google Alaska train. Oh, God, I'm losing the will to live on this one. Yeah, I was going to say that this actually could be the running joke on the, uh, the show, couldn't it? Alaska train. So, used to have a bubble, but now they don't have bubbles anymore. Alaska train. No, 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 no bubble on it at all. Were you mad or something or blind? Go to Specsavers. Ridiculous. Uh, Steve, um, do you know what pantomime Katie Price is appearing at this year, says Colin? Um, I believe it'll be the one in her mind. I don't believe you can put her in anything. She's, uh, she left it too late. And also, what, what parent in their right mind would want to go to any pantomime with her in it? I mean, really, with that dreadful voice, that screechy voice. You can't let her sing because she can't sing. So, uh, Steve, uh, Ron says 24 grand in cash, about half an hour's work for a Premier footballer. Imagine having that much in cash in the house. £24,000. Well, obviously, I blame my parents. They didn't let me do football at school. I had to do all the boring stuff like hockey. Nobody's going to make a fortune out of hockey, are they? Lay off, Jack. It ain't nice. This is uh, the well-educated Dan Osborne, who's the husband of Jacqueline Josser. The trouble is, without all her war paint on and makeup, she's quite plain. Quite plain. So that's why the public are voting for her. Uh, so she's braved a snake-infested pit, spider-filled helmet, and uh, she's done three challenges so far. She was in tears when she was told she'd be doing another one. Well, that's what you went on the programme for, dear. You've sold your soul to the devil. That's your problem, isn't it? You decided to take the money. You didn't have to do the show. Oh, sorry, you did have to do the show, didn't you? There was no other work on the cards. 
but she's cried from home nix, homesickness, told the camp how she tortures herself reading negative social media comments. Oh, God. Another dreary, naff celebrity. It's me, 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 blooming me. Get over yourself. ITV said she was being monitored. I mean, don't they monitor them before they put them in this place? It's the jungle. It's been on for so many years now. Surely people know what it is. If you can't manage it, dear, when will then, you know, walk out? Walk out. Go on, walk away from it. Don't waste everybody's time. Uh, 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. And uh, still trying to work out, actually. Oh, you're all trying to work out which, uh, which, which pub I was in in South Ealing. Ah, I shall never tell you. Uh, Michael... Uh, Palin used the dome train, says Dion. I remember seeing it, but I mean, if uh, somebody said they might have changed the dome for somebody else, for, for another thing, so it might just be an extra level on top of the train, but we can't find it, it doesn't exist, so please don't write in anymore. There is no dome, okay? Fake news, fake news. Uh, what have we got here? Violent gangster movie made by the BBC has been pulled from cinemas after 100 yobs armed with machetes and knives. Who are these little tow rags? I think they should have been tasered immediately. There's a picture of them, all their faces pixelated. One of them's holding a machete. How old he is, I've got no idea. Probably about 12. This is outside the View Cinema in Birmingham. I mean, who are these little people? Are we all in a gang, boys? Oh, goodness me, honestly. Well, aren't you big and brave? Aren't you the complete bunch of dodo birds? Mum of three, Han Ann said people were running and hiding everywhere. We took our children and ran back to the car. So View yesterday acts the movie. Well, if some buffoon turns up with a machete, I mean, you know, somebody like that, off the streets, in prison, stay there as long as you like, mate. Stay there as long as you like. I'm sick to death of people like that. Ridiculous. Also, these other people who are out there. This is an accountant, an accountant, if you please, who started filming up a woman's skirt as she was shopping. Ridiculous. Uh... He was, uh, so he admitted outraging public decency, handed an eight-month suspended jail term and a sexual harm prevention order because he was shooting up women's skirts. Leon Chan was caught by a store detective after he loitered, phone in hand, behind the woman who was bending over Topshop. Well, obviously bending over a counter, I should imagine. It turns out he had 1,700 upskirt images on his phone. Is this normal? I'm told on the uh, on the Japanese railways it's quite common, uh, you know, for people to be sort of touched on the railway. Really, quite bad, quite bad. But uh, somebody used to work for a big uh, price waterhouse is a big thing. Christmas shoppers will spend 80.3 billion in the lead up to December the 25th, and uh, but of course it still will not stop a lot of shops going under next year. Not surprised. Uh, Richard Branson, set to make a bid to take over the National Lottery, he's made two previous attempts, but uh, defeated in 94 and 2000. I mean, it's a licence to print money, isn't it? I mean, it's absolutely a licence to print money. I'll take it over. I'll run it. I'll run it. That'd be quite nice. Uh, right. Uh, our Christmas drinks, they do them in all the Pret, McDonald's and all the rest of it. A real latte down. A real latte down. OK. Uh, they all sound quite nice. There's one here. Salted caramel latte with cream. This is from Cafe Nero. They, it gets an 8 out of 15. So, you know, so-so. 8 out of 15 also for their spiced ginger latte with marshmallows and cream. I mean, these are just calorie, you know, you know, looks 4 out of 5. Uh, taste, 2 out of 5. Not so good, is it? Millionaire's latte. This is in McDonald's. And toffee latte. 11 out of 15 which is actually sort of better than most. Uh, over in Pret, gingerbread latte, 10 out of 15. Their creme brulee latte, apparently a big disaster, only 4 out of 15. You'll remember this when you go in an order, you go, oh, wait a minute, Steve Allen told us about this. Over in uh, Costa Coffee, Irish velvet latte, 12 out of 15. And their gingerbread latte, 12 out of 15. They reckon taste, 4 out of 5. Over at Starbucks, marshmallow hot chocolate. Oh, I love hot chocolate. With marshmallow in. I, I did have one at the hospital a short while ago. Well, about a year ago. And uh, unfortunately, this didn't do at all well. So uh, the uh, the reviewer on marshmallow hot chocolate uh, says, It struck me as a rip-off. Looks pretty good, but tastes no better than an instant chocolate. And toffee nut latte. Uh, 7 out of 15. So uh, not, not so great. So which one do we like the most? Well, it's going to be... Costa coffees, Irish velvet latte or gingerbread latte. I've never had either. But I could do with a hot chocolate with little marshmallows on the top of it. That sounds quite nice, doesn't it? 
could quite do do with something like that. And Thal's, wait for this one. You know, we were talking about the NHS, which we have done, and it, I think it f forms part of somebody's manifesto, could be the Conservatives, who are going to do wonderful things and give us new uh, new sort of hospitals and 1,500,000 1, new nurses coming from the planet Zog. But now thousands, thousands a bladeless Dyson fans have been removed from hospital wards after they were deemed more dangerous. They splashed out 1.2 million on the devices, which cost up to 350 quid each. They justified the bill by saying there were no blades for dust to collect on that could lead to germs, but apparently they've been uh, linked to healthcare associated infection. I mean, they're really expensive. I mean, they, uh, to be honest with you, the Dyson hair dryer, which they're advertising on QVC at the moment, it's like 500 pounds. For a hairdryer. I've got one at home. Yes, I use a hairdryer. And um, and that was only like 40 quid. And it's in silver. Solid. Solid silver. It's very expensive. I wanted the gold one, but they'd run out. So in hospital, they've got 350 pound Dyson fans. Good blimey, honestly. Obviously more money floating around than I thought was there. Nice to be company. It's Monday. It's the 25th of November. It's Steve Allen's early breakfast. Still to come, the story of the grandmother, who is the one only original Pink Panther fan from head to toe. June Amos has 1,404 toys, ornaments and keepsakes. So she's got them. I mean, the poor soul is 79. When she eventually passes on to that place in the sky, somebody's going to come in and throw them all out, aren't they? Who's going to want 1,400 Pink Panther toys? Apparently, her favourite item is a music box that has Pink Panther being chased by Inspector Clouseau. June said it's crackers how much... How much I'm Morning, a very nice to be company. I'm just sorting through my bag. I'm like Mary Poppins, actually. You sort through here, I'll pull out a lampstand in a minute. You know, all sorts of other exciting things. No, the, no kitchen sink this time round. I decided to uh, dispense with the kitchen sink. But anyway, nice to be company. Welcome to Monday. Welcome to the, uh, to the 25th of November. I don't know what that means. I don't think it means anything at all, actually. But uh, eBay do the LED lights you want to. Good price and free P&P. &P says Dion. No, I need to see them. I need to physically see lights. I can't, I can't just, I can't go on a photograph. Can't go on a photograph. They, they, they have to be, you know, in my sight. So I, I like going out and, and see, and I like to see lots of boxes of them as well. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> some strange thing I've got going on. Mind you, you think, oh, my life's weird. Have you heard Nick Abbott's programme? He's mad as a barrel load of frogs sometimes. He, he was telling us the other day how he had to call out a locksmith to get himself back into his house because he'd magically locked himself out. I mean, how you lock yourself out of a house, I've got no idea. And then when he poked a stick through the, uh, through, through the letterbox, it made it worse. In the end, the, the locksmith came out and basically put two sort of chisels in and, uh, and seemed to sort of solve the, uh, the problems. Worrying, isn't it, when you do things like that? I lock myself out before I realise I can actually get back into my own place <laughs> and everybody else's. I've got this little, this little, trick of getting back into people's uh, places <laughs> i can't remember how how we how we learnt it but we did uh, also also uh, what have we got here love island's wes nelson is well trained according to arabella chi at uh, some launch it's either a launch or a charity thing they do she says he's clean and tidy it's the real deal give it five minutes give it five minutes uh, also uh, the x factor winner song is a christmas tradition not this year they're doing a charity record. Simon Cowell has scrapped the annual single in favour of a charity record featuring all the acts from the live shows. And the show and the, the song they're releasing is a cover of Snow Patrol's Run. But they're not anticipating a Christmas number one with it. A show insider said, since streaming influenced the charts, it's become incredibly difficult for X Factor acts to top the charts. But um, you'll hear it and you won't you won't know it's them at all because all these records sound the same once they've come out. So um all of them are going to be on it, including the axed contestants. I mean, it's a, it's a right bunch of old nobodies here, isn't there? Plus, uh, I, I don't know if Brendan Cole and Jeremy Edwards are going on it. Robbie Williams has, has got something to appear. He's going to appear on CBB's Bedtime Stories. Oh, dear, he's lost all his credibility now, hasn't he? <laughs> Robbie Williams on CBB is doing a bedtime story. That's not very cool, is it? That's not very cool at all. What does it say today? Always have to check my stars, especially on a Monday, because you never know, because it, it might be applicable. As Venus moves on, think about the good points of a relationship. Focus on how far you've come together and how much you've learned from each other. Boring. 
boring, boring, boring. Who wants to learn about things like that? Rubbish. 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 Uh, also, Andrew's accuser will talk to FBI. This is another Royal exclusive, this time for the Mirror. The Daily Mirror today, a woman who claims Prince Andrew groped her is prepared to testify to the FBI. I mean, the trouble is, I don't know whether the, these people are true or whether they're fantasists. I've got no idea. I have to leave it up to the FBI, I suppose. This is somebody called uh, Johanna, who's prepared to meet agents. Uh, also, the Duke has dropped all 230 patronages. Does that make any difference, the fact that he's, he's dropped the patronage? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the latest people to drop him are Barclays. I think Barclays have actually dropped him from uh, from something, which I th one of those. I don't, well, he, he he wanted a hand over to his daughter. Charities wouldn't want any association. Any association, it's family. Why would you want to take the daughters on of a man like that? Absolutely not. If they, if they'd wanted them, they'd have they'd have gone to them ages and ages ago. Rod Stewart uh, wears it well. You wear it well as long as he's got his socks and vest on. He makes sure he stays toasty under the covers by switching on his electric blanket. Obviously, he hasn't got heating or something, I don't know. Quite like an electric blanket. It's quite nice, actually. Uh, the sister of one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims wants the FBI to extradite Prince Andrew. I don't think they can. I have a sneaking feeling that, that they can't do it. But this, uh, this latest one, they say her evidence is vital. And what they'll do is they'll just go back and they'll try and find out what went on. But to be honest with you, I mean, there's so many people involved in this thing now, even I'm losing control of it. Uh, Epstein left his money, 444 million, to his brother. Um, I'm still not totally convinced he killed himself in prison. I don't know why. The whole thing is so bizarre, isn't it? You know, he had enough money to sort of get himself out of this, I would have thought. Uh, but um, uh, also, Prince William played an important role in getting Andrew out. Because, frankly, the damage he was doing to the royal family. In fact, really, the, the damage for, from all of his uh, side of the family. I know nobody's perfect. I understand that. But, uh, you know, when we saw Sarah Ferguson muscling in on the publicity, she turned up at Buckingham Palace. She could have kept the car window up, but no, she wound it down to make sure that there was a picture taken of her going into Buckingham Palace. Hopefully, they said to her, keep your big beaky nose out of it, OK? Stay away. Stay away. But she went in there, big smile on her face, like nothing had happened at all. Really? I mean, just as embarrassing. And she's been a total embarrassment to the royal family from eight... Why do you think Prince Philip doesn't like her? She's an embarrassment. They come from a different generation. Uh, also, uh, another one here. Uh, this is uh, a girl who lost her cat when she was four years old has got him back ten years later. She presumed he'd been run over after he failed to come home. It turned out he was being looked after by an elderly woman. Luckily, he was microchipped. Didn't know they lived that long. I really didn't. Uh, plus, here we go. The sleuth is out there. Colleen Rooney enjoying a sunshine break throughout the umpteenth time. I don't really care, actually, what, they, what these Rooneys do anymore. They won't go on holiday, go on holiday. The whole thing is just a bit of a bit of a waste of space, isn't it? She has holidays. Good. Uh, the family back, former EastEnders star, Jacqueline Josser. When you see her with makeup on, it's a completely different person. You could put up people with their makeup on and with their makeup off. Uh, they're, they're looking at uh, what everybody's got now, the snakes and ladders. Ian Wright, he's done something right, 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 but can he stay happy? No, he's a miserable little devil. Jacqueline Josser proved all the doubters wrong with a brilliant display and trial. They're going to keep voting for her, aren't they, now? Now you know that it's affecting the family, people are going to keep voting. Uh, poor old James Haskell, he snores. He snores. So that's, that's, that's bad news. Roman Kemp, covered in uh, paint during the Dingo Dollar Challenge, is uh, the show's Mr Nice Guy. Well, he's just cute, isn't he? He's just cute. Not because he works in this building and I see him on a regular basis. Kate Garraway, always asking questions, which is good. And uh, Cliff Parisi. Somebody says, I'm, I'm scratching my head as to why we see Cliff scratch his bottom so often. Nadine Coyle, not getting a lot of screen time. Adele Roberts, quiet and not making a big ampack, could be a downfall. She's just dull. Very dull. Andrew Maxwell is apparently a comic. Needs to impress a little bit more. Not funny at all. Not funny. Not funny. Um, now, you must have heard of Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens won four golds in the 1936 Berlin Games. And uh, this is what like, they, they called the Nazi Olympics, 1936. And one of his gold medals is likely to sell for 1.6 million. One sold for 1.1 million. The uh, whereabouts of the other two golds are not known. 1.6 million pounds. I'm not surprised people sell things. 
you know, people get the, uh, the urge, don't they? Uh, plus the diary today, he's made £100 million from his books, but surprisingly, David Walliams' latest work has received terrible reviews online. And, um, apparently Amazon has been deleting the jokey reviews of the Britain's Got Talent new book. A lot of people thought it was about Prince Andrew. But of course it isn't, as you can well imagine. I thought he gave a terrible interview to Jonathan Ross. He was just being particularly difficult. And, you know, could have been a lot better, could have come over better, but I'm led to believe he's slightly peculiar. Slightly peculiar. Uh, Joe Swash has shared a, a snap of Stacey Solomon posing with their six-month-old son, Rex. Uh, yes. What, what does what does Stacey Solomon do? What, is, what did Joe Swash do? Nobody knows, but as long as they stay together. I didn't see Michael McIntyre's big show, but reviewed by Ian Highland. And, uh, very good. Very good. But uh, how much is he being paid? Do you remember the last time they did it? Was it 400000 a show or something? Is that what the budget was? Whatever it was, it seems to be an awful lot of money. And, um, the Royal Mint has unveiled its biggest ever coin. It's a five kilo monster with a £5,000, uh, face value. Plus the mum of a gunned down businessman was at his side and crying for help. It says Peter Williamson killed parking at his Spanish home. They think it's drugs related. Uh, although, actually, uh, some of the family have said, no, it's not drugs related, although he has been done for drugs before. So, uh, there's somebody else. I mean, how these people can afford to just sort of up sticks and go and live somewhere else is, you ought to see what he's down as, you know, work-wise. Very odd. Uh, plus, we found a super fan, a Second World War hero. He's 102, he's followed his team for 88 years, thought to be Britain's oldest football supporter. Derby County fanatic Derek Ely was 14. When he first went, he's still going. He only missed matches when he fought in the war. Good for him, 102. So he, he now gets his uh, moment in history. He gets uh, a piece in the paper, which is lovely. And Father Christmas comes from Sweden. I never even crossed my mind where he came from. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure how, how that worked out. So the millions who visit him in Finland may be going to the wrong spot. That's according to a uh, tourism boss called uh, Christoph Risenius, who reckons he's from Sweden. Every year, people go to Finnish Lapland, where there are two Santa theme parks, bringing in £350 million annually. But Kristoff claims the gift bringer is from his hometown in Swedish Lapland. He said the origin of Santa Claus is in Sweden, not Finland. He wants to open a Santa resort to do the real Christmas as the one in uh, Rovaniemi, which he said is a mass product. Well, I've been to... I've been to Lapland, and I've seen Father Christmas, and lovely he was too, and it was very good, and it was bloody cold. God, it was cold. But if, if you're going this year with your off sweat, that was a woman in the paper the other day. I've just remembered something else, completely unrelated. And, and the only reason I thought about it afterwards, I thought, what an odd story. Anyway, she was accused. She went through the self-service till, and she was accused of not paying for everything, and she said, I did pay for everything. And they put down everything she said, like, like, like I would nick Summit from here, Summit. I've been coming here for donkey's years and all the rest of it. And, uh, and, and what has she bought? A turkey. And I remember thinking, it's November. Why would you buy a turkey in November? You don't buy a turkey in November. You buy it in December. Who's buying a turkey now? Unless it's frozen and you're just putting it in your freezer. I don't, I don't quite understand that. She was buying a turkey. So, so we could have a, a lovely Christmas. Oh, what, in November? There's another woman in the uh, in some of the papers. She spent four thousand quid on presents for her children so far. Four thousand pounds. No, it's not up to me. She said, "I don't mind what people say about me." No, because you're an exhibitionist. That's why. No, she's bought a hundred presents so far for three three children, which is great. If you want to do that, do it. She works. Not like she's sponging, and uh, she's obviously done it to draw attention to herself. Which is slightly depressing, isn't it? Really. More of your texts and emails in a uh, in a moment. And uh, is it true the Queen hasn't seen Philip for three months because he's living the quiet life in Sandringham, says Jill? No, 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 he's, he's still with her. See, that's fake news. That's fake news. No, he's, why would he want to go and live in a place that they've got the whole of Sandringham? Why would he want to live in a cottage in Sandringham? That's a bit silly, isn't it? Uh, 5.15, check on the roads and uh, rail this morning. The LBC travel of His Holiness the Pope. I think he went to uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And there's everybody standing outside. It's absolutely tipping it down with rain. And the Pope is out there doing his thing, obviously getting very, very wet. It's quite a thrill for people to meet the Pope, isn't it? Didn't Rod Stewart meet the Pope? I'm sure Rod Stewart met the Pope. And I remember thinking, how do you manage that one? That's quite a coup, isn't it, really? That's a very big coup, I think. Very big coup. And, uh, is he? 
I'm a totally right. Rod Stewart did meet the Pope. I know, it's sickening, isn't it? So I'm t the funny thing is, obviously somewhere in my pea brain of a mind and my, and my memory, I, it, it's obviously like a long conveyor belt. And it just goes round, and every so often it tips a piece of information out into the tray, and you go, what does that say? I like opening a Christmas cracker joke. What was that programme which was, it's a cartoon made by Pixar, and they have to scare people. It's Monsters, Inc. And I remember seeing this thing, and it's all these doors that go round, and then it stops, and then they, they go through the door, and it's a kid's bedroom. I think that was really quite good, actually, just to frighten kids in their bedroom. And then when it's sort of, the kid sits up and goes, ah, and then it turns out it's just a robot in the bed. They have to learn how to do it. I always fancied doing that, actually. I always fancied doing that. Not, not for any sort of reason, apart from uh, just having a little bit of fun. Good film, actually. Good film. I've got quite a few films I've not watched recently. I seem to be sort of running a running a collection of these blooming things. I did buy The Lion King. I've not seen it yet. I mean, I saw it, obviously, at the uh, cinema. Uh, why did I see it? Oh, it was a preview, wasn't it? It was a preview. I went to see it. It was lovely. Very nice. Uh, Henry Riley's still going. He's, he's still working. Henry, he's, he's just tweeted where he's working at the moment. It's unbelievable, isn't it? At this time of the morning, yeah. And, and t he's actually up against me. <laughs> he says, is anybody else awake? They are listening to LBC, Henry. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Uh, so there's, oh, there's, a, there's a doggy story. You're going to like the doggy story. It's a good doggy story. Apart from the rescue dogs, 12 surprises. They are so cute. They are so cute. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, if, if I had a big house with lots of grounds and it was all fenced in, you would take this, this litter of, uh, of this, this dog. Staffordshire Bull Terrier Darla was at risk of being dumped on the streets after her owners were evicted. She was taken in by the animal charity Blue Cross. 48 hours later, she had a litter of 12 puppies, six boys and six girls who've already got homes to go to, but tired mum is seeking a new owner. I'm <laughs> surprised. Also, keep her away from that naughty stuff. But, uh, but the, the puppies are adorable. One two oh they're so cute one two three four five six seven eight nine, ten, eleven there's one missing i can't there's a head missing but uh, 12 puppies you'd, you'd want them all because they're so gorgeous but the other story is of a blind border collie who's looking for a new home with his own guide dog this is Bess and Roy, both nine, found tied up in woods in Cumbria. Isn't that disgraceful? The RSPCA believes they were previously working collies on a farm who were abandoned when their owner could no longer care for them. They come as a pair because Roy, being blind in one eye and impaired in the other, needs Bess to guide him. Uh, both, we are told, uh, in Kendall at the RSPCA, lovely, friendly, happy dogs who deserve a home where they'll get all the attention they crave as they come into their senior years. The best friends are up for adoption. How lovely. You'll love that. Picture 27, page 27 of the Mirror This Morning. Oh, I've heard that before, actually, of, of sort of dogs who would look after other dogs. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? I think so. That's almost like a Christmas story. That's, that's like the turkeys that get saved. You know, they always go, oh, some turkeys. I bet you anything, there'll be another story this year, there always is, of uh, turkeys being saved from the slaughterhouse. And uh, they've decided to sort of you know, give them a new life again. You think, yeah, they'll eat them eventually. <laughs> People do, don't they? People do. Uh, the Duke meeting Giselaine at Buckingham Palace. Uh, as a full frame of the picture he can't escape emerges. You know, the one they said was picture of a picture of a picture, but there's no evidence to suggest this at all. Uh, Shane said, I've just started my Christmas shopping. I had the credit card. Lovely. You've got to be very careful. Do go, do go very careful on, on credit cards. Uh... Prince Andrew said it wasn't him in that picture uh, as it was taken upstairs in Ghislaine Maxwell's house and he'd never been upstairs. Well, how would he know what it looked like? He absolutely is upstairs. It's a genuine picture. We know that. It's been verified. And it's even got the, the photographer's thumb. It's got the artwork on the wall and he's got his hand around this, uh, this girl's waist. They've also said that, that, that there's no evidence to suggest that it's, uh, that it's not genuine. So there you go. Miss Roberts says the picture was taken at Miss Maxwell's house, uh, published for the first time yesterday. Image expert Professor Hanny Farid told the Sunday Times it bore no obvious signs of manipulation. There you go. There you go. Also, questions raised on why the Met didn't launch a probe. They should have been doing that, shouldn't they? 17-year-old girl flown, flown to London for whatever. 
I mean, it really is quite worrying, quite worrying. And from their money and wild partying to their hairstyles and hits, Elton John and Rod Stewart's fond rivalry knows no bounds. But as Rod reveals, they've not spoken for months after one joke too far. Some people, you know, can't take a joke. And unfortunately, Elton doesn't really seem to have a sense of humour. He's had it, It's bypassed. And in this particular case, they've been friends for years. I mean, years and years, they got glammed up. Uh, I forget what one of them, what did they call themselves? They had sort of girls' names, didn't they? But I can't remember exactly what it, uh, what it is. But, but they seem to get on all right. They're both very successful in their own right. I don't know why. Obviously, something was said, and uh, Elton had a bit of a queenie fit. You know, not, not very happy at all. I'm sure they'll actually get back together. One year, Rod brought Elton a £300 novelty mini fridge. Uh, Rod later recalled in his autobiography, El Elton's present to me that year, a Rembrandt. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a different world, isn't it? You know, different world. Elton has sold the most records in his lifetime. 300 million, according to his website. Uh, Rod, 120. Caesar's Palace, for some reason, stirs up special feelings of rivalry and competitiveness. Once Rod placed a banner outside the Las Vegas Hotel and Casino for Elton's benefit, which read, Blondes have more fun. Elton, in town at the same time, put another one up the road, stating, But brunettes make more money. <laughs> Rod's estimated fortune is now 190 million quid. I can live with that. I can live with 190. Elton's is about 320 million. But is he happy? Not really. He just works. He just works. That's all he does, actually. He, he just sort of seems to work. And, well, he, you know, he, well he, he's retiring once he's finished the umpteenth world tour, which he's on at the moment. He just, the trouble is, what would he do if he sat at home? He'd probably die. He needs to work. He needs to work. He, he, he enjoys the work, getting out there. You know, that, that adrenaline of getting out there and performing in front of people. That's what he likes the most. Hmm. I see. Uh, here we go. This is the, uh, the puppet. Emu's up for sale. He gained notoriety for destroying the Queen Mother's bouquet during an after-show line-up at the Royal Variety Performance. Uh, one of only two made for Rod Hull, uh, the other being a backup which was never used. So what do you get? Do you get the both of them? Wow. Wow. Keith Harris's puppet Orville will also go under the hammer at Bonhams. They reckon eight to ten grand. Wow. Michael Parkinson says, I told you, I've been on television for 60 years, and yet the only thing I'm really remembered for is being attacked by a bloody emu. Really annoyed him, I think. Hull, Rod Hull, died aged 63 in 1999 after falling from the roof of his home in East Sussex while adjusting the TV aerial. And um, Keith Harris was 67, and he died in 2015. Both of them very, very successful. Very successful. And sort of took... I don't know if you call it ventriloquism. I think not so much for, for Emu, because he didn't actually say anything. If he did, he would whisper in Rod's ear. But uh, Keith, Keith Harris was a, was a vent. He was a vent. Uh, Please Chief trolled over her haircut. You remember this one, because this is the, the face of a huge police operation to evacuate 1,500 residents at risk as a dam threatened to burst. This is Rachel Swan, her spiked dial hairstyle. Spiked style hair. So as a result, the Derbyshire Deputy Chief Constable took a break from Twitter. Three months on, she set out at the sexist and homophobic abuse. I mean, you know, people are going, oh, you know, see, so obviously the, the homophobia, they're obviously going, oh, well, because you're a lesbian, you're this and that. I mean, seriously, in this day and age, mind you, 200 people complained, didn't they? 200 people complained about two men dancing on Strictly. I mean, for goodness sake, get over yourselves. I mean, we, we are in the year 2019. And uh, another one here says, Steve, Eric in Stoke Newington, Elton is Sharon and Rod is Phyllis. So camp. So camp. Rod, Phyllis, Elton, Sharon. <coughs> Very bizarre. <laughs> I remember that now, actually. You know, he says, please don't insult my Elton. Well, come on. You know, it's not his proper name. He does have a proper name, doesn't he? I mean, I think Elton John sounds best. Elton John sounds best. Who, whose birthday today? Go on, I, I, I defy you to work out who this is. Johnny Johnson. Now, strangely enough, there was a group years ago called Johnny Johnson and the Bandwagon. But uh, this is not that Johnny Johnson. This one is 98. And do you know why he's famous? Because he's the last surviving dam buster. The last surviving dam buster. And uh, he's uh, 98, his birthday today.
He told historians questioning its success to shut their bloody mouths. He took part, age 21, saying, I was anxious to fight. Hitler was the... who had started all this and he needed sorting out. So, last year on the 75th anniversary of the World War II mission to bomb German, that's when he told the historians investigating. So, happy birthday to Johnny Johnson, 98. You are a star. A star. We love the film. Uh, also, 1965, on November the 25th, guess what Harrods did? Harrods opened out of hours to let the Beatles do their Christmas shopping. I was always told there's a certain credit card you can have that will open Harrods just for you. The Saudi royal family have a catalogue and they browse through it, phone through to the embassy and go, we want this, 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 this. They will then go to Harrods, pick it all up in the morning, take it to the airport. They'll have it by the next... So if you order it the night before, you'll have it by lunchtime the next day. Whatever you want. How lo I live like that. I'm living the millionaire's lifestyle on a pub landlord's income. Uh, uh, so, you know, I, I sort of phone up Harrods and go, hello, it's Steve Allen, and uh, I'd like to order something. And do you have anything in my price range at all in the Prosecco lineup, or is it all terribly expensive? Producer just very kindly tried to kill me uh, by offering me um, a, a gin and whatever it was, Kit Kat, a gin and tonic Kit Kat, because we spoke about them some time ago on the programme, and strangely enough, obviously didn't sink in, I don't drink gin, I've never drunk gin. I, n I never liked the smell of... Of course he does, look at him. Doesn't know where he is, does he? Not a clue. Have you eaten them all? You've ne How many were there in there, in the little... Six fingers for about six pounds. Is that all that's left? Does it taste? Does it taste like gin and tonic or? These are gin and tonic. Oh right. Yeah. This is. I don't want any. This is. This is gin and tonic Kit Kats, and they do other flavours, don't they, as well? And you decided to buy gin and tonic. You knew I didn't like gin and tonic, didn't you? You deliberately bought it, knowing that you'd be eating it yourself. <laughs> nice. What stays in a corner? yet can travel all over the world. What stays in the corner but can travel all over the world? This is so simple, I can't believe that you're struggling with it. I cannot believe what, what stays in the corner but can travel all over the world. You can't, of course you could do it. Yeah, it stays in the corner, but it travels all over the world. And it's always in the same corner. There you go, that's a big clue. Always in the same corner. Always in the same corner. Come on. You're going to kick yourself a stamp. I mean, how simple was that? How simple was that? Goodness sake, honestly. At home, there's people shouting to the radio, going, it's a stamp. It's a stamp. Unfortunately, the producer. Uh, Did you know Johnny Johnson and the Bandwagon's real name is Johnny Mathis, says Terry and Layton. I can't read Johnny Johnson and the Bandwagon. What was their big hit single? Was it, it wasn't Breaking Down the Walls of Heartache, was it? I'm, trying to, I'm normally quite good on these things. Johnny Johnson, the bandwagon. Oh, dear. It wasn't, baby, now that I've found you, I can let you go. And my world around you. Oh, blame it on the Pony Express. Was that the only hit single they had? They were very good. Very, very good. They... Yeah, break it down the walls of heartache. There you go. Well, at least I got one right. Oh, I'm much better than I thought, actually. <laughs> I'm quite good at this kind of game. I'm very good with things like that. I can all remember all different things because I used to... Uh, all that music was my era, so I should remember it. I came across a tune the other day. I can't remember what it was now. And I remember thinking, fancy you knowing that. Somebody played me an intro. We used to play Beat the Intro years ago. They play you a few seconds. I go, I know what that is. And, and the only bit that was played to me was da 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 dun da 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 dun dun and that was it. I forget who actually, it wasn't one of my brothers, it was far too sophisticated for him. And I remember, I knew it instantly. I knew exactly what it was. Da da dun dun da 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 dun dun You won't, you won't know it. No, not da 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 Not da 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 And it turned out that it was Gene Pitney with a song called Trans Canada Highway. It was, it was, I mean, it was just so obscure because he'd done all these backstage, I'm lonely, backstage, I cry, town called pity and all the rest of them. But this was Trans Canada Highway. And I remember thinking at the time, isn't that clever? I know something like that. I was, I was good at pub quizzes and, and, until it came to anything complicated. I could play the pub machines and stuff like that. And then they put up, who was the third member of the squad to go to the toilet in the 1933 game against Prague or something? And you go, oh, for goodness sake. That's why students did very well on it. 
So students used to play the uh, the pub quiz machines or go in for pub quizzes because they just they just had that sort of I mean provided they were tanked up, capital cities. Oh right, am I, I good? Not necessarily. No, no. Spain, Madrid. <laughs> oh, let's, let's not do this one. I'm, I'm I'm liable to fall flat on my face on this thing. Martin says we watched Love Actually last night. Good Christmas feel good, isn't it? Good, isn't it good? I loved it. I, I actually seriously went out and bought it about the third time. I, I've, I shall eventually, when I move, I shall find all these different versions of films. I can then have a good clear out. But uh, yeah, I thought it was good too. Anything that's got snow in it, I, th I, I thought was fantastic. It's like the end of Nanny McPhee and uh, the bride's walking down and she, and she says something and Nanny McPhee says, you will, my dear. And all of a sudden it starts snowing and this snow whirls and swirls around them and she eventually is sort of in uh, wearing her, her wedding dress, which is lovely. Back in the 60s, uh, says Wendy, girls always danced together, mainly because the men were complete rubbish. No one gave it a thought. Live and let live, for God's sake. I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, that was quite normal for you girls to dance together. If you've got two boys dancing together, that'd be saying, mm, a, little bit, a little bit worrying. But but they do it on Strictly, which I thought had a very eclectic audience, and so they'd be up for something like that. Let's face it, there's more queens on that programme than you can find in Buckingham Palace. And let people get up in arms. Oh, it's awful. I mean, why, why, and what were they complaining about? You know, it's like... What, are you worried they might turn up at your house and go, we're going to dance with your father? You know, and they go... I don't think Daddy wants to... Daddy! You know, like in that Mary Poppins thing where sort of Daddy is the bloke in the bank. When you invest your tuppence in a bank account... And then eventually he starts laughing. A, a man with a wooden leg named Smith. Man with a wood... <coughs> and then he starts laughing. And of course, when he laughs... He sort of takes off, and, they, and and one of the old men in the bank's going, Daddy! Daddy! Trying to get him back down to the ground again. Such a good film. I might go home and watch that, actually. If only for the opening shot. If only for the opening shot of Mary Poppins sitting there, and London spread out before her, all lit up and looking all lovely. Which it does. If you if you fly into London, if, you, if you've been away, and you fly back in again, and you, and you do it at Christmas time, it's all white, with little orange lights everywhere. It looks really pretty. Really pretty. I always, I always love that bit. I always say to people, you know, I work there. <laughs> I live there. That's my car. As we sort of scrape the top of it, which is lovely. Uh, love actually is amazing, but don't bother with last Christmas. I heard. I know. I feel a bit. I feel a bit awful about that. This is a nice Christmas theme and story, but not groundbreaking and very forgettable. Yeah, I mean that's what I'd heard. That's what I heard. Never mind. Donny says we're also celebrating the feast of Saint Catherine of Alexandria, Virgin and Martyr. I must get round to doing some of these celebrations. I'm, at the moment, I'm just celebrating the producer. You know, well, at the moment, it, things could change. Things could. Change. We've we've made it this far, which is which is always a good start, isn't it? Really, always a good start. We like that. Uh, uh, Shane says you have a great memory for song lyrics. I do, don't I? I can't, I can't remember things. I mean, like, I mean, Prince Andrew's better than I am. He can remember 20 years ago. I can't remember anything like that at all. I'm just, I'm just absolutely rubbish. Rubbish. And uh, another one here, quickly. Let's try and sort of clear up a lot of these. Uh, which said, uh, so we've done that one, haven't we? Uh, that's one. Steve, on Saturday I did a 400-mile round trip to collect our seven-month-old uh, rescue collie. What's the matter with this blooming screen today? It keeps, keeps changing itself. It's beginning to get on my nerves. He's had a rough start, but hopefully now he'll have a good, happy life, says Sarah. Uh, which is which is nice, actually. Do you remember the gay equality shows at the Royal Albert Hall? No. I don't even know what they are. Are they, are they what I think they are? Uh, Colin says, you reneged on your word that you read every... From Eric in uh, Stoke Newington. I like doing things like that. Keeps people happy. <laughs> Steve... Uh, the Christmas adverts are irrelevant since they used the football match on Christmas Day when the war stopped. So moving. I think they're good. Donnie says, I heard a rumour you're working at your local polling station. No, but I will be going out to vote, which I hope you all will as well. Uh, also, somebody else was saying... Uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of people trying to, trying to sort of guess where, where they think Prince Philip is. He's, he's at Buckingham Palace at the moment, and when she moves for Christmas, which I forget what particular day it is, uh, he'll, he'll be going up there as well. I should imagine he just wants to sit in a chair and have a small drink. 
you know. And well, you certainly won't be expecting Sarah Ferguson up there. And the rate we're going, you won't see Andrew or anybody else. I think I think the, the girls are not going as well. They really are horrible people, aren't they? You'd think the family would That's the whole idea of Christmas. It's for families. Nathan says, have you considered opening an Italian or Scottish restaurant? No. No. Uh, absolutely not a cat in hell's chance. Why would you want to open that? There's people who do it so much better. So much better better. Thomas could open a Scottish restaurant, but to be honest with you, I don't think he's much cop at cooking. I don't think he'd be very good at cooking. He doesn't, he doesn't strike me as being good at cooking. Will he be furious? Good. Well, he'll, he'll, just, he'll just have to be furious, I think. <laughs> but no, a Scottish restaurant. What would you serve in a Scottish restaurant? Just haggis. Uh, 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 uh. No, thank you. Not for me. And an Italian restaurant. I don't know. I like watching that dive, uh, drive-ins, dives, or whatever it is on the on the food channel. He goes around. He just eats and plugs the restaurants. Nothing, nothing more than that. And every bit of food is delicious. I want him one day to turn around and go. I'm going to be sick, you know. But he, so far, he hasn't done that, which is a bit disappointing, isn't it? Really? Do you know that um, our love of tea is fading? Apparently so. It says we ta sales of tea bags are plummeting. Well, how is that? I'm buying tea bags. I love a I love a cup of tea. I like coffee as well, but I, I drink coffee at home. I've cut back on my Starbucks as well. Cut back on that completely. In fact, because ever since they moved the shop, I can't be bothered to walk a bit further up the high street, so I'm not... not. But it's quite expensive, yeah. It is for me. And also, I can never remember the blooming password on the thing. You put your thing on, it says key in your password. I've got it on my phone. I, I think I've got credit, actually. In fact, I'm pretty s certain I've actually got credit. Here we go. Let's have a quick look. Starbucks thing. Up up comes the low go and it's supposed to do something. It takes forever and a day. It's now nine stars to my next reward. So how do you how do you know how much money you've got on it? Pay in store. There you are. I've got thirty pounds seventy seven pence on here. Yeah, I didn't expect that much. Yeah. Thirty pounds seventy seven. I should be actually messages let's have a look on messages no messages that's a bit depressing isn't it <laughs> i don't feel so good after that but uh, history yeah no recent transactions i'm surprised they've not written to me sobbing or something going you know please come and spend your 30 pounds 77 pence so it's, i mean it's not exactly sort of you know gonna do really well is it really uh, another one here somebody else asking about opening restaurants and stuff like what is it with the opening restaurants it's the quickest way to lose money it seriously is. I mean, I'd, if I had a restaurant, I'd just open one on the high street, which just served breakfast. And it would serve it from five in the morning until ten o'clock. And it would be fried bread, sausages. They were doing that. I went to have a breakfast, actually, the other day. Not intentionally. I went to go and buy some other stuff. And I went to a garden centre near us called Squire's. They do have a canteen. Unfortunately, there's only one person serving breakfast. It takes for bloody ages. Seriously. By the time you get there, the cup of tea you've ordered has gone cold. And um, and then it's because they don't have eggs ready, they cook them to order. So somebody goes, oh, I'll have two, two fried eggs on that one. And they th they're, oh, for God's sake, we're going to be here forever and a day. They need to sort that out. It's very, very shoddy. Very shoddy. They need at least two people. Somebody cooking eggs all the time. You can keep eggs. Keep them in the hot plates. But uh, they, they tend not to do that. It was just awful. In fact, somebody said to me the other day, she said, oh, it's going to take ages here. Anyway, it turned out she knew the woman in there. She said, can we get some more service? And so another two people came and started serving. It was only then that we actually got the breakfast that we wanted. Uh, also, so Jacqueline just as worried husband has begged viewers to stop voting for her. <laughs> Are you that thick? You know by saying that that people are now going to vote her to do every single thing. He says, um, uh, former Towie star, no, he wasn't, he was a plank, Dan Osborne, had previously told his social media followers to help get her taking on the Bush Tucker challenges. He told his Instagram followers after the last vote, I know I said you all vote for Jack because she ain't here to change light bulbs. What? What planet is this plank on? She ain't here to change light bulbs. I didn't mean every single trial. Give her a break now. Come on. No, no, they're all going to vote for her. Every single time, just to watch the complete breakdown. That's what people do it for. They've done it before. Done it before. Gemma Collins and an all-consuming silence are the highlights of this year's BBC Radio Christmas lineup. God in heaven. The Gemma Collins podcast oh, will we'll delve into exactly how the GC gets festive. 
please don't make me go down that route please don't make me go down that route you basically okay how does she get festive you get a big barrel you hollow it out you stand her in it fill it with concrete and then you just basically decorate her and then we leave her there <laughs> why not uh, britain is brace braced for more floods apparently is 900 mile wide storm sebastian brings three inches of rain this weekend oh dear sebastian will batter the south from tomorrow mind you it says getting the car washed doesn't it really should we have uh, a check on the road and rail should we try and get you there quickly this morning never makes any difference but i'd like to do my bit the lbc travels with pretty nice heavy company 10 to 6 that's frightening isn't it 10 to 6 what do you mean to 10 to 6 Yep, 10 to 6. Got to get ready. I see that uh, Tickle Pink, Nicole Scherzinger and Tom Evans set tongues wagging as they parted at a London nightclub. Uh, they headed for some place along with, um, well, she did, along with the rugby hunk. Uh, that was just hours after she sent his band TriStar packing from the X Factor celebrity on Saturday. So, I don't know what she was wearing. Perhaps you think people wear this in London nightclubs in the middle of winter, dear. Very inappropriate. OK? If they were doing Cleopatra again, you might be uh, you might be appropriate, but not at all appropriate. Uh, also, 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 uh, a thug who attacked a female police officer moments after being released from custody is now back behind bars. Samuel Tessafe repeatedly punched and kicked the detective constable. He'd been released after being arrested for an unrelated offence. This was down in Medway. He comes from Crystal Palace. Just been jailed for two years. Good. Rot in hell, as they say. Uh, also, AJ and uh, Saffron. We can just call him AJ now, because uh, I think you know who it is. Uh, plus, plus, plus. Uh, what have we got now? Quickly, I'm just trying to find something. Noel, Noel Gallagher has threatened to quit touring for good because he's fed up with life on the road. Oh, shut up and go away, you boring little girl. Seriously, honestly. They don't get on with each other. Now he's bought, he's going to give up touring because he doesn't like life on the road. What are you in the business of, dear? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, ben Fogel saying that children should forget trying to become reality TV stars and get proper jobs. Well, they need them. They need them. You watch. I think next year you're going to see an absolute catalogue of people uh, collapsing under the weight of tax because you're going to get a tax bill. Come January, tax bills come in. In fact, actually, you should. I've already got mine in now. My accountant's done my books. Uh, we've, we've paid him his, uh, his fee and we've submitted to the tax office and they've written back saying they're more than happy with that. Of course they are. It's money. And um, and we've sort of done it. So I know what I'm paying in January. And all these other reality people are going, I ain't earned that, have I? Yeah, you really have. You've got to pay it. You've got to pay it because you've earned the money. Uh, they all go, oh, well, I didn't know I had to pay that. <laughs> they will do. I can't believe that, uh, that Britain's love of a cuppa seems to be ending with the sale of tea bags plunging. I love a I love tea in a tea bag. I, I, I get through endless cups in a day. Which is, uh, which is quite nice. But uh, I don't see it finishing any time soon. Uh, Rod Stewart. Uh, oh, this is why they've stopped speaking. Him and, him and Elt. They've stopped speaking because uh, Elton John uh, was branded a money grabber over his farewell tour. So Rod said the Yellow Brick Road World Tour stinks of selling tickets and is not rock and roll. Well, it is for Elton. It is. I mean, I have to be honest. The tour, he said, I'm going to quit and retire. But I'm just going to embark on a three-year tour. So we went, yeah, whatever. So he actually took a, took a swipe. He also took a swipe at Elton John's biopic, Rocket Man. He said the movie didn't live up to the Freddie Mercury biopic, Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Very similar, aren't they, really, I suppose? Very similar. Uh, Mike says, uh, our early evening drinky poos went on a bit last night and I got quite squiffy on Singapore slings. Not feeling my sharpest this morning, but I need to get going as I've got designers to see later. Would a continental or full English make the recovery quicker? Full English. Full English would definitely make the recovery quicker, but all you'll want to do is go back to bed. That's all you want to do. You'll have, you'll have the full English and go, oh, just close my eyes. Just imagine that bed and, and the... the the wind is sort of blowing through the curtains in the room and that's, yeah, makes it look like quite idyllic, doesn't it? And just think, Rod Stewart has got an electric blanket on his bed. Mind you, at his age, I suppose you need something like that. Matt says, off to Twickenham later for some ice lollies in Iceland. I would think that's a good idea. I always stock up the freezer with, with lollies from Iceland. And, uh, Steve, have you seen Toblerone and Dairy Milk? They're now selling named bars in shopping malls. I didn't see your name. Oh, well, you can have your own name on a bar of chocolate. Oh, right. Oh. 
Instead of Toblerone, it says Steve Allen. Oh, I like that idea. Oh, I like that idea. Where, 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 where'd you get those from? Where'd you get those from? Is that sort of... Are you hanging around in some dodgy places where they write your name on the side of a bar of chocolate? Where is it? Yeah, yeah, look it up. You could probably buy it on Amazon. That'd be good, wouldn't it? I've got Marmite with Steve Allen on it. Which I think is quite a nice thing to have. Uh, Megan McKenna's extremely talented. Right. <laughs> well, I, I, I couldn't really debate that. We don't have enough time. Uh, talking to films, have you seen The Joker, says Matt? No, it doesn't interest me. I know it's supposed to be great, but it doesn't interest me. And uh, Trevor says, I've not flown for years, but when I did, and the plane was coming to land, I would look out the window and think blighty. So many souls gave their lives for this wonderful country. Oh, here we go. Personalised Tobra. How much? £10.75. Right. So add any name you like. It's, all oh right, 360 grams of feel-good food. It, you can't have naughty words. I oh, quite like the idea of my, my name on the side of a bar of chocolate. The trouble is that, I mean, it's only just, they're only printing a box, aren't they? So it can't be that. It's the same chocolate, unless they've got your name all the way through the, uh, the chocolate. It measures, see, I'm hopeless on this on size. Why can't they do feet and inches? What do they have to do? Some stupid thing like 30 centimetres by five by five. No naughty words. I wonder what constitutes a naughty word. <laughs> I mean, apart from the obvious ones. That's quite a good idea. They do it on Amazon. They can do it on Amazon or probably not, actually. Menkind. What's that? I've never heard of that. Oh, do you? Oh. I've only ever discovered Hotel Chocolat. I've been there a few times. I don't eat the stuff. I just go in there and give it to people for Christmas. Menkind. Oh, right. It's a gift shop. Oh, right. Okay. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. Uh, it sounds lovely, actually. And, uh, Steve, when you say we, when you refer to something you did, do you have a, a secret boyfriend? Listen, nothing I have is secret. Nothing I have is secret. I mean, everything is like an open book. Uh, Rachel says, I've recently discovered coffee bags in Waitrose. Have you tried them? Uh, no, I use coffee sachets. I buy 150 at a time. They come in a huge box. And I just rip open the top, pour it in, pour on the hot water, and that's it. But uh, I'm liking the evening of... Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm liking... Uh, mince pies, how many have you eaten? Um, a, few. a few. Not a huge amount. Not a huge amount. Flaky pastry ones are quite nice. I brought some in today. In fact, not, did you want? Did you want some? I've got some Kit Kats. Want some Kit Kats? It's like, oh, you've got Kit Kats as well. Oh, the posh. I don't have posh ones. I've just got the two fingered Kit Kats, dark, dark chocolate. I've got the Viscount mint biscuits. No, Joanne Webb's not here today. I think she's she's being uh, siphoned out. I think isn't she? She's sort of cutting all that. Because the trouble is, every time you bring something in, she calls it terrible food, and yet she squirrels it back to her desk. I don't see Dave Goff doing that. Oh, it was the uh, the Santas running the other day, a merry band of Santas who were running in uh, Windsor Great Park in aid of the Alexander Divine Children's Hospice. I love seeing the Santas when they do it around town. That's really quite cute. Lots of people running as, as Father Christmases. Mind you, Britain's most festive pub, the Churchill Arms in Kensington, has switched on its 22,500 Christmas lights. I love it. I think the lights are great in London for this uh, Christmas. They really are. They, they're, they're very good. It's worth, worth taking a walk around the capital. Worth it. Uh, Snowflake from Somerset. It would be cheaper to change your name uh, by deed poll to Toblerone. We saw them in the garden centre in Staines. Yeah, man, I want to go to a garden centre in Staines. Thank you very much indeed. I've been to garden centres before. Want to find something with your name on it. Yeah, not sure about that. Uh, Steve, I saw them selling at Blue Water and Westfield malls. The bars had names on already at six quid a bar. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I, I, I think I want something a little bit more, you know, we're going to go and print it now. Because I told you I, I bought the Marmite, quite a big jar of Marmite, and they were doing, I forget how much they were charging. I thought it'd be a, an interesting present, so I bought six jars. And where the Marmite label is, it's got Steve Allen written in there. It looks really good, actually. Very good idea. I quite like these personalised gifts. I think it's a brilliant idea. Here it is, supermodel Capri. She's not a supermodel. She's just a bog standard, and I mean bog standard model. Uh, if she was a supermodel, she says here that uh, her pooch lives a VIP lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, whatever, dear. Whatever. And is taken everywhere in a designer handbag. Oh, how annoying. How really annoying. An animal hater. 
you know, people who put their dogs in little bags and walk around with them, haters of animals, haters. In fact, there's nothing the American star won't do. Sorry, Caprice Bourette, an American star. Do me a favour. So after fearing Stinker was going deaf, Caprice signed up to take her part in a TV special. She wanted to make sure she's doing everything. Have you heard of vet steer? We have them in this country. You go to a vet, the et, okay, and that will tell you about your dog. You don't do a TV programme. 25th of November, for a lot of you, payday. And just remember, you've only got one more payday before Christmas, after this one, which will probably occur about the 15th of December, something like that, or the 17th, or whenever it occurs. And, uh, and then you've got to wait six weeks for another payday. So the advice is, be frugal, be frugal. You know, if you're going to rush out starting getting sort of personalised Toblerones and bars of chocolate, you're going to eat into your money very quickly. As I say, the, the, the trick is either join a Christmas club, which you pay into on a weekly basis. So you, when you've got Christmas, you then all the food is covered. So you don't need to worry about that because that's the most expensive bit. And then you could start going out buying presents. Remember, if the child is under two... Don't, don't, don't worry about buying presents. They don't know what presents are. They're under two, probably even under three. They wouldn't know the difference between a Barbie doll and a cheap one you bought in a pound shop. They really wouldn't. They're, they're just children. They don't know these things. It's only when they get to about 12 that they start realising exactly what they've been given isn't exact the present that, exactly the present they were hoping for. So I always think, if it's why are you buying babies anything like that? You don't need to do it. Unless you're sort of helping out the family, but the rest of the time, waste of money. Just give them a box covered in shiny paper for them to open. They won't expect anything in it. It's just shiny paper. Works every time. I mean, you could stick a sweet in there or something. No, not really sweet, actually. It's probably not very appropriate, is it? But you, you, you could stick something really cheap in there so they go, oh, look, there's a present inside the box. But they don't know what a present is. So don't don't waste your time and money. You can do it. And if you can't happen to buy the particular present and it's sort of for somebody under five... That's the benchmark, five. You just sort of go, Father Christmas has run out of those. They're very popular. But he said, in a few weeks' time, he'll, he'll deliver a special one just for you. Lie to them. Don't have to tell them truth. We, we, we couldn't actually find it. Did you see the spin-off from Northern Lights called Christmas Lights? I didn't. I've heard of it, but I, I don't know uh, anything about it at all. Steve, my uh, daughter, gave me a personalised jar of Marmite last, last Christmas with Granny written on it. Oh, mine's just got Steve Allen. And, uh, Steve, a pooch has a different meaning to a woman. Mine's VIP. Oh, right. Somebody says, let me save all your chocolate problems. Choc Ella. In just four simple steps, you choose what chocolates you like with a personalised message. We send it to anywhere in the UK. Well, there you go. A friend of mine owns a chocolate shop in, in Richmond. He not only owns the chocolate shop, he owns a factory that makes them. And he has an ice cream shop. And he has a clothing shop. It's, it's like a town called Alice. Seriously, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's buying up left, right and centre. So the Queen calls off the birthday bash for her disgraced son. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that would be so hypocritical. And to be honest with you, he wouldn't enjoy it. What sort of friends would he have going there? Ghislaine, you know, I mean, all these sort of people he could invite. You could have an absolute field day compiling the guest list for Prince Andrew celebrating his 60th birthday. Now, it'll be something quiet at home where they can all sit there staring into a bowl of soup. It'll keep him happy, won't it? By that time, Sarah Ferguson would have come up with some wheeze to spend money. I can't believe that they were saying the other day that she's actually, at one time, she was £5 million in debt. I mean, how'd you get to be £5 million? That's a very understanding bank, isn't it? Five million in debt. Oh, I remember when I went £120 in debt years and years ago. I got a very stroppy letter from the bank. Never did it again. Guess what's uh, going on tour after 68 years in the West End? Going on tour is The Mousetrap. It's been at St Martin's Lane Theatre for, for ever and a day. It came out in 1952. It's the show that all the, the Japanese tourists go to see. They go, you're going to London on a very fast whirlwind. You'll be staying in a nice hotel in the West End and we'll take you to see a West End show. They think they're going to see Phantom of the Opera or Les Miserables or Wicked. Instead, they get Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap. <laughs> Which is looking a little bit dated, it has to be said. But they're, they're going all over the place. They're going to uh, Hull New Theatre, Billingham, Swindon, Yeovil. For all those people who've never seen it, they said, see it now, keep the secret forever. It's the vicar. And uh, <laughs> everybody now going, are you sure? Been running since uh, since God knows when. And his father and son, Peter Andre, shadowed by his boy, Junior. Honestly, talk about exploiting it. I thought you weren't supposed to be doing that, Peter. Or are you another hypocrite? 
He, he was the one who, who, who stopped Jordan putting the kids on the TV programme. Here he is, you know, going out and sort of saying, oh, this is my boy and all the rest of it. Very dull existence. Peter Andre. He's going into the Michael Jackson thing, isn't he? Where he plays Michael Jackson. Mercifully, it's for only two weeks. Uh, the worst Christmas lights in the country. Twickenham. <laughs> or Christchurch road in bournemouth i mean they really are very sad it's a string of horrible blue lights which have been there for nearly 20 years that's it they're way too high up and you can't see them our ones are too small they're obviously made for much smaller lamp posts as opposed to the ones that we've uh, that we've got margaret in florida says as an avid lover of fresh fried fish and it must be fried my favorite is basic white cod in the northeast and fried grouper in the south what's your favorite or most widely sold in london cod would be the most widely sold. Although uh, we, we've always argued this one, uh, Margaret, we've always said, I doubt anybody going into a fish and chip shop could tell what they were eating. In fact, at one time, they were eating Vietnamese river cobbler. And that was being passed off as, if you just go in and ask for fish and chips, that's what you used to get. Whether it's that now, I've got no idea. We have, uh, we have a couple of fish and chip shops in Twickenham. Uh, haddock is, is, is a, I would always have haddock. Although I used to like, um, oh, what do they call it? Dogfish. But it's not dog. It comes by another. No, no. It's, it's got one bone down the middle of it. And that was it. I don't like the ones where you've got to pick bones out. I don't do things like that. But haddock's the best one. I think, I think, um, I think we actually discovered that from Phil Vickery, who said it's the tastiest fish. The other ones are a little bit bland. But to be honest with you, it's the batter, isn't it? It's the batter that we like and the chips and the salt. And things like that. I was watching uh, Romish Ranganathan the other night. He's doing a tour of, it could be Nigeria, um, or Ethiopia, or Sudan, or somewhere like that. And there were, uh, the heat out there was unbearable. Absolutely unbearable. And there were men cutting salt. Salt. They had a, a camel train, and they were cutting salt. And each block of salt that they were cutting out of this now defunct lake uh, was worth 50 pence. I mean, to be honest with you, and it was being done by hand. Yeah, it was quite a big piece of salt. And apparently salt was used all over the place. I mean, if they took mechanisation in there, it'd be so much easier because you could get tonnes of stuff out very quickly. But these men do it, cut it, and then they um, then they actually sort of put it, you know, onto these uh, poor, poor camels. Uh, there you go. Rock salmon, says Stuart. Rock salmon. Stuart, Stuart's got the fish shop in Twickenham called Sandy's, the ones with all the lights. And he said, Huss or rock salmon and phil phil vickery says love love haddock steve thank you phil i get worried if you're not there in the morning i get quite panic -strick. where is he this morning is he doing this morning but no i think we actually agreed before didn't we that haddock is has got the best flavor which is i could eat it now actually i could really eat it now or i could eat some german sausages i don't want polish sausages because they're laced with garlic they're absolutely st you can smell it through the packaging I know that. I got my hair cut the other day. I just thought I'd mention that now, just in case you're looking at me, going, there's something different about you, Steve. And Huss, says Phil Vickery. There you go. Oh, Huss has got taste as well, has it? But rock salmon I used to go for because it just had that one big bone down the middle of it. But uh, what did I have one time? What's that other big... <laughs> is it Place, that flat thing? No, Dover Sole. Dover Sole, very expensive. And, they, and they, they did it at the table, taking the bone out of it. I thought, no, I don't like that. I've only got to have one bone, and I'm worried about choking. I'm seriously, I'm terrible. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, the spin-off from Northern Lights uh, called Christmas Lights with Robson Green. This is where he entered a Santa competition and put up over-the-top Christmas decorations to outdo the neighbour, says Julie, in Germany. Grüß Gott, guten Morgen. <laughs> Like to make people feel welcome, you know, we're doing our best. We probably do, we could probably wander around the languages, couldn't we, you know? Saying sort of Happy Christmas in uh, in different languages every day. Or maybe not. But Julie's in Germany. It's like, I, I like the German Christmases. I do. They're, they're, I don't think their trees are as good as ours. But uh, I've, I've done German Christmases on quite a few occasions when I go to, uh, when I used to go to Vienna to work. And at Christmas time it was all very, because there was always snow on the ground. You know, it was, it was well worth it to see the old frau lines falling over, you know, whee! You know, didn't need to bother doing upskirting. It was, it was all on display anyway. It was terrible. But no, lovely. It's the only place I've ever been to where you see people in national costume. And I love a dirndl. Seriously. Not to wear, obviously. That would be, that would be silly. But uh, no, I love people. When you get the, the people coming in from, from outside of Vienna, the Burgenlanders in the summer, they're all wearing traditional lederhosen, everything. I mean, it's serious. 
They do this funny dance, the men, where they sort of pick each other up and pat them on the bottom a few times. I, d I don't know why they do that. There's no, there's no logical reason. It's, it's called dancing. It's something terribly traditional. Uh, so, 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 at least we've actually worked out what, what the best fish is. Huss or uh, haddock. But I wonder how many fish and chip shops would actually have. But would I know if it was... Yes, of course I'd know if it was haddock, yeah. I definitely would. I'm trying to get back into eating fish, but, you know, Stuart's got the best fish shop around our area. In fact, actually, bar, bar none. You know, it's all, it's all going to be wonderful over Christmas. They're already decorated, and people are already ordering turkeys. And I promise you, on Christmas Eve, there will be a queue that stretches halfway up uh, Heath Road in Twickenham, people, and they, he hands out mulled wine and everything. He's got it sussed. Got it well and truly sussed. That's why he's very successful. Paul Cooper's got all his satsumas out and his nuts hanging up, his bag of nuts, uh, which are very popular at Christmas. And uh, tomorrow, I better tell you that uh, Cooper's will be closed because it's his dad's funeral tomorrow, Brian's funeral. So, and I know that Pat will be listening and I know it's an awful time for the family, but uh, I hope everything goes really well for you tomorrow. It's not, uh, not easy. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. He, he said to me, he said, I thought I was going to be tough over this. He said, but I've, I've learned that I'm not. I said, join the club, join the club. Uh, Steve, I'm sure Pizza Express could put on a 60th birthday party for Andrew. Oh, that'd be nice. You probably could, couldn't you? Phone him up and ask if you can do a birthday party for Andrew. He'll sort of pop in and he can have dough balls and uh, everything else. Uh, Steve, uh, I loved your animal story yesterday. Jasper and stiff as a board Judy. What was the cat's name? Candy. Candy. I was never sure whether it was with a K or a C. This was our, our white cat. One who died of the fur balls, but uh, no candy. I should. I mean, candy was the laziest cat in the entire world for cat lovers. You know what they're like. She she would lie in front. We had a fire, an open fire, and we had central heating. We were very lucky, and uh, we only had a fire because we set fire to the cabinet, and uh, we had that there. And the cat would lie in front of the fire, literally burning. You know, you see the steam rising off the cat, and you could pick her up with two hands, one, and she would remain asleep. She was that bone idle. Terrible. LBC. Only a really nice to be company, 620. Now we know where Phil Vickery was. In the shower. <laughs> he says, always listen, Steve. Just having a shower. <laughs> I used to have a shower radio. A shower radio. It, it didn't matter if you could get... And then I suddenly realised, it's the same as having a radio, isn't it, in the bathroom? This one was just one that got wet at the same time. And my brother reminds me that candy our cat, used to be hoovered on the stairs by mum because she couldn't be bothered to move. I <laughs> said so you have to, have to hoover around the cat. You know, candy, nothing, not a thing. Selective hearing. And yet you you tapped her plate when there was food. Oh, I used to hate it. Cold mornings. And you'd put her food out of a tin and it would be sort of salmon or something. Oh, God. And then the cat would try and come and sit on you. Let me go, go away. <laughs> stinking of salmon and everything else. Very sweet, very sweet. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, what else we have got here? Police a hunter. Oh, I can't do that one. Uh, do you know that living within 50 metres of a major road can increase lung cancer risk by up to 10%? God. Not much to look forward to in life, is there really? You get to that stage where you get a bit sort of desperate and you start thinking, am I living near a main road? Yep. Am I going to get cancer? I do hope not. I do hope not. Uh, also, Two British ISIS terrorists accused of beheading Western hostages could be brought back here to face justice. Oh, they'll be given a free house and a car, I should imagine, won't they? We're so useless at stuff like that. Uh, also, also, I said a picture of Hugh Jackman. Tinseltown works itself up into an Oscars frenzy. I didn't realise that there are literally about 100 people, toilet sitters, for the Oscars. So every time a celebrity gets up to go to toilet, which they seem to go quite a lot, and uh, somebody comes and sits in their seat, so it makes it look as though the place is actually full. Whereas, in fact, most of the uh, the audience uh, are actually nipping to the toilet and quite often. Quite often, I used to think. But, uh, and it goes for hours. I think, Sh was it Cher got up or somebody else and went, this has gone on longer than my career. <laughs> it was so true. So, so true. Uh, what have we got here? Baby Scandal. Oh, this is a toxic NHS trust where failings have been linked to the deaths of babies and mums is facing a flood of fresh lawsuits. 
Uh, Cameron Diaz. I don't know anything about Cameron Diaz. I'm never too sure what I'm supposed to know. But um, I'm always intrigued by her. I still like that that guy, the Second World War hero, 102-year-old, who's only missed matches. He's been, to, he's been to every Derby home game for 88 years. They should be giving him free seats by now, free food, drink, everything. Goodness sake, when you actually get to that age, you, you deserve to get everything. You really do. Uh, online shopping is poisoning the air we breathe. I like online shopping. I don't do, I mean, I'm not one of these people who does food. I know there's a lot of people who do food online shopping. But uh, I quite like the experience of going out. I went out yesterday and I bought some... What did I buy? <laughs> Powdered Heinz tomato soup. I was going to bring it in to try it out this morning and I thought, you can't drink soup at this time of the morning, can you? It's not really a... There are certain foods which you can't eat. I could eat shepherd's pie. Well, actually, not, not shepherd's pie. It'd have to be cottage pie, because shepherd's pie is made with lamb, and I've got an allergic reaction to uh, lamb. Uh, Steve, in our village of Ashed, is it Ashed on the edge of Epsom or Ashted? We have Superfish, a fish and chip restaurant which sells the best hus and chips ever, or any other fish and chips for that matter. <laughs> How lovely. There's something nice about... I tell you, I used to go to a Chinese fish and chip shop in Hounslow on Hounslow Heath, and the batter was the best ever. The best ever. And I'd, it would be worth driving for 20 minutes to park up and go and get the biggest bit of fish you've ever seen. And it wasn't the most expensive. And then blast them. They sold out. And the next people coming in were rubbish. So I stopped going there. I think it was an extra place called Gay Blinds or something like that. Which is <laughs> very bizarre. Uh, Steve, I can't decide whether the Prince Andrew connection is good or bad for Pizza Express. Well, they're in huge debts. Huge debts. I mean, I think they're a billion or something ridiculous. Steve, Gemma Collins is standing in. Well, she'll be sitting in for Richard Arnold on Good Morning Britain today. And it's on the presenting lineup. Are you not upset to be missing out and watching? I think not. No. No, she digs her own grave. Who really does? The fish that has one bone is the dogfish, which is rock, rock salmon. Uh, yeah, rocks. I, but it is neither eel nor salmon. Yes, I know what it is. I've had it for years. I am over the age of 20, you know. I do, I do know about these things. Uh, the best fish is skate. No, I couldn't eat skate. And Mark, you've now made me crave haddock and chips at 6.15 in the morning. Not. I agree haddock has the best flavour. I ought to ask for it at my local fish and chip shop. The chips have got to be right, haven't they? The chips have ab absolutely got to be right. Is your friend who owns all the, uh, the chocolates, is he married? Says <laughs> Sue Ann. Uh, no, he's not married. And as far as I know, he doesn't have a girlfriend at the moment. His uh, his ex-girlfriend, Bridget's lovely. I haven't seen her for ages, but uh, when I go down there, somebody will always report back and say, Steve Allen mentioned you this morning on the radio, which is lovely. But uh, no, as far as I know, he's not married. Do you like kippers, Steve? No. No, no, <coughs> no. I don't know why. I don't like... I don't, one of those other things I can't do. I can't do... I come in a... T Ooh, crab sticks. Ugh disgusting anchovies ugh, disgusting pilchards ugh, disgusting cockles no i can do um mussels they're a bit dull and uninteresting but you know but they but they cook very quickly you just pop them in their shells into the saucepan heat it up and then when the shell opens they're trying to get out because they're dead and then you can eat them oysters no 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 they always taste of sand and somebody said, you're supposed to chew them to get the effect. Ugh, disgusting. No, thank you very much indeed. No, I like looking at things like that, but I don't want to eat it. Mind you, I never used to eat mushrooms. Now, I mean, I, I, I eat a lot of mushrooms, but I've suddenly realised they're very bland. There's not much to a mushroom, is there, unless you get some of the exotic ones. Paul Cooper's got some boxes of exotic mushrooms, and I thought, oh, perhaps I should try some of those. And I thought, yeah, but what do you have them with? I suppose you could have them with all sorts of things, couldn't you? The Italians could go great guns with things like that. <laughs> Steve, uh, talking chippy in southwest, pea fritter, mushy peas, binded with flour and batter. Very nice. Pea fritter. Are you serious? Uh, sounds disgusting, doesn't it? That's like that Scottish invention, isn't it? Deep fried Mars bar. I mean, that's just, that's not pleasant either. Don't like that. Uh, Steve, the Chinese can't cook fish and chips. Oh, they absolutely can. Oh, they can. It's the batter. They also did, did Chinese food. See, the shop you're referring to with gay lights. Was it, I, I couldn't remember what it was called. I thought it was gay blinds, actually. I seem to remember that. But uh, it was, uh, the, the fish next door was delicious. The batter was the lightest. It was almost like a tempura type batter. It's like Thai food. I love Thai food. 
And we've got quite a few uh, pubs around our way that serve Thai food, but I've never actually been in there because I don't like to sort of get... But you can cook Thai food on just two little gas rings. I only, I only mention that, actually, because we used to go to, a, to Thai Nice up in Acton, which was owned by some listeners, David and Vid. And uh, we would go up there. And it was the campiest place ever, but the food was delicious. It was so camp. It was really was. It was very very camp. That as camp as it gets actually. But it was it was really the food was the best. They used to do volcano chicken, which was a chicken that came on a spike, drenched in brandy and set on fire. It was really fantastic. It was really nice. It was just delicious. Just delicious. I could eat it now. I wish I'd stop talking about food. There's no point in talking about food at this time of the morning, isn't there? I might, but I still haven't found actually in our local. I only saw them once and I wasn't sure if they were actually in the thing. The uh, pigs in blankets in, um, in Greg's. I've not managed to get them yet, which is a bit of, uh, bit of an embarrassment. Uh, revealed the UK tree deserts where just 2% is covered. Uh, the Rail Union, £600,000 war chest to fund the Christmas strikes. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, uh, uh, we can't do anything about it. They're obviously determined to upset everybody's Christmas and basically screw you. It's a case of that, you know, because the only people who are suffering are us and we're nothing to do with it. We just want to get on a train and go and visit people or do some shopping or something like that. But I think practically for the whole of December... Uh, the RMT have called out all their uh, members and they're not doing anything at all. Good, well, just stand there doing nothing. Just stand there doing nothing. Don't worry, we, we will get round it. We've always managed. We've always managed. Uh, plus, plus, plus. Oh, the police chief, I've done that one as well. And uh, tea time going to the dogs and the £10 million worth of cocaine. I mean, found in a fish van. I mean, that's an awful lot. Although, what did they find the other day off the coast of Spain? I think it was off the coast of Spain. A submarine with something like 2,000 kilos of cocaine in it. A submarine! But I was always told that there is so much money in, in drug smuggling that they can literally afford to have a submarine captured with 2,000 tonnes of it or whatever it is, and then and, and let that be, be caught. And they go, oh, we've finally caught that. And yet up the coast, they've just brought in three tonnes of cocaine because, the, you know, there's so much of it. They just, they just make it. Uh, Steve, the, the Thai restaurant at the Lancaster Hotel is the best. Dessert, deep fried ice cream. Unbelievable, says Neil in Notting Hill. That sounds nice. Mad Dog says, I used to have a deep fried jam sandwich in Portsmouth. Isn't that what Elvis Presley had? Didn't he have, I'm sure he had deep fried, he was really bad at eating the worst things. <laughs> he was bad, but it sounded delicious. <laughs> Uh, Steve, how about some ackee? Is that the ackee rice and fish on nice and... Th yes, with fried dumplings. That sounds quite nice. Uh, Everton on the M4, washed down with Guinness. Ugh, no, not Guinness. Please, not Guinness. I've never drunk Guinness, you know. Uh, McDermott's Fish and Chips in Forestdale is very good. Always a queue. That either means they're very slow at cooking or it's very good and people will go there. <laughs> uh, Steve, I've heard and seen it. Holidays are coming. Holidays are coming. There was a picture in one of the papers today of the Coca-Cola lorry, which is banned from London. Banned from London. We had it in Leicester Square only one year. And they, they, they then the mayor banned it because he said, oh, they're offering sugary drinks. Honestly, no sense of the occasion, is there really? Prince Albert on Twickenham Green, says Barry. I've seen that one. I've, I've never actually been in. They always have a nice sort of... pub looks nice, doesn't it? It always looks inviting. One o'clock this morning for breakfast on LBC. The Conservatives have launched their manifesto, promising to get Brexit done and forge a new Britain. Nick will be asking, do you trust Boris to deliver? You'll also hear the latest from across the pond as billionaire and former New York mayor Michael Bloomberg joins the 2020 US election. And Prince Andrew's 60th birthday party has been cancelled as the FBI asked to question him about his links to Jeffrey Epstein. All of that and more with Nick Ferrari at breakfast uh, this morning from 7 here on LBC. Uh, we, found, um, we found the most expensive chippy. This is uh, Britain's most expensive fish and chips from the famed chef Tom Kerridge. And how much is he charging? £32.50 for fish and chips. Now, to be honest with you, I mean, it's, it's a hefty price tag, roughly about 500 times more expensive than the standard fish shopper. And you know what they've done? I don't mind, you know, I mean, it might be worth £32.50. I've got no idea. But what I really hate is when you go into a restaurant and you order fish and chips... OK, now what I'm looking for is a decent sized piece of fish and a plate full of chips. What do they serve it in now? 
this one comes in a little cup so in other words you end up with about sort of 10 chips or something it's pretentious rubbish i went to a place once they served it in a little tiny shopping trolley or thing that you get a little cone with a few chips in it it's it's i mean to be honest with you how you ever come up with this one his uh, his uh, chips uh Hello? is I mean, phones come to life all by itself. Obviously, you only have to mention chips and the phone comes to life for some strange reason. It's very hungry, obviously. That's a bit frightening, isn't it? You feel as though it's watching you. But uh, apparently, one of the things that sets this pub grub aside, it's in the Corinthia Hotel, from its newspaper-wrapped vinegar-soaked cod, is that it isn't cod, it's brill. Five and a half ounces of it. Oh, sorry, seven chips you get. Seven chips. I didn't want to sort of... Sprinkled with herb garnish and accompanied by a chunky tartar peas pudding and curry sauce, this fish and chip meal is now served at a five-star restaurant. I mean, to be honest with you, it's... I mean, the, the chips... They did tell you how they did the uh, the chips, actually. In other words, these these chips here... It can also come with a pickled onion. Blooming well think so, too, for £32.50. But um, where is this has been done? You, you You do these chips in one way... Which is, you, where is it? I just read that a minute ago, actually. Hasn't really helped, has it? That's right. They're parboiled, then they're chilled, then they're fired in rapeseed oil, then chilled again, and then fried again, before being delicately placed in a cup. It's a chip. It's a blooming chip, for goodness sake. Seven of them. I mean, it seems an awful lot of money for £32.50. And I'm looking at the size of the of the fish. It's not the biggest bit of fish in the world. But there again, I suppose you're paying for sort of the, the culinary delights of learning how to freeze a piece of potato and then bringing it back to life again. Uh, Steve uh, says, Robin, we've got a lovely fish and chip shop near me in Putney called Fishers. Uh, it used to be run by twins. The fish is so gorgeous and the chips, well, so good. Yeah. I bet it's not £32.50, though, is it? They're quite... I mean, even when you go to the um, the fish and chip shop that a friend of mine lives near in uh, in Labrook Grove, uh, they, they, you, they put your fish in a box and then they fill it with chips. You know, but, and a chip is a chip is a chip. Admittedly, some of them are not very good. But generally speaking, you know, chips are OK. I could eat some chips now, actually. Somebody says, lovely jelly deals. Go away. We don't do jelly deals. Dreadful. Horrible stuff. Ugh, disgusting. I feel sorry for the eels. Now, you have heard of Ava Braun, have you not? No? Let me refresh your memory. Ava Braun was Hitler's girlfriend. Apparently, <coughs> according to a new book, which is, uh, which is out now, called Nazi Wives... I can't imagine who would want to read it, but there you go. Uh, she lived in lavish splendour, yet as a compelling new book, this one, Nazi Wives, uh, reveals behind the scenes she was so lonely and miserable she twice tried to kill herself before the final reckoning in a bunker. Her and Hitler uh, took the easy way out and, uh, and committed suicide. And so there were pictures of her. I don't know what set her aside from other people, but they uh, said here at the Birkhoff, uh, with Hitler in 1942, was often ignored by him. But uh, I should imagine you were dealing with a megalomaniac who actually sort of opted for his easy way out, didn't he? What a shame. What a shame. I know, I know, I know. Somebody else talked about jellied eels. And uh, another one here. I had fish and chips in London with a pint of uh, Max Coke, £53. Well, that would just be madness. I mean, you can get it cheaper at Tom Courage's place. It's only £32.50. And they've done a piece on it. But as I say, seven chips. That's called taking the Michael, isn't it? A little bit. Uh, Steve, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Fish and chips from the Chinese is fabulous. It's the batter. It's the batter. I used to go and get uh, sweet and sour chicken. And it was a piece of chicken, bat uh, um, beaten, so it was thin. And then battered and then cut into slices. God, it was lovely. I know the, the standard thing now is to have um, chicken balls or pork balls, but if, if, if you take the ball coating off, you'll discover that on the pork one, it's mainly fat. Seriously, it's not very good. Uh, another one here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed out on that one, actually. Um, 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 what it is, what it is, what it is. So everybody else telling me fish and chips is uh, from the chinese very nice indeed i loved it i seriously loved it. i could eat it now actually are they going to ban santa wearing his red suit that was a coke advert well he, he was green before he was changed into you're quite right it was coca-cola that changed him into red up until then he was green 
but uh, we still don't we, we couldn't work out where he came from father christmas and you know did he come from sweden did he come from finland who knows slightly overdid on these sprouts yesterday steve oh i love sprouts i had sprouts the other day actually so relieved i'm on a week's leave says gary had the best sleep for a while is it too early to say merry christmas never too early to say merry christmas and my local thai restaurant steve does a lovely spicy beef dish which has the, ex the best name. It's called Pit of Extremely Fierce Torture. Sounds delightful. I'd, I'd go for that one. Definitely. Definitely go for that. It sounds absolutely delicious. I love I love uh, beef. I quite like battered... You know, they do chilli beef. That's, that's quite... In fact, I like anything, actually. <laughs> I'm not that fussy. Even for breakfast. You see, if I had my way... And we know that round the corner you can get curry for breakfast. Round the corner from me. I've never done it. But I've always, uh, always fancied it. Uh, Rick says, George's Chip Shop in Ladbroke Grobe grove best in london without a doubt everybody's got their favorite haven't they there'd be something about it and uh, see the good fish and chip shop should not open on a monday says jenny <laughs> i like that you can go to the golden anchor in mitcham the fish is cooked fresh and the fries just keep coming well you have to cook fish fresh you can't can't not have it fresh otherwise it sits there even in the hot cabinets it, it has a has a shelf life doesn't it where it has to go and um and then we were looking at Tesco's Honey. They, they've withdrawn their own brand at the moment because somebody did a thing on it and discovered that it wasn't, wasn't as pure honey as they thought it was. They thought it had some extra ingredients, which they weren't too sure about, so they've decided to cut out the middleman and uh and sort of withdraw it from uh, from sale at the moment so Jesse Owens gold medals, which we talked about from the Nazi Olympics i mean one point six million if if two people wanted it could go even higher uh also um rod stewart and Al john with their bus cup the baking giant dr utka gives back art looted by the nazis i'm actually there for god's sake and uh, the puppet that left mr parkinson unamused you can buy emu about 10 grand and orville's coming up as well somebody'd have to buy it that's about eight to ten grand as well not bad is it really if, if you like things like that and uh, somebody will buy it. it could go in a museum i think it should be bought by the vna or something like that uh, also beauty denies using secret cleavage tape this is holly willabooby uh two people reckon that she's using their their tape she's saying she's not so i'm not sure if they've just done it to, to sort of get a little bit of an advert going uh, ben fogel you know ben fogel he's been with us on in conversation loads of times uh, he says telefame is not worth it and wishes that uh, today's youngsters or the brain dead, as I call them, uh, who appear on these ridiculous reality shows, go and get a proper job. That's the only way you're going to survive. Otherwise, your life is going to be very, very miserable when the work dries up. But unfortunately, there's so many people coming onto the market, the work's drying up already. Look at poor Amy Hart. The poor girl, she, she's spending £100,000 having her teeth done to go on a dating programme, which is just some joke. I mean, perhaps, perhaps she can't be advised anymore. Perhaps she thinks that... Uh, you know, that, that's going to make a difference. Unfortunately, it comes down to personality, of which you are sadly lacking. Uh, Prince Andrew's socialite pal, Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell, is going to lift the lid on their relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. That could be a bit fraught. I bet the phone lines have been humming. I bet they've been... I'd love to see his phone log. I'd love to see the phone... Who's he been talking to recently? Well, at the moment, he's not working. Nor do I suspect he ever will. So he just sort of sits there now. Perhaps he'll go and sit in his Verbier chalet. £13 million. Pounds. Excuse me, where did the money come from? Love to see that one. Has he paid cash or has he got a mortgage? I mean, he, he's living the millionaire lifestyle. Same as poor old Sarah Ferguson, who managed to get herself into a huge amount of debt. And, uh, and now what does she do? God knows. Defends him. Just says what a marvellous bloke he is. Very misguided. Very misguided. Listen, we take uh, a short morning. Apparently, Father Christmas or St Nicholas... Comes from a small village on the southern coast of Turkey. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, flying back to Moscow this morning, Steve. Minus 10 there and falling. Just had to say goodbye to the family, feeling very sad. But the good news is I've got you every morning to keep me going in Russia. Thank you, Lindsay. Safe flight back. Uh, also, uh, another one here. Neil in Mill Hill says the best... Uh, oh, I've lost it, actually. Where's it gone to? Oh, I've lost it. Wait a minute. Sometimes it, these things come in so fast I can't keep up with them. Neil says, the best way I ever had chips was in my school days in Canning Town back in the 70s. My school friend and I used to buy freshly baked crusty loaf from the Jackson's Bakery on the Barking Road. The loaf would be cut in half. We'd eat the soft, hot dough from the middle whilst walking to the chip shop. They'd then fill the empty half loaf with chips. Oh, that sounds quite nice. 
Yes, I've seen that done before, actually. You can do that with um, a cottage loaf. Is it a cottage loaf, they call it? You cut the top off, hollow out, and put uh, put chips in there and everything else. So that sounds very good. Kingsley Fish and Chips, apparently in Hounslow. I don't remember what it was called, actually. Very pleasant people. But uh, it was sold on, and it was never the same again. And uh, here's one that you might remember. My mum used to take me, Steve, to a lovely fish and chip shop in Whitecroft Street in the 70s. You could sit in there and eat it with a cup of tea and a slice of bread and butter. That was considered the height of fashion. Do you remember? You go in there and say, do you want some bread? We'll have some bread and butter. And then your mother would tell you off for putting chips in the bread and folding it over and eating it, which was quite nice. <laughs> I like stuff like that. Uh, somebody says uh, here, uh, Steve, um, uh, definitely not. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And uh, oh, I've lost the bloom. There have been so many coming in, actually, now. There's no fish and chip shops in China, proving the Chinese can't cook it properly, says Big Frank. Ah, uh, contraire. I hate to hate to make you wrong. There is a Chinese, uh, uh, there is a fish and chip shop over in China called Scott's. And uh, the reason it's over there is because all the Chinese tourists used to go to this place, Scots, because they used to stop it. They'd make the coach stop. And so Scots have opened a branch in China. <laughs> I knew I was never... I'm never wrong on these things. Uh, I've got an award-winning fish and chip shop round the corner. I live on my own, and one of their portions would feed me for the best part of a week, says Mary. Any ideas what you do with leftovers? I don't know, give them to the birds, I suppose. They'll eat stuff like that. The seashell on Listen Grove's quite expensive, isn't it, seashell? Quite expensive. I always go in there on the odd occasion and I order scampi, but of course they never have it ready. You've got to, you've got to order it. You know, I'll have scampi and then they put it in. It doesn't take too long. Uh, Latimer Road. Uh, best fish and chip shop, Steve, in Notting Hill Gate. Uh, the owner's passed on. The secret, cooked in beef dripping. Beef dripping. It's the only way, says Vince in, in Acton. Either way, this, I think, I, I feel we're, we're sort of heading towards the Steve Allen sponsorship of, of National Fish and Chip Day or something like that, which I think actually exists anyway. So that'll be good. Uh, the Feltham Chippy in, uh, oh, it's not Feltham, it's Felpham. I've never heard of Felpham. Some of the places I've never heard of. Uh, right, front pages, quickly because we don't have uh, too long of the programme left, and it's a bit it's a bit nippy out there. Uh, the Daily Mail, Boris delivers practical plan for thousands more nurses, tax cuts and a Brexit boost. I tell you, they, they'll offer you anything. They'll offer you free, free Christmas pudding for the rest of your life if they thought they were going to get your vote. Another £58 billion on a ruinous pledge of battle in good sense versus nonsense. So that's what you get. So good sense, nonsense. Uh, long-term plan in social care for the next five years. It's where, I mean, I'm, I'm so worried about this thing. Thousands more nurses from where? What is the incentive to get them to be a nurse? Because we, we, we have so few now, obviously the money is lacking, so they're going to have to offer huge amounts of money. I don't quite understand it, but as I say, they're offering anything. Daily Mirror. Here lies the Tory manifesto and lies and lies. Uh, don't be cruel to my girl, Jack. And this is the uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Fish and chip shops popping up in Spain, says Chris Lowry. Very popular here, but not cooked anything like as well as the UK. It's like getting a good cup of tea, isn't it, in Spain? I remember when we used to go on holiday to Spain, Chris, and, uh, and you'd ask for a cup of tea, and it just, uh, it was either the water wasn't right or the tea bag wasn't right. So whenever I used to go out to Austria, which isn't Spain at all, I used to take my own tea bags out. Working on the assumption, you know, I, I couldn't get it wrong, and it was quite nice. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Andrew's accuser will talk to the FBI. This is a woman who claims Andrew groped her at Jeffrey Epstein's home. Her name is Joanna Soberg. She alleged the, uh, the royal touched her breast. What was she doing there in the first place? You have to ask what these girls were doing there in the first place. Uh, also, Ian Wright screaming for mummy. He's a bit of a drip, actually, isn't he? Although somebody said he's hilarious. I don't quite see it. He's got a very nasty temper. Boris pledges 50,000 extra nurses. This is front page of the Express. But from where are they coming? Where are they coming from? Shamed Prince, Queen to scale back Andrew's 60th party. I just did as I say, somebody came up earlier on, take him to Pizza Express. He'll remember it. He remembered it from 20 years ago. I'm sure he'll remember the menu as well. Daily Star today, uh, gobby petrol head Jeremy Clarkson, their words, has finally admitted global warming is real after a jet boat trip on a lake which was more like a puddle. <coughs> OK, the uh, Telegraph. Johnson rejects spending contest with Labour in most critical election in modern memory and vows to lead Britain out of the EU. Uh, the I, Johnson, sets out health and safety manifesto. Tories pledge to recruit 50,000 more nurses, but from where? 
And why have they not done it up until now? Why are they leaving it till this this moment? Reveal China's vast camps for minorities is the headline on The Guardian, together with Boris Johnson, staking just $2.9 billion in public spending gamble. As I say, it'd be interesting to see who actually gets in and how many of their promises they will deliver. I get the I get the feeling that they won't be uh, <laughs> there won't be many of them that'll be done. Uh, the Times this morning, born to be spare, Prince Andrew's life and times finished, finished, completely finished now. I mean, even I mean, I don't know how anything could rescue him after this, as all the royal commentators are saying. This is about as bad as it gets, mind you. Kick up the rear end for him to stop being so arrogant. If, if anything must have uh, changed his mind about the way the British public thought about him, this would be it. This would be it. Steve, fish and chips served in newspaper. Always the best. Ever been the same? I know. I know. We used to have it served in newspaper when I was younger. It was lovely. It was something to do with the ink, I believe. Listening to you on a train between Grenada and Malaga. Is it Grenada? Grenada and Malaga. I've just been served a lovely cuppa. How nice. Do you know, you can't beat sitting on a train serving, served a cup of tea. Ask him for a chip butty. See how far that gets you. Probably it won't, actually. The sun will come up tomorrow. Brexit, then end to austerity, £650 million a week, boost for NHS, Merry Brexmas and Happy Blue Year. Guess which head up this is the sun, of course, the Tories' big spending plans. And uh, Prince Andrew's pal, Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell, will speak to the FBI about their links to Jeffrey Epstein. As I said before, I should imagine if, if that's true, he'd have been on the phone to a straightaway set. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? I mean, I don't know. I mean, she's she's been in hiding for such a long time. Sources said that uh, she aims to emerge from hiding within days, probably just about the same time that the girl who started making these claims against Prince Andrew's interview on Panorama is going to be aired on the television. Let's wait and see, shall we? Wait and see. And if you fancy buying Orville and Emu, they could fetch £10,000 each. They're coming up for auction. You see, if that was my family... I, I would have kept them, because that's, that, that's your family history, isn't it? That's what, you know, I remember the, uh, the bloke who had uh, Sooty before he sold him, and he said, um, you know, when the kids were complaining, he said, listen, that little, that little puppet there bought that swimming pool, your education and everything else, a bit more respect. My brother says that our local fish and chip shop, if you want cod bites, you shout out, six cod bites, please, when you're in the queue. First time I went in, I shouted out, cod pieces, please. Whole queue collapsed with laughter. So, so in other words, they, they can go, oh, cod bites. Cod bites? I've heard of cod bites before. That just sounds like pieces of fish in batter, I suppose. Sounds quite nice. I've got to go. I just realised. I've really got to go. On a little bit extra, girls allowed have fallen out. Doesn't matter. Chris Evans told off by the Royal Guards. Always a naughty boy. Princess Beatrice reportedly helped set up the Newsnight interview.